Go live. Get. Hey now, it's your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday, Sunday, Sunday show with everyone's favorite on time and never yeah. late, Adam Prendon. What's up? I was late. I was very late today. It's all my fault. Incredibly late. Mm -hmm. Terribly. I mean, I guess it's your fault, but never mind. I can't really? make that joke. If I made that, <laughs> I was about to make a joke that would get the stream demonetized. So. Yeah, forget it. Let's not do that. Just, just throw it in the trash. Throw it in the trash. Just think about it. Just think about where the late joke was going to go. You could probably figure it out. Yeah. Yes. It has something to do with... Uh... <laughs> I can't figure out how to make it without... <laughs> like exactly you're like oh, i don't know how to say this yeah you can't listen so let's, the rule let's is let's just move on let's get the into the rule this is video. you can't make your your horrible dirty jokes in the first five minutes yeah okay because that's all the people that listen to the stream to determine if it's monetizationable listen right to. Okay. right yeah so you now that i've couple. said that and they'll hear that then i guess i've just screwed the rest of the stream over, they're so probably going to go further into the stream now that's right what are and we before, watching today uh, well, before I get into that, because YouTube like deletes uh, gifted subs and gifted and sub messages when I hit start streaming. So let me just read those really quick before I forget. Uh, thank you so much, Daddy. Daddy J Mac, our surrogate father, gave 80 gifted memberships. Oh my God. That's right. Yes, and there's, so there's some. You have to click some button to be able to get a gifted membership. I can't find it to save my life on my screen. I've heard tell that it's at the top of the chat, maybe around the three dots or something. But if you want to get gifted subs, mm -hmm. uh, you have to click that button. So, Oh, so you actually have to activate something on your yeah. account to get a gifted yes. membership. Yes. Okay. It would help if you guys activated that because I think right. we have pot potato or potato. I'm not sure I... And we have J Mac who are trying to paint the chat green. So yes. if you guys don't click that button, it's impossible to completely paint the chat green. Well, and so. also, you know, you don't want to be sitting in chat and seeing all these other people getting right. message sub messages and right. subs for emojis, and you're like, right. what? what's going on? You're like, how come I'm not getting one? Why does the Why does the internet hate me? Right. So let's get into this video. What's this video about? This video seems Oh, but wait, let me, hold on, hold on. Jeez, calm down. And also, uh, thanks so much, Reagan Lloyd, for two months, who renewed his JMAC membership. Really? Says, thanks, JMAC, for two months of membership, LOL. Thank you so much. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, today, we are watching, actually, this was, uh, this video was sent to us by, sent to me, by Blep. Blep. Yes. Uh, Adam actually did the unthinkable this week. What did I he do? He went into the Discord and yes. communed with the audience. <laughs> did, did you? I noticed you showed up. Yes. Was that just to make sure that I wasn't like getting beat up or or fighting with everyone? <laughs> so on Thursdays is generally the day that maybe not always, but maybe I'll show up in the Discord and play Smash Brothers or Mario Kart or something. Right. Um. Which you showed up on, which was nice. And then, I did, yeah. And then I think you showed up on Friday, and I wanted to make sure that you weren't getting beat up by the Discord members. Thank you. So. I was getting beat up a bit before you actually got there, but yes. CT helped me out. I saw you and Doomer were arguing about movies yes, and Mahler's take on movies and yes, storytelling. Yes, so. We had nothing but good things to say about Mahler. Okay, don't. Oh, they go, were just you guys. Don't go just, starting any they internet were crap beef. Talk. Okay, Doomer and Adam were just nonstop crap talking. People, when Mahler. you when you say just that, so people don't much. Know. I had to come in and defend my Shadow Boy, the Long Man. Okay, <laughs> it's such bullshit. It's such <laughs> bullshit. It it was a it was a fun conversation. I came in on Thursday because CT messaged me. CT said people were beating up on Jordan peterson in the discord and i thought what i'm part of the jordan peterson defense force how dare how dare you come into the discord and beat up mm. on jordan peterson mm. so i immediately came in and no one was beating up on jordan peterson you guys were just playing video games right right but PT i was working you. on the comic i was drawing anyway so i mean i just stuck around and listened while i was drawing so mm -hmm. it was fun 
Sitch dominates everyone in these video games. <laughs> he just destroys them. That's not true. There was um, Sketch was there, and he was he was winning most of the Smash. So. Really? Okay. Yes. So you were just talking I was shit I there. was getting second place a lot. So okay, it's fine. Well, let's what's this video? Let's get in this video. Enough. So uh, this video is blabbing. from Wisecrack. Wisecrack, who are i don't know if they're all leftists at least the guy one of the main guys is leftist mm -hmm. um and he does this thing where he will interpret a lot of pop culture intentionally through a socialist lens and very often this leads him down kind of insane and crazy takes that make absolutely no sense right uh, one of them i actually wanted to make a video on eventually at some point where they this it's or maybe we'll watch it. It's completely insane. He interprets the last season of South Park through the socialist lens. And he twists if you saw the last season of South Park is so insanely anti woke. Like yes. it's making fun of mass mandates. It's making fun of um, you know, the don't say gay bill. Yes, yeah. Not making fun of the bill, but like making fun of people that, that like want to have LGBT issues in the classroom and things of that nature. Yes. It's Folks incredibly anti woke. Race. Yeah, making fun of a lot of like woke uh, woke racism and all this stuff, and yet, it in when Wisecrack covered it, they don't talk about any of that. Like they like they just remove all of that from the show and they just make it seem like South Park is some sort of anti-capitalist message or something. How is that <laughs> like, even possible? I don't. It's like completely insane. They have I that have whole no episode on on weed the the race episode is on like a weed dispensary where they're competing in a capitalist marketplace i know i that's in, that makes no sense it makes absolutely no sense it's it's such a stretch so anyway so uh this video this or this two videos actually is using the same leftist lens wisecrack is looking at disney world which of course you can guess if you're a leftist you don't like the capitalist corporation that is Disney. And they're looking at Disney and claiming that Disney is a religion and that people that like Disney like it in the same way people like religions, which right. is kind of interesting because me and Adam have said a million times, or we agree with, you know, John McWhorter saying that wokeness is a religion. And it definitely seems like the current leftist ideology that's sweeping through social media to me is far more of a religious fervor than anyone uh, getting excited about going to disney world yeah the, a lot of this is going to come down to the definition of religion and he goes yes. into a bunch of different definitions of religion but i'm sure we'll talk about that along the way so yeah i think the definition of religion he picks is really bad yeah, well bad is relative i would call it very self-serving <laughs> yeah it's it's bad if you want to understand the world it's very good if you want to uh, make an argument that anti you know make an anti-capitalist argument make a make right. an argument that capitalism is destroying everything right yeah right so these are two videos they're both 20 minutes the first one's kind of more of a like an introduction and then the second one is really like the meat of the arguments so Ready to get into it? Um, let's do it. The video is called Disney Adults. Is Disney a religion? Sponsored by Keeps. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Keeps. What's up, everybody? My name is Michael Burns, and today, for the first time ever, I'm going to open up about my greatest fear. If, if you're uh, like an anti-capitalist Antifa member and your name is Burns... I don't, you know, it's not a good look. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It's not, it's not, yeah. it's not a good look. Unfortunate. Yeah. Michael Burns. Hmm, I bet he does. How, you call them Antifa member. How dare you? Well, I mean, he's an anti-capitalist, right? I An guess. Antifa is just the, the far end of that, right? Mm. I mean, if we asked him, hey, is capitalism fascist? I mean, good chance he'd probably say <laughs> yes, right? That's true. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I it just seems like Disney. I'm absolutely terrified of Disney adults. Let me explain. Okay. See, this is Let's, how is this not a fashion? I'll say this though. 
I I hate to do it. I hate to say this, but I agree that Disney adults are cringy. Okay, guys, what is up with the Disney adults? They do you relax. really? Okay. Of course. What do you mean? Who are you a Disney adult? Well, no, you hate musicals. You can't be a Disney adult. I'm married to a Disney adult. Oh. <laughs> so I'm. <mean. laughs> I don't like that laugh. That laugh is too <laughs> close to the fake laugh. <laughs> this, the the place I proposed to my wife is actually in this video. <laughs> did you wait? Did you propose to your wife at like Disney World or something? I proposed to my wife at Disneyland. Yes. Oh my god! She, That's I didn't guys. I didn't know any of this loves, until this moment. She so we loves, didn't talk about. <laughs> she loves Disneyland. <laughs> That's what amazing. We used to oh go to Disney before the pandemic. We would go to Disneyland every year, but like mm -hmm. my yeah, but wife. I mean, you live pretty close. You yeah, live my, like yeah, it's like, like an 30, hour, 40 it's minutes. Like an hour no. away. Yeah, yeah, tops. An hour with traffic. Yeah, so we we go. Uh, yeah, we my wife gets season passes, and we we are regulars at Disneyland. It's a lot of yeah, fun. But if you live an hour or less away from Disney World, and you go there once a year, I, I mean that's. That's pretty normal. That's not like a crazy thing. Yeah, yeah. If I lived in Orlando, I would go to Disney World once a year or more. If you got one of those, like, so go there whenever. Why all the hate then? Okay, but let me. He doesn't. I don't think he accurately de defines what a Disney adult is. Okay, so maybe your wife isn't a Disney adult. I like right. to think she is because it makes it funny. But um, no, a Disney adult. First of all, you can like Disney stuff right. and be an adult. Okay. A Disney adult is someone who's like way too into Disney World and way too into Disney stuff. Like right. they have all these Disney products. They want to dress up as Disney characters like all like every chance they can get. Whenever they go to Disney World or Disneyland, they're like basically having a, you know, they're getting too excited in the pants region, <laughs> okay, <laughs> of, of the experience. Like people know what I, I'm assuming – now I'm a, I'm in Florida, so I would assume that there is going to be a higher proportion of Disney adults in Florida and California because they're physically near, you know, a Disney location that they can visit often. So maybe it's just a Florida California thing. But I'd assume most people have a good sense of what you're talking about when you say a Disney adult, like did, someone who's just a little too into Disney for their age. Did you did your parents take you to Disneyland when you were a kid? Well, they took me to Disney World. Okay, so di you know Disneyland, Disney World. Look, yes. I don't want to quibble over which is better. <laughs> but but Disney World, obviously, because it's bigger. Well, I don't. Is it though? Because now it, Disneyland in Southern California is two theme parks side by Disney side. Disney World's like seven or something. What are you talking? As I as I said, I don't want to quibble over which is better. <laughs> So the the thing the thing is though if your parent obviously if your parents took you to Disneyland I mean that was a heightened experience with your parents right I mean it's cool as a kid to go to Disneyland or Disney World Well okay let me, let's put a pause on that let's quibble for a second mm -hmm. Disneyland is 500 acres <laughs> Oh my you're such a ball buster it's like, Disneyland is uh, 500 acres which is big that's not that's a lot 500 of space. acres Yeah Disney World is 43 square miles. Is it really? Wow. <laughs> yes, Disney World's ma Have you never been to Disney World? It's I've fucking, never it's I've insane. never been to Disney World. Oh, no. it's yeah. it's massive. It's massive, yeah. Yeah. So. Maybe I'll take so my wife sometime. There you go. Yeah. Maybe I mean I'm if she's sure a Disney would adult, she would she would go insane. Yeah. Uh but no no, of course my my parents took me to actually yeah, we went to Disney World. My parents liked Universal more when I was a kid, so I think we end up spending more time there. Since we're um, since we're comparing Disney Land and mm -hmm. religion, or Disney Corp and religion, what what would you say your experience of going to Disney World versus your experience of going to Temple were? Which was more exciting for you as a child? I, I will agree. Going to Disney World and Universal Studios was far more exciting. Right. Than going to a uh, temple, yes. Right. Of right. course. So this guy, I just, I'm just completely against everything he's doing here. He well, just, that's what's he funny seems like the fun assassin. It's like, come on. That that's what's funny because, in my mind, 
I'd be like, if you ask like child sitch, like is is going is Disney or going to Disney World like religion? I'd be like, no, because it's fun. Yes, <laughs> it's boring. Yes, yes, exactly. This is the problem with religion. We need to make religion fun, right? Religion should be fun. Well, should it? Should it, Adam? Well, I, that depends on how you define religion. I mean, if you started giving people hallucinogenics during services, then yeah, it'd be real fun. That would be fun. Yeah, uh, you know, we need to bring that it back. That might not be fun. I don't know. We I've need been, to bring it back. I've been in uh, a Catholic cathedral on LSD, and it was not fun. No, <laughs> I'm no. You. It was not fun at all. <laughs> yeah, but see, if everyone was on hallucinogenics in the temple, they would start to model the temples in ways that were friendly to that experience. Right. Yeah, you so. don't want to see a guy getting crucified. <laughs> In gory, no, in no, gory no. detail when you're on LSDs. No, it's that's just imagine. not. Yeah, really not killing doing, the buzz yeah. there. Especially so. when he starts talking to you and castigating you about where you are in life. Right, right. No, but a, a Disney, yeah. So I don't know. Is your wife? I mean, is do you really think your wife is a Disney adult, or is she just someone that likes? No, not by your definition. No, right. not at all. Yeah. Like I've only known a handful of people in my life. That I would say we're Disney adults. We're obsessed with it is where we're going. They're right? like really like you go to their house and you're like, you have a lot of Disney stuff. Right. And, you know, they make sure they go to Disney World or land multiple times a year. Like they're like, oh, it's our honeymoon. We're going to go to like the Disney, you know, land Disney World honeymoon experience. Like any chance they can get to do something Disney related, they will do it. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. my definition. Yeah. Being obsessed with anything is not necessarily healthy as an adult. No. no. Except with us. Yeah. Then that's good. A couple or, years yeah. back, we casually discussed the phenomenon of adults who are super enthusiastic about Disney on our podcast, Culture Binge, and I shared some tongue-in-cheek thoughts about the unaccompanied olds at Disney World. I get a little judgy when I see, like, legit adults get hella emotional about going to a kid's park. If I was a parent, let's say, and I'm taking my kids to Disney and we had to wait to get on a ride because a bunch of 37 year olds are all like getting emotional to get on the teacups or whatever. I'm just a little pissed. <laughs> Maybe get out of the way right now or go to like, I don't know, the zone where they have like alcoholic beverages and churros and just chill there while the kids go on the rides. Now, Which is worse, being an adult obsessed with Disney or being an adult that says the word hella? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's in, a good point. In your in your hierarchy of adultness. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, if we're going to be very mean to, I don't remember. I already forgot what this guy's name was, even though it was on the screen. It is Michael Burns. Don't you? Hold on. Michael. Who's lighting the match at the Antifa rally? I'm telling you. It's a guy uh -huh. named Michael Burns. <laughs> oh, I thought you, I thought you were saying like Burns because like Mr. Burns. No, I'm saying burns like right, you burn, know, lighting burn things down, on right. fire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, I didn't even think about this till you mentioned it, but I mean, he has a very, let's say, young person's aesthetic. Yeah, totally. He's got like an oversized T-shirt from the, the 2000s, mm -hmm. the blank oversized T-shirt and like the baseball cap. I don't know. I mean, he looked, so, this background screams it's a small world. <laughs> I'm just it, saying. You know what? You're right. The background does seem very pop art very disney-esque to some extent so yeah um but um i already i've completely lost what did he say i was gonna oh i thought you were gonna say what's worse an adult who enjoys going on teacup rides or an adult who wants to go to disney world to get wasted <laughs> right it, it's yeah. weird because like there's thing there's criticisms I think of Disney adults that I think are are valid and weird. I would not classify them as like oh this, an adult wants to get on a ride at Disney World how dare they like to me that's a very I know he's trying to be like funny and hyperbolic but to me that's a very that's a very bottom of the barrel critique I would levy at Disney adults as they want to ride rides. Yeah, there is a a nightclub at Disney in Southern California that my cousin used to go to all the time just mm -hmm. to peck up on girls so i mean sorry well yeah that's a completely different disney club, experience right? yeah yeah like in disney world they have a downtown disney that's like oh know, yeah shops and restaurants things they like that. finally got the food thing worked out at disney oh yeah the downtown area has the, the best food 
Yeah, yes. Disney always sucked for food, but now really oh, now they have genuine restaurants outside of the park that are just delicious, like five That's star good. restaurants. Yeah, right. Done with my life, but a few days later, a Disney YouTuber posted an entire reaction video that took umbrage with my comments. I started to watch it, and it kind. Of What's going on here? Are you here to praise Isaac Carlson for his response video? Are we going to get a, I hope, are we going to get a clip in his next video over this or? Since you're muted, so. <laughs> I'm being so mean. This is so out of character. I'm such a nice guy. <laughs> what's that? What, what is going on? What, what's happening? I'm just going to say like, if you had a lineup of people, Mm -hmm. And he says, pick the Disney adult. Well, this kid looks pretty young to me. I don't know. It's like... <laughs> Everyone would pick Isaac out of the lineup correctly. <laughs> the Disney adult? I don't, he's yes. not wearing like a Mickey Mouse t shirt or anything. I, just something about it. There's just something about it. Are those Disney posters in the background, maybe? I don't know. I'm just, it always intrigues me. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. It always intrigues me when I see people who visually are like a stereotype of the group or thing that they're part of or like. And when I see Isaac, I don't know, it just, I feel, I feel like he just perfectly fits the visual stereotype of like, not only the Disney adult, but the Disney adult who's going to get mad at someone complaining about Disney adults on the internet. Really? <laughs> and make a response video. I don't know. I'm just, I apologize, Isaac. I apologize. As someone who's considerably older than Isaac here and still is not able to grow like a reasonable beard, <laughs> I'm, hes I'm hesitant to mention anything about his physical appearance. Well, I mean, it has nothing to do with the like a beard or a lack thereof. So I don't. I mean, this guy. I don't know that I. If you're talking about pointing out Disney adults, you know, I don't know that I'd point this guy out as an adult in a lineup. To well, be there honest. you go. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. So I think, he, I think Burns definitely, I would pull out as an adult. He seems like an adult to me. Right. Minus. I mean, if there's a talking portion and he says, hello, I'm not sure. Doesn't he looks a lot like, um, what's that guy from the hangover? Ed did Holmes. You, did you watch He's like this? blonde Ed Holmes? He does. Yeah, definitely. Did you watch Isaac's video? No, I okay. did not. Why <laughs> would I do that? Why well, did sometimes you go into like massive levels of research for the show? Why would so. I do that? I uh, CT wanted to point out I'm not a nice guy. I I bullied and beat Sketch and Smash uh, too badly that he joined A Team and left and left S class. What? <laughs> I beat Sketch in Smash Brothers so badly, supposedly, even though I think he won I more of the games Sketch, than I did. I thought Sketch was the winner. He, he won to... more than I did, but he but I bullied him to some extent that he left S class and joined A team. So there you go. Well, that's good. Thank you. You're welcome here, Sketch. Look, yes. we're all about no bully. Unless, that's right. Of course, Join it's A -team. funny. Adam will never beat you in a video game. Okay. <laughs> well, that's true. That is actually true. Unless it's Galaga, then you're well, then going to give out. you a run for yeah. your money. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's got to anyway, be a I game from like the, the early 90s. Yes. And it deeply disturbed me. And ever since, it, I get <laughs> my credit roll back. <laughs> deeply disturbed. I don't know, the zone where they have like alcoholic beverages and churros and just chill there while the kids go on the rides. Now, I moved on with my life. But a few days later, a Disney YouTuber posted an entire reaction video that took umbrage with my comments. I started to watch it and it kind it deeply disturbed me. And ever since, I... You know what? You're right. I wish I should have watched the video. I should have watched the video. That's mean. That's totally yeah. mean. Deeply I, disturbed him. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. See, look, he listen. could he that right after that, he probably said it deeply disturbed me because you have a man in his late thirties using the word hella <laughs> like that could be what he said. We don't know because we don't have the context here. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, well, and listen, at least when I am being mean to Isaac, I'll admit it. Okay. Michael, he's like being mean to Isaac 
But he's like not being, he's not admitting it. <laughs> okay. He's like, look at this idiot. <laughs> he's hiding it. He's hiding you it. You know, yeah. he clip chimped him there. Who knows oh, what course. he said after that? Yeah. He's like, oh, deeply disturbing. This is it. This is the clip. <laughs> He might have, he, look, he might have pulled out Durkheim's definition of religion on him. And this guy's yeah, so... Maybe he was like, listen, this is deeply disturbing, okay? I was sexually assaulted by a mascot <laughs> <laughs> yes. at a Disney park, okay? Yes. And Michael's yeah. like, ha what a Disney adult. Yes, yeah. Like, who knows, who knows? We can never tell. We'll never figure out the answer to that. It's impossible to know. Michael's so excited that he's dunking on this kid on the internet. I mean, I'm assuming guys look the, kid, look up the but... kid's channel. I want to see how many subscribers he has because okay. I'm sure it's I'm sure he's a large channel. He looks like one of those like because he's they're not they're I guess they have the rule of not punching down. So well, no, it's just there's a certain aesthetic. You're like, oh, this person has a large channel, and I'm, and I won't understand why. Right. Yeah, no. Well, he's talking about Disney, and he loves Disney. He's got 700,000 subs. Okay, so he's almost so to a million go. subs. There yeah, we go. Yeah, so get on him. Fair, fair. Turnabout is fair play. They're in the same uh, status hierarchy of sub count. Yes. Look at He's got him. shorts. That's weird. His views are, like, all over the place. It's so bizarre. Michael Burns is so excited to be burning this kid. Look at this. This is weird. Like he's got shorts that will hit like a million, and then he has shorts and videos that hit like fourteen thousand views. I've never seen such an inconsistent like channel. Shorts is a new thing that I don't obviously fully understand. <laughs> what is this new shorts? I mean, well, I understand. I, under, short I, under, I, under, I understand it in that it mimics TikTok. I don't. Yes. Know. It's, I yeah. don't understand how the views stack up or I guess you're just in infinite scroll mode. I guess. Yeah. Anyway, let's continue. I get regular DMs from dummy accounts threatening my life or making fun of me or implying that I hate anyone who didn't have a great childhood. And while sometimes annoying, this experience has mostly left me wondering why? And this fiery reaction to very tame criticism has led the team at Wisecrack to investigating an important question. Are Disney adults kind of a cult? Or put more nicely, are they inadvertently practicing their own religion? And if so, can their zealotry tell us anything interesting about modern society at large? Let's find out in this Wisecrack edition on Disney adults. Is Disney a religion? Part 1. Oh, and if you decide to make a reaction video to this one, just tag us in it. And before we get there into it, go. just a quick note. While researching this topic, we found way more interesting stuff than could possibly fit into just one video. So we're splitting this one into a two-parter. Sort of like a Godfather, Godfather Part 2 situation, except I'm not going to kill my own brother in Part 2. I know it was you, Fredo. This video is going to cover some recent Disney adult drama and then contextualize what we actually mean when we ask if Disney is a religion. Then in part two, we'll look at the intricacies of how Disney maybe functions as a religion. And don't worry, unlike Francis Ford Coppola, we know when to end something great after two parts. My lucky but before we get into it, I want to tell you about this video sponsor, Keeps. Keeps is a prescription service that helps guys prevent hair loss. There you go, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> you, uh... Get on keeps if you uh, want to keep your hair. There you go. Let's see if it's worked for you, Michael. Take that hat off. Oh, listen, Adam. Adam what? is Adam is over here with his what? immaculate hairline, just shitting on everyone. I'm just curious. I want to see if the. I want to. You want to take the hat look, off? It's look. capitalism, right here, right. baby. Capitalism. There I want to see. <laughs> Hold take on off a second. The Tim Pool hat. Is Hold on mean? a second. I want to. Yeah. Prescription service that helps guys prevent hair Hold on, you're missing it's convenient, it. affordable, and relevant to a lot of people out what there. What am I missing? Because two out of three men experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. The process... Look at this. <laughs> Look at this picture. <laughs> What's going on in this picture? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you think is going Describe on? Describe this picture to the audience so they can share in the... So they so can share the fun here. So this is like a very obvious stock photo. Right. Where you have like those um, generically attractive people. You have a generically right. attractive Asian man 
uh, wearing a generic like model outfit on an orange couch, laying back, and he looks like he's got pretty awesome hair, at least right. from that angle. Yes. And there's a girl who has like her legs on his lap and she's like pulling at his hair. And she's like, ooh, your hair. <laughs> yeah. Looks I like guess love. it's supposed to be like, this is supposed to be the the after picture, right? Like, yeah. like you'll get all the late ones. You get keeps. You'll keep all the ladies. Yeah. They can't get enough of your keeping hair. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what's happening in this picture. So. I don't know. He could have luscious locks under that hat. I'm not. I'm not saying anything. I'm not. Okay. I'm not talking smack, Michael. Okay. I just would it be good? Would it be on brand for this company to advertise with someone who is? Let's anti-capitalist. Move on. Yeah. It is kind of funny that you have all these anti-capitalist channels, and they're like, "Now, nah, well, a word from our sponsor." Right. <laughs> like Cody. Yeah. Cody was even worse because at least like with Wisecrack. I mean, at least the, the two videos that I saw, I think they only have one sponsor. There was like a Cody video that we watched where he had like four different ads in the video mm -hmm. or five. It was like insane. It was like every 10 seconds there was a new ad. Like this is our anti-capitalist leftist. I wonder if these things that he's going to apply to Disney would apply to anti-capitalism. I wonder if you could just say, is anti-capitalism mm. a religion? And make the, this exact same argument that he himself is making. I'm sure you could about wokeness, obviously. I'm sure you could about Antifa people. Right, yeah. I guess it all depends upon the definition of religion, though. Right. Like, if you're, if you're defining religion as a belief in the supernatural, which a lot of people do, and I can respect that, mm -hmm. then obviously this doesn't apply. Like, anti-capitalism... Well, it, I guess... The idea that we could abolish private property and society wouldn't evolve into chaos. <laughs> is that the supernatural is idea? kind of a belief in the supernatural, right? So <laughs> I, I guess it still even applies there. You found a workaround. But I don't, Disney, I, what supernatural stuff does Disney? I think everyone who watches, who watches Star Wars knows that it's, it's fiction. I think they know wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me that when they say a long time ago in a galaxy far away that that's just a lie that's not real no it's just a movie i assume that we evolved from star wars people you know millions of years ago i love when people start talking about star wars being in the future and i point out that well i think in the first movie it says a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> so i mean it's literally the first thing in the movie right right yeah yeah it's that's yeah the, part of the amazing irony of the original trilogy yeah it's f there was actually no there's absolutely no purpose for that anyway too well it's just to be cool i mean it is cool I guess. this is another thing about the whole religion thing and this came up a little bit when we were talking with destiny on the 200 show about you know the character of luke being kind of destroyed by subsequent films the and, last jedi yeah well, I guess, yeah, he wasn't in the prequel. So this, I mean, imagine if the Catholic Church came out and said, you know, we want to reimagine Jesus here. <laughs> now, now, I think, I know Jesus has been a badass, you know, turn the other uh -huh. cheek, feed the uh -huh. poor, you know, walk on, wall, all these amazing things. But I want to, I want to pitch this idea to you. Jesus as a loser. <laughs> What do you think? Well, listen, how about this? Listen, listen, folks. It's a new era. It's a new millennium. Right. We need a new Jesus. Right. We need a strong female empowering Jesus. <laughs> yes. Okay. What's well, what's gonna happen? We've had God's only son. Now we're gonna have God's only daughter. Right. And she's gonna come back. <laughs> she's gonna save the world. But in the process, she's gonna make Jesus look like an asshole. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jesus, you know the you know the part where Jesus is like. Uh, uh, dying for cross. other people's sins yeah you know what i don't on like that part <laughs> and he like loses faith and he's like why have you forsaken me father okay yeah. what's gonna happen is uh jesus god's daughter whose name is mary not to be confused with his mom is gonna come in mary jesus is gonna come in she's gonna save jesus from the cross and she's gonna berate him for losing faith in god right and she's gonna be better oh, jesus this is perfect yeah this is perfect yeah yeah, Jesus is like a loser who runs away from the cross. Right. He, he takes the money from Judas. 
He's like <laughs> down at the casino gambling with it. And she's gonna Mary's gonna be like, listen, you healed the sick, I can heal an entire city at once. Right. Bam. Yeah. Oh, you turn water into wine, I can turn the entire ocean into wine. Bam. Yes, and Destiny would be on his YouTube channel going, "Why are you guys complaining about the new Jesus? Uh, you just you just hate wokeness." <laughs> so, I feel like we've actually inadvertently stepped into the trap of uh now our, our, since we're comparing Star Wars to religion, I guess <laughs> Does this mean that Disney is a religion? Is this what's happened? Have we stepped into this trap now? Well, I think, well, like I said, we, no one's thrown out a definition of religion yet. I don't know what the okay. hell we're talking about here. Right, like, I only right. I only brought it up because of the, the supernatural element, where a lot of people who are anti-theists, who think religion is bad because it causes people to believe in things that are untrue, it causes people to believe in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. Those people will only, they look for one thing in a religion. Does it believe in the supernatural? If no, then not religion, right? So if that's right. the definition you're using, Disney does not apply. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we can skip the, the rest of the ad, I assume. Oh, yeah, of course. It's fine. Any questions you're lost, go to Keeps. Now, back to the show. Now, for a little bit of story time starring ye old internet. Last month, Reddit's Am I the Asshole forum spotlighted a recently married couple who invited their nearest and dearest to a lavish Disney World wedding where they allegedly instructed their guests to buy their own food at nearby facilities or vending machines. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. here, here's what I assume is a, a cold, an ice cold take that everyone already knows. 95% of am I the asshole posts on Reddit are fake. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. P people are not, <laughs> people are dumb, but they're not this delusional. No, it's going to be like, didn't happen. Right. Right. Well, no, who's going to be like, Oh, I had a wedding at Disney world. And then I made people, uh, you know, eat outside, like had to like leave the wedding and go to random restaurants to eat. Like that's first of all, I can't even imagine that that would have ever happened. And then secondly, if it did happen, who would have posted about it on Reddit? Yeah, ridiculous. No, You're right. I don't know. I fake think this is all news. fake. I think this is all fake. But facilities or vending machines. Yeah, they expected guests to purchase their own food at a wedding reception. Why so stingy? Oh, just because the happy couple had decided to spend their entire food budget on appearances by official Minnie and Mickey Mouse costumed cast members. As many were quick to point out, weddings at Disney come with a minimum catering budget, so it's likely the story was fabricated or exaggerated. Then Thank why you. are you using it in your video? Well, because it helps further his point, that's why. Why are you using it? Look, he's so thirsty to make fun of adult Disney people that he's using this, even though he knows it's fake. And he just wants to salvage his reputation by saying, oh, yeah, I know this is fake, but it's funny, right? <laughs> it's like, come on, guy. Why are you wasting valuable video time devoted to some fake thing? Well, that's the thing, too. Like, he said that this video has so much, this topic has so much information. He had to break it up into two videos. And I think the first, I think literally most of the first video could just be edited out. <laughs> like, it's mostly useless stuff. Well, he does the in the first video he gets into like he cites critical theory and stuff. It's like I know, I know. Wow. Right. Yeah. What? When he brings up critical theory, you're like, wait a minute, what? what's happening here? Yeah, I I mean, John McWhorter has a has a compelling case that critical theory is a religion. So if you mm -hmm. if you separate out the supernatural stuff, yeah, functioning as a religion. Well, does he say critical theory is a religion or wokeness? I, I don't think I've heard him say critical theory. Well, critical theory is wokeness, right? I mean, um, it's kind of the same thing. Well, I mean, I would say wokeness uses critical theory. Right. I, I don't know. If, I wouldn't say they're exactly the same thing. Right? What, what's like one is a tool and one is a group of people. Critical theory is about praxis. I mean, how are you defining critical, critical theory? Critical theory is the idea Problematizing that, everything? No. Critical theory is the idea that in in classical theories, you try to figure out why things occur from a neutral objective standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Say like, oh, 
you know, Critical why theory. does the sun, you know, uh, rise in the east and set in the west, right? Let me study this mm -hmm. objectively. Let me not put any sort of moral claims or anything associated to this. Let me just see what the facts are. And the critical theory says, no, 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 no. You're, all you're studying should be aligned with the moral idea of making society better. And usually better means, you know, more leftist generally. And so they have to sort of, they have to sort of say like, oh, you know, how does the sun rising in the east and setting in the west help, you know, further my leftist agenda? Right. So all human inquiry should revolve around Politics. glory to the progressive movement and right. proselytizing new progressives. Now, how right. is this not a religion again? <laughs> like, well, I, this totally well, I'm just saying, I'm just like saying critical race theory is like the tool. I mean, not critical race theory. Critical theory is like a tool. Um, I wouldn't say it's a religion. It is a tool that maybe you could say the woke religious people use. The, right. But other ideologies don't use, do other, uh, other ideologies don't use critical theory. Of Only course progressives they do. What do, you mean? do. Christ, like if you look at Christianity or any religion, you know, especially back in the day when you had, you know, science, you know, Christian uh, scientists, I don't right. know, Christian scientists like the modern times, but I mean like scientists and scholars who were Christian would often interpret, try to interpret natural events through the lens of Christianity. Right. And which also, would be similar to critical theory. Well, I mean, descriptively, I don't see much difference between divine revelation and standpoint theory, which. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're, I guess it's, you're not, you're not wrong. <laughs> okay. I mean, s standpoint theory basically says you can make broad you that your lived experience gives you broad understanding of the world that other people should respect and divine revelation a lot of people use that same thing you know they say god you know i had an experience that made me a believer right. in god I, yeah right, right descriptively it seems the same i mean i don't want to throw shade at the well i think the only difference at the christians is I, I think standpoint theory has worked baked into the definition it has to be like you have to be a marginalized person so maybe it's it's divine revelation for the marginalized or something. Well, doesn't Christianity put everyone in the margin? Everyone's guilty of sin, so we're all marginalized. We're all well. I no, well no, because marginalized generally means you're marginalized by society, right. not by like cosmic existence or something. Right. Hmm. Okay. And just because everyone, I mean, I don't think being a sinner makes you marginalized, like definitionally. But okay. Anyway, I think it is a it is a attempt to throw the underdog status on to religious people. And if you boil it down to the, the intuitions being activated, it really is putting yourself in the underdog status. Mm. I, I think putting yourself in the underdog status is strategically a great way to embrace life because you, you, you know, you you look at things as if catastrophe could be looming, and I think that's a good, oh. you know, planning well, for mistakes is a good way to go. I mean, painting yourself as the underdog is a powerful, powerful tool that groups and people use to justify their actions constantly. Uh, so I guess it's good strategically there. I think it leads to lots of immoral behavior. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, it can. Oh, right. Because yeah. you're like, well, I'm the underdog, so therefore it's justified for me to, you know, do whatever, you know, to do X, right? This is... To do some this, immoral behavior. This is great. This is amazing. Because this is why suites of ideas go together. Because mm -hmm. you're exposing a, a, a tremendous problem with the idea of you know being the underdog the underdog has this weakness where it can lead you to places where you're going to you know cheat break the rules because you're the underdog and you know you uh lashing out at oppressors you know is morally good right right this is why you <laughs> this is why it has to come with some humility some something to fight against that proclivity people have to push that intuition in the wrong direction well that's one of the key dangers of wokeness is it says 
you're the underdog based on, you know, your race, your gender, your sex, your whatever identity. Yeah. And so because you're the underdog, you have a different set of rules that applies to you. You know, you get to bend the rules. You get, you know, people have to uh, bend over backwards for you. They have to show deference to you because you're the underdog, essentially. Right. And, and if you don't recognize someone's underdog status, it's it's like this bizarre. It's just so funny. Wokeness is is really hits the weak, strong, fascist, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. label because it's like it makes no sense. Wokeness relies on people's guilt essentially to a perceived class of people so that that so that you the majority or perceived as the majority have to bend over backwards for this underdog but the fact that you're bending over backwards for a quote-unquote underdog should prove that they're not actually an underdog or should prove that they're not actually marginalized in society because if they were actually marginalized people wouldn't bend over backwards for them yeah no it is yeah, there is a, a hypocrisy there. There is a contradiction there. Uh, John McWhorter points that contradiction out as well in his book. The, the And half a dozen other contradictions. His book right. is great. I, Woke Racism, I think it's called. But mm -hmm. So the underdog, ac the activation of the underdog intuition, I know where that comes from. That's like the history of oppression, right? Obviously, this is what puts him in the underdog status. Now... I was making the case that without being paired with the intuition of humility, it can get out of control. And you've illustrated how that can happen. So where, where in the wokeness religion does the, the idea of humility, we should be humble. There is, come it doesn't in? exist. It doesn't come in. <laughs> it doesn't come in anywhere. There is no humility. Well, no, actually there's humility for if you're supposed to be part of, you know, the, not the marginalized, but the marginalizing the, uh, group. Oh, the okay? humility is for the other people. <laughs> right. Like if you're a horrible, you know, cis white oppressor, then you had to be super humble. But, but the people in the religion don't have to be humble. Right. I guess it really is. It is some people because they would be, be classified as the allies, right? They're the people who are in the religion, but they're they're they don't have the underdog status, so they're forced to be humble. Mm -hmm. Can any religion work if it's really divided into this kind of caste system? I'm not certain that it can. Well, I mean, I'm sure there have been there have been lots of religions. I would imagine right. through human history that have had caste systems. I'm assuming that you know, I don't know if the caste system in India. I'm assuming it was somehow related to the religion or something. Yeah, I'm not super up on it. So I mean, it, it could work. The problem, and the reason I think wokeness will never work, is because, again, as I said, it it relies on the majority, quote unquote, the majority of people who are in power, basically bending over backwards based on guilt, on their own self guilt, and that will just that will work for some amount of the population, but it will always, in my opinion, backfire and lead to a massive pendulum swing in the other direction because people will grow, will grow tired of it. And if you throw universalism away and the concept that we need to treat everyone the same, you're basically asking for trouble. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. historically you can probably find examples of religion that did have this caste system. I just, I don't know if modern day examples exist and I don't see how they could compete against a religion that does have this fairness principle where everyone is operating under right. the same rules. Yeah. Right. Well, and I guess you can also say, you know, it's weird because obviously you can bend religion any way you want because, you know, people would use, you know, Christianity to advocate for, you know, equality and equal rights for all, but they would also use Christianity to justify divine right of kings. So it's kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, a lot of religions are vague or broad enough that people can interpret them, you know, to, to create the exact opposite results. Yeah, they can so. they can use some religious text to create whatever kind of religion they right. want. Which was the argument in John Locke's Second Trees of Government. Was really? Him, which is him arguing with, you know, these Christians are making this Christian argument for divine right of kings, and he's making Christian argument for, you know, liberalism and, you know, human equality of all. So Now, people so usually get very angry at me when I start talking about Christianity because... Mm -hmm like Christianity has a lot of different sects and a lot of them disagree on different 
aspects of the theology, but I, I right. would like to take a swing at the humility thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But before I do, do you, is there, is humility infused into Judaism in any way, shape? Like, I'm certain it is, but I don't necessarily know how because I'm just not familiar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot. I mean, there's an interesting thing in Judaism where a lot of the Jewish, like, leader characters always fuck up. <laughs> Well, that'll like do even, it. Like even Moses, I'm trying to remember. It's been a million years since you know for these Jewish stories. Like even there's some story where like, you know, God or an angel or somebody tells Moses that he has to like command water out of a rock or something for this the new city of Israel or for his people or whatever. And he goes to this rock and he asks for water like two times, and the rock the rock doesn't produce water. So he gets angry and he like angrily strikes the rock and asks for water. And I think it it gives water but then it's like oh because you gave into your anger and struck the rock like you're punished and you don't get to live in israel now or something i don't know i'm probably butchering the story but basically moses is is punished even though he did all the goods all the stuff that he did he let all the people out of egypt and all that stuff he's basically punished for losing his temper essentially so and then you have the whole thing with king david where he you know he sent off he's supposed to be this great king and then yet he sent off he fell in love with this other guy's wife and he sent that guy off Ooh, to war to the front ouch. lines just to die so he could marry his wife so it definitely seems like in judaism there's a lot of like oh your heroes do a lot of <laughs> fucked up shit too so i'm assuming the message there is supposed to be like the fallibility of people in christianity it's it's front and center with the everyone is born into sin and the only way to avoid it is to right. receive God's grace. Well, so. but see, but that's even weird. But that's kind of interesting because original sin isn't even in like the text. That's kind of an interpretation that was planted later. Right. Yeah. So. No. Kind yeah. of a sticky situation. But. Well, the religions evolve. Where they get their justifications <laughs> is not. I mean, it, it, it is it is interesting, and I think the better the justification, obviously, the more people are going to adhere to it. What part of the problems that we see today is like a lot of the justifications for religion have fallen apart. But I do think we need a society of people that have some level of humility. I think like the level of humility is at an all time low. We have a right. deficit of humility right now. Right. So, and like you said, humility I don't even think is part of the woke religion belief system ethical system whatever you want to call it yeah uh hey rags i see rags in the chat what's going on what's up rags? i remember covering this guy on efap yeah oh okay i'm curious what video you guys did yeah wisecrack has a lot of bad takes a lot of bad takes well he's a sing. he has one lens on society and it's the anti-capitalist lens right yeah right. Uh, Edvin Gullen, thank you so much for the 200 sexy sexes. Says, "Hey, my favorite late guys, Adam does Inglorious Bastards have any character arcs? Mongus is bongus. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't recall. So I haven't That's seen a good question. Inglorious I don't Bastards think it, in a while. I I haven't seen it. I've only seen it like twice. I don't remember a character arc in Inglorious Bastards, but I could be wrong. Maybe someone in the chat remembers." I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of terrible movies without character arcs. So, Inglorious Bastards. It's hard for me to imagine since that movie is epic. That movie sucks. That they don't have any character arcs. You don't like Inglorious Bastards? No, we've talked about this. Interesting. It's okay. pointless. I don't like these. I don't like a movie that's pointless. Like, what is the point of doing? Hi- I wish history played out like this. Woo-hoo. It's oh, like, you, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, you, you know, don't. like that's great. Yeah. You don't like the rewriting history aspect of it. It just to me, it's, it it reads as lame. It's like, why? What is the point of this stuff? Like the first part of the movie, you know, really good. You know, everyone talks about the the opening scene, very tense, very good, with the girls hiding on the floorboards, and all the stuff with her and um, I forget the actor's name, who was the German guy in Django. You know, he's such a he's a very good actor and all the stuff with like the tension with her infiltrating and all that stuff. It's all really good. I just I just ultimately don't understand what the point of the movie is at the end. Well, it's been a long time since I saw it and I do, if if Tarantino makes another movie where he does this, I mean I was really surprised he did it again in his Hollywood movie because yes. it, it seems like a one trick pony. It really does. Like but you know, maybe that's his maybe that's his contribution to cinema forever. So 
<laughs> I like that like half the chat's like, that is true, Sitch, and then half is like, that's a terrible take, Sitch. That is uh, going to happen quite the often. The perfect so. centrist take. There you go. Yeah. I encourage people. I didn't see uh, the other one, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but I assume, I've heard it's the exact same thing, the exact same premise. So... <laughs> Uh, Potato, thank you so much for the Knock Knock says, Sitch and Adam doing their best to resist their whiteness by not being on time. <laughs> Good for them to make this show more progressive. Well, thank you, Potato. Yeah, we we'll try. And then also, Potato and Streamlabs for $200,000 for $20 says, <laughs> I figured out on Friday that I'm younger than Yu-Gi-Oh! My world has been shattered and my life is ruined. Well, there you go. Well, Look at look on Potato giving so much money and so much donations, and yet he's younger than Yu Gi Oh. That's impressive. I'm impressed, Potato. Cool. Uh, Crack Rock Steady, our favorite supervillain, Ninja Turtle supervillain. Thanks so much for the twenty dollars. Says I have the misfortune of knowing a Disney adult. My lead, who is twenty seven years old, will go to Disney World almost every single weekend. Wow. That my That's cousin crazy. used to go to Disneyland every weekend. So, but I mean, if he's going to Disneyland to do adult things <laughs> is it still a problem i mean What's, he's not riding is, the teacups he was going what, to the, what is an adult thing that you would well, do there's at a disney dance world club. every weekend there was a dance club he would take his girlfriend dancing or, yeah but that's different yeah not like that's they're not going well okay like in, in orlando literally going to disneyland though okay in orlando downtown disney is not actually like it's in the disney world location but it's not part of the park right like you don't have to pay to go into downtown Disney. You just walk in there, just like a shopping mall area. Is it yeah. like that in California, or is it like actually inside the park? There, it is inside the park. There's okay. dance clubs inside the park, and there's dance clubs now outside the park as well. Interesting. So, uh, Crack Rock City also said, "I personally went to it only once when I was a kid. Disney World is better than Disneyland." Well, there you go. Sus. I'm not sure. I have to like do the side by side comparison myself. That yeah, is completely bar. subjective, and you can't. Okay. <laughs> we need Mahler to answer this question. Only what is better Disney World or Disneyland? Yeah. Uh, Colvar for twenty dollars says, "I thought S class loved Disney. Lots of old white men on their boards of directors for them to sniff." <laughs> what? <laughs> He's. This is a Joe Biden reference. A team reigns supreme, sucker. I like that. I don't. I don't have a. I like Disney movies. I like. Or let me be clear. I like some Disney movies, but I don't. I don't like a property. I'm not one of these property simp's. Never have and never will be. I like individual things if they're good. I mean, I hope they d turn things around with the Star Wars property someday. I do, Star Wars right. sucking me forever too. just doesn't seem right necessary. <laughs> A uh, guy for $20 says, I think you guys are splitting hairs on critical theory. Yes, critical theory is a tool, but I think it creates the mindset that allows wokeness to behave like a religion. I um, I think it's actually the inverse of that. I think critical theory is the tool that allows wokeness to justify its BS. Right. Like I think people start with wokeness and then they use critical theory. I don't think people get into critical theory and then they become woke. So I guess that's what I'm saying. A uh, guy for another twenty dollars, thank you, guy. Says, don't Abrahamic religions have a caste system built into the believer slash non believer relationship? Islam has dimi, Judaism has Gentiles, Christianity has I don't know what Christianity calls them specifically pagans, question mark. Um yeah, I don't know what the term is for non-christians either i guess maybe you could say that's a kind of caste system i think adam was referring to like an intra caste system a caste system that exists within you know the followers of the yeah of the, the tenets of the religion so or the believers of the religion so that's exactly right right because i would say all moral systems all moral systems create like the in-group out-group dichotomy so well uh, well i mean well, the exception of, I guess, I don't know, maybe liberalism or something. Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, doesn't Christianity try like all uh, everyone is equal in the eyes of God is pretty much the core, and any religion that proselytizes. Yeah, but there's still in practice. Don't it, hate the sinner, hate the sin. Right. There's a lot, yeah, but almost lots of religions say stuff, and then in practice, it just you know 
that person's a non-believer, you know, burn No, them, I right? understand, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. That's how these things always boil out, so. Yeah, but people can break the ideology. That doesn't change what the ideology is. Right. Hey, Sargon, Sargon. Look at this. Yeah. I want to read this because just imagine this in the context of religion, right? What is okay. a critical theory? Critical theory is a social theory that aims mm -hmm. to critique and change society as a whole. Critical theories right. attempt to find the underlying assumptions in social life that keep people from fully and truly understanding how the world works. I mean, I look at that and I think, I mean, that same mindset is is imbued in Christianity all the way. Okay. I mean, it, it I'm is just Christianity. That is a tool. I'm just it's like a tool that you could claim that woke religious people use. I just, I'm just, I don't think calling critical theory a religion makes sense. I mean, we're quibbling over a very, you know, Sitch's law definition here. Oh, I know, I know. None of us, I mean, do, is it, what is, what definition of religion do you Well, we'll get like? into that when they get into that. Okay, so. okay. Let me just read uh, one more super chat. Mighty one here for 20 Canadian. Uh, thanks so much. It says, hey guys, I've been around since episode 43. Awesome. But I've never had a Sunday till now. Just had to roll my ankle. Well, that's less awesome. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Adam, think you'll talk to Akana Boy when you get time after the comic uh, with Spirit Sitch. A team is the dream team. Well, I have done a conversation with Econo Boy already that was very cool. Mm -hmm. Econo Boy seems to know his shit about economics, which is great. So. I uh, I I sent a bunch of my videos to unlisted, so I don't know if like you have access to it or not. Right. But maybe I'll go in and and make that one public. My channel is just like a giant mess, and I kind of if people go to my channel, I kind of want them to watch the videos that I spent a lot of time making instead of just a bunch of live streams where I'm yeah. babbling about current events. Dev. Uh... Dev just, I think yesterday or the day before, hosted a debate or a conversation with Econo Boy and I forget his name. Someone on the right. So. Yes. Yeah. There I were, didn't listen to it. So it's on Econo Boy's channel. I'm sure it is. You can find it there. And right. I mean, I went through and I read the comments on his, and there were some nice comments about me, which is unusual. <laughs> Most, I feel like everyone nice. hates me in the comment section, but they. Look at Adam playing people, the underdog. People, exactly. Come on, I'm working it. People were saying that they, and this, I mean, maybe this is just m me. I mean, I casually made a joke about this on the show that I would like to think is actually true, but I'm not sure that it is. That I have the reverse Dunning Kruger, that I just have <laughs> like, I'm just really super bad at communicating the ideas that I have in my head. And that's not what reverse Dunning Kruger means. It it is actually maybe this is. is an example of you communicating the ideas very poorly. <laughs> uh, so Dunning Kruger is when you think you're smart but you're stupid, right? Or you right. think you're smarter than you are. Okay. Right. So if you had reversed Dunning Kruger, it would be you think you're stupider than you actually are. Okay. But that's not what you're saying. You're saying that like you're a tenth dimensional intellect, but you're just poor at like communicating that idea to people in a way that makes sense. Right? That's what you're suggesting. I was under the assumption that Doug Dunning Kruger also had a component to it where it makes it difficult to communicate between people of different IQs. I'm like, not familiar with that okay. part of Dunning Kruger. Well, I don't want to turn this. Maybe into a you're bunch just of, autistic. I think that's what you're trying to say. Yeah, I told you once already. Never go to the like sit. <laughs> You went to the autistic <laughs> thing with Dave. Sitch, why? Come on. You can't do that. <laughs> That's not cool. There, <laughs> why is it? He, he says, quote, I'm bad at communicating. Like reverse Tony Kruger. <laughs> right. I don't understand what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. I Thank shouldn't you. have brought this up, but anyway. <laughs> in the in the in the talk. <laughs> in the talk with Yes. With uh, Econo Boy. Yes. Uh, th someone pointed out that it was it was like refreshing to see me interacting with someone who uh, who knew what I was actually who talking about. Who is as brilliant as Adam was in talking about economic issues. Yes. Why, thank you for noticing, Sitch. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, some it is difficult to interface with people who have a completely different understanding of the world because you mm. have like basic things you disagree on. Right. I'm at like, oh, I'm at a tenth dimensional intellect, and you're over here in your three dimensional world talking about your idiotic nonsense. You make it sound so bad. Like, well, that's I, what you're saying. Look, you there. Are, I was arguing with someone on Twitter, and they threw out something about fractional reserve banking. Uh, fractional reserve banking isn't a thing anymore. But I don't yeah, want to sit there and argue for 20 minutes about how just you're not up to speed on the current paradigm. Mm -hmm. right. So, I mean, do you understand the the poor the poor plight of Adam? Oh, there's all these fools on Twitter talking about idiotic things that they know nothing about. Woe is me. Woe. Right. <laughs> anyway. I think I'm. I think I'm mystifying. I'm sorry, I, I think I'm mystifying. I feel like ben I've Kruger. demoralized Adam. I apologize. It's, it's a it's a comedy show, okay? Well, I, I yeah no, I got gotcha. you. I'm technically I'm reading about Dunning Kruger, but maybe I I'm see. maybe there's another maybe there's another thing that I'm mistaking for Dunning Kruger. Uh, Carl, I'm very I'm out. very sorry that I even brought this up. So I don't <laughs> I, I, I Adam, by no means Adam, think I love you with all my heart. And so, okay. I don't think by any means that I'm some intellectual titan, okay? Okay. But you must they, admit, right. sometimes when you're arguing with people, yes, you 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 realize this person is an NPC. Like I'm not. What do you mean sometimes? That's every time I argue. So you're. So, <laughs> that's, so yes, it's very difficult. It's a challenge yeah. when. You're talking to someone like that. Okay, listen, I'll just I'll help you out here. Never say the term reverse Dunning Kruger ever again. No. Okay. Yes. Just never say that. Right. Right. Okay. Uh Carl want me to point out that in the Discord he he took your advice, Adam, uh, about taking pro setting up proper lights for his forty K really? pictures. And he sent you some pictures. So. Nice. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Carl, Look Carl's, at that. Carl's been painting 40k statues and they look completely mm -hmm. badass he's done he's completely made the environment for them and it's just it's amazing i love that it's like what is it called a diorama where you set up like little figurines inside i guess a yeah sculpted landscape yeah it's pretty amazing. does that mean that carl is a 40k adult <laughs> He, Carl is definitely a 40k adult but oh, okay. i just this is this is what's so weird about it a guy who sits in front of a small world backdrop and mm -hmm. uses the term hella is just in a giant glass <laughs> house here. I don't <laughs> look, dude, you're 40 years old and you're on it's the pop art. Okay. It's, it's high art. It's progressive. I you're, don't know. you're 40 years old and you're on the internet selling ads to sell people anti-capitalism. Okay. You're basically like a secret communist. I, just, well, I don't I would, know. It's not a secret, but yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's hidden in in intellectualism. But I, I, see I just saying, right? I don't see any difference than some racist hiding mm. their racism in race science mm. than this guy hiding his his communism in some intellectual tradition that is just. Right, been proven wrong time and time again. It's like if this this guy is masquerading as some sort of lover of science and empirical study, it's not true. It's not true. Otherwise, he would look at the evidence against him, and he would no longer be in the anti-capitalist religion. I'm just distracted by the giant light switch right behind him. Oh or yeah, the thing that looks like the giant light switch yeah. right behind. That turns on the garbage disposal. I assume no. I assume it turned on the overhead lights. So, yeah. But it nonetheless a nerve with the Twitterverse, because if there's one place the internet loves to aim its collective ire, it's at the Disney Extended Universe's enthusiastic adult acolytes. From Disney bounders who go to the park in outfits inspired by their favorite characters, to rich TikTokers moving into a gated community of Disney World mansions, the folks at Karaoke Night who bring the mood down. How much of this is just like? influencers doing crap to make viral videos to 98 percent of it <laughs> okay yeah it's just it's totally <laughs> that's what it feels like to me 
This this completely feels like a guy who is, you know, religiously anti-capitalist and is really bent out of shape that a lot of people enjoy Disney and want to spend their money on it. Mm. Which just, that's the whole thing about capitalism. Well, no, see, you, you heard him. This is what happened. He took his kids to Disneyland. I assume right. Disneyland because I'm assuming he's in, you know, Hollyweird like you. <laughs> really? Why just get everyone fucking? I don't know why Hollywood. I'm being so mean to you today. I'm just, I apologize. I need to stop. Okay. Everyone, no, I like it. Continue because oh, every, he likes. It. He well, likes no, everybody. It. For yeah. some reason, <laughs> I get all the hate, and everyone <laughs> fucking loves Sitch. Sitch can be mean <laughs> as he wants to be to anyone on the internet, including me, and I'm the one that needs to like check myself. Right. <laughs> Everybody's like, there's yeah. a, there's a specific art, I think, to being mean appropriately. Yes. Maybe that's the issue, but um, no, I'm a, so anyway. For, for I'm a, none so, of this you, is you, affecting you heard, me in any way, shape, or okay, form. Okay. You be as mean as you feel okay. compelled to be. Okay. okay. Uh, but, but no, I'm assuming this guy, you know, as he, as he let out his story. You know, he went to Disneyland. He was waiting in line for some ride, oh, and, and they he saw it up. he saw a group of like a bunch of like 30 year olds in front of the ro- in front of him in line, taking up space. So he couldn't take his kids to the ride, and he just got so upset. He's like, how dare these people without children enjoy Disneyland? I'm disgusted. This is for children. Yeah. So, I'm assuming that's what happened. But. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty fascinating. Down the hatred for Disney. Yes. Of God help the outcast from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. God! Jesus. Enthusiasm for Disney just seems to rub the general public the wrong way. And to be fair and balanced, um, I confess to once singing the song, I'll Make a Man Out of You from the movie Mulan at a karaoke bar in Northfield, Minnesota. I think it was the summer of 2009. And to all who were in attendance, I formally apologize. So the backlash over this foodless Disney wedding eventually spurred professor of religious studies, Dr. Jody Eichler Levine to bravely step into the discourse. She urged the very online folks to have a little compassion. For so hold on. She was, she just like launched <laughs> scholarship on a fake Reddit post. Yes. This is so evil. <laughs> this is the internet. Okay. Well, first, let me let me read the tweet. This is so ridiculous. She says, so stop pathologizing other people's joy. There's a little enough of it in this world. Finn's hashtag not all Disney adults. <laughs> okay. She's how pathetic. Is that? I don't what's Amrel and I don't know. Who knows. I, don't I don't know. But like, well, first of all, this is a garbage argument. Lots of people can take joy in things that are like awful. Doesn't even make sense, right? You can take joy in being fucking pedophile, right? Like, of course, it should be pathologized. You can right. take joy in canceling people. You can take joy in lots of things. It's not. Right. It's a terrible yeah. argument. Yeah. And and the joyful I mean, serial killer. Well, <laughs> and the thing, and the thing that people are criticizing, like, if you just say like, oh, adults should not like Disney World or Disney movies, then I would agree with you. That's stupid. But if you say, oh. There's a group of people that we're calling Disney adults who like it a little too much, right? And, you know, we know what we're talking about here. People who are really too into something that you can you can totally criticize. I mean, that's what addiction is. You can be addicted to anything. You could be addicted to Disney. You could be addicted to sports. You could be addicted to NASCAR. You could be addicted to video games. And that's a problem. I mean, society shouldn't just say, well, if you're finding joy in something, you know, just do it, right? <laughs> like what the fuck i'm yeah. finding lots of joy just doing heroin all the time <laughs> like yeah i think addiction is when it starts interfering with your normal life but i don't necessarily know if disney i mean if you're spending all your money i mean if you're mortgaging your house so you can buy action figures maybe it's right. time to see a therapist but well, is that really going on i don't know i mean i'm sure it is somewhere but that's what people are talking about when they talk about Disney adults. They're not saying, oh, adults can't like Disney things. They're talking about people who like it too much. There's a threshold of acceptable like of, of anything, really. And you can easily, very easily cross that line. Right. Yeah. So, no. No, Jody. 
you should pathologize other people's joy if it goes too far. Right. Yeah. The adults. Why? Because according to Eichler Levine, Disney adulting is akin to practicing a religion. And we ought to be a little more sensitive to people's sacred experiences. <laughs> Are we going to read these? Yes. So, Shame she says, on you for not reading these, Mr. I Burns. Know. Uh, Jody says religion, obviously Jody is a Disney adult, which is right. why she's simping so hard here. Uh, Jody says religion is a way of making meaning in the world through stories and rituals. It's about a network of relationships, with the human and non-human. It's about making homes and confronting suffering. Yeah. If you're getting all this from Disney, I, I'm worried. All this happens at Disney. <laughs> Cast members literally welcome you home. Okay. This person is insane okay this person is a disney adult this person is off the deep end and they're just 100 percent co-spiraling and just because why that's so mean i just but that's I, what it, all this disney cast members are welcoming you home disney she's literally saying disney is a religion but to me disney's not a religion that's insane disney is not a religion okay even people that really like it i'd say it's an obsession we, i religion. really wish you'd just pull out that definition of religion you're using here you keep we'll saying religion there. over and over we'll again i have no idea what you're talking we'll get about get there okay well i mean do you agree with this definition that she laid out religion is a way of making meaning in the world through stories and rituals it's about a network of relationships with humans and non-humans about making homes and confronting suffering I have the Durkheim definition of religion here. A religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative mm -hmm. to sacred things, things set apart and forbidden, beliefs and practices which unite into one single moral community called a church, all those who adhere to them. In this definition, Durkheim avoids references to the supernatural right. or God. So but the Durkheim my, this uh, defini definition... I do believe her definition mm -hmm. here fits that definition. It does. I don't agree with Durkheim's definition or her definition. Okay. So you're the, I mean, that that's fine. I don't just what okay. definition are you using? Well, I will say, I'll say this, and I know we call wokeness a religion and I'm fine with that because when you say wokeness is a religion, people understand what you're saying. They're, you're, they're saying, oh, you know, there's a sort of like faith based fervor in which people adhere to a doctrine. That yes. can lead people to shutting off facts, information, and can lead people to behave violently or angrily or, you know, whatever, if you question the faith, right? Right. So when you say woke's religion, like, people understand what you mean. I don't actually think if we're going to get into the, we have to, like, define all these terms very specifically. I do think that religion does require either a supernatural element or a creation story element, Okay, so you're going old school anti theist version of religion. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm not an anti theist. No, so I don't but know that's why a, that... that's a de that's the definition that they generally use. I referenced it earlier, right. so obviously right. you're I do a think theist. that that's important to be a religion and how we conceptualize right. it because otherwise you can have any philosophy could be a, a religion under you know the Durkheim definition if enough people practice it, which I think is dumb i don't think that should be called a religion then why is why is a supernatural component necessary for your definition of religion because that's just because that's the way that religions have been conceptualized for like all of human history either a supernatural or a element of like explaining the creation of humanity or the universe or what happens when you die there's got to be some sort of like you know, element about, you know, t hitting one of these topics, I think. But you... That makes it a religion. You believe in the evolution, the evolutionary story of why religions exist, correct? Yes. So you, you think religions exist to bind people into cooperative groups to, to compete against other groups. Right. For resources so and members. That's the evolution. Right, but what I'm story. saying is that that definition of religion... It seems like that she's using and that Durkheim's using, that you're using, to me is basically just the same as saying morality. And to me, if you have two words that mean the same exact thing, then it's pointless. When to me, it's very clear if you say a moral system or you say a religious system, these mean different things. And people kind of intuitively understand that there's a difference between these two things. One of the central arguments that the christian apologists always make is that you can't separate morality and religion i mean that's a staple of of christian apologetics 
Yeah, but those people are wrong. I don't know what. <laughs> well, I, I mean, most Stuff most religions like... do involve a moral code. Of course, I would say all religions, I assume, involve okay, a moral so... code. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're the same thing. All religions can have a moral code, but that doesn't mean that all moral codes are religions. Right, but the moral code is essential to the to the evolutionary story of religions. Yes, I'm sure. I don't know. Maybe there's some religion out there that doesn't have a moral code. I'm not aware of it. I would say it's the exception that proves a rule. If if there's such a thing even exists, but yeah, I just I think we're moving into the realm of secular religions the age of secular religions and i just i think your definition is too narrow for something that we should be aware of and even mm -hmm. even skeptical of the dangers of secular religions can be can be far well especially if they're outside of the purview of of government in the way that we restrict religion uh politically the secular I, religions can mm -hmm. be far more dangerous. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with you and what you're saying. And maybe, maybe I would have to adopt a different definition of religion for completely practical or pragmatic reasons. Yeah. Um, but I would like, that's different than, than agreeing to the definition because I think that's the correct definition. Right. Right. So, cause basically what you're saying is, Oh, because, there's all these secular religions that are breaking out specifically like wokeness you know we want to classify it as a religion so that it falls under separation of church and state yeah exactly and you know the legal system which i'm like okay i'm sympathetic to that argument and i might even be in favor of that um i just i to me that's it's sort of like oh you're kind of sacrificing what i would consider like a true definition for a pragmatic purpose well we we also have the problem of stealth religions literally mimicking scientific inquiry when right. that's not what's going on at all right so well okay but anyway go back to this woman's tweet for really quick for a second i'm not a disney adult right so i can't like you know may so take this what i'm saying you know maybe loosely i would assume that people that are disney adults that like disney stuff i don't no, if you ask them like oh why are you so into disney i don't think they could, i don't think they would give you or be able to really give you like a good answer i'm assuming that it's just a general sense a general feeling they get when they're consuming disney products or at disney world or something and she's giving like you know oh people are making meaning of the world through the like disney stories and rituals i don't think that disney adults are like like oh, I'm gonna live my life according to like Moana or Lion King or like something like that. Like this just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think anyone's doing any of this. Well, I mean, people are probably in Disney fan groups where they talk about Disney all the time and different yeah, but Disney you can projects like, being developed and stuff. People talk about video games all the time. Okay, sure. That people talk about movies all the time. That doesn't mean that they're gonna live their life according to the principles of a video game or a movie or an anime just because it's like a main interest. And maybe that's one of the key differences here. I think there are people that could be really into Disney as an interest, but they're not living their life according to some principle that a Disney movie lays out. And I don't even think Disney movies lay out principles or theories of existence in any coherent way enough to live your life according to. But you hear all the time so many scientists say that you know they were inspired by Star Trek and that's why they wanted to become a scientist. Yeah, it's but like, there's, obviously there's cultural buy-in for a lot of properties. But there's a difference between someone saying, well, first of all, I would even argue Star Trek. Star Trek, I could understand you know people saying that's more religion than Disney because there is a more coherent or strict ideology that, that Star Trek puts out. Trekkies but, are, are a thing, right? But but when someone says, oh, I became a scientist or I became an astrologer because of Star Trek, what they mean is like, oh, I just am enamored with this idea of creating, you know, a better future through technology. Like, that's really what they're saying. I don't think that means that they're interpreting Star Trek as a religion. Right. But there Does that are, make sense? I mean, the values of Star Trek, there is like the prime directive. There's a lot of values. I mean, Star Trek is brimming with values. Yeah, but okay. Mo but like, I don't think those people are, are moral living values. 
I don't think I don't think Trekkies are living their lives according to the values of Star Trek. Right. Okay. Well, I don't know. I haven't really investigated, but maybe okay. they are. I, maybe they aren't. I don't know. I, I think have a, I have a friend of mine that got married on the bridge of the Enterprise, and every, that's funny. Everyone in his wedding was dressed in a Starfleet like, uniform. That's, okay, yeah. that's pretty nice. That's pretty dirty. <laughs> I know. Nick, I mean, and I don't even know. If How you do you could, like that? I don't even think. I don't even think you could. You literally couldn't live your life according to Star Trek principles because Star Trek principles take place in a, a future that's so different than the world we live in. Like Star Trek doesn't lay out principles of how anyone should live their life now. The either. principle, look, the principle of honesty is all over Star Trek. If Picard, yeah, but, uh, that's a general thing. That's not like honesty. I mean, yes. We, okay, some societies don't believe honest in honesty. Oh no, no, but I'm saying okay in American culture. You know how many movies stories are like oh you should be honest i mean i to me that's <laughs> the very low bar we watched and I that think... one we watched that one video in the russian school do you remember the teacher who was like telling the students right. just you know the state is gonna fuck you over <laughs> you just you expect that i listen i could be wrong i don't think i don't think most trekkies or star trek fans are walking around like you know i was gonna tell a lie but then I remember that one episode where Wesley Crusher lied to Captain Picard and it, and it just, ended badly and it, it ended badly and it just really just really always stuck with me. So now I've decided, you know, to never tell a lie. Like, I just I don't think that that occurs in most people. I could be wrong. I don't think that occurs in most people. How do people learn their morality, though? I mean, it's it's stories, right? Narratives. Mm hmm. Yeah, but th there's a difference between saying a narrative reinforces a general societal idea and like people do this because of star trek or because Re of a disney movie reinforcing okay. is important but let's go are, back are people walking around like listen i'm not gonna lie because pinocchio you know i don't think so well pinocchio is a perfect example of of pointing to why lying is bad i mean it's a whole narrative wrapped around don't lie the moral yeah, of the story is don't lie it and this is where i think one of the biggest flaws with this critique of Disney, Disney as a religion is Disney is just aping off of the already accepted norms and moralities and moral systems that we have in the West in order to be profitable. It's right. not creating new moral structures. But those moral structures f come from Christianity, right? Mo most people, I'm sure do, yes. you were taught yeah. your morality through Judaism, correct? I mean, mm, not really. People in the Middle East are taught their morality through Islam. I wasn't Islam. really taught my morality through Judaism. How were you taught your morality? Your parents taught your morality. Yeah. I, right. They they never phrase anything like, well, according to the Torah. I mean, I'm sure if you're very Jewish, well, that's the case. But well, this, you know, this I was not be, raised very Jewish. So. This might be just, we are we live in an environment now where your morality can be picked up in movies and television. And your parents don't even really need to teach you your morality. They just sign off on what the culture teaches you. I mean, this is one of the big fights over over public schooling is that pe parents feel like the culture is teaching their kids a morality that they don't sign off on. I agree. Right. So morality comes from where? What do you mean? Storytelling, right? We're in agreement. We're totally yeah, in agreement. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Story, but that's how, yeah, that's how people, that's how you relate information to other people in an emotional way that they you know that connects with them do, telling do them you, a story do you disagree with the what i said about and i said this on the 200 show that people are upset with the luke arc in the subsequent movies because they had a character that they you know moved them motivated them and they felt like that character was suddenly different do you I, uh, no uh, so i disagree i think the difference between people being I think, a di listen, I think there's a difference between people liking a character and people being motivated by a character. Right. Now, I'm not saying yes. that no one's ever not going to be motivated by a fictional character. Okay. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I just, I would assume, I could be wrong, but I would assume that the majority of Star Wars fans, I don't think they were motivated by the character of Luke Skywalker. What? I think they just liked Star Wars. What? How do you... What do you think was happening when they sold all of those action figures? They, what do you mean? They're like, I like, I want to play with this action figure. Yes, 
what happens when a kid plays with an action when it, a kid plays with his Luke Skywalker action figure? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's he's pretending that he's Luke Skywalker or something. Yes, of course. Yeah. But okay, I just this is I, this is where I just disagree with you. I and maybe I'm the weirdo here. I don't know. But you know, when I'm a little kid and I was playing with action figures or pretending to be a you know a Beast Wars character or a Power Ranger or something like when I when I would put the toy down. <laughs> this is down, like the POV wait, question. All wait, the way. this is like the POV question. <laughs> when I would put the toy, the action figure down, <laughs> right, and I would go to school, I never like the thought never occurred to me when I'm when I'm put in a position where I have to make a moral decision. Never in my life have I been like, what, what would Luke Tommy Skywalker the Green do? Ranger do in this situation? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I, I don't think people interpret stories this way. I mean, do you interpret stories this way? Have you ever been like, oh, you know, you, you're faced with a moral question. You're like, oh, you know, what would Django do? Like, like what? Like, what would this, Jesus this do is a, is a very common thing. That's Jesus. Thing. I'm not talking about Jesus. I'm talking about fictional characters. Well, okay, well, hold on. I'm See, I know. About, like, like Star Wars characters or something. This is this is a replacement of Christianity with secular religions. I feel like the characters are avatars for people to to copy moral avatars. I guess no, you but, di you disagree, but I feel like no. I, I'm so, okay. I think that there are like so. I think that if you have, I think that repetition can create the morals of society. So if you have a lot of stories that tell that have the same moral structures like oh you know the corporate rich asshole guy is the bad guy you know and there's always like the underclass underdog poor person that you root for or you know you look at like especially in the 80s it was very popular the the frat boys would always be like the villains and they'd yeah. always be like the you know the I, underdog how did anyone ever join a fraternity <laughs> right there'd always be like the underdog you know animal house characters right. or revenge of the nerds characters or whatever like there are certain there are certain archetypes, um, archetypes and there are certain messages that are promoted through consistently through stories and i think when those consistent moral uh, when those consistent moral ideas are promoted through a vast array of media I think that's what influences culture. I think that's what influences people's moral decisions, okay? I don't think that people see individual stories as children and then say, I'm going to, in the next moral situation I'm in, think, like, what would Jason the Red Ranger do? You know, when I'm on the, the playground and I see one kid bullying another kid, I don't think, what would Jason the Red Ranger do in the situation? Now, maybe... I'm weird. Maybe everyone else thinks about this way, and I'm the one person that does it. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I'm asking you, Adam. Do you like walk around like thinking, like you know, when you're faced with a moral question, do you think like, oh, you know, what would this fictional character I like do? I mean, Jesus was my avatar I, growing up Christian. Well, I'm not talking about Jesus. So. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about right. Talking about stories that are created in modern times. But I do think. I do think I was drawn more towards stories where there was a character that was, you know, had the morality of Jesus, was selfless and and honest and all but the things we look for in I Jesus. I don't disagree, but that's not what I'm asking. What what are you asking? I'm asking you if I ever if, you, if I ever thought RoboCop is badass, I wish I was a robot. No, I've never done that. Okay, so then okay, so then you agree with me. Why are we I don't understand why we're arguing. I would never want to be RoboCop ever. That would be that would be horrible. That would be okay. like to be that badass would be okay. <laughs> okay, you want to move we'll on? Move, we'll move on. This is at the Church of Mickey Mouse in the name of the Minnie, Mickey, and Donald Duck. Amen. Don't put that in the video. In her sympathetic Twitter thread, she writes, "If we measure religion now." Oh my God, that Twitter thread is like it's so it's a long. Thousand I know. tweets. My God. But you notice every single one of these tweets has you know twelve thousand likes, sixteen. <laughs> that's all the twelve hundred likes, sixteen hundred yeah, likes, right. twelve hundred likes. <laughs> I think the Disney people, the internet has allowed these people to prop to, you know, communicate with one another. Oh, wait a minute. Here's why this guy chose this. Okay. Uh, Jody says, 
the couple left their guests hungry, and it was perhaps unwise and lacking in guest slash host hospitality. They broke a so- social contract in a public way. First of all, don't describe a fucking am I the asshole Reddit post in this way, please, ever. Thank you. Uh, but they continue. But it only hurt their guests. I can think of a ton of people hurting a lot more Americans. It's late capitalism on steroids. No way. Oh, but so are a million shit. other things. Well, there you go. It's the idea that you are a Disney adult and railing against late stage capitalism. I when, know, right? When Incredible. late, you, <laughs> the whole Disney is is with us thanks to capitalism. I know, I know. Oh, this is so bad. Not by its truth claims, but by its power in people's lives, then Disney is as much a religion as anything. It is at the very least a site of meaning and human fellowship, even if you hate it. She argues that people embrace Disney for various personal reasons. Maybe Disney World was the only place where your parents ever seemed happy. Maybe you watched Frozen on your first date with your spouse. Or maybe you found solace dumping your favorite uncle's ashes on Splash Mountain. Please don't try the last one, it's very much illegal. But this argument caused many to wonder. Was Eichler Levine defending Disney adults or offering an unflattering diagnosis of their spiritual condition? And does Disney fandom really have that much in common with religious worship? Let's take a step back and start by approaching Disney adults as a fandom. Scholar Cornell Sandvoss writes that fandom is defined by the regular emotionally involved consumption of a given popular narrative or text. So Disney lovers who have cried over Mufasa's Christianity meets that definition. Just FYI. Well, okay. Isn't this feels like an overly complicated pathologizing of something to me, which seems very obvious, which is that wouldn't we assume that people that are Disney adults, that adults that are way too into Disney, it's not any of this crap that they're talking about. It's just that they are very desirable for this feeling of nostalgia for whatever reason of wanting to return to some experience or emotional feeling they have when they're a child and Disney gives back to them that sensation. Nostalgia files. Right. Isn't that all that's happening here? Like, why do we need all this complicated pathologizing just for what everyone should know, understand intuitively? For the video. Sitch. <laughs> <laughs> Content creation. It's just nostalgia. Like, come on. What, why is this so complicated? death 3,000 times certainly would seem to fit the bill. Now, the link between fandom and religion has long been discussed in- How many times could you watch the beginning of Up? It's so like gut-wrenching. <laughs> like, I can't imagine having to watch that like five times in a I've row. I've only seen Up once. It was, uh, it was like, eh, it was okay. I'm not gonna watch it again. Really? Yeah, well, I don't, I didn't never liked Up that much. Oh, okay academic circles. In fact, the word fan even has religious etymology, coming from the Latin word fanaticus, which meant attendant of the temple, or the fanus, or fanus. Fan of, I'll say it, fan of the anus is what it sounds like. And that's fine. And of course, deeply religious people are often called fan- I know, these jokes are really hitting, aren't they? What does that mean? Fanatics. Was that the little LGBT sign off there? I guess. It's also the name of the Philadelphia Phillies' very chaotic looking mascot. As scholar Vernon Chadwick argues, the Latin root of religion, religio, is defined not in terms of the truth of dogma, but the strength of communal bonds formed by shared belief. Such a community can manifest around shared rites of worship or sacred objects or sites. Chadwick explains that taking care of and maintaining these elements of a religion easily become ends in themselves, independent of explicitly defined and defended articles of belief. This is all to say, religion can be viewed less as what you believe and more as what you do. And this makes sense as many organized religions place a big emphasis on religion being about- Do you think that uh, he's bothered or aware that he just accepted the Jordan Peterson example of do you, or definition of do he you doesn't God. know that yeah he doesn't know that at all <laughs> that's what he just did well he views Jordan Peterson as like some right-wing Nazi so right he doesn't think there's okay. any value to anything Jordan Peterson <laughs> says out acts of service and lived virtues friend of the channel Soren Kierkegaard also held this view 
calling Christianity a practice rather than just being a, a system of like bullet pointed beliefs. And folks have long been squicked out by what intense fans do in their communities, specifically because of the seeming proximity to religious experience. For example, when Elvis's gyrating hips made children fall into tearful hysterics, some parents got real nervous because huge emotional reactions were ideally meant for church revivals, not sexual awakenings via the- So, okay, Here, here's another problem I have too with this definition of religion. Like, couldn't people, you know, losing their mind over Elvis or girls losing their minds over whatever K-pop band is popular now, wouldn't these all fit these same definitions of religion? Wow. I'm not s certain like that experience doesn't necessarily. I mean, not, it doesn't fit my definition of religion or Durkheim's definition I guess because there's not a, is there no moral structure usually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair you got to have a set of rules. I don't think Disney creates a moral structure either, though. I think... I'll I think 99% of the videos made about Disney Star Wars is a a fight over the moral system being created. It's basically a theological mm -hmm. battle. Um I mean that's definitely a big part of it. Uh Mahler would get very upset to hear you say that, but why? Cuz it's not it's nothing to do with consistency of the story. But... <laughs> That's just giving Mahler hard. I know. I just I I feel bad. You still listening, Mahler? I'm a Mahler fan. So okay. Dead. I don't. I want. I want people to know I'm a Mahler fan. Just sit here. Right. I I don't know. <laughs> you you can Rag says you can pull moral structures from Disney products. So that is true. And di like each Disney movie has a moral uh, message. Uh, that is true, but it's not like. If you like lined up all the Disney movies, okay, is there some coherent moral system that is being laid out by Disney? I don't think so. Progressive, progressive is a, they're trying a brand new moral system that is untested. So the fight is right. really over which moral system is going to be reflected in popular media. Mm -hmm. And I think the progressives have a very wrong view of you know being able to do something top down in in the current environment i mean maybe maybe it'll work I'm, I'm not certain that it will but i think most of the reason why disney is as popular as it is is because it took a bottom up strategy it 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 took and he even talks about some of this in the video where you know there were these moral intuitions that were in the culture through religion and disney put those in their movies to cater to those moral intuitions so mm -hmm. that's what made disney popular now with the star wars property in particular they're basically saying you know we have this new moral system that we want to we want people to adopt and we're going to show them that moral system in the movies and hope that they adopt it. I, will that work? I don't know. I don't think it will. I mean, they're getting mm -hmm. a lot of blowback, but I mean, is it working on the younger generation? I don't know. Daniel says, what's the morality of Song of the South? Is, is that like some racist <laughs> movie? I don't know. Song of the South was the, the Briar Rabbit. Uh, is it communist? One. I don't know. Well, no, there there was, uh, you know, people say it's racist. Right. By okay. today's standards. Sure. I mean, the... the Eds. Yeah. What, m movies are about morality. <laughs> movies are about right and wrong. I understand that. But yeah. that's, just because something's about morality doesn't mean it's a religion. Well, I, by your definition, no, because you're saying religion and morality don't... They're like... Well, but even by your definition, because... People would have people. I don't think people are organizing around the morality of Disney. Okay. I think I think people are. I do think this is the the root of the conflict over Star Wars. Definitely. Uh, that's part of it. That's part of it. But people, I could be wrong again. But there's no people are not Star Wars fan, when the Star Wars fans meet up. Okay. They're not having conversations about how to live their lives according to the principles of the force, right? 
they're having conversations about like, oh, you know, I like this. This was cool when this happened. You know, oh, did you see this? Like, it's a completely different conversation than the conversation a bunch of, you know, churchgoers have about their religion together. It's so wildly different. Why, I how why, it's even comparable. Why was the Metachlorian such a, a giant fuck up for Star Wars? Because it's bad storytelling. Why is it bad storytelling, though? Because it, because it adds. Hey, Hi. who just snuck in here? Mahler, it's me. <laughs> oh, Mahler, you sound you sound a lot like Rags. Mahler, well, I I've I've got a, I got a cold. Um, <laughs> so the only thing well, that matters is the consistency of the story. Uh, uh, kind of everything is downstream from that. So okay. yeah, pretty much. Rags, what? Much every, what were you? Yeah? What were you raised as? Just for the context of the conversation a republican so was that christian or i mean <laughs> of course no i like raised as what in terms religiously were you raised secularly or were you i was raised, raised uh very thoroughly roman catholic okay okay good thoroughly roman catholic uh, yes my parents like are they are into the jesus did your mm -hmm. parents I, read yeah. the bible to you or did they say oh just pick it up and we'll sign we'll Fuck, say they didn't yes need or to. no I, I went to a Catholic elementary school, a Catholic high school. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Was, oh, we got Jesus. plenty of the, we get, we you, got plenty of the Bible stuff. So you were thoroughly you in, inculcated with the Jesus. I was thoroughly inculcated with mm -hmm. the Jesus. Yes. Um, I was an altar boy. I made out of that, made it out of that unscathed. No, no, they were that, fine people. Is there any <laughs> Christianity? I was, lector, in... I was in the choir. I did handbells. I did the whole fucking nine yards, man. I was Hell. into it. All the way, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even Which, through college, I made sure go to mass every uh, weekend. Is Jesus the one? Um, is Jesus is the G one Morpheus? Is he Keanu about? Reeves? Is Jesus Keanu Reeves? Well, Jesus can probably act better than Keanu Reeves. <laughs> but maybe. Low bar. Oh, uh, certainly by default. I just give the uh, yeah, yeah, he can. Okay, He's a fine it fellow though. Is Disney so? Since you seem to be a religion expert, or at least you were definitely. That's what I am. I have a okay. a master's in theology from the I gave it to my fucking self school of doggery. Yeah. Yes. No. Yes. I, I I'm no religious expert. Um, well, you you're an expert in being raised religiously, I guess. I I can accurately convey all of my feelings and experiences as best as I remember them. Right. And also, I talk about Star Wars a lot. So really, there's your crossover for expertise. So do you think that people who are really into Star Wars, is this, does this seem similar to your experience being raised very Catholic? There can be similarities in the way that people feel, especially when those feelings are, they when they come across as very personal. Mm -hmm. For instance, everybody can have a, everyone goes to a movie and they could feel that even though this movie is as it is and it's put out to everybody, they can feel that the experience they have is extremely personal and they have a very personal connection to that in much the same way that they can get it from a song or a band or any sort of ritual, whether it be a funeral or a wedding or a bar mitzvah to be inclusive to our, our friends uh, over in the Israel place. I will not name them. Uh, but <laughs> the Israel there's, place. There, there's plenty of thing. Religion fits... I mean, religion fits the bill in terms of you have these rituals, mm -hmm. you have these events, these cultural things that happen, and everyone pulls something from it. I think it's, I think the big differences are probably the claims being made by these things. Um, Disney and uh, Disney movies and products are not making the same claims that religion makes. I think that's probably the biggest difference. Um, one of them purports to be true. And the other one doesn't, uh, which is important an important distinction to make. If you showed a kid S Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, right, and mm -hmm. you showed them that, there was I don't think there's any un misunderstanding that this is a f work of fiction. And when you read kids the Bible, you say this is this is actually true. All of this is real. It's this is a part of the world. It is it is indistinguishable from reality, and that is probably the biggest difference i would say between the two mm -hmm. but it's okay. very similar well um, i guess to make a sh a, the story short who's right am i right or is that right what Which is one of you give, right about just, what? just to be clear because i've been listening along what it what are your positions sort of in a nutshell 
I don't think it makes sense to classify Disney or people that are really into Disney as as a religion whatsoever. And I don't think people consume I don't think the average person consumes media in any in any way that's comparable. Well, I guess there's some ways they're comparable, but like yeah. I, I don't think it's I think there's a very big distinction between saying that something's religion and saying someone is like a fan of Star Wars or a fan of Disney or something, even if they're like a big fan. I just think it's very different than being part of a religion. And what say you, Adam? Well, I just, the, it's, there's obvious challenges to the definition of a fandom being a religion that I think, you know, wokeness gets you closer to that or in any ideology gets you closer to that. But there are definitely similarities. The by But you're saying in order to classify something as a religion, it has to have a supernatural component. So um, I guess... Well, is, no. is that what Sitch is saying? That's, That's what, what Sitch what was saying, saying. Yeah. yeah. I don't know of any religion that does not claim to have supernatural components to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't... That's not a necessary component for for my definition or Dirk Durkheim, Durkheim's yeah, but I definition. feel like it I feel like it kind of should be though right um I kind of think that it's it, it's a big aspect of it. It, it it goes back into what I just said about how Disney doesn't claim to be real but religions do um that the supernatural elements are real the well, magic mirror uh, it's just for the story but then it, but you know this this religious tale is about yes ac actually this burning bush did talk to this the friend friend from Israel so you um, don't you since you're not down with the like what John McWhorter did in his book woke racism how he defines wokeness as a religion you think that's a category error? Well, no, I said in the beginning I said I'm totally fine with people calling wokeness a religion because I understand what they mean when they say that. Right, they're talking about that people have this this faith based belief in something. And they cast people as heretics if they don't believe in it. And they're just as like, ain't like when you, when you cast wokeness as a religion, you're basically saying like people are acting the same way about wokeness that, you know, people would act about, you know, heretics. Right. When, you know, someone leaves, you know, Islam or Christianity or something, you know, a hundred years fandoms ago. Fandoms don't meet years. that criteria. I agree that fandoms right. do For not meet that criteria, but it's a, I'm saying it's a step on the road to that. Well, I'm just saying I think the comparisons are a, result, are a result of you don't have to look past anything more than the superficial, whether mm -hmm. you are going to I mean, the picture that's in the, the still here of the chick screaming. I mean, that in a way is, is very superficially similar to people speaking in tongues. It's similar to people sitting in pews and singing hymns and raising their arms up. And whenever you ask them what they feel, you might get different answers to, Oh, isn't he amazing? Like whether you know, Elvis is so incredible. So I say, Oh, Jesus is so incredible. They have, they have different icons to which they affix their worship and adoration, but they're of different natures. There's a similarity to them, certainly, but there's a meaningful distinction, I think. But in common parlance, when we talk to each other and someone says, ah, yes, those K-pop stands, it's like a religion. We all know what you mean. Yeah. So it's effective for communication. So exactly. It's right. We all understand what, when someone says it's like a religion, we understand what they're communicating. I don't, I don't think most people don't mean like it's literally K-pop people are literally like a religion. Yeah. They're not gods. They're demons. Right. Okay, let's get that. Yeah. Sullivan Show. Christian groups even worried that Christian contemporary music would distract its fans from worshiping God and lead them towards secularism. Instead, it just made millions and millions of dollars and produced gems like this. If you do drugs and you think you're cool, you need to come to Sunday school. What's more, the, the conventional language we use to talk about fandom certainly invokes religion. We call niche fandoms cults and talk about our culture of celebrity worship. So Invokes it's no wonder religion. scholars of religion, media, and fandom alike have grappled for decades with the question, do fandoms constitute a religion? As Not in the same sense. I just don't, mm -hmm. I just think they're, they're similar, but different. And they're different in a way that is quite frankly, really easy to recognize. I feel there's never been any confusion on this topic. Whenever you, the, a church religion and a Disney religion, they're just so, they're so different at the face of it that you never have that confusion in any sort of conversation. There's a list well, of attributes to define religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're separating out a supernatural component, you've already 
taken fandoms off the table because they don't have a supernatural component. You, Even end uh, of story, sure, you don't have to but, go any right. further than that. Right. I mean, it, it doesn't have a supernatural component that purports itself to be real. That is the big mm -hmm. difference. Um, because Disney stories have supernatural components that they use no, yeah, for no, obviously, channels. Yeah. Yeah. We're um, talking about a supernatural, an anti-materialist worldview. Well, okay, look at it this way. So there, I'm sure there are lots of young kids out here who, maybe not in our audience, but out in the world. I hope live, not, because this yeah. is an adult comedy show. That's right. Of course. Uh, who live and breathe Fortnite, okay? We they, love Fortnite. Yeah, they play Fortnite, you know, most of their waking hours that they can. You know, they talk about Fortnite. They you know, play mostly Fortnite with, for Fortnites. Yes, they talk about Fortnite with their friends primarily. So it's like they're living and breathing Fortnite. I don't see how that's a religion, though, right? They, I don't think they're going to extract... You know, a way of living according to Fortnite. No, I think that's just not. a. I think that's just a hobby that they really enjoy. Whereas, Was this, right? Because you, well, it. One of the things is that it's it's kind of like thematics in movies and pretty much any kind of media is that a lot of the times you can you extract these from the media. You can pull things from the media that necessarily might not even be there, um, which is why it's important to be consistent and uh, accurate. Right, in order to identify these things. But if someone was to play Fortnite and for whatever reason see it and pull something from it, be it competition or sense of community or some sort of message that they believe that it has, it would cross over into that Disney ask territory of is Disney religion question. But I think those are so few and far between that I think it's firmly in that hobby area that people just enjoy to do. It's like a sport. In fact, right. it's indistinguishable from a sport. No, I, I agree completely. And I would say that like people's fan interest in a sport or in Fortnite to me is far more comparable to someone being really into Star Wars than a religion. And I think just because the thing they're into is a story that has like a moral message to it, I don't think that magically transforms it into a religion. I would say it's closer. Ooh, I think that specific example might I don't know how I feel about that. I think it depends on the person I'm talking to because mm -hmm. I bet there's a lot of people who, if they told me about their experience with Star Wars and how they felt about it, I'd say, yeah, this is way closer to a religion than a hobby. Well, so it, I think it, the question would be like, what, how what was Star Wars ruined? I think if you ask that, you'd start drilling in on like the morality of the situation. Because I mean, obviously... Would would they say it's just it's less entertaining? I don't think so. They'd talk about the character. I think that's just a and, byproduct of right. everything you're probably going to name in a second. If someone says a property they liked, like they say Star Wars is ruined, what they're really saying is Star Wars has destroyed the positive emotional connection I used to have with it. And then you can say, well, why? You know, you get into the specifics of of why exactly that happened. But I don't. Again, to me, that doesn't have anything to do with it being a religion. I think it depends on the person. It depends on how strong their experience is and how they value that experience and potentially how much of the thing. Because a lot of times when we pull something from how something else. How much faith they put in Star Wars. <laughs> um, it, when you pull a message from media, a lot of it, there might be a realization of, oh, this is just, this is almost sort of like highlighting something that was inside of me and now I can sort of express it. It has taught me about myself in a way and maybe some people see a lot of these pieces of media in that sense instead of this exists outside of myself and i owe it some kind of you know as a result i owe it some kind of adoration or it has a special sort of status in my life okay Scholar Mark Duffett put it, because fan phenomena can sometimes look similar to moments of religious ecstasy, the idea that fandom is like oh, a religion well, is a ready-made metaphor. I also like the notion of religious ecstasy, like going to church on ecstasy. That sounds fun. Don't Wow, do you're incredibly unfunny. Duffett notes that some <laughs> academic researchers who subscribe to this... However, the quote I think is a good one. I think the quote is is very is a very useful quote. The thing well, he was talking about before he started The question, though, this. is uh, what is the rest of the quote? Is he going to say, but that's stupid? Like... <laughs> I mean, I, I, that quote is basically what I said before. Yeah. Anyway, right. it's it's pretty clear that the quote is accurate. You can see the similarities. Yes. This interpretation.
But the question is, where does it go from there? What's the rest of the quote? I guess we'll find out. Or maybe we won't. Let's see if he says. ...of fandom treated fans with empathy, while others use the analogy to stereotype and lambaste fans as servile and misguided. That is to say, to treat fandom as a religious practice sometimes means to pathologize the fan, i.e., to regard or treat them as psychologically abnormal or unhealthy. It's worth noting that some forms of... I think the key is simply to uh, tailor your uh, castigation to whatever individual you're looking at. Like, it's all, it's all, we always talk about the disnoids and the consumers as just sort of a broad, ambiguous term in the same way that we might say, oh, a Christian zealots or things like that, where you might not have anyone specific in mind, but you're referring to a kind of a behavior. But there are absolutely people that you might see when you cover a video or when you see them posting on Twitter or whatnot. And you can look at them and you could say, this has gone way too far and you need to chill out because that's probably not healthy. Right. But I mean, people can be really into things too much. And I, yeah, I wouldn't absolutely. Compa- yeah, all the time. But I wouldn't say it's like a religion just because you're um, into something too much. I mean, you could be zealous about anything, but I think how, it's how? just it's just it goes back into the fact ask. that there are similarities between the two but they're not necessarily they're not the same but they're similar enough that you could point to it and you can explain the kinds of behaviors and actions that people take and it's, it's like what we were saying earlier when Be, you beyond, talk about something being religious so it's beyond the supernatural component how are you defining a religion because every time you say this i'm like well, I'm, I think it has. I think it also has to do with, as you said, constructing moral systems that people have to want to live by or should okay, live by. Okay, so you're so you're down with the Durkheim definition. You just think it also includes a supernatural component. Otherwise, yes. it's not a religion. Okay, so I'm fine. Yes, yeah, I'm fine with that definition as long as it has the supernatural. Or we're as totally I said, in agreement. Then an explanation of like why humans exist, or you know something like here's the problem. This comes up with one of the other videos that we were possibly contemplating doing in the future that talks about nihilism i don't think you can have a religion based around nihilism i don't either okay yeah. right but the durkheim definition could have a religion based around nihilism and i don't see how that's even possible it would it, it could be just in in the ah, sense that you could have a church almost like in quotes a church like you could mm-hmm. have a place of not maybe not worship but a place where you carry out rituals and for instance like um Alcoholics Anonymous, right? right? That's not a religion, right? But they have Alcoholics. a place that they meet regularly. They, they have, the, you know, they have a ritual. They gather at certain places. They talk to one another. They have a thing. Like there is a, there are similarities that can be made while they're still certainly different from one another. Right. They use the uh, some prayer all the time in Alcoholics Anonymous. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom. To know the difference that's aa and that's also yeah but because aa is based off of christianity isn't it or rooted in christianity. i think it rooted it in a religion not christianity but like a religious practice i i used I alcoholics never anonymous been just AA. off the top of my head but okay. there's regardless of its real political or real religious links the, the, i've had the, hundreds the of friends in alcoholics anonymous i have never been <laughs> And I what? think you just make people alcoholic if that's the case. I had a friend of mine. If you've had hundreds of people <laughs> have to go through AA, the common thread oh, here is no. that they all know you. That could be. That's not good. I had a friend of mine who was in Narcotics Anonymous. He's like, Adam, Adam, you got to come to an NA meeting with me. I'm like, first of all. Like as a joke? Like why? First of all, I know how to sport? fucking handle my shit, okay? I don't need no fucking Narcotics mm-hmm. Anonymous. I'm a narcotics expert. But he's like, no, I'm making so many Hollywood connections at my NA meeting. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but I, ne- I never went. I mean, I was curious about it, definitely. But I was like, nah, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like. Like, if you're making Hollywood connections at your NA meeting, how good can those connections really be? I mean, I, I don't know. Could be good. I mean, I guess if it's Robert Downey Jr. who's been in AA, like a f- fucking bazillion or NA a bazillion times, sure. Mm-hmm. So for him, it's, just, it's not really anonymous for him, though, because we all know who he is. I know. Yes, exactly. You're right. It's narcotics, narcotics anonymous. Conspicuous. You're Robert Downey Jr. That's true. So I, I couldn't find this exact quote that mm-hmm. he read, the Mark Duffett quote. Um, but I did find a paper he wrote 
called False Faith or False Comparison, Critique of the Religious Interpretation of Elvis Fan Culture. Really? So he's okay. totally going there then. Well, no, see, he, he's I was saying that my, there, it's not accurate to compare. Yes. That was okay. my intuition. My intuition was completely correct. Really? He says, I, uh, never, nevertheless, this article will argue that the religious comparison provides a limited understanding of fandom. So he's made, so his whole article is about how fandom is not like a religion. Right. Despite its I, appearance, like it could what's be. What's his argument? I, I I'd have to read the paper. But. Well. I think it's probably in that area of it's useful for general quick casual conversation but yes. i don't think anyone would actually say that that it's a religion it's just like a casual yeah those disnoids it's like a religion to them <laughs> hey right right i'll hail the mouse disnoid sounds like a slur to me what do you it what? is a slur <laughs> what do you mean by that <laughs> the dirty the dirty disney likers the, the people who are the people who are unhealthily obsessed with disney products and they consume everything without question that disney disnoid is the disnoid. This, the disnoid is the slur version of the disney adult okay. what does noid mean I, where is it, well it's like what's noid, that you, like you know domino's pizza There's yeah like the little noid annoyed yeah yeah that's annoyed. you're old but, enough to know that reference at <laughs> yeah I don't know it though. You don't know the, okay. the Noid? Wait, what? Maybe you would it. if you saw it. Maybe if you saw a picture of the Noid, you'd recognize him. I've the, avoided the no a lot of TV in my life, so he I has a big black know. N on his chest. Okay. That's... And he's got like rabbit ears. I and a red yeah. suit. I stand by my slur, my original no, slur. Comment. I don't believe you. How do you not know what the Noid is? That's now that I look at the Noid again, he looks awfully Third Reichish, you know. Mm -hmm. I just sent you a picture of the Noid, Adam. Okay, I, I literally don't believe that you don't know about the Noid. Type sexy. Avoid no the Noid. Type sexy Noid and send me a picture. Well, okay. that's just all Noids. <laughs> oh, now we know. I mean, look at that. Right? Oh yes, yeah. holy cow! I've seen this thing before. Okay, yeah, yeah. you see, yeah, yeah. There you go. Let's see. I'm gonna type "sexy noid" and see what comes I, up, just out of I curiosity. Don't think you're gonna get what you want. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. There you go. There's some sexy women. Oh, noise. wow. Holy cow. Here you go, Adam. I'll send you one. I'll send I'm dressing up one. as a slutty There's noid for Halloween. There's a slutty noid here. There you go. I sent Rags the slutty noid. <laughs> oh that is a slutty noid. <laughs> There's a bunch you of You can them. tell by the lack of clothing. Yeah, so oh, you, you mean the nipple the naked. pasties. You sent the naked No, one. I mean, not technically. Right. It's censored, and she's wearing something that covers her groinal area. I see it, yeah. Also, it's markedly a female. We have abandoned the Noid being male. We have we have gender swapped the Noid. You don't well, know that. Pizza. How dare Men you? Men can't be sexy. I don't know if you know this. Men can't be sexy. That is, no, that is, that is very true. true. That's very true. Yes. That I learned Noid that at Narcotics Anonymous. <laughs> You were you were going you're going to NA meetings because you're just there's just too much sexy men in your life. You were addicted. That's right. I went to Narcotics Anonymous to pick up chicks. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But I was. Just, it sounds like he. This feels a little sauce to me because without saying that this Mark Duffett character is against this idea, the way he reads the quote makes it seem like he's in favor of this idea. Yeah. Nice segue. I have grappled for decades with the question, do fandoms constitute a religion? As scholar Mark Duffett put it, because fan phenomena can sometimes look similar to moments of religious ecstasy, the idea that fandom is like a religion is a ready-made metaphor. I also like the notion of religious ecstasy. Like yeah, going it's quite peaceful and casual ecstasy. conversation. That sounds right. fun. Don't do it, but do it. Duffett notes that some academic researchers who subscribe to this interpretation of fandom treated fans with empathy while others use the analogy to stereotype and lambaste fans as servile and misguided. That Rags. That is what? to say, to treat fandom as a I would never do that. You call them disnoids. Look I wouldn't, at this. I, I didn't, I never did How that. How much empathy can you have for someone that you're literally calling a slur? I don't have mm. empathy. I have sympathy for myself to have sympathy. to know that these people exist. <laughs> We need to listen. We need to wipe the disnoids off. Okay. I mean, like, just it's ask just, yourself <laughs> if we go through with this, will the world be better in the end? Right. It's Are a disgusting blight that, uh, you know, we have to. I can't believe you're, ta with. you're you're totally talking about genocide of the disnoids. I never mentioned that word once, nor referred to it. We didn't, we were, we were talking about the noid and having fun, and then you brought up genocide. <laughs> well, you, well, you just said wipe them out. What'd you no, mean by that? Wipe them no, out. No, I was. Purely hypothetically, 
the Disnoids. Bring them to me. <laughs> Bring them the Disnoids, yeah. We need no to way. cyclone the... I'm sorry, what were we saying? <laughs> Just practice sometimes means to pathologize the fan, i.e., to regard or treat them as psychologically abnormal or unhealthy. It's worth noting that some forms of fandom- Okay, so okay. I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna call him dishonest here because it he makes it sound like that Mark guy is in favor of this comparison when he's and explicitly he's not. not. Yes. Yeah. yeah, fake. This is quite a sexual Disinformation. picture of this guy getting ketchup squirted. Yeah, what is happening? I don't even understand what's happening this in this picture. This is bar, Barstool Sports, it says. So it's like a sports fandom. Yeah, but like, you could, what yeah, is you happening in this picture? A, <laughs> I think there's someone who is, he's holding up something. He's probably dog, an offering yeah. to like God. A, it's like a burger and, or a hot dog. Right, yeah, and they're squirting ketchup. the ketchup and he has to get some on his, his hot dog or burger or he's whatever He's not doing a good job if that's the goal here. You know, there's a part of me that thinks that it's inefficiency is most, it, it, why it, they do it. Part of the fun? Yeah. Yeah, but for all Except I know, they could be later. Like, oh, all I know, this could be like, oh, a contest. You know, you get a thousand dollars if you correctly get some amount of ketchup on your burger while also getting it on your face. Like, I, I'm gonna be I, honest. I don't this looks religious. miserable. This looks miserable. Look how cold it is. He's out there in his t-shirt. He's getting oh, condiments right. squirted all over him. Yeah. Everyone's having a great time now, but in three minutes, when when the ritual has ended, <laughs> and he's just out here in the cold, and he's covered <laughs> in ketchup. He's it in a ugh. porta potty trying to clean ugh. up with the. They're gonna paper. have a ritual towel that he can use to clean up. Maybe no, wait. Maybe no. he came and he wasn't prepared for the cold. And they're like, listen, we'll give oh, you this. This team, <laughs> give you this team branded uh, sweater and jacket, but we got to spray ketchup <laughs> all over your face first. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the, that's the punishment ritual for not coming. You'll need prepared. this jacket. Because it's cold as hell out here. I mean, look yes. at all these are Buffalo uh, uniforms. Or they could be in New York. Either way, there's people with the Buffalo people, the Buffalo Buffaloes, I think they're called. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you have the oh, I can blank in it. The Cheeseheads. They're they're both up north. It's cold as hell up there. Right. Everyone yeah. is very happy about this situation. Everyone Our, who isn't him is thrilled. <laughs> he looks pretty happy. I mean, he's getting bukkake <laughs> by ketchup, and he's still I don't smiling. even know what that expression is. I'm not ready to call that a happiness. He could just, it looks awful. It looks like something you know what that expression is? Tarantino yeah. film. That is religious ecstasy. <laughs> this is religious <laughs> ecstasy is being covered in <laughs> This ketchup. is the face of religious ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't want a part of that? Buffalo sports fan ketchup face. I can't right. figure out what this is. Uh, wait a minute. Bills fans get showered in much mustard and ketchup. Okay. Uh, there's a group of NFL fans that know how to throw an entertaining tailgate party. Definitely. I don't know about this. This is like the this is like tarring and feathering, but for the sports fans, they're gonna dunk them in something, and it all sticks to the uh, the, the ketchup. Imagine that the mustard comes next. He's like, oh, thank God, it's done. And they're like, nope. And they bring out the mustard bottles. You're gonna relish this. So, this is this article sucks. It, it just it says that it happened. It doesn't explain what the fuck is happening or why well, this is happening. Well, <laughs> they just said they just said that it happened. And here's another article. They're like, Bills super fan Pinto Ron cancels ketchup mustard spectacle due to COVID concerns. <laughs> okay. Due to its incredibly graphic sexual <laughs> innuendo, it was canceled. I, well, cause there's, so there's multiple articles about this. I guess it's just the thing this guy does. I assume it had some association with something. But uh... oh, wait, his Wikipedia page. Ken Pinto Ron Johnson is a Buffalo Bills super fan known for attending every single Bills home and away game and hosting a tailgate party every game from 1994 to 2020. Okay. And he just sprays ketchup and mustard on his face. He holds a tradition of being doused in ketchup and mustard. So it's just this one guy that does that? Just this one wow. weird guy. He's the high priest. Right. Yes. He just like so you go. blasted in the face. Wow. So he ended he, his streak of 423 games in 26 years was ended with By COVID. COVID. Yes. Look at that. Sad. Mm. Very sad. That is very sad. Or yeah. maybe he needs help. Maybe it was just what he needed to happen. You're right. <laughs> he spent he one day at home it. watching the game and he's like, 
wait a minute. You know, this is nice. This is so much better than nice. getting doused to ketchup I'm and not, mustard. I'm not freezing and covered in condiments by strangers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, this is actually really nice. Condiments. Is this is this a kink? This has to be a kink, right? Yeah. There, 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 there could, there may or may not be a sexual component to this, allegedly. I mean, he's mm. getting bukkakeed with liquids in front of a crowd. More on the may than the may not, I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It has to be something, something sexual going on here, something degenerate going on here. But treated as normal by our society, while others are viewed with skepticism. Nobody's going to call you a cultist for wearing your Tom Brady jersey for a week. Well, a cultist in religion is already its own. We we swap from religious ceremonies to cultism, and that's sort of its own thing. But mm-hmm. I don't think anyone's going to call you. Well, that. isn't it? I mean. What's the difference between a cult and a religion? Isn't it just size? A cult is oh. a religion that you're not in. <laughs> um, I don't actually know what the technical definition difference is between a cult and a religion, but it tends to be that cults are often the little ones that people haven't accepted as regular things in society yet. I mean, I assume that at one point Christianity and whatnot was considered a cult by those around them, mm-hmm. and then it got big enough to where it's like, no, it's a religion. We hit the 4,000th member. So... According to the Google, it says a lot of people define cults as being far more like social, like restrictive, rigid, about, yeah, like interacting with people outside of more cloistered, yeah. more, you know, yeah, that's that tends to be a thing that you see in cults a lot where they say, Isn't no, how, you can't, I feel like, you're part of the cult now. You can't go talk to your family. You can't right. go live in normal society. You have to be in the commune. You have to get fucked and make watercolor paintings or whatever the hell they do in this is your life now and uh uh-huh. wow someone has just joined us hello hello how are you <laughs> doing today carl i'm i'm baffled how you can be so wrong about stories it oh, is me? interesting yeah <laughs> about what Oh, everything, everything about stories. Oh my god. What am I wrong about you asking? What is I, with, I, okay, what is I regret inviting you to get out of here. What is this? <laughs> Kick him immediately. What is so, what's going on? What I, am I wrong? Well, I, I like when with with Adam going like I, I don't know, I think people like uh you know take moral lessons from stories. It's like, yeah. But that's, that's often story the point. I don't stories, I don't wait, yeah. I don't yeah. disagree with that. Obviously, people take moral lessons from stories. You said the opposite. No, I said I don't think people I said I think a lot of moral stories will create yeah. like a blanket of messages that influences culture. I don't think I don't think the maybe you're different. Yeah. Maybe little Carl, when he was in the playground, saw someone getting beat up and he thought, you know, what did Joined the in. Red Ranger Jason do in this situation? And then you acted upon that. Like I don't think that's how people perceive of fictional characters. I why think not? it often is. I think yeah, that why, oftentimes why don't you think that? A, a kid, like we could use the playground analogy mm-hmm. where we can have you have a kid who watches a lot of Power Rangers and whatever it is the kids watch these days. And those shows regularly give messages about it's good and virtuous to stand up for the little guy and to right. you know be peaceful unless there's no other way, things like that. And that's they might not think in that moment that, oh, I am emulating the Red Ranger, but they will remember the lessons, yeah, especially as society. Yeah, society does hammer those into you, and hopefully your parents do as well as you grow in your young and your formative years. And, and people so then literally they... use it as a simile. You were just like X in Y, you know? They will li- literally like appeal to a story and say, well, you acted just like so-and-so in this situation. You acted situation. just like Luke Skywalker. And well, it might not... Out. It might not be that direct of a link. It might just be that, oh, I saw Luke Skywalker doing these good things. Mm-hmm. I want to be a good person. I will also do those things. Not necessarily, I will be like Luke Skywalker. I don't, but I don't yeah. think that's a conscious thought that anyone has. It doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it Sometimes exactly it is. Right. Sometimes no. it isn't. Sometimes no. these, le- like, um, of course like, it is. It's not like there's a straw that breaks the camel's back necessarily mm-hmm. for, oh, now I'm going to do the right thing. Sometimes it might be, but a lot of the times it's just all of these messages that you get. Eventually, there comes a time in your life when you might actually have to do that thing, and it all just sort of floods in. Yeah, but th- but that's that seems to be, you're saying what I'm saying, which is all that- right, we'll make move along. There are, a, <laughs> again, <laughs> that there are a bunch of moral messages that, like all of our stories put out there and like if you 
if you watch all these, you know, movies or television, you consume all these stories that like you kind of get a general sense of the various moral messages, which are very often, you know, similar or overlapping. And that yeah, become kind of right. And that kind of builds people's behavior. I, I think that's what's going on. I'm just saying I don't think specific fandoms create like moral systems that are comparable to religion at all. Yeah, but that's, that's what, my only that's contention. what Christianity is, right? Christianity it actually fandom? is like a moral fandom. Okay, I would I would how Jesus well, acted. That's it's a, depending on how is. you depending on how you define a fandom. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, we're all fans of Jesus if you're Christian. It, you know, it, we're literally just using Jesus. Jesus as an example and a guide. However, on how to act mora morally, right? Well, no, yeah, the, because well, the difference okay, comes wait. in where we we know the Red Ranger isn't real, but. We as Christians, we know or certainly believe to be true that Jesus is actually real, well, but well, the adoration is similar. But so interestingly, like a fandom, the reality of Jesus is actually kind of immaterial to the moral lesson extracted from the stories. Can I, um, I disagree. I understand, what, I understand what you're saying. But I in the religious yeah. sense, there could be a difference there. But um, like if because if Jesus is real... Sense. From a moral sense, sure. Like Socrates didn't have to actually be real for you to learn his wisdom and things of that nature. You know? Socrates is actually a fantastic example. I'm glad you brought him up because actually, to. like, but the like the reason we remember Socrates is because we use his example as a, sort of an excellent example to imitate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because he he showed moral courage in the face of what I guess we would call a tyrannical state now. Yeah, so actually. So exactly. So Socrates is actually a fantastic example of how a story is a, and this is how Aristotle put it, a rhetorical argument for a particular moral position. Right. But, and I agree with you in terms of like the, you know, Jesus didn't have to exist from a more, like a strictly moral perspective, but from the perspective of getting people to adhere to the religion, people wouldn't adhere to it if they thought Jesus was a fictional character. Well, Some again, people wouldn't, but I think that's a weak I think most person. people wouldn't. I, I, don't I think agree. that the fandom of a thing actually do do that. Like, you know, I think there probably are Star Wars fans who think, well, what would Luke Skywalker do in this particular position, right? And because of the, the quality and content of the character that has been built up over the franchise, they would say, well, actually, Luke Skywalker would stand up to evil. He would tell the truth. He would do whatever brave, heroic thing that would inspire them to do the similar action in the similar circumstance. I think there's yeah. very few people that live their life I think very few Star Wars fans yeah, I mean, are operating well, I, under I, I that. Don't know, man. I think a lot of Star Wars fans, like the I actual, like, of... you know, the, the, the culty types probably mm -hmm. do think that, actually. But Maybe it's not at a just young Star Wars. Age, it's, it's more likely. But as people get older, they don't have to affix themselves to a single character as much because they've been exposed to so many moral lessons from so many places. And it's kind of become homogenized almost and they're just used to doing good things hopefully yeah, it becomes intuitive but they don't have they don't, to they don't yeah. have to rationalize it. yeah they but if they have did to have to rationalize it good things they'd like probably punching fall back nazis on. well a lot of them like would actually like you know appeal to world war ii and stuff like this and mythologizing of that mm -hmm. you know so but if i think if asked to rationalize it they would say well you know i think that this is you know luke skywalker you know assuming you were some sort of weird star wars fanatic you'd be like yeah um, i'd like to i'd like to em emulate the sort of moral <laughs> character of luke skywalker and there's nothing wrong with the moral character of luke yeah skywalker. as long as it's a well the person. old i would yeah the old i would not good. yeah the, the new... i don't think the new luke well, yeah, skywalker okay, I, is someone i would encourage sure. by i'm gonna do what luke sure. does my i'm kid, gonna say yeah. fuck the world and go <laughs> live alone and have my sisters <laughs> yeah. in danger ah, right fucking... i'm gonna try and kill kylo Ren. Uh, yeah, based, based, son, right? based, based on a dream. dream. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. I wouldn't. Yeah, it was a really bad dream. You got to understand. <laughs> okay, the, the the original trilogy, Luke Skywalker, is what I'm thinking of. Obviously. Yes, yes, of yes. course. Uh, yeah, and that, but that's that's part of the betrayal, isn't it? That's why it is the fucking new ones. Yeah, you know? it's because it's you could say it's because it's very inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where Luke Skywalker isn't just outright evil. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, going back to what you said though about fandom, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't consider Christianity a fandom because, fa you know, fandom is something people generally, or maybe always, it's like people choose to be a part of a fandom. They go, oh, I all like, you know, we all like this thing, we all like this story, we all like this product, you know, whatever. Lots of people who are religious, it's like, you know, they're born into it. They kind of just believe like that's just the way it is. I have to do this. It just seems no, just... very different than a fandom to my eyes. 
I mean, you grow into a fandom in a different way that you're probably, you are born into a religion. Mm -hmm. Um, But those things just sort of emerge in their own different ways. Well, there's like, there's lots of people that will go to church and they don't like it the way they might like being a fan of whatever they're a fan of. Jesus is not as cool as Luke Skywalker. It is. I'm uh, going to be honest. I think there are a lot of people who watch Disney films, despite uh the fact they're not particular fans of Disney films, just because it's what's always been done in the house. Oh, that's me. That's my job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're watching it because they're like, oh, my kids want this, right? I mean, they're not just watching it like themselves alone in a room somewhere. I'm like, oh, okay. Why is Frozen well, yeah, but so popular? The, the the people who go to church who aren't particularly religious aren't just praying on their own. Well, no, 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 I'm not. There, I'm sure I think there's lots of people that believe oh, they'll believe in, in Christianity, but like they're not going to get excited about going to church the same way they might be excited to go talk about star wars with their friends like it's just a completely different feeling that's a vote well, sure that's because sure, like, people like things and di- they people value things and like things in different ways and plus it's just more it's just more exciting to talk about star wars than it is to talk about the bible <laughs> you you watch your tongue man jesus christ oh my goodness <laughs> i'm telling your parents he says as he invokes the name i know i was name. thinking that <laughs> jesus didn't like that carl by the way well look i'm a fucking atheist all right luke <laughs> It doesn't work as well with Luke Skywalker. Luke, Luke Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah, no, it doesn't have that same yeah. uh, oomph to it. Yeah. There is definitely a solemnity to religion that comes with age and distance, right? Mm-hmm. Like when when the original Star Wars trilogy is within living memory, it doesn't quite have the same weight that someone who claims to have been the son of God has. But I mean, it Things is. Are, it's hard to make something a legend when you remember it happening. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what. The new Star Wars writers should actually remember. I mean, um, I, I think a fandom of a philosophy can turn to a religion, and I think that's kind of the you could say like maybe that's the root Christianity took. It's like a fandom mm. of some kind of philosophy or breakaway sect of Judaism, more so than I would say a fandom of a product or a story like Star Wars that is believed to be fictional from its offset or its onset. I guess um, is would turn into like a religion or something. Well, I mean, there were people who thought that Christianity was fictional when it came around. Sure. Who knows? But I don't think those people became Christians. I think no, they became sure. non-believers. Yeah, there's certainly... I, I think that's really one of the big key differences is um, one purports that the things they adore are real and the other one doesn't. Yeah, there's a theory that from its... Like when it was originated, that Christianity was never supposed to be taken literally, but I'm highly skeptical of that theory yeah i find that unlikely even even in wokeness the situation with wokeness which we were talking about they do have a theory of the world that they believe to be true that i think is you know fanciful and untrue so Mm -hmm. and any any evidence you mean like romanticized or well i i mean is it romanticized the idea that you know we live in a white supremacist nation and that racism is running rampant and everyone is a secret racist that really just well you were talking about the underdog earlier on in the stream and if you romanticize yourself in that way then you could probably get yourself to do all kinds of things you can you you can say the revolutionary i understand you can use the word romanticize but i just think most people don't you most know, normal people don't a, have yeah a most normal people situation. aren't anywhere near this stuff yeah. we're freaks yeah yes that is true i but sent you the wash together link uh carl oh yeah know. sorry I'm, i didn't look up that component is i, I just came is on not there you. in fandom so. <laughs> if you want to come and just say i'm wrong and leave that's fine that's what you want to do <laughs> Let's we covered again. Wisecrack on EFAP. I'm trying to remember where what it was. I'll double check, but I, I remember because of the the logo and this guy's fucking face. <laughs> um, we covered Disney ruin it. Oh, we covered last time it was on EFAP 114. It was we were covering how if Disney has ruined culture, and then we covered them mm. on episode 46 a long time ago talking wow. about Game of Thrones. But I take it the answer to that was yes, right? Did Dis- I honestly can't remember. We had um, Gundam on and some other people. So I have to. Uh, I remember having fun. I can't remember the specifics. They were talking about I mean, Pinocchio story. It was a I mean, really bad like video. Culture. It was a very bad video that they made, yeah. which seems to be the, the consistency I noticed. But that's right. right. I'm sure it's great. Yeah, after Jared left, Wisecrack really went downhill, man. I actually like Jared. 
I'm, I'm I was I never really yeah. watched Wisecrack, so I I, could, I don't really know how it is. But sometimes I could totally believe that, because I mean this this video has been like the comedy and stuff. It's shit. Yeah. So who knows? It's just content. It it feels like content, like an assembly line sort of thing. They're mm -hmm. not trying to be insightful. There's here's a couple quotes. Here's a bad joke. I've got a shirt that's too big. Uh, things are great. Yeah, this guy's not funny at all. No, he's not. Well, I don't know why he's bothering with jokes. <laughs> Maybe his audience thinks they're funny, but I mean, one someone just hope, sent right? me a video uh, today of Jared, Jared Bauer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has. They sent me this video: the left versus wokeness. Jared talking to Doug Lane. Right. So, I watched part of that. Yeah. It was good. I haven't seen it. It was kind of boring. No. Oh. <laughs> Such. What's your background? It's 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 um distracting me. Uh, your back. The that's the realm. That's listen. Of... That's the esoteric realm from which I originate. So yeah. I'm oh, offended on a religious level that you're. Honestly, if that's where you're from, you turned out all right. Thank you. Wait a minute. <laughs> our Adam downloaded that background from Twitter and never really looked back. Yes. Or it down it. Like made it. It. it is very artsy. Yeah. It's, isn't it a uh, machine generated? <laughs> yeah, it's some sort of AI. I'm certain of it, yeah. but. We're still One waiting. One day we'll for get hit source. with a, yeah. a copyright. <laughs> the machine itself will copyright strike. <laughs> yes. It. This belongs so. to me. I don't think that's going to wait. Happen. Actually, if someone creates uh, a machine learning algorithm that creates art, do they own the rights to all the art that is created? The machine through that? I have no this idea. is some Star that's Trek shit, question. but I don't know that we have. <laughs> we are... Well, do you not that. remember the uh, the monkey who took a photo of itself and the photo belonged to the monkey? No, I Google think it. I remember I that. Google it. There's a monkey that took a photo yeah. of itself with someone's camera. And the mm -hmm. photo belonged to the monkey because that's how property law with uh, photography works. Did the monkey sue? Well, I don't think it did. I don't think the monkey had Couldn't a sophisticated enough understanding. Of <laughs> well, a lawyer would have been afforded to it. And he would oh, it's have a, it's that, no, no, no. It's a civil case, not a criminal case. Oh, it's that okay, famous okay. picture of the... Judge Judy. It's it's that famous, represent itself in court, but just through a handful of shit, you know. It's that famous picture of the macaque monkey smiling. Yeah. It took of itself. I don't know. Wow. That. Some it, how, ambulance that doesn't chasers make any sense. How does it lawyer up with that monkey? Well, wait a minute. Isn't the way copyright works is like so? If the guy whose camera it was, you know, he makes everyone pay him for the picture. The monkey can't dispute the claim. Like, who cares? I think it's about a principle, not a not a financial financial technicality. I just like the fact that the monkey owns the photo. I think someone <laughs> someone stood up for that monkey, and they're like, "Wait a second. Yeah, that picture totally. belongs to that monkey over there. <laughs> How dare you, you thieving bustard! Oh, and then you, everyone you know went, "Oh, does it? Does it? He should have just he could have left well enough alone, not opened his yeah. mouth. Yeah, he just no had to say that. that belongs to that monkey. Yeah, literally so, nothing would have happened. Now basically, it's a legal precedent. And now we got happened, a Star Trek episode, and oh shit! <laughs> what happened was like a third party was trying to use the picture without paying him photographer whose equipment was and he's like well this is my copyright and then PETA comes in and says actually let's argue that it's the monkey's copyright actually this is a way for us to get relevant is that again. real it Did belongs that to the monkey this really happened yes no way fucking between Peter 2011 and, and 2018 actually yeah. shut PETA. up PETA. Yes. PETA steps in hilarious PETA okay, steps so I, in and says actually I, it has actually occurred to me uh how we should be arguing against the idea of uh the robot having ownership of the photos mm -hmm. and that's the idea that robots shouldn't have any fucking rights including property rights mm -hmm. no we, obviously the robot doesn't have any i would say the robot has zero rights because it it's not Good. even alive um but Good. the question is does the person who created the algorithm have the right to it sure i think that's a fair fair dig i don't know but see that, that's a problem because in the future basically we're gonna have so much ge ai generated put, art like they it's all going to be owned by one anyway, person. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be so fucking worthless. It's just be constantly everywhere. But I mean, it's not. Is it any different to like if you own a machine that produces, you know, product Y, then you use the machine to make product Y. You own the product because you own the machine, right? It's a little different though, because usually you have like a machine creates one thing, right? Well, I mean, create. I think the things. distinction would be a machine becoming sufficiently capable of having human-like desires, wants, needs, and feelings, which generally machines do not have if we want them to just create objects. But so, I mean, it's the same with the AI generating a picture, right? 
Right. So if you I want guess... to make a machine to hammer nails or to mm-hmm. weld, do not give it a sufficiently capable, advanced <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> brain equivalent to where it wants like rights and to be paid and things. Mm-hmm. You're well, asking for trouble. I think even if it had that, the answer would just be no, you're a robot. We're going to deactivate you now. Robots Look don't it. Well, yeah, but you want to smash all the robots. You're a Luddite. Yeah, so. I'm pretty pretty Luddite about yeah. it. But, like, literally, we should have no human empathy for robots. Listen, we're going to have... Yeah, but, okay, well, we can have our robot no. waifus, and they'll have no rights. They'll just Speaking be of slaves. Luddite, we have the exactly. wisecrack video. Yeah, so oh, let's carry on with that. Leading up to the soup. But if you carry around your replica of Thor's hammer for a week, leading up to the new MCU movie, people will probably have thoughts. And we certainly see plenty of pathologizing when it comes to Disney adults, especially on the internet. Articles with titles like, Disney adults are the most terrifying people on the planet and they need to be stopped regularly pop up with a certain Th- that subtext the article is weird though. You see that it said a Mickey Mouse tattoo isn't cute, it's weird. I mean it is weird because a tattoo <sighs> Getting a tattoo, I've, I've thought, if I was going to get a tattoo, what would it be? Mm-hmm. And it certainly, it certainly wouldn't be the face of an evil corporation. Um, yeah, but people get tattoos of, like, shit they like all the time. People get, like, anime tattoos and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. The pl- world's got plenty of losers. But Which is I right. Think, I feel <laughs> like people have got terrible oh, taste. A tattoo should be, like, man, I'm going to essentially permanently mark my body with something. It mm-hmm. should be very meaningful or it should have some special connection to me and maybe it shouldn't i don't know it this is exactly why i have no tattoos rags this is exactly why you could why don't you have a tattoo of socrates it doesn't even matter if he's real or not well because i don't feel the need for one he lives it he doesn't need a tattooed on his body well no i'm kind of in the position where i think actually maybe socrates should have been put to death you know well there you go (laughs) for corrupting the youth there you go he's totally one he's glad see if he had that tattoo wow socrates was like yeah you should get tattoos of me no you were just tattoos the guys or gave him the henlock yeah Listen, there's not. I I don't have any tattoos, but I'm not gonna castigate anyone for getting anime or video game tattoos on their body. I might. Depends where it is and what it's of. I mean, you shouldn't get on your face. Okay. If someone gets like a Bioshock Infinite logo on their body, I'll be like, yeah, you deserve to be made fun of. (laughs) What if it's a Bioshock One logo? Oh, based in red. There you go. (laughs) Just a picture of Andrew Ryan right above my ass crack. What if they? <laughs> what if they put the tramp stamp that says "No gods"? No, no the guy gods behind me will be like, like "Who's that?" Is like, "Oh, Andrew Ryan. Ah, oh, man, a visionary." Mm-hmm. To be fair, they think you're an objectivist and a fan of Ayn Rand. Right. I think you should get the "No gods or kings, only man" right above your right above your anus. So. Right above my anus on yeah. my cheeks. <laughs> yeah. right above... Get a tramp stamp. Just hold hold Andrew Ryan's mustache. Yes. The most terrifying people on the planet and they need to be stopped regularly pop up with assertions that Disney adults penchant for getting off on nostalgia is worse than being an actual serial killer. Though come to think of it, I don't know a about serial that. killer I what they who meant. is also a Disney adult would be the most nightmarish thing I could ever imagine. But snarky wow, what a didn't invent things. this kind of cultural mm-hmm. pathologizing. Many early scholars of then burgeoning mass culture approached early fans much the same way, specifically a Marxist powerhouse of German intellectuals who formed what's called the Frankfurt School. Sort of- uh-uh. <laughs> Marxist <laughs> no. powerhouse. Notice the reverence for for the Marxist yes. powerhouse that he has. Oh my God. The reverence for the Frankfurt School. Yes. I'm going to be honest. He's not wrong. Like they, they were, they were incredibly influential and that is true. smart. So he's not wrong, but you are right that it's like hmm, weirdly approving of the Frankfurt School. Yes, yes. Well, it's not weird. It's you know, well, yeah, sort of like he's a socialist troop of cranky philosophers. Members included dudes like Theodore Adorno, Walter Benjamin, and Max Horkheimer, who collectively pioneered the discipline yeah. we now know as critical theory. Oh, critical God. theory views philosophy and social theory's primary purposes as being tools to critique social and political structures of power. Can't wait to see how this links back to is Disney a religion? Right. Well, what I find interesting yeah. about this is the framing. Yeah. It's, it's just critique, guys. Just critique. Just no, no, no. You're just being. No, no, no. You're just being critical of it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you you read any Marcuse, you realize it's about the total destruction of the West in order to bring about communism. Right. They're just being yes. critical of capitalism. Yes. It's fine. There's just critique. Just being critique. Yeah. It's just yeah. fine. Yeah. Power and when. 
Most of them are just critical of the rights. And they're the most ungrateful shits as well. They're the most ungrateful shits. Oh, the Nazis are going to kill us. What are we going to do? Free to, flee to America. Oh, good idea. Oh, America's never going to have communism. I need to make America have communism. Oh, How about you just give them back to the fucking Nazis? Just fucking... Like, what an evil bastard. It's like, funny you that you... ungrateful shit. It's funny that you mentioned that, because he literally brings up an article that says that. And I'm just going to point that out. <laughs> How insane it is that you have these guys run away from the Nazis, and then they then they whine about capitalism in America. It's like, yeah. okay, well, you can go back if you want. I mean... Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? well, the first few times, it didn't work out so well. But here in America, over in the new world, things will be different. Right. Something in the water. It'll work. Several of these folks fled Nazi Germany for America. They found <laughs> it's even worse, to it's like, about we, its we, culture. We've arrived, we're, we're in Germany. What are we going to do? We're going to try and bring about communism. What happened? We brought about Nazism. Oh, yeah. flee, to, flee to America. I, I, I think it's communism here. We need, to, we need to start again, lads. It's like, it, fuck's sake. And it's, it's just so amazing that, you know, like apparently part of the reason that Hitler even came into power was because the, the Communist Party wouldn't join forces with the moderate you know, left Social center Democrats. party. Yeah. yeah. And because of that, they split the vote essentially yeah. and let the far right come yeah. to power. But also because of the, um, I, I guess we'll call it the cultural degradation that was going on. Mm -hmm. This was a major impetus for people to vote for the Nazis. Cause the Nazis were like, Oh, we're going to get rid of all this degeneracy. And everyone's like, Oh, thank God. There's so much fucking degeneracy. And, uh, and they, that's one of the things that they did. Right. Well, and they also, like, there was a big leftist revolution where they took over parts of the country oh, at yeah. some point. And they're like, we're going to be communist now. And they're like, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it, anyway, yeah. It's very subversive. Mm -hmm. Like his Beautiful. comedy. Wow. <laughs> how dare, how dare you? Rats. That's giving it way too much credit. Jesus. Critique about its culture. Writing for Vox. Do, do you like just the a critique of culture, guys? Just critique. Do, he doesn't read it. The title of this article: If you want to understand the age of Trump, read the Frankfurt School. Okay. No Ages more. used to be longer than four years. Why now is a great time to dust off this forgotten school of criticism? The Bronze Age, the Stone Age, the Iron Age, the Industrial Age, the Trump Age. Yes. You know, <laughs> that's right. Long that's right. Of, yeah. The entire age of humanity is now being defined by. Donald Trump. Based. Sean Illing explains they saw the yoke of capitalist ideology wherever they looked in films, in radio, in popular the music. The yoke of in capitalist ideology. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I was, I was like, this is amazing. So we went to America, which is, you know, pretty much the country that uh, kind of invented capitalism, actually. Yeah. And uh, we found capitalism everywhere. It was really weird. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you, may, you could just call it Americanism, basically. You know, it's literally what Americans think about private property and the free market. Based, we have yeah. to free them from the, the way they've put they think. So, yeah, they've put themselves sub yugum underneath capitalism, this ideology. We have to free them from this mistake that they've done to themselves. Yeah. But I mean, like, literally, look how prosperous and rich they are. They're never going to become communists. It's like, yeah, no, no shit. Do you like the, the sentence right before he reads says, their ideas took shape when several of the critics' theorists fled Nazism, landed in the U.S., and then turned their gaze on American culture. You know, you think after they fled literal, you know, Nazis, yeah. they'd be like, oh, this is so much better. No one's trying to put us in camps and murder us, but they're like, nah, I'll fuck this. Fucking capitalism. Which is incidentally what the Russian Jews actually thought when they set up Hollywood. Like they were big mm -hmm. fans of American culture. Yeah, like I, I watched a documentary about this. Like the, the, these Amer American, uh, Russian and Ukrainian Jews fled Russia and were like, "Yeah, fucking hell, America's brilliant." You know, <laughs> whereas the German ones, it's like, mm, yeah, still not communist though, is it? Fucking Germans, what's up with the Germans? Mate, I'm, I'm telling you, what's going I've on? I've got a here? big theory about. Them. I know. I'm glad. Listen, I'm glad <laughs> I'm, I'm part of the, I'm the Russian theory, ancestors man. who are like. Maybe this, this plays into you know what you were saying about Russia. Russia is just so terrible. Oh, yeah. Russia is, the history of oh, yeah. Russia is so awful. When the Russians came to America, they're like, "Oh, thank God, this is so good." Literally, a lot of them were like, "You can you can watch interviews with them, and mm -hmm. they're like, well, I, th I thought America was basically a paradise, right? Like, yeah, because <laughs> it was compared to being in Russia." <laughs> What's it? I mean, maybe part of it, yeah, because Germany, you know, was like a modern country, you know, before oh, yeah, the Germany Nazis took over. So, yeah, so when they came to America, they're like, eh, whatever. It's just like the same. No big deal. Yeah, they were like, eh, this isn't communist. There's a, I read this article. I'm not going to like go through that. Oh, that's, no, 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 sorry. Just, yeah, basically they go to, they go to America, going, eh, this isn't German. It's like, yes, yes. 
Sorry. Yes, dude, you yes, did American, have that trip yes. across the ocean. Yeah, yeah. You were there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For all of it. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think part of the question he lays out in this article, which I think is crazy, is they're saying like, oh, you know, when they came to America, they're questioning why in Russia there was a successful communist uh, revolution, but not in modernized countries like America. And so they landed on the reason for that is the evil American capitalistic culture. And to me, it's like, that's really stupid. It's because Russia was a shithole and had really bad mm-hmm. material conditions that so people turned to extreme ideologies to fix them. Where I think in America, you know, it's like, oh, people are relatively happy. So they're like, why am I going to like burn the system down that I'm currently living in? I mean, it's literally the meme, isn't it? Yes. You know, I want change. This isn't the change I wanted. Oh, yeah. There's a funny part in this article where he talks about what's the guy's name? Uh, he talks about uh, whatever. He talks about one of these teachers at the Frankfurt School, and it kind of led me down this path to a book that this is actually really funny. In the 1960s, the Frankfurt School had its own evergreen college moment where. <laughs> All the Frankfurt School socialist professors were, you know, organizing with their yeah. their kids. They're trying to go on protests, throwing all this stuff. And then the kid protests go like way out of control, and they start accusing their socialist teachers, like Ado- like Adorno and these like yeah. and, Ma- and these famous uh, socialist teachers, of being fascist because they weren't going far enough and because they weren't advocating for like you know violence and all these other things. Yeah, and it was this is why Marcuse, if essentially ended up writing Repressive Tolerance, if I recall correctly. Yes. Because Adorno, Adorno was basically just like, uh, I think we may have gone down the wrong road here, guys. Uh, I think we've got a problem. And uh, Marcuse was like, no, no, this is brilliant. This is exactly what we want. And it's like, are you fucking... Well, I mean, he wasn't saying what I'm saying. So. Yeah, no, it's. it seemed like... Oh, the guy's name is Habermas. Habermas and Adorno, yeah. It mm-hmm. seemed like Marcuse was kind of like, just kind of basking in the, you know, ad- admiration in it of like all the hippie, you know, revolutionary kids. Being a cult leader, yeah. Yeah, being a cult leader. Because his fellow teachers were like, mm, this is seeming a little crazy. <laughs> is this a good idea? Yeah, they're like, mm, The students my- are rising up. Was that what we were aiming for? And Mucky's like, yeah. What were my you favorite uh, passage is... Um, as long as they don't rise up against me, of course. <laughs> hey. Well, yeah. Already depressed by the student's actions until his death in August of 1969, Adorno remained traumatized by one aggressive stunt on April 12th involving female students who bared their breasts to him in his classroom. Oh, oh, what was man, going on there? Okay. What happened there? <laughs> I don't know. I guess man. a bunch of female students were protesting and they took their time. This will show him. Yeah. And he was traumatized for the rest of his life. He, he saw, was traumatized. He saw boobage. Yes. I think what it, this, it is, cult- just a, there's a quick thing there. What, what, what it is, basically, you've got to remember, like, you know, 70 years ago, 100 years ago, however long it was, I can't even remember the date. Uh, people are a lot more conservative. Yeah. <laughs> just socially, generally. No, well, he was a good to think of, like, a bunch of, he like, was. Frankfurt School hippie teachers in, like, the 60s as being like, oh, he bared, she bared her breast at me. Yeah, but it's also the it's the attitude for it, right? It's it's the intent. Yeah. Well, it's sure. also the disrespect too. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Culture industry and Illy notes he cautioned that it blurred the distinction between truth and fiction, between the commercial and the political. As journalist and author Stuart Jeffries explains, these scholars wondered why a socialist revolution had swept across Russia while failing to manifest in advanced <laughs> industrialized nations like Germany we and had the United States. We liked it. I know. <laughs> yes. I, well, how is I this mean, a complicated like, question? I'm no political scholar, but I think I could. I got your answer. <laughs> Listen, Stuart Jeffries says otherwise. Okay. I know it might seem strange, but sometimes people sort of like the way things are. Yes. Dates. He writes, they concluded that culture and the use of the media was the primary tool for oppressing the masses without the masses realizing that they're being oppressed. See, the, oh, they, okay. Totally, okay. they totally I'll take go. the wrong message away. I know. I, I love, uh, no, 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 you are oppressed. It's just you don't realize you're oppressed because you've got to understand, right? You having all of this wealth, free time. You don't know you're civil actually rights. being racist. 
Yeah, exactly. You just don't understand that under communism, things would be so much better, right? In my mythical utopia that doesn't exist, right? You're not being oppressed. Whereas here and now you're being oppressed. I know you've got beer and steaks and, you know, you hang out with your friends on the weekends and stuff, but this is all oppression. Fuck off. I can't stand this. Aren't they working on putting this on the screen in popular franchises so they can remedy this problem? Isn't that the whole debate over Star Wars? I feel like it is. I just think it's written like shit, but it, I mean, well, but maybe... it's written like shit to, from your perspective because it's not your yes. morality, but it's their morality that they're trying to top down force on other people. Well, the yeah. idea. And this completely goes into what he just said about how, you know, the the masses are being brainwashed by television to think they have it good in the West when really he's got it backwards. They actually do have it good in the West and television is just, you know, depicting that goodness that they have. It's completely this, backwards. This feels like one of those reverse Dunning Kruger moments, Adam. This is a stroke of genius. <laughs> I'm never there. gonna I'm never gonna get over it. I'm never gonna <laughs> that, was that, a, that was a genius explanation of exactly the point, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it's it plays relative in the, morality. I don't know how it plays No, I wouldn't Kruger, I wouldn't say the issues with Star Wars or its morality. It's that it's really, really poorly written in terms of just basic but, logic. But your your well, that's from it your point of view. view. Yeah. But it's, I don't it's, think so. I think that we. I think we can absolutely make very objective assessments on cause and effect and logic. Yeah, but they don't believe in objective assessments. Yeah, well, they're wrong, and I can demonstrate it. Well, Look, they will disagree. Mov with movies are can, are teaching people how to behave. <laughs> I'm not in the saying world. they're right. I'm just saying that's not persuasive to. Them. Well, also, movies are teaching people. Movies are morality plays. Like there's, yeah. they literally call it the moral of the story at the end of the story. Right? You're teaching. Yes how people how to behave in the world and they're like we want more girl bosses so we need to teach <laughs> female empowerment to young women and therefore we are going to you know illustrate how that is done on screen and you're going wow this is really shitty but you don't understand because the goal way, yeah. the goal is not to tell you a compelling interesting story the goal is to put you in church and teach you how to behave yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's the way it's how a message is told is the big difference one is there's a way to try and like actually teach someone and then there's preaching to someone there's a reason why captain marvel and milan can both have similar elements of their message and one is really 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 well done and the other is just crap okay one's more of a proclamation and the other's yeah, but like, here's why it's the, the big difference for me is 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 it bottom up or is it top down does it gel with people's moral intuitions or is it like trying to force a square peg into a round hole i mean in the sense that if you don't go into some of these stories already agreeing with the point being made you're never going to get it because it's not I, meant to change your mind i don't necessarily think to... you i don't necessarily think you have to agree with every detail of the point <laughs> it has to appeal to your I think that's part of the good storytelling is to I think a lot of um I think a lot of Star Trek episodes are like this where you have antagonists not necessarily villains um if you want to convince someone that something's the case then you have to come at it from a perspective of showing them all the steps along the way that you get to the message not just assuming oh they agree with the message we can just have this be the way it is from the get-go and there's no problem right uh JP Mexican just sent me the new uh channel emoji which should be available to people they refresh so oh, really? enjoy yes what is it you'll see mm. oh, no. it's a clever way to get 1453 more views on the stream exactly exactly madness mass culture with its flashy lights and captivating narratives was indoctrinating people into dominant ideologies i.e ways of thinking that wouldn't threaten or upset those in positions of economic and political power so why use viva las vegas as the example what are you trying to is it literally just because the visual of viva las vegas has flashy lights. lights and flashing colors that yes. that's, that's just enough it doesn't yes. it's no more deep than that yes because i would assume you should show something that tries to actually like oh look there's this message that they're trying to give in this piece of media that we will use as our example but actually it has nefarious undertones and i'm like viva las vegas really okay uh, what all right 
You see, this is uh, this is what happens a lot on the videos we cover on EFAP is the examples they use. They don't they don't use their visuals well. They don't try to actually communicate or explain the points. They just say this is the way it is, and then they move on to the next thing. And you think since this is he's bringing this into two parts, I mean, this is just a lot of like nothing, really. Kind of. There are big stretches of I wish I wish you would take the time to try and convince me of something instead of just saying things are the way they are. And you also have almost just coincidental visuals happening in the background. Mm -hmm. But look at the message itself, though. It's like, oh, well, you've got this proud, successful, healthy culture that's really you know doing a very good job as civilizations go and it's not ashamed of itself it doesn't hate itself it's not whipping itself and wishing that for a better world it's like yeah no it's not it, it's happy but it's supporting the status quo carl so yeah, you understand it is. that's terrible yeah, this has more of a documentary of feel than a persuasive feel we don't need men or tradition okay we need more girl bosses you're getting <laughs> us all wrong carl okay well actually they, they would say that girl bosses are sort of a coping mechanism of the status quo what if you find going? a girl who doesn't want to be a boss, then she is even worse than the men. We Remember, they're the communists. They don't think there should be any bosses. Yeah. Certainly not us, of course. So who, 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 no. Bottom line is we need to pre we need to depict more loser men <laughs> shitting <laughs> on tradition. They'll love that. And we need more girl bosses, okay? This yeah. is I want girl bosses in these movies. We have to teach the women to get into the STEM fields, okay? The culture industry caused people to unconsciously and unquestioningly accept what the people in power wanted them to believe. In this way, these scholars thought Using the invasion culture of the was body essentially snatchers? taking the place of and functioning <laughs> like What is the point of this religion. visual? Note that during this time, religion was undergoing a decline in power over the national psyche. As a door Well, it's kind of insidious. The, the point of it is that, oh, our culture is like, you know, controlling everyone, turning them into pod people. So, but he's talking turning about, them to Americans. Yes. But, what's, but the he talks about culture in a very meta way, and then he uses the in-universe thing of body snatchers, which is all right. I, I guess I just want I want to be convinced of things. I don't just want to be told this is how it is. Moving on. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. You've been brainwashed into being an American, right? Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tragic. I feel that's terrible. <laughs> Let me go to the grocery store and buy all the food I can fucking eat <laughs> no, to, to drown away all my sorrow. <laughs> you need to be hungry. Hungry and angry at your own culture. Hunger Ouch. and anger is so motivating. Well, for communism they are, actually. Hungry, angry, and horny. Yes. Erwin Horkheimer wrote, The sociological theory that the loss of the support of objectively established religion has led to cultural chaos is disproved every day, for culture now impresses the same stamp on everything. How do you feel about that, Carl? Sociological the sociological theory. theory that the loss of the support of the objectively established religion has led to cultural chaos is disproved every day. Well, that, I don't agree. I mean, A... Like what? What was this in like the forties or something? Like whenever they wrote this, mm -hmm. like I can't imagine that America wasn't a very religious culture. It was 40s. very religious. Yeah. Right. Though I guess even from their perspective, religion was, in the forties in America was less than it used to be. From where yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess that's now. true, right? It's always going to be less than the past, but I mean, in America, I think it's probably going to have been fairly strong. Um, but the idea that like that there's proof that disestablishing religion doesn't lead to cultural chaos i mean where are we now you have Fucking to replace hell. it with something meaningful and deep yeah. or else you're going to have issues well that's because that's replace it with are. something shitty then yeah so uh, are we not in, are we not experiencing cultural chaos i think we are uh i would say we are due to like what it's what's, it's interesting because i'd say we are due to you know wokeness coming in trying to destroy liberalism yeah. and he's basically saying because wokeness, at least when he wrote this quote or said this quote because wokeness and communism hasn't come in and infiltrated everything, therefore the culture is not in chaos because, you know, just capitalism is basically, and, and consumerism has basically filled the void of religion. Yeah, but, but actually I think that in America in the 40s, if you were to like, I, I bet you could find, you know, surveys on this, but I bet like 99% of people were religious. You know, Probably. Probably. It was very, yeah, very high, I bet. Yeah, I, I can't imagine it wasn't like literally everyone. Uh, and so like, it's the the problem liberalism has it it's not 
a doctrine, right, for social stability. What it is is like a negotiation with guidelines, the government. almost. Well, it's 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 like a it's it's almost like um sort of game theory sort of pact, right? Where it's it's like look, it, it, this is good for everyone, therefore we'll do it. And it's like yeah, that's that's fine, um, but it's not a, a set of guidelines for your daily life. You know, that's what Christianity is for. I mean, your founding fathers knew that if you weren't a devoutly religious country, Christian country, then the constitution wouldn't be a good document. It is funny that this quote is from 1944. Yeah. So, I mean, they were so totally fucking wrong as well. Yes. It's just wild how wrong they were. And it's not like Weimar Germany wasn't the proof of this either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is after they ran away from Nazi yeah. Germany and are in America now. They're like, So it caused all this chaos in Germany. And, uh, I know. They screw everything and, up. Yeah. Right. And like, oh, well, they, it's, it's disproved every day. No, you're just lying. You're just lying. That is to say, culture was indoctrinating people into the sorts of dominant ideologies, which were once exclusively oh, no. the terrain of religion. This development oh, no. of See, I just, the, using like the term indoctrination, yeah, yeah. It, like one person's indoctrination is another person's education. It's like well, no, people okay. have to buy into some mm -hmm. sort of moral system that everyone agrees upon. Oh no, they're indoctrinated into your moral system. They should be indoctrinated into my yeah, moral system. Yeah, that's basically what's going on. It's communist. Yeah. 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 That's the only argument they're making. Guys, what if we don't indoctrinate people? That's out of the question. You yeah. well, I mean it is. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm telling you, as a parent, it's out of the question. It's yeah, just it out, is it's out, not on yeah. the table. It's we not have, indoctrinate you into Bob the Builder. Yes, we you can. Have to teach. Yeah, but Bob the Builder's got a bunch of cultural assumptions under it. That building is a good thing. That yeah. Hispanics are good yeah. at building things, yes. <laughs> Bob the Builder's English. <laughs> it is English. English. Who am I? Who am I? Oh, I'm, I'm confusing him with Handy Manny. My bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Handy Manny. Manny. He has, okay, Bob the here's the difference. Bob the Builder has talking construction equipment. Handy mm. Manny has talking tools. It's well, simply a matter of scale. And like, whichever like building equipment you person. I thought you just made this up. This is real. No, what Andy happened, Manny what happened is absolutely to Bob real. Andy Manny isn't a sex thing. It's a, it's, it's a <laughs> it show, sounds man. like a hand. No, it's a kid show. I'm actually I actually do remember what you're talking about. Though. This I is a that. that's a terrible name for a kid show. It sounds like Andy a sex Manny. Act. Can you give me a handy Manny? How much for a handy Manny? How much for a handy Manny? It's about twenty dollars. How are you doing? I'm handy <laughs> Manny. Twenty bucks. That's pricey. What? How, how? Okay, listen. I've not accustomed to sex no work. How, yeah. how much I, do you I, I don't pay? know if twenty dollars for a handy, <laughs> handy man is handy. expensive or cheap. I like legit don't know. Yes. I've never paid for sex. I haven't either. <laughs> so Adam, Adam twenty dollars. You say? <laughs> like, I, I think I might have twenty dollars spare. We've got like you know ten minutes. <laughs> there you go. Upset these guys to no end, and Adorno even penned a hateful paper about the insidious national disease of. Jazz music. Like, who doesn't like jazz music? It's it's really nice. Adorno. You so oh, us. but wait a minute. When the the communist doesn't like something he likes, you know, suddenly it's a problem. But and also that means he's racist because obviously if you don't like jazz, it's because you hate black people. What's interesting though you is, like is jazz? who made jazz music at that time. <laughs> So God only knows what he would think of contemporary Disney culture with all its mouse ears, season passes, and Disney themed funeral companies. Oh, and we're not making that last one up. If I ever die and you f***ers dare to bury me in Mickey Mouse ears, I'm gonna come back as a hybrid zombie and ghost and just haunt the sh out of you. Anyway. I will agree. If you get a Disney themed casket, I think that's all. If you just if you want to give the archaeologist a thousand years from now something yeah. to think about, bury yourself in a Disney themed casket. I, I will say if you if you want a Disney casket, then then I will say you have now entered the realms of Disney being a religion. Okay. This Maybe I can take it with Disney. me. Going forward, scholars wouldn't all share Adorno's scorn for mass culture. In the 60s, England's Disney. Birmingham School of Cultural Studies started to take fans, especially working class ones, more seriously. And in the 80s and 90s, fandom scholarship really took a turn away from those old, unflattering portraits. That's thanks largely to the work of academics like Henry Jenkins, who <laughs> were also fans. These ACA fans were already immersed in the fandom oh cultures they were studying Nerds. and were thus yes. more sympathetic. Nice. Instead of Wait a minute. 
Let's bring up the pictures of Sargon's painted Warhammer <laughs> 40 game. Sorry, my models. pieces of amazing art. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Bring, bring, please very bring lovely. my pictures. They're, 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 they're very lovely. They're very lovely. <laughs> you big nerd. Is there I'm any wearing, morality? I'm at a fucking convention you, wearing tinfoil hat. You posted your, what are those? Those are. I had a hobby at home that I, had, that I enjoyed. Okay. Okay. If I, okay. if I dressed up like a fucking space marine and went to a nerd convention dressed as a space marine, fine, go mm. ahead and castigate me. You know? Are there any values in 40k that are taught? Any Yeah, really racism. Ones. Yeah. The values Extreme of racism, and exclusion, racism. violence. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's great. It is very cool. <laughs> this ain't this ain't no fucking Mass Effect or Star Trek. We're not. So gonna, what's what is no. the girl boss con content in 40k? Zero. I mean, and the right. sex demons. No, 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 no. They're not. They're not girl bosses. They're villains, right? The, the <laughs> women are. Women are the villains in 40k, as as is the 40k canon. And you can imagine how this has been treated by the progressives, right? Right. And oh man, villainizing can, yeah, girl yeah. bosses. Ugh. Oh, oh yeah, right. And the thing is, right, the people who run Games Workshop, they they're sick of getting in the neck. They would love to go around and oh no of course you have space marine girl bosses you know why not we don't care you know fuck it uh, but the thing is they know that the uh the people who play 40k would be like right i'm not playing this anymore because like 99.9 percent .9 of their audience are neckbeards like me and so they are trapped between a rock and a hard place and can't put girl bosses in it and so the the main attack that the progressives have been making on 40k is we want female space marines and they recently literally in the last like month or so published like a new manual where it explicitly says manual? space marines yeah yeah it's a strategy game um no no, no I, that's fine if you get it you get it oh right yeah manual yeah uh, <laughs> but it explicitly says word for word space marines can only be male and they had a fucking meltdown over this and games workshop the company that produced it was just like radio silence just like look we're just it's just in there we're not going to say anything they know the demographics of the people buying they, this they shit. absolutely mm -hmm. do there's and a it, difference between what we tweet and what we print and sell all right that's exactly exactly it because they've that's, been tweeting, that's how it goes they've been right month is over bitches yeah, exactly, exactly. And so this is like the last bastion of nerd culture that literally won't fall to wokeism because it'll be the destruction of the franchise. So it's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, too many normies eat up stuff like Star Wars and everything. and It's already oh, got yeah. its own schism, but people just, mm -hmm. most yeah. people just in that particular fandom, just during, they just don't really care. Fans as style and semi brainwashed from afar, these scholars asked fans how and why they interacted with their chosen media text. Also, I would like to announce that I'm officially now an ACA fan of the television show Scrubs. Okay, Sasha, let's see what your new engine can do. <laughs> they asserted that, that is the funniest clip they could find from Scrubs to uh, showcase. Uh, uh, and blindly uh, adhering to the status quo. Rather, they saw the way fans would poach oh. ideas and characters and stories from the things they liked. They oh. would then remake and remix God, them to who's align that with their own sex values, right there. often to tell subversive countercultural stories. Blue if face. you lived through Tumblr in the 2010s, you've seen enough Destiel and Kirk and Spock Slash to know exactly what they mean, even if I have no idea what I just said. I love you. This poaching can also be seen in some activities of Disney adults. Take Garrett Smith and Jason Bittner, who dressed as Jay Woody Cumble's and Buzz Disney for their wedding as actual relationship wedding, goals. No, remaking Disney not. canon to fit their love story. I can only hope it was officiated by a friend in a Mr. Potato Head outfit. This wave of scholars took a utopian view of fandom and felt it was important not to see fans as cultish or worshipful but as enthusiastic, thoughtful consumers of media. A lot of us appreciate the fact that it presents I mean, a very positive ideally that would be future. good. Uh, it doesn't show the earth being mm -hmm. devastated by wars. It shows us having finally figured out how to solve our worst problems. That's because- It is the uh, total trend. opposite of Warhammer. Yeah, like Star, yes. Trek, Star Trek is on one side and Warhammer is on the other side. Yeah. And you like him for what you like him for. Exactly. It's very little crossover. Right. Yeah. Well, well if you, you had to you, choose which one to live in, what universe to live obviously in. Obviously right? Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> obviously the one without the girl bosses, okay? Oh no. <laughs> okay. Oh no. So that guy's like, I'll take the demons for with the lack of yeah. girl bosses. 40k, yeah. here we go. Yeah. Wow. Because they're man demons. 
saw religiosity as equivalent to irrationality and painted religion as an unfounded belief in something supernatural and ultimately not real. And Henry Jenkins phrasing, calling fans religious paints them as prone to false beliefs, orgiastic Why excess, would they think obsession, that? and madness. And clearly- Well, I mean, that is a good point though. When people, like, when people says, when people says, when people call fans like religious or, or something, they're not saying it like neutrally or positively. It's always in a negative connotation. I think it's just as a way to casually uh, discuss the kinds of behavior they engage in. Going to conventions, knowing a lot about the the quote unquote sacred text or the the canon yes. of what their thing is. Well, I but is it is it ne is it necessarily saying that religion is bad, or is it just saying it's bad to have religious feelings about? I think it's I think it's property? just I think it's a bit of mockery, but I don't know if it goes any further than that. Honestly, mm -hmm. I I do see oddly enough there is. Um, Religious people, when they talk about when they talk about stuff like faith and religion and stuff like that, if they they will say things like, "Oh, well, the the atheist has to have faith in evolution and stuff like that." Like when they say it about other people, it's bad. Like faith becomes bad when other people have it. When someone acts like something's in a religion and it's not us, it's bad. It's very strange. Mm -hmm. I agree he's talking about Disney character cosplay orgies there. And I would what? like to see it. Labeling fans as religious fanatics, yeah, he said, this is great can content. also be it's inherently hilarious. othering and stigmatizing. It makes them out to be Fine. obsessive devotees who look at Captain Kirk as a literal deity and pray to Obi-Wan Kenobi though. for wisdom. These scholars tried to distance fan culture from religion and define fans as rational, autonomous media consumers and critics. As Jenkins puts it, as a religion, you bring back and in this notion they of are. literal belief. And it implies that fans are unable to separate fiction from reality. What do you mean literal belief? Belief is just the acceptance that a proposition is true. You all believe something. Well, he means the of literal that belief. they don't believe Captain Kirk is a like a real person. They understand it's a fictional character. Religion, you bring back who? It seems like this guy is basically saying, "Don't call fandoms religion because religion because religion's sucks. bad." Yeah, exactly. Yes. He's like, "Religions are terrible." I don't know why you're denigrating fan culture like that. Right, which is kind of funny. But... <laughs> well, he's not talking about anything objective. I guess he's talking just... about there needs to be a focus on, I guess, understanding the world for how it is, and fictions don't necessarily say that in the same way that religions talk about it. Fictions, a lot of people argue, though, can say more about the world. Like, that's a total Jordan Petersonism. Like, we get but, more mm -hmm. truth out of fiction than we do out of science. You can, but you can still have that within the framework of the story I'm telling you. It, it's just a story. It, but you could take yes, lessons yeah. from it, whereas religion's like, a no, fable this is our or a pair. Are fables even true? Or they do people no, believe think, fables, are, fables true? are true? I don't think so, because they've got, like, talking right. animals and stuff. So it's like a teaching tool. Then again, the there Bible's the Bible. got talking animals, and people believe that. <laughs> it's 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 all crazy. It's all madness. Are fables all from all the madness. Bible? I don't even know. No. Some there are. Fables in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Fables, like, yeah. Fables are, like, fairy tales. Yeah. As far yeah, as I know, they're entertaining. Fairy tales, I don't think anyone yeah. thinks that, like, Hansel and Gretel was a true story that happened at some point. Oh, but yeah. I know, I know them. Yeah. It is meant to teach you something. Hearing a lot of fucking skepticism coming out of Sitch today. Cut your hair. <laughs> oh, yes, it's, what do you mean? Oh, so we're skeptical about, about Hansel and skeptical Gretel. Skeptical of witches now, are we? Skeptical? I am. I'm, yeah. I'm skeptical. So of, a witch can't. A girl boss a, can't live guy's in name a candy Hans? cottage. Is it another wow. German guy that made all these <laughs> these propaganda fables about witches eating children? The witches have been very misunderstood through human history, Carl. Remember, uh, if that's you see what I'm a, saying. A house of candy, it's bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> see, there's a morals to that story. There you go. Girl bosses and candy cottages are bad for you. <laughs> yeah, the away. witch was just see that's the she real was just story. a girl boss Stunned. in the witch. She was the original now, girl boss. Yeah, she she just got a bad. She was a girl boss. She was making her way with her own candy cottage out. She didn't need no man to bring it bring home the candy and the and the townspeople. Really and the townspeople time. killed her just because you know she was a girl boss. She wanted to eat their children. Yeah. No, but see, that's oh. metaphorically. She was what she was doing was she was espousing Gang feminist abortion. ideology to the children. <laughs> so. That's why. That's great. I was they only had... being critical of uh, the patriarchal society of the village. <laughs> Get her. Put her in the oven. Or that they supposedly act on the text as if it were literally true. 
However, this, oh, according to many yeah. religious scholars, is a problematic view of religion. For one, it paints religious people as childish, irrational, and disconnected from the real world. It asserts that they yeah. don't- I have been religion. told that a 40K fan is upset at you, <laughs> uh, Carl, because right. apparently he claims that there are girl, bo girl bosses in 40K called the Sisters of Battle. Uh -oh. I'm that certain is, that if that half is... of your population is women, there will be some pretty cool women amongst them. The, this this is true that there is a faction called Sisters of Battle. Oh, but... debunked! No, 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 no. But yes, so bees, you... yes. But they don't matter, and it's not to me they don't matter. <laughs> the sister... no, no, the Sisters of Battle are actually a really cool faction because they're like insane zealot warrior nuns which is great because you they're as right wing as it could possibly be right nice. uh, the the problem is for the progressives who are like we don't care the space marines are the main characters we want female space marines no you don't get them shut up i mean i'm look the sisters of battles look just like female space marines i guess like, uh, yeah but no it doesn't matter doesn't matter okay are it's, they, a, it's a long-running argument. They, they just don't care. I don't they know enough about 40K. Or they if like, I can't be a space marine, then there's no point in existing at all. Are that is the exactly same, what they say. Are they it's, they're not the same faction? No, no, they, they're, well, they're, they're part of the They're same, on the same species. They're a sub-faction. You know? Well, they're human. They look human. So. But yeah, they're, but they're human and they're, they're, they're part of the sort of imperium of man. Right? right. So they are they are part of the same sort of overall faction, but like it doesn't matter. They want the Space Marines. Gotcha. Their Space Marines are too iconic and yeah, culturally relevant and and, and useful because, for. Yeah. But they're also just a boys only club. They're just a boys only <laughs> club. That's that's the reason. You could whenever you see them on Twitter talking about this and shit like that, you can see this has just totally got under their skin because it's just no girls allowed. That's it. That's right. the reason. It's like yeah. So even no, if yeah, I understand. Yeah, there are no boys allowed in the Sisters of Battle, but they don't care. They're not like, oh, we need our male sisters of battle. They don't care about that. Mm -hmm. Well, they'd have to rename it then to the siblings of battle, which no, no, no. doesn't Someone, have to say Persons of no. battle. It's the misters of battle. Someone's already done it. The it's misters? Hilarious. Oh, the misters. How does, wait, how does that make it? Oh, well, miss, M-I-S-S-T-E-R. Sisters okay. and men. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a, it's a long-running meme. Trust me. <laughs> text and take them as absolute truth. What's more, it maps Western conceptions of religion, specifically Christianity, onto hugely diverse cultural traditions that may bear little to no resemblance to it. Not all religious movements require- Oh, Sitch, it's your people. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's true, isn't it? You motherfuck. <laughs> if I, oh could, I think you can see you there in the back. You're the one with the top- he's the, he's the black one with the white eyes. No, yeah. I'm the- I'm not. You see that that kid who doesn't have the hat on is like, why am I here? <laughs> on the right side, he's yeah. just got his yeah, the blue his, shirt. Yeah, it's like oh, I'm not gonna do in the jacket. I wear a coat. It's it's not a great coat. It's fine coat, but the I'm hat though. Hat. Is well, that like hard VR. alcohol on the table there? I mean, dear it's God, it's okay. Oh, oh, Muslims, Adam. You never have you never had Manischewitz wine? It's like the most mild tasting wine of all time. That's what's in the square bottle. We'll have Probably. wine, but we're not going to enjoy ourselves. Well, no, I know. Like, it makes you drunk. It just doesn't taste like it just tastes like grape juice, essentially. Oh, uh, so it's good if you don't like wines. Oh, literal beliefs, supernatural or deities. So wait, this is weird, though. Let me go back for a second. On two hugely diverse cultural traditions that may bear little to no resemblance to it. Not all religious movements require literal beliefs in the supernatural or deities. Okay, I have no fucking clue. Why he's doing, why he's showing Jewish people here. Why he's showing, no, he's showing <laughs> Orthodox Jews. Orthodox right. Jews generally believe in biblical literalism. So I don't know why he's right. showing this and saying, Say. Because they don't, he doesn't do care they about sitch? the visuals. Because they don't care about the visuals. Like it's many, like many video opposite, makers, they don't sense. care. Like if he showed a bunch of like I don't know, this is all the left, left like, yeah. barely left going wing. to temple. Maybe okay, you'd be you know correct. No, he... left wing Jews are non generally non believers, right? But right wing Jews are definitely. Ah uh, yeah, believers. generally yeah. Are you think anyone listen, folks at home? Okay. Who's gonna dress up like this? Yeah, not <laughs> believe. believe it's some kind yeah. of biblical literalism. Okay. Obviously atheists. I don't know what's, what your problem is. There you those go. Are, we those just got not pictures from those the Star Trek convention. <laughs> so. All religious movements require literal beliefs and the supernatural. This is just a convention for 
Mel Brooks is Jews in space. Oh, okay. That's all this gotcha. is. It's a convention. Gotcha. Okay or deities. Not all religions make grand truth claims or posit a metaphysical realm or even have a cohesive set of Is Doesn't he it? saying that Buddhists Don't do they? not propose a metaphysical realm or, or a grand have, truth claim? Or a grand truth claim? Isn't it, wait, or is, isn't it called like the see, four noble truths or something? <laughs> This yeah. is the problem with having visuals that don't match what you're saying well, because when he specifically starts talking about this, this is the clip that comes up, and it's very, very much like Buddhist ceremony going on. And I guess, I, does he just think, oh, this is like a religious thing? Let's throw it on screen, regardless of what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. Can anyone think of a religion that doesn't do the things that he's saying? Uh, All, there isn't I mean, at all. I, mean, I that's... think you just like necessarily kind of have to have those things if you're going to be a religion proper. You yeah. need to make there has to be grand truth claims because it's all built on the foundation yeah. that there is some <clears throat> supernatural realm that you believe to be true and has to be true or else the religion doesn't make sense. Well, there are people like you can people there are lots of people I'm sure who believe in aspects of the religion, but they're not like fundamentalists, they're not orthodox, they're not very you they're know, still conservative believe, of the religion. You know, but they would the still religion say the things itself. they believe in are truths. Yeah, like there's lots of Jews that I've known who are, you know, they consider themselves Jewish, they go to temple, but they don't literally believe like the biblical stories or the creation of Adam and Eve. But they would still believe that there is a God who did yes, all of these things right. and that's a yeah. fundamental truth that's yes, kind exactly. of necessary. Yeah. Exactly. It just depends yes. on how many of those truths you have, but you got to have them to be a religion, I feel. I there, don't know. There has to be a you're right. There has to be a fundamental truth about nature or reality in order for it to be you know, in a religion in the first place. Definitionally, yes, correct. Yes. I agree. So, I don't I don't even understand what the fuck he's talking about. Okay. It's hard to imagine a religion that's like, well, we're not saying there's a God or like an afterlife or any other kind of metaphysical structure of the universe or anything like that. But this is what, what do you believe if not that then? The definitional uh, truth. Just, just sort of spiritual. <laughs> the definitional truth of his religion, <laughs> anti-capitalism, has I mean, maybe, something to maybe, do with profit is theft. That's Maybe he's like talking about Anglicanism. Belief. Which is weird because a lot of religions do have prophets. <laughs> I mean, they all do. Okay. Hey, yo. No. Doesn't... No, don't encourage hey, don't encourage puns on the show. Uh, okay? Does Buddhism make supernatural claims? Does, doesn't Buddhism believe in reincarnation? Wouldn't that be yeah. a supernatural claim? Different does sects it of about Buddhism. Step, stepping off the wheel of the universe? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a yeah, metaphysical but there is claim one of those. Yeah, about the supernatural, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have to believe in gods to believe in the supernatural. I'm not Dip saying you do. I'm, I'm just yeah. saying. I say like in Buddhism, that's I think that's what it is. But I think they do. I, I don't think it's like a like they accept that gods exist or something, right? I don't think so. I don't think Buddhism has gods, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think it, is kind of, Buddhism does Buddhism have a god? I, Buddhism I'm not do not has a god. Believe in I'm a deity. No, it's reincarnation. It gods exist. Buddhism they, is not a theistic religion. But they do believe in supernatural figures. Yes, you can have supernatural figures, but you don't have to have a god necessarily. Reincarnation is quite literally supernatural. Yes. That yes, of course. Good. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think there's a sp any religion that fits whatever the fuck he's talking about. They have that elephant girl boss. The elephant no, that's him. That's first of all. That's Hinduism, you bigot. Okay. That's yeah. Hinduism. Yeah. You that's... Horrible bigot. You think all East Asian religions are the same, Adam? No. <laughs> just kidding. That's Ganesh. I just don't have a catalog. And she's thick as fuck, boys. She she Boy. Yeah. She's she can hot. give so many handy manies at once. I know. It's, it'll blow oh, your no. mind. She could drive wow. the price down to 20 bucks because wow. the, the supply she is so great. With her trunk, too. Man, I'm telling you. The ancient Terrible. Egyptians had it down in the Hindu. Yeah, get crazy. Let's go nuts. God's an old man with a beard. Boring. Scholars Carol M. Cusack and Venetia Laura DeLong. What is what is this picture that we're looking at here? Is this a sister of battle? Uh, no. No? Okay. This, it, she we, has the claws on her fingers, so I just... Not nearly well armored enough. Uh, I gotcha. Armored in faith. Or something. No, I'm Bono not. Robertson explained uh, religion is today studied as not exclusively a tradition based or faith. Did you get the title there? The title there is very telling. A no, cohesive set of traditions. Scholars care. The sacred 
Oh, the fantastic fathoms. Yeah, exactly. Essay on the intersection of religion and pop culture. Of course, it's intersectionalism. Earl M. Cusack and Venetia Laura Delano Robertson explain religion is today studied as just not as a, a quick a thing. Like this, it, the, the concept practice. of an intersection between two things is actually a metaphysical claim. Like they're claiming that they are somehow intersecting, like as if there's a continuum of them. Uh, and so it's like, okay, where is it? What, what like they relate about? to the like they relate yeah. to each other in some way. They yeah, cross yeah. over yeah. in some yeah. Yeah, oh, and like like there has to be for them to intersect they have to have something that is intersecting yeah right? some so causal connection like, yeah exactly so there has to be some sort of like you know metaphysical web that they're talking about here and so like, no, i just reject all of this box unless it's they're all. talking about like conceptually their ideas sort well, of are similar enough. but a rationale an experience so when scholars of religion compare the experiences of disney adults to those of religious don't drink that. Kids have been peeing in it. People have been throwing money in that shit. Don't, don't, don't drink the Disney water. Okay. Let's let, let's pause the comedy show for just a moment. Don't drink right. the Disney fountain water. All right. <laughs> They're not asserting that a Disney file drinking water from each of the park's fountains believes himself to be consuming the literal, oh. transubstantiated blood of his Lord and Savior, Donald Duck. Nor do they mean that. Why is he even showing? I mean, it's so obvious that guy's just doing it because it's like a funny video. Like, yeah. yeah, it's just a funny video. little video. Yeah. He's trying yeah. to get clicks. This is now, this actually religion. looks cool. Look, if you drank from all the fountains in Disney World Land, it's just like, okay, I. Okay, whatever. I'm pretty sure that's her how you get herpes or monkeypox. Oh, because how. those fountains are hella gay. <laughs> I'm not gonna just say it's just it's like foul. But someone brought to tears by a fireworks display truly believe That's pretty cool. Listen, like got some yeah, lady I mean, flying cool. around as Tinkerbell with like an LED light suit. I'm I'm on board with that. That's pretty that is pretty cool. That is legitimately cool, actually. Nor you know do what they she's mean saying? She's going, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Jesus, that's terrifying. It's like, oh yeah. my God. She gets hazard pay at Disney World. I would hope so. <laughs> we lost a Tinkerbell. Get us another Tinkerbell. <laughs> Tinkerbell. Quickly, everyone in the crowd. Oh my gosh, she just falls to her death. And then they're like, everyone clap. <laughs> we <have to> pray. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> well, the problem is she didn't have happy thoughts. That's why she couldn't fly back up. It's okay, children. She wasn't a real believer. That's why she fell. It's fine. It's fine. We'll just sprinkle pixie dust on her back at yes. the hospital and she'll be fine. Oh <laughs> Here's by a fireworks display. Truly believes. Why is there a big skull on the castle? What am I looking at? Probably a pirate thing. Because it's a skull and crossbones and Disney's got the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. Yeah, of course. Maybe. You don't know your Disney lore. Yeah, it's Pirates of the Caribbean. Obviously. You're not a real. You're not a real fan. <laughs> I don't. Know. I feel like the Pirates of the Caribbean flag looked very different than that. I, it's just generic it had swords. Pirate. I was right. Yeah, it had it, swords. It doesn't have it, that. It just. It just has to be generic pirate, and that's okay. enough. Oh no, there's one with that has has bones, but it's like has a red bandana on it. So whatever. Themselves to be witnessing fairy magic. Instead, they see Disney lovers as participating in a secularized version of religious fervor, in which tattoos. they encounter a deeply personal and experiential connection to something bigger than themselves. So clearly, yeah, words, there's been some words. scholarly discussion. I mean, it's shut basically up. just, yeah, we're all fans of a thing, is essentially what yeah. that is. And they pull meaning from that, which oh, is experiential. Fine. Just don't take it. Oh. Yeah, it's like, just don't take it too far, enjoy it healthily, and it's fine. Yeah. Some justify viewing fandom's embrace of culture as a kind of replacement for religion. Others think that fans are doing something fair. It's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. You're already black. That other guy had to work. Oh, somewhere. wow. Yeah, wow. Oh, you're good. Let me guess. A Wharf cosplay <laughs> again this year. Wow. It, yeah. it is, okay, that's the question. Is dressing up like a Klingon? Is that blackface? Uh, we have to, well, if, if only Michael Dorn were here. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, know. they've had Ooh. white actors play Klingons and they, you know, they put the brown if, makeup on them. Yeah, I guess if it's another species, it gets a pass, but it gets a pass for a reason that I don't think there's any good reason behind. We just, because I don't, I don't well, care. Well, I mean, you're not myself, dressing up as like so. a person, so, or like what if a you, human. Well, well you know? what if you dressed up as, oh, what if you were, you specifically dressed up as Michael Dorn playing Worf? That would be blackface. Oh, but if that's... you dressed up, <laughs> but if you dressed up as Worf, 
then that wouldn't be blackface. So your intentions are very important. Because if you no, went to the convention and said, yes. and they said, are you Worf? And you're like, no, I'm Michael Dorn. They'd like, you're like oh. That would oh, actually be funny. You have someone goes into a convention <laughs> as Worf and everyone's fine with it. And then they go into the, the same person goes into the convention as Michael Dorn and suddenly they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. So we're joined by uh, some kind of uh, Stoat? Some kind of Buddhist or something. Like a, it was some you can tell weasel. he's a Buddhist because of the cigarette. Would you, someone incense. wants to explain Buddhism That's to us. Sacred <laughs> I heard you saying a bunch of dumb shit. What, no. are, what are we saying wrong about <laughs> Buddhism? Okay. I, Thank you, I don't, Boomer. I don't, I don't remember exactly. What, what, what were you saying about it? Uh, you were that saying Buddhism, Buddhism sucks? is the true religion, and it is the one way, and that we are all trying to reach Nirvana through wisecrack. That's no, we, we said here. Buddhism okay, makes supernatural base. claims, and I don't know why they were saying it doesn't. Well, I don't uh, know if they were saying it didn't. This is why I was talking about how it's important to edit your video visuals, because right. visuals are important. So if you throw something on screen, you will assume that it has something to do with what you're saying. And if your video is poorly edited, I don't know if that's your intention or not. Uh, okay. Supernatural they, claims would... Sorry, go ahead. They were saying that... Uh, they were they were putting up Buddhist like a Buddhist ceremony while saying that a religion doesn't uh, might not make claims about an ultimate truth or something like that, which obviously all religions do, right? So, which was confusing. So we got to talking about Buddhism, and uh, oh, it was well, a that, little. That sounds that sounds for the most part accurate about Buddhism. So like part part of the like the first asterisk you have to add is that there isn't like a set of beliefs that all Buddhists agree on the way that you would have with like basically any other religion, but. Like the founder of Buddhism was ex what? explicitly on, against on, what? Fool's claims. You think all believers of all other religions believe the do, same thing? Yes, yes. I think that all Christians think that Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah, I do think that. Uh, there is a okay, set of beliefs well, that are shared okay, by basically no, everyone. No, no, no. Hang on a second. Uh oh. It's not as simple. Are, as we, are we gonna start talking about fucking Arius? If you want. Oh, but <laughs> wait. What is Arius? <laughs> we we can we How can get into the oh my god and so and and it's. And like there are a lot, there the, the are nature lots of the support. Trinity. There's all these autistic arguments about. Do, Christian do you want to get into the Albert? They all, we can... all, all of Christianity, uh, all of Christians Which by God? definition believe that right? Jesus is. Well, okay. Well, maybe we can circumvent this argument. Okay. I would assume that Buddhism has a gen. I thought like you know, the four it has noble to have truths. core beliefs there's to some distinguish core Buddhists beliefs. from non-Buddhists. Yes, so the four they would truths, all agree yeah, but different... on. But then different sects, so different yeah. people would kind of have different beliefs about other different elements of the religion, right? Yeah, then, um, then it's it's settled. Well, it's done. Well, no, they it's, believe that, in that, ultimate that, truths. That, that's what I'm saying. It's dialectical. It's not settled. Like people have different interpretations of the four noble. Yeah, truths, but there's some core that beliefs sense. that that is like you have to believe these to be Buddhist in the first place, right? Not How do you really? distinguish a Buddhist from a non-Buddhist? Well, that's that's what I'm like. I don't know that you can. Like lots of Buddhists don't call themselves Buddhists for exactly. It's it's complicated. They're a Buddhist <laughs> and they don't know it. No, it, calling yourself a Buddhist could be like bad through the tenets of Buddhism for a variety of reasons. It could be seen as an attachment. It could be clinging to like a, an illegitimate thought form. For a bunch of reasons, Buddhists might not call themselves Buddhists. So like, is there any Buddhist Buddhists who doesn't believe in Nirvana? Uh, yeah. And, and like, there's there there are like, there are Buddhist sects that believe in supernatural claims and gods and stuff and think that like Buddha is literally a god and believe in all, all sorts of stuff. In fact, probably about half of the sects I would, I'm guessing would like literally believe in reincarnation, literally believe in stuff like that, but half of them don't. So, wow. like, so go, wait, Gotama is, didn't. Is there, there's no, is there even like one core belief that all Buddhists have to share like Christianity or I Judaism or so. anything? That's so bizarre. I don't even know. How does that even function as a religion? Well, it's not a. It's more of a philosophy than a religion. Oh, like it's lame. not real. It's not really a religion. I mean, how are you defining religion? I mean, the, <laughs> even if like such as law. No, but even a philosophy, I would say, like a philosophy has to have core tenets that people follow. Like if if anyone could believe anything, that's not a you know set philosophy. Well, it, Buddhism isn't for the. I mean, again, you have to add asterisk to every statement. Mm -hmm. The the wider beliefs in Buddhism, the things that you would find a lot of people would reiterate very similar things. They aren't trying to explain the nature of the universe. Buddhism, the goal of Buddhism is like to eradicate suffering in this lifetime. Right. I so. understand that. But okay, like do 90% of Buddhists believe something, you know, like one idea? Like 
probably 90% of Buddhists have the same idea of the Four Noble Truths. Okay. So I would say- like the Eightfold Path. There's not right. going to be that much deviation. Okay. I, mean, I like, would say that that's a core tenet that you kind of have to believe that to be Buddhist and that there's this weirdo outliers that believe some other weird shit that maybe they're not really Buddhist. Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, could, I'm sure there's some, like, I don't know, like Jew, not Jews for Jesus. What's the- um, <laughs> Jews for Jesus. There's like the Christian version of Jews Jew, for Jesus. Jesus was Jewish. Well, what regard? I don't know. I forgot what I was going with that. But I'm just saying, like, I'm sure there's some Christian sects that I don't know. Maybe they don't believe that Jesus was like the literal Son of God or something. And I'm like, never well, are they really Christian then? Do Jews for Jesus I think believe be Jesus was the Son of God or no? I, Wait, did what? Did what now? I, don't I believe they know do. Who? Jews for Jesus. Do. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about the Jews for I'm Jesus. With Doom, I'm with Doomer. That's just the central the central axiom of Christianity is that Jesus was the son of God. I don't know how you can call yourself Christian and not believe that. Uh, Jews for Jesus believe that Jesus was a Messiah that died. For yes. The, okay, well, to be fair, it, Carl, okay. Carl is right that like there's fuckloads of different kinds of Christians and they have a lot of disagreements about like almost everything. everything. So, of right, course, yeah, everything, of yeah. course. But I think like at some level there are some axioms. Yeah, there's that, a central point relating to yeah. Jesus that they all have to by definition believe or else you can't be which God well, they, Adam. well the thing is the thing is there's different <laughs> oh, no. like they, the simulation there's God of course Carl Jeez. there's a lot of arguments about the Trinity and stuff well either e Trinity or not Jesus being divine is its own thing J Mac our surrogate father for $20 thanks so much says Doomer 100% dated a Buddhist did you, <laughs> did you? I, have not, I have not dated a Buddhist Oh, okay. Did you didn't. Know. You didn't get into all this stuff to just to, uh, you know, make it with some chick. He was trying. Look, no, that's it was, why I learned it German. Was, <laughs> he tried to find his way in the world, and he tried out Buddhism, and he couldn't put his legs up like that, so they kicked him out. He downloaded <laughs> Sam that, Harris. That actually, is, app. that's not entirely untrue. I can't do Lotus position at all, dude. That shit hurts. Lotus position. That's in the. That's in Hindu. That's in the. That's in the. What's I, their sex book? Uh, the, the Kama, Kama Sutra. Sutra? It's, Kama Sutra. I mean, it's that's also the like, lotus positions in there. Do, doing meditating in the lotus position is also like the main thing for one of the two leading Buddhist sects. So it's also a Buddhist thing. I bet Ganesh has some crazy stuff in the Ganesh. Uh, How does Ganesh do Kama lotus Sutra? Position? He's a fucking elephant. No, I, I mean like the uh, Kama Sutra for people who have like six arms and trunks and everything. That must be wild. <laughs> six arms and trunks. I mean, imagine what the <laughs> imagine what the spider Kama Sutra is like. Oh my God! All this <laughs> like. Someone says there are a lot of Christians who don't literally believe that Jesus is part of the Triune God, the Trinity. The, yeah. The so God? there, there, are, there are good, some yeah. uh, sects of they, they Christianity, like right. Catholicism, think that God is three things and also yeah. one thing, and it's very strange. Right. But they like Catholic, like Catholics. When I was raised, you had the Trinity, which is uh, one of the things you know they go for. But a whole argument. at the end of the day, there's still you have to like follow Jesus and think Jesus is divine and to be mm -hmm. like Christian. There's a whole argument between Christians who make the claim that Jesus is the Son of God and Christians over if Christ or, or, or if the ones that say he's not Son of God are in fact Christian. I would I would say definition. I think as long think, as he's divine in his in his, I think that's the core thing. You have to believe that Jesus of Nazareth was a divine being. Who yes. either spoke for God the or whole, essentially is God. The whole narrative right. falls apart, though, if he's not the Son of God. What? Because the whole the whole narrative is that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and that God made Himself human. So that, that was he kind of the post hoc story, himself. though, Adam. It's all post. Adam, don't, don't I mean, take I just, the Jewish man's word on what the the, the rationalization no, the, there of is, Christianity. There was a lot of weirdness. Just, like, reading what someone every, wrote wow. every single yeah. narrative. Carl, Carl on the JQ. <laughs> No, yeah, there's a lot of uh, well, there's a lot of weirdness. Well, that comes the with Jewish early opinion of Jesus is not going to be wrong. Wait a minute, Jesus. do you okay. listen to the Jew? Wait, wait, wait. Do you think that that Christians that don't believe in the divinity of Jesus should be considered Christians? I don't, I don't I mean, think no, people I don't. do. No, so I think them I think they all I think all yeah, Christians I, do. I think that's I, the, I think one that's probably, single yeah. uniting factor. I mean, they're all of course theists. But, kind of also what I'm getting at is like most Christians believe in the Bible to some extent. There's like obviously vastly different interpretations. Yeah, but that, I think a lot as to of like how they interpret it. But like, do you not know the narrative story? Do you not know the narrative story of like 
I mean, there's an inner logic to the story, a consistency that's Do I not know the narrative essential. story of what? Yeah. Of the I'm, sure Sitch, I'm sure Sitch knows all about Jesus being... I, I know the narrative story of the New Testament. I don't right. understand why you're asking. Jesus was the one who fulfilled the prophecies in the Old Testament that he's the son of God coming to sacrifice no no no, no. You see, you're, you're conflating the sins this, this, this is your christian this is your wait this is your christian upbringing okay <laughs> jesus when he like in the story contemporary of the story did not did not think he was there was no prophecy that the son of god was going to come down in jewish lore okay there was a prophecy that a messiah like moses would be born who would lead you know the jews to yes, you know this the is second the difference promised land between or the or bring jews, heaven on earth or right whatever. the jews don't right. believe that the messiah has come and the Christians yes. do, and that Jesus was that Messiah. I understand that. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But the whole idea that like God gave you know the Earth His Son, and that He died for the sins of humanity—that was all like that's all after the fact. That right. Was a, that no. was a rationalization after the Jew, fact. Jews do not buy into that narrative. No, all. even in the Bible, yeah. Jesus never says, "I'm here to die for the sins of man." Jesus never talks about original sin. Okay, we're getting into a theological debate. I know we but, are, but... but original sense Augustine, right? I think so, yeah. No. So, I mean, you, you I lose... I think original sin is also one of those things that all Christians believe. No, I, I think it's just Catholic. Catholic. No, no, it's, no, it's just, just Catholic. Catholic. Is there no... Protestants there's no, like, humans are fallen, sin? or that sin is essentially, call it what you may, but isn't that a thing that every Christian believes in to some oh, degree? Oh, my God. No. How did, how, you said you went Catholic. to Catholic school. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, so I so I could tell you what the Catholics think about it, but I'm, talk, I'm talking about all Christians. Catholics lots are of, Christians. Lots of I'm Protestants asking. don't think that. Lots of Protestants okay. don't think that. And like most issues like intercessory prayer, there's like a huge like difference in how people think about that. Do Catholics uh, not believe in the idea that Jesus died for the sins of the world and that you, yeah, the only way yeah, that you can saying, get into heaven well, Catholics is are polytheists. You, Yes. Yes. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> because they believe. <laughs> really? Yeah, because they, they think that. I'm, yeah, I was actually on the cusp of saying, I'm not even being called Catholics and yes. Christians. So, yeah. I, I, I specifically said that to troll you, Carl. <laughs> oh, I totally agree. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The rationalization that the Catholics Carl's have is atheist, that God so. is one person, but there's yeah. like three people in that person. Yeah. So Carl is a cultural Protestant. That, of okay. course, is not a rationalization yeah. in any way, shape, or form, but. So the best, is the best explanation, uh, the best explanation of the Trinity, by the way, is in a movie called "This Is the End," where they compare it to Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's wow. quite a good one, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's quite good. But uh, no, I I, t I totally agree. They're, they're the pagans of the monotheistic re yeah. religions. Catholics will never say that they are polytheist, but they will make they will do their best to explain their, how God is three lists. people in. Yeah. Yeah, they'll yeah, do their best to look tell look you that this one God who is also three gods is one God. And then, and then just... they give you the Todd Howard face where it's just, it just works. And it's like, it just okay. works. It, it like, just works. Well, yeah. the, thing that, the thing I find weird is that, like, I think Jesus is, like, number five on their list of most prayed to people or some shit. Like, that seems a bit <laughs> off. <laughs> let, me, let me Google that. Most prayed to people. That's hilarious, though. It's like, yeah, so you love Jesus. Well, you know. Yeah, Catholics sometimes. have like, an accessory prayer going on, yeah. Yeah. So like, to any Protestants yeah. listening, is this is this true that Protestants? Don't, I could have swore Protestants believed in original sin. No, I'm pretty, pretty sure it's news Catholic. to me. But. Sure I assume Catholic. that there was some state of fallenness that human beings inherently have, and they have to be saved by God through whatever means in order to. Well, honestly, I think salvation. this is the weakness of Protestantism is actually mm. not being able to. There's no enforcement just, mechanism. No, 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 not pathologizing the innate nature of humans. Right. A lot of people want because to if because if you're not fallen in some form, then you don't need God to offer you salvation for something. So I assumed all Christians, yeah. in some way, viewed humans as fallen, whether you no, call no, no. it original it, sin or whatever. You you can you sin obviously, but um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't. Th this is what makes like the Irish so weird, is that they're, they're very highly strung about stuff, whereas the Protestants aren't. I'm getting a lot of mixed. Uh... A lot of mixed messages about whether Protestants believe in original sin or not. I'm going to have a look at this. I'm, okay. I'm going to look at that. I mean, I, my, I says, would say yes, but... Protestant reformers such as Martin Luther and John Calvin equated original sin with concupiscence or hurtful desire, affirming that it persisted even after baptism and completely destroyed freedom to do good, proposing that original sin involved a loss of free will except a sin. Ooh. Hmm. Then what did Jesus die for? Lol, Christians thinking they have free will. Am I right, guys? But 
we can carry on with our Star Trek. Okay. Okay. Before we get too deep into the weeds of Of all the religions. What's that on this video? We're talking about is Disney a religion? No, but like, of course, Doomer agrees that Disney is a religion. He (laughs) told us before the stream, he came in and he said, yes, he goes to all the meetings. We're watching um, a second video. Actually. There's a part two to this video. What are you talking about? Are you? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry Doomer. I, I, I said, I said I wouldn't tell him, but I did. Rags, are okay. you an atheist you now? Me. You were raised Catholic. Are you an atheist now? You sound like I, you might be. I am an atheist. Yes. Oh, okay. I yeah. was Catholic um, up until college. Up until you where got my first year of college, I would. No, uh, the priests I knew were actually really great guys. Oh, okay. um, well, that's good. they were pretty neat. They were good people. Glad to hear. Um, my parents are still quite religious, um, and most of my family is, but I, I am not. I am not religious. I'm an atheist. Uh, someone said, as Protestant, original sin was taught, and we taught Jesus died to remove original sin. Uh, someone else says, Protestants believe in original sin. Someone said they don't. Oh, and someone I, said, original found, sin is referred to several times, but the term isn't used. <clears throat> I found it. Well, it, it's it's actually uh, they they appear to have redefined uh, at least in Anglicanism, right? Mm-hmm. So, from a 1938 report on the doctrine of the Church of England, which is amazing, I didn't realize the Church of England had a doctrine. Uh, basically, I assume um, every church has doctrine. O- original sin is not being an Anglican. <laughs> oh, so it's an Anglican thing. Interesting. <laughs> so, if you're an Anglican, you well that so you got to be if, if born you're an Anglican, as a religion. You don't have original sin because you you you, you uh, are with God by being an Anglican. But uh, well, that means you still have it. You basically, just got you've got original sin. Right. <laughs> Interesting. Based, All I know is that the Pope based said God pilled. Yeah. The, the Pope hilarious. said that aliens don't have original sin. So what? There you go. In the Catholic Church, the this is one of the questions that I asked. But um, uh, I said, is what about aliens? Like, in as far as I know, Catholic doctrine and everything has no problem with the existence of aliens. <laughs> so, all <laughs> right, you know, fair I'm saying the the Pope literally said like ten years ago, uh, if there are aliens out there, they don't, they're not original sinners. So there you go. They didn't eat from the apple, you know, the tree of knowledge or whatever. Well, to so be fair, only two people them. ate from the fucking yeah. apple, but I fuck me, I guess. So, <laughs> well, would there be a point? There would be no point to converting aliens. Because they don't have a real sense. Well, that's the... Imagine, imagine the Mormons landing on a fucking foreign planet trying to convert aliens. Just imagine Mormons. <laughs> it's part of their pilgrimage. Well, there, there is a there is a religious belief that uh, is out there among certain people that because like if you came across a, a, a tribe in the middle of nowhere who'd never heard about God, then they legitimately have an excuse for not believing in him because they haven't been preached to. So it's best to let them live and die under that so that they get a pass to heaven because, you know, well, no one preached to you. So it's very strange. <laughs> There's so all kinds get, of different like, different like, different like getting it on a technicality. Aliens get the free – everyone – basically what – what we're trying to say is that everyone in Warhammer 40K is going to heaven. So, nice. so, so heaven is full of aliens and uncontacted tribes. <laughs> that would be amazing if you get up there and actually you're like the only one out of a thousand people are human and everyone else is just an alien from somewhere else in the universe. But that means that hell is like full people of Christians. Clicking. Nice. Yeah. But, but Carl, we knew that. Yeah, we already well, knew that. Well, I never that. really thought about it. It's self-imposed. Is well, full of not a bunch really. Of if you don't get, going, yeah, you don't get saved, then the default place you go to is hell. It's it's a very listen. There's a reason I'm not Christian anymore. This shit is fucked up. I thought mm-hmm. a lot of Christian theology said even un you know undiscovered tribes De- would go depends, to hell. It depends. Yes. Well, Catholicism didn't say that. In Catholicism, you could get to heaven if like you if you were in like a tribe that never heard about god but you still were a good person you'd get a pass to get in heaven anyway um and Hmm. some stuff like that it wasn't uh so you you got a couple exceptions i forget what they were all for but there were some ways to get into heaven i believe if you didn't if you weren't uh, big into the jesus or didn't know about him or or wasn't christian something like that but i think there are ways for i don't know there might be ways for atheists to get into heaven but i'm not sure it's been a while since I, I know. heard about a lot of this. In Dante's Inferno, they were all stuck on that. Uh, you know, like it wasn't quite hell, but it was like the outskirts. Purgatory. Yeah. It wasn't purgatory. It was no. like um, the plane of kings or something. Hang on a second. So, right. Can you even imagine speaking to an atheist in heaven? 
I don't believe it. Would be pretty cool. You, you have a very have, smug. You have a very well, smug yeah. look on your face when it's well, here yeah. in in heaven. They wouldn't be an atheist anymore. They'd be yes, just like, right. well, I guess. Yeah, I guess there is a god. This is strange. I guess I'm wrong, but I still <laughs> I made it, bitches. Guess I was wrong. You know. <laughs> By the way, someone in chat said the fruit. Uh, the the fruit of truth is never described as an apple. It's never described. Period. That's true. Yeah, it yeah, is not true. described as an apple. Uh, calling it an apple is just church tradition. Well, wasn't the 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 word apple like it just meant fruit? Like it was used like uh, sure. you know, non-scriptally back then. As far as I know, it was just called fruit. Uh, the yeah. tree of the knowledge of good and evil had fruit on it that was yeah. uh, eaten, but yes. it was. I don't think it was ever specifically an apple. In much the same way, I, the it's not a snake in the garden; it's a serpent, and which are technically different in the way that it was written. Right. But church tradition, artistic representation, you know that sort of thing. It just happens. So St. Patrick drove details. all the snakes into the sea, and someone's like, "It, it was serpent, mate." So you'll get you'll get to the gates the of heaven because the irish are like, very pedantic about that sort of thing all, all of those fucking snakes <laughs> are drowned now and st patrick's like yeah i did a good job and god's like nah it wasn't wasn't killed all of my little creatures all yeah, my little, I made all my little serpent boys what do they do mm -hmm. to you yeah whatever they're they're more I, I made them to where they're more afraid of you than you are of them i mean come on. adam and eve is a very obvious metaphor for like growing up like your child and you're like don't do this one thing and then they gain you know they gain knowledge of being a teenager and being horny and puberty all that stuff. And yeah that's, a, that's up, the one know. way to there's a lot of ways to of, interpret of that. course the jew is a heretic of course Oof. of well, course yeah. i mean well yeah no okay. Sitch, you Buddhist. turn around and say no you christians are heretics he's not even christian he's a he's like a former i think Buddhist. the cleons he's are heretics you Christianity is a Jewish heresy. You, you. That is that. true. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. yeah. Fight back. Never let him forget it, Sitch. Yeah. I'm so not Say, Jewish. We're the it just OG. Doesn't even... <laughs> Sorry, he's not a Christian. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you Christians, <laughs> you're the true heretics. It, you, you know, is it like you know the Mormon Christians look at Mormons as like they're the heretics? They added a third Messiah. We're like, well, you added a second Messiah. Well, I think the the, the Mormons have like a God for every plan or, or some shit like that. Yeah, that's very bizarre. But the Mormons bizarre. are the Mormons are free to think whatever they want. It is a free country. God, of course. Them. Sitch believes in the supernatural, though. I mean, he's. I think he's the only one on the really? panel that does. Yeah, that is true. Really? In, in, what, in what natural, way? I'm a theist. Oh, interesting. So there you go. A theist or a deist? A theist. Oh my goodness gracious! What's yeah. its so what name? Fee? What what god do you believe what in? You I'm not going to talk about this. Column <laughs> seven. I deny. What? What up? Because what it's like a whole thing. The vengeful god of the old Yes, it is. it is. It is. I believe that. Actually, I don't even think That's there is the hell in, in like the Jewish Torah at all. No, there's really talk about yeah. the afterlife. Very no, there's much, Sheol. There's yeah. They don't really talk about it. I think the afterlife is the ground and everyone moves on. Yeah, kind of sucks. That's yeah, why that's people that's say the, the, of the afterlife. Yeah. Well, people is say it? that the Old Testament yeah, is yeah. worse than the New Testament, but remember, it was based? in the New Testament where Jesus. How, wait, talks how is about being dead forever based? Because that's that's the truth. It's based in reality. Oh, I say, I yeah, say. it's based in epistemology. I say. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's not burning to death forever because you well, made a mistake. Well, I mean, if that's your choice, I would agree. <laughs> your choices are <laughs> dead or hell, then yeah, sure, I'll choose death. Also, you get to go around burning cities. I mean, you know, Old Testament is pretty cool. There you go, based. You don't see many Hittites different. anymore. I'll say that. <laughs> no, it was so the um, it so was the, the HQ. There's we, we uh, took care of that. You know? No, it was the Amalekites. Mm. Uh, it was more than one. It was more than one. Now the Hittites were a great empire. The Jews would never have taken them out. How well, did God's the Jews help. would have listen? Would have prayed to God really hard. And yeah, deliver. and as How's long as they didn't do... Okay. What do you mean? How, we have Israel, <laughs> the strongest, best country uh, in the middle of a sea of enemies. Listen, okay. How listen. If I'm if I'm visiting the Middle East, I'm visiting Israel. All right. There you go. And actually, what do you mean? We don't just have Israel. We also have America. You just don't realize it. <laughs> oh my goodness oh, gracious! Oh, oh, oh. I don't even have to leave. Uh, the academic agent is going to clip that out. Anyway, you talk about oh, no. Jews, I'll go pee and I'll be back. Okay, you enjoy. At Disney can properly be considered a religion. We think the best way to get to the bottom of this question is to step back and reconsider the question, what makes a religion anyway? And then we can see how much overlap there is between organized religion as it's commonly practiced and the habits and practices of the Disney adult community. 
One thing that's for sure is that there's no organized religion that says it's cool to leave menacing comments on the wedding photos of a gentle YouTube host. But we'll get to all that in part two, um, where we'll all- Every time he moves, I didn't realize until just now, he, he knocks his microphone. Do you see that? It's just constantly shaking. Wow. Wait, is, is this is this whole video like he got pissed off that people left comments on his Instagram photos? Yep. And he's yes, taking it out on it. everyone who watches Disney films. Is that someone actually someone made a video? response video to him? And he got well, no, no, no. He, someone made a response video, but I'm assuming he doesn't have the Disney wedding pictures because he seems kind of like down on the whole thing. No, he doesn't. He's saying like, "Don't go and attack someone else, please. I don't want the wisecrack audience, you know, bullying people." I'm uh, starting to feel a bit divinely inspired to create a religion that is dedicated to doing that as well. <laughs> to bullying wisecrack or religious? yeah, well, just uh, yeah, to, to leaving nasty messages on Instagram just because he said there isn't one. It's like yeah, there, there probably go. should be one, shouldn't there? There you go. He's making a good point. Also, be asking: Is there anything that Disney adults can tell us about contemporary society other than that the most important thing you can do when planning a wedding is keep your guest well fed and with fresh drinks in hand? So check back later this week to watch us try and answer all those questions once and for all. Assuming, of course, that a gang of irate Disney adults don't kidnap me first. So if you see me blink twice in the next video, I'm in trouble. Huh? Call for huh? help. In the huh? meantime, huh? let us know your thoughts on the Church of Walt. What do you want to bet the thing that the Disney people can tell you is capitalism bad? <laughs> what, well, the what Disney do want... people don't believe that because well, they obviously love capitalism. Yeah, but he's saying, he's saying, what can we learn from this study of the Disney oh, people? Right, what right. wider thing about society can we determine? Yes. Do you want to guess what that wider thing is? I think you guessed correctly. No. In the con it's funny that it's directly related to his actual religion, which is <laughs> is capitalism what a bad. Yeah. All yeah, always. Mm. Everything seems to go one direction with his religion. It's very interesting. A big thanks to our patrons. Was this a sponsored video as well? And be sure. Yes. Sponsored by Jesus. Brilliant. No, sponsored, sponsored by uh, Keeps. Grow your hair. Yeah. Keeps. I don't know why this guy always wears a hat on every video. Yeah, probably. You should use I brought keeps. Up, I brought up the he hat should. too. <laughs> Honestly, right? I'm when I when I've got some time, I'm just gonna go through all of the fucking bread tubers who do sponsorships and do a big super cut of just them saying this video. Is sponsored oh, by that Boom. would be so good. And, and then <laughs> capitalism bad. This video is sponsored by Boom, and just this like hour long super cut. But that they're just gonna epic. they're just gonna make the peasant cartoon at you, and that'll definitely yeah. win the argument. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I'll reply to them with the fucking crying soy face with the smug face mask on it. So yeah, yeah you keep crying. You Can't keep we make society crying. marginally better? No, 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 no. The thing is, right, the, the, the thing I love about this is you will never be able to to do that with me. I've never done a fucking sponsored video. You guys have never done a sponsored video. By the way, yeah. it's fine to do a sponsored video. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You Sounds know, like don't, someone don't did a sponsored that, video. Just don't do them and say that it's bad. Well, yeah, just exactly. don't. You can't do a sponsored video and then hate capitalism, essentially. But, it, but no, even if you do, right? A, you get the crying soy wojack, right? But right. B, right? You don't actually have to do sponsorships. Like, we don't. Yeah. Like, we, we don't do sponsorships. We we have an authentic product instead, right? Yeah. It, it, and it's not say like say like it's not wrong to do a sponsorship. It's fine, you know. I just personally don't want to do them. I would rather totally you know, lose fine. out on extra money that I could make, right? But these these fucking greedy leftists are just like, well, yeah. I mean, I am going to sell my soul to capitalism Socialists and hate every make the second best of capitalist. it, just so I can yeah, exactly so I can cash in on capitalism. Like you don't have to, you know. This is if it, spiritually, if it's destroying you, open a fucking Patreon, mate. Or I, if you think your content, he has a Patreon. I mean, That's a thing. Look at all those patrons. He's just greedy as yeah. fuck. I so want fun. you to know, Carl. It took every ounce of my free will to not click insert ad the moment you started saying what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's ah, just right. for the sake of comedy. Is that what you can do now? You can while you're streaming, you can you click can a hit a insert ad button. Ad. Yeah, like on That's Twitch. Interesting. That's yeah. neat. Like if you have to take a break, like me, I have to pee a lot because I drink a lot of water. Right. So I could be like, I'm gonna go uh, drain the lock. And here's I'll an hit ad. the insert ad button. And yeah, then that's what Twitch streamers do. Interesting. I think we we tested out. I think a lot of people don't see the ad though. I don't know if it's because they have ad, ad block, block on maybe. or they're members or something, but members probably don't see the ads and yeah, everybody has ad block. Yeah. Right. The members have to wait for me to finish peeing with <laughs> Well, it's interesting here though, I think, is that they've got three million subscribers and five hundred and two patrons. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wow. their views are very 
Like this video only has eighty eight thousand views. I've, or I've, million oh, subs. I guess yeah. a lot of these old. I bet Wisecracks probably is it a really old channel? It's been it around is, for a yeah, long yeah. time. Yeah. That's, That's probably light why. on the patrons, huh? I, I've noticed. I, I just did a bunch of YouTube research, and I noticed a very strong oh, negative oh. correlation. Oh, whoa, whoa. oh! Look at you, YouTube researching. So yeah, yeah. Is that I'm when you search? Is that when you search nude <laughs> yoga on YouTube and see what yes. comes up? See if it comes yes. up. Yes, I'll tell you one thing that comes. I up. just sit around. And, anyway, there's a very strong <laughs> negative correlation between how many patrons someone has and like whether or not they do sponsorships. I, I don't know exactly why. Really? But like people who do sponsorships tend to not have very many patrons. And if you look at the people who have like fuckloads of patrons, almost none of them do sponsorships. What that make? What do you mean? Doesn't that make perfect sense? If you have enough yeah. patrons, you don't you don't do spon- you don't need to do sponsorships. Right. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people sense. still would anyway. I probably wouldn't, but a lot it's of people. A, I think a lot of it probably depends on how they're done. Like, if you have a sponsorship, but you do it in a way that's not just read the script, play the B roll, then. But if you make that ad or sponsorship part of your video, and you but you're like you inject your personality into it, and it's a legitimately good product that you use and can vouch for, that probably has a big part to do with it. Instead of just Raid Shadow Legends, it's the number one trending thing on the yeah, app store. And and, and I play the only the only day. person. The only person I've seen that probably doesn't get like dinged from like lose respect from their ads is Internet Historian because his ads are actually pretty good. You're not going to do sponsorships, are you, Doomer? Because I don't like them. Um, probably not. I mean, I don't know. Good. I think you should do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have a fucking audience big enough to do sponsorships for a while. Good. I think we should do sponsorships on this stream. Really? You should sponsor Judaism. I hate sponsorships. No, we should do Raid Shadow Legends. Why be you when you can be Jew? Hey, you should hey. write the taglines for these or the bylines for these. These are great. It, but by the, uh, by the do, way, do, Chad, do, 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 do. you guys have to do sponsorships so I can include Adam in the crying leftist soy jack. Oh, no. <laughs> there's, there's all these there's all these people in chat like YouTube research, LOL. It is not easy to make a good YouTube channel, you bunch of degenerates. It's that pretty hard. That is true. Me and Adam just wing it and we suck. So, you know, like, I've heard I've heard so many people say like, oh, dude, YouTube's easy. It's like, OK, you make a fucking YouTube channel. Yeah, it's not yeah. easy. Do you want to know what Wisecrack's most viewed video is? Is it something uh, with Star Wars? No idea. Anti-capitalism. Oh, Carl knew exactly what it was. What is it? The what philosophy Rick and... of Rick and Morty. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, God. Really? 8.6 million views from six years ago. Honestly, Rick and Morty, when, when the civilization collapses, Right, and historians of the future are looking around, to see like one sort of cultural touchstone <laughs> that explains why civilization collapsed. It'll be that. Wow, I didn't know he has this strong feelings. Yeah, of Rick was and it Morty. Dan Harmon? Oh, Rick and Morty. That, right, there's something genuinely poisonous about it. I, I, I used, to, I watched the first couple of seasons. I quite enjoyed them. Right. Yeah, well, I, haven't I, watched watched for, I haven't watched it for ages. And uh-huh. me and my wife were sat there like you know one night and said, like, oh let's let's watch a new new episode of Rick and Morty. I was like, okay. And I was just sat there. I felt like I was being abused watching it. Right? I felt like, honestly, because it's just like this nonstop, like, boom, 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 boom. Things happening, things happening. Degeneracy, swearing, <laughs> awfulness, you know, like, no, no, really terrible stuff. Oh, no. Like, sounds awesome. Oh, like, well, you know, yeah, exactly. It sounds, it sounds great. great. Grandpa. It sounds awesome awesome. Because I know. of what your tastes are, right? But my tastes are very much more family friendly now because oh, of my dad, right? Yeah, my, right. My, my, tastes, my tastes are very much in the degeneracy, Carl. Right. Okay. Well, that's. You know. Bad luck for you, right? Carl's like, I used to love Rick and Morty. Carl, we live in a we live in a den of degeneracy. Okay, it's great for me. I can satiate my 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 lust for degeneracy anywhere I look. And bringing it back to what's going to be emblematic of the destruction of our culture. Oh no, Rick and Morty will be held up as that example where the degenerate (laughs) Doomer is like, yeah, I love this, and people will say, well, there we go. Like, like, is it that bad? Like, it, it, destroying, mean, I, destroying culture well, is great. Fuck Western honestly, culture. Honestly, I just felt like it was just because it was Burn like it, all it was extreme. It was so fucking extreme. It's like you know, I, I can't remember exactly what happened. In what episode was it? I, I know. I'm curious. Was it the train episode? That episode's hilarious. Where they I don't quote know. I don't, the I'm not saying test? it wasn't funny either. I what I'm saying is was really the 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 things it was claiming. Oh no, wasn't it like uh, like they go to some orgy planets and stuff like this and. Like, oh, that I can't remember fun. exactly what happened. Oh, Earthy planet sounds awesome. Are you I talking think... about? Are you talking about the one with the with the hive mind? Uh, no, Kennedy? there's an episode it was, it was where like I watched it. No, there's an episode where Rick and Summer keep going to worlds that are going to end, and like everyone's just having an orgy before the end happens. Right. Uh, so like, yeah, like the like, moral dilemma such... of like whether they should save the planet or not. But the the uh, right. So not the moral dilemma of do you go to an orgy with your own daughter? Right? That's well, not a moral dilemma. 
right. and that's fine. No, that's fine. Right. That's yeah, nice. exactly. That's that's what I mean. Like this, this that's is just I mean good family like, time. If that's a moral levels dilemma, of you're degeneracy, where it's just up. like you know, the, exactly the whole like the whole premise is incredibly fucked up, and then it just gets you know mad. Or are you talking about that. the dragon episode where like they're having the weird psychic threesome with the dragon? I mean, probably. That's I, pretty degenerate. <laughs> I can't remember. But the point is, like, like, this is all hitting you so fast. It's just like, there's so much terrible stuff in it. Mm -hmm. on, it, any, you know, any one bit of it. And then you realize, oh, this was just done for the shock value, right? This was just done. What, what's the worst, most crazy thing we do? It's like, okay, what am I Carl, getting out of Carl, if you, if you think of, if you can remember, like, the episode title, can you DM it to me so I can watch it? it sounds pretty I good. honestly it's, can't remember. I, I found it's if a he Rick the episode title, you can probably just... It's a Rick. <laughs> Very it's a Rick convenient Mort. It's the Captain Planet episode. Oh, nice. Where, cool Captain, where Morty has like a relationship with the stalker, Yandere, Captain Planet, female Captain Planet. What's up? Is it this one? A Yandere? Yes. What a is Rick Yandere? convenient Mort. Wormy's asking when we're going to go back to the video. I Wait, I just like the idea that, that Carl's like, I used to love... Rick and Morty, but then I no, I did. I didn't grandpa. love. <laughs> like, I, no, I, I, I enjoyed the first few, so probably the first season, maybe the second, and I enjoyed it as sort of a novelty. But like, sure. it seems to have got dramatically more degenerate over time. Um, I would agree that it's become more. I, I agree, it's become Extreme, darker. You know, well, like f far more pessimistic. I guess maybe. Yeah. Based. Because but... wokeness is losing, and they're upset about. I'll agree. It. I I think the I think the second. And third season were, I think third season. I don't know. I, I I think the last season was the weakest so far. I will agree with that. But, but not the, for degenerate way, reasons. It's but. just the, this this fucking nihilistic doomer attitude where it's just there. Like, you go. All we can there do is go. just tumble down into awfulness, and so we may as well just like dive headfirst into it. And it's yes, I, actually, I, yes. I can't stand it. It's it's such oh, a yes. cuck attitude. It's so cucked. I'm just like, no, this is the weakest, most pathetic thing in the world. I can't stand it. Mm. I'll keep going, Carl. Say it harder, Carl. <laughs> Step on me when you're saying I don't know what to say. It's pathetic. I, I, I really don't like it. Here, wait, 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 Carl. Let me put the ball gag in my mouth first. Okay, now repeat what you're saying. <laughs> repeat what you're saying. <laughs> That's like a good way, way to avoid a fight. Someone starts hitting you and you just start like getting off on it. They're like, oh God, I'm getting away from this. You, you could you could avoid a fight by just like giving such as media takes and people would be like, what the fuck? And glorious I think that's how you start bad? a fight. I completely disagree with you. Yeah, what was that all about? And glorious bastards. What was that? Is yeah, terrible. what was that? You want to talk about that, Sitch? What what? Oh my god. <laughs> you want to What's talk wrong about with we're not gonna bastards? talk, we're gonna go up and glorious bastards for another hour. He's like, like it's hell, inconsistent with history. I <laughs> So yeah, do you no, think it helps? It's Inglorious it's Bastards seriously. looks so boring. Everyone, I didn't even everyone go, everyone go rewind, you, rewind and listen to Sitch's review. He was like, the beginning's really good. It has good characters. You know, it has all these good components, but I just don't get it. No, so I, I, I think Sitch is upset. That they the, no, 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 no. Listen, the beginning part with like the girl character and then her like infiltrating the Nazis. I like all the stuff. All the stuff with like the Brad Pitt kill squad. It just is so pointless. Kill Nazis. It's, it's too pointless. much. Too much mm. testosterone. No, it's point. Killing a Nazi Listen, is its own reward, Sitch. I, I want my movies to have a point. I'm not a fucking one of these odd like. Oh, I you want to watch this slice of life. This. I'm just have enjoying point, life, like artistic, theme? artsy fartsy bullshit. There should be some point to the movie. And at the point, the point, movie you mean like is a just, theme, like a like a lesson or a message. Maybe. A moral. What, what, what do you mean, maybe? It's, well, no, it's very, it's a very point, important. A point isn't yeah, what, really what is a, point? a point. Isn't even really like a message. I mean, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Okay, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't. Sitch. I don't Sitch. like Sitch. that. It's just a wishful reimagining of. I wish history played out like this. It's like okay. I mean, I guess so. It just seems lame to me to do that. Okay, it's it's not just that. But give me give me one of your favorite movies and what the point of it is, so I understand what you mean by a point. Uh, don't do it, raging at you in the Don't do it, Sitch. This is a trick. Yeah. Why is it a trick? It's a trap. It's not this a. It's a not trick. a trick. It's a. Tool this is to nihilist. This is. Better this, is, this, is this is good. This is. This is good faith engagement, and Carl is just yeah, scared of it. Yeah, we need it. to. It's obviously a trick. We, do, we need to right. know. So you've completely point, got them over a barrel mm -hmm. here. You've mm -hmm. won this argument hands down. Thank you. It is absolutely pathetic to sit there and go. Oh, wouldn't it be nice? You're completely right. I just. I don't understand what the point of it. Like, why? What do you mean, my brain? Wait, 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 wait. Listen. If you want to enjoy that kind of content that's fine i'm not saying what you're wrong for doing it. i'm saying i mean? don't like that 
Yeah, if you want to enjoy these pointless, stupid movies, you can. You can be yeah. a fucking idiot if you yeah, want. If, yeah, listen, like if Rick, you want Rick and Morty. <laughs> A tiny, what, what tiny do you mean baby by a point? <laughs> doomer. If you want to be a tiny, tiny baby child and wish <laughs> that there was some fictional universe Ouch. where the Nazis were defeated, you know, earlier than they were, <laughs> a fictional you know, then, universe then go where the for Nazis it, were right? <laughs> Fitch, if anyone should be able to enjoy Hitler being fucking like annihilated instead of killing himself in a bunker like a fucking should pussy. Be a theist if like anyone you. should be able to enjoy that, it should be you. Why don't you, like, why isn't that awesome? Because it's it didn't happen. Cool to see. Why like, am I going to say Oh, like shit. Star Wars nothing happened? In movies, nothing in movies happened. No, but Star Wars isn't what? supposed to be, like, it's just in fiction Glorious from the Bastards beginning. is not supposed to be. It's fiction from the Inglorious Bastards is. The, uh... the, the, in, the Inglorious Bastards was not supposed to be a reality. There was not a squad named the Inglorious no, Bastards. No. Then don't do it. 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 movies happen. There's a difference between, like, okay, let's, I think it's so fine like, to make a movie. Are we restricted? Wait, are we hold restricted on, hold to just period pieces? Hold on. No, no, no. I think it's fine to make a movie that's like a fictionalized account of a period, maybe. You know, you have your dances with wolves, your last samurai, things of that, you know, of that nature. Mm. Where it's like, okay, they're just kind of explaining like what was going on in that time period, and maybe the characters are not real. Okay, that are that are kind of just taking you through the, that time period. But when you have someone like Hitler, who everyone knows about, he has to be and is a very right real way. person, but a very real life. You can't just be like, and then he got murdered in a movie theater. Like that's like, but that didn't happen. That's fine. We know it didn't happen. It's then fine it's to have these alt history movies then. where you have all these characters doing all these things. What, what he's saying is, it's, it's, it's kind of like weak, like wish fulfillment. And yes, it's kind of sad. It, right? it it just it doesn't appeal to me. Just I don't understand almost, the point of it. Almost every me. film is wish fulfillment. Almost all of them. Um, give me your I don't favorite movie. I don't think that is true. true. Almost all Listen. romance is wish fulfillment. <laughs> well, wait a minute. All wait a minute. fantasy is wish fulfillment. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. All, wait, wait, all wait, these wait, wait. fucking Disney movies and Star Wars Listen, and all this wait, 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 wait. It's wait. all wish hold, fulfillment. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There are movies that are wish fulfillment. A hundred percent. Not superhero Most movies. Most of them. Wait, but like Fight Club, great movie. I love that. There's no wish for fulfillment no for me and Fight Club. Fight Club. I don't want to be. What do you? Yeah, if you're a fucking loser, I don't want to be fucking getting punched in the face in a in a basement because I don't have any meaning in my life. It's ridiculous. The premise of Fight Club, the whole fucking point of Fight Club, is that there's a crisis of masculinity and men don't have the fucking <laughs> things that they want to express themselves. Yes, so and that's what makes it a good movie. movie. Don't, don't live out those wishes. What are yes, you talking about? Yes, but wait about? a minute. That's the, the wait, whole you, point. Wait, of Doomer. Oh my God. Doomer. Doomer. What you said, what you just explained at Fight Club, is true. But the second half of that is. Because there is this crisis, people turn to self-destructive ways to find meaning in their life mm -hmm. that spiral out of control, and that's what mm -hmm. the story of Fight Club is about. And that's why I like it. But I don't. There's no wish fulfillment in if it Fight wasn't Club. I don't want to be a character I in like Fight it. Club. I don't, okay, I have no idea. I have no idea what you mean by wish fulfillment. <laughs> that is so Fight bizarre. Club, Fight Such Club is, is obvious fucking wish fulfillment. That's like that, that, <laughs> it's one of the best examples actually. If I had to find an example of wish fulfillment in film, Fight wait, Club might be who, the who, single wait, best. You want to wait? You want to be a character in Fight Club? A lot of people do. That's Those people, people are fucking stupid. Appealing. Those yes, people are people fucking, are fucking wrong. stupid. Are you? Yes. People that's like are saying stupid. that's like people that's like people that unironically like oh I'm so like. The Joker. It's like, what? Shut what? The fuck you want to be no, Luke Skywalker and get your hand chopped off and live in a swamp in a desert? Ugh, who would want to do that? <laughs> I tell you, what, I, I've, I've got to go, guys. Uh, but I'm, uh, which I'm really Speaking sad about. Speaking of wish fulfillment. I uh, know. I'm <laughs> telling you, man. What, listening to Duma react to Sitch is just the funniest thing in the world. I Thank can't you. control myself. We need a trigger for for when Duma it's gets so triggered. Good. Which is an odd one. Because the thing is, D Doom is absolutely right on that as well. <laughs> like, Wait, no, wish for film with no, no. You're, you're so wrong. Like, you never is... give it a good media take. Not one time. It, it is legitimately it's interesting. Like, have you ever given a good media take? Wait, 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 what the fuck? It's cool to the story. Wait, what are you uh, fucking talking about? Okay, no, 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 wait, get, get wish for film is like, oh, Wish for Melvin is like, oh, I want to be Always Superman. Busy. I want to be Iron Man. I want to be Goku. There's some character that has power or something that you're like, I want to be part Tyler of. Tyler Durden be, is that know, character in Fight Club. Yes. 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 Edward People... Norton is literally wishing to no, be. But wait a minute. I understand and... that. But what that, the fuck? That's the metaphysics of the movie. Wait, shut the fuck up and let me finish. Okay. Please, for the love of God. You, that is the, <laughs> you're literally missing the entire fucking point of Fight Club. It's baffling to me. The, yes, Tyler Durden is the wish fulfillment character for for um, Edward Norton's character. 
Yeah. And the whole point is that it spirals so fucking out of control and becomes so toxic and negative and bad. And it drives yeah. me crazy when people forget that huge central element of the story. Yeah, and I'm, Wait, I'm not... And the glorious bastards, they all die. What, what the fuck does that have to do <laughs> with anything? One of them. It'd be hard also... They're on a suicide mission. Yeah, but it's for a good. It's for a good cause. Oh my god! What are you talking about? <laughs> you said this. Was... Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got to go. But this is just okay, says gold, let's... man. Let's... 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 I'm really enjoying. It. Thank you. Anyway, Duma, I don't know who you've spoken for, man. It's nice to meet you, man. I've I've <laughs> enjoyed your voice video a lot, and uh, yeah. I enjoy your contributions here as well. You, I, I I enjoy you recommending me and getting me about 10k subs, though. So oh, you you're very well. <laughs> Take it easy, lads. All right. Later. Take care, Carl. Bye bye. Toodaloo. He tagged me in. I'm supposed to be oh, working, guys. No. Oh, oh my God. I said Mahler like, like 10 hours ago. But... Mahler, can you my... believe Sitch had a bad media take? Wait. Yeah, no, can what, you is, wait what is wrong with my take right now about Fight Club? <laughs> Okay. Explain Not to me. about Fight Club. I wasn't talking about Fight Club. Okay. Well, well, I'm talking. I'm talking about Fight Club right now with Doomer, who's trying to say it's like a wishful thinking movie. You just, you just said it was wish fulfillment. So I've already, you've already conceded that argument. No, I. Oh my God. It's like a critique of wish fulfillment. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> hey, Sitch. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> so uh, I felt I thought it was interesting, right? Because you you seem to be assuming immediately, like, oh, anybody who likes Tyler did, and they're the crazies. Wouldn't want to. No, 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 no. I'm saying. People can like the you can like the character of the Joker. What if we find him inspiring? Well, I, then I think you have some problems in your life. Okay, yeah, no, let's start there. All right, so is there anything inspiring about Darth Vader, a guy who's just fucking annihilated okay. so many innocent people? I mean, I guess he's making he's you know making his way in the universe. He's uh, you know asserting his making no, his I, way I, I, I in the, the universe. Fantasy. Yes. Being genuine, I think the fact that he came through for his loved ones, that he managed to see, like, you know, a path there for redemption when he thought his whole life was over because of all the bad decisions he made, I think that's very Thanos inspiring. Thanos has things about him that are admirable, obviously. It doesn't mean Thank that as okay. like a character, so, you should be you like, see where well, I'm gonna go next? <laughs> I find Thanos an inspiring character because you're like, well, wait a minute, what do you mean by that? I don't even know that I'd have much difficulty knowing what they're referring to. It's probably his conviction. Generally, listen, if, we, if you want to, like, break it down to that sort of autistic level we can do that but generally that when autistic? someone says they're inspired when someone when someone says they're inspired by a character they mean why like do you a think people like thanos as a villain of the character why do they like nightcrawler i never saw nightcrawler except for the one in x-men so like, i think we need can like just stick with thanos and that because, thanos <laughs> pretty yeah. quick. because he's interesting he's, a, he's an interesting character his integrity and conviction is admirable. His fucking motivations yes, sure. are all balked. Right. It's, He's not so, just uh, like, oh, I'm just so evil, you know? Yeah, well, so what I'm trying to argue is that there's going to be elements in Tyler Durden's character that people will find inspiring. I agree. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not denying that. So, of course, watching a character like that on screen can easily... I don't know why I'm having to argue this. You know how many people fucking love Tyler Durden, right? Who are normal... I don't think they should, though. I think there's are people that completely misunderstand the point of fight. You can admire that that aspects of something. You don't too. like it, but it's sure. still there. Of course. So when you say, "What is the point of Inglorious Bastards?" No, wait. Come up with wait, 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 all wait, kinds wait. of sticking. Things. Wait, sticking on Fight Club for a second. There was oh. lots of people who saw Fight Club and immediately after leaving the movie, they're saying, "Oh man, I really want to join a Fight Club." Okay, those uh -huh. people are stupid. They don't okay. understand the fucking entire point of the movie. <laughs> Okay. That's all I'm saying. So, but how does that relate to, like, so that there's still a point being made, so that's cool, right? Well, no, that's so the, the original question was, uh, Doomer said, name me a movie that's not wishful, like a uh, wish fulfillment or something. So maybe it was a bad example because some people view it as wish fulfillment. I don't fucking view it that way. Know, Eraserhead? I don't whatsoever. know. Whatsoever. And I think there's, I think there's lots of movies that people enjoy that do not, uh, fit the criteria of being a wish fulfillment movie. I don't even know that that's a good direction to take the conversation at this point instead of because like I thought the whole thing you said was there's no point to Inglorious Pastors. That was, but that was a different topic. I don't know how we got onto wish fulfillment. That topic's way more interesting, honestly. Yeah, because I am baffled by that. Uh, first of all, why does it have to have a point? Well, I said I don't understand the point, not that there is no point. Okay, but what if there wasn't a point? Is that okay or not? Well, what do you mean by what do you mean okay? Like it's okay, well, I, I guess. I might not enjoy it. Well, because it sounded like that's why you were saying what was bad about the movie. When for I'm me, to... for my taste, I like my movies to have a point. I don't. If someone likes it because it's just a retelling of history 
through a wishful thinking lens, which I guess is how we got onto this topic, then that's fine for them. I'm not saying it's an objectively bad movie. I'm saying it doesn't fit my taste. I like my things to have a point to them. Or a so, point that I can um, wrap my mind around. Do you never, like, because what I think of when you say something that doesn't have a point, if I saw, like, a T-Rex battling, I don't know, some fucking big daddy, mm-hmm. and that was that, it was just someone did, like, a, a CG thing, and, and and if someone said to me, like, why are, you, why are you watching that, there's no real point to it, mm-hmm. and I'd just be like, oh, I don't know, it's, it's just fun, is, is this, am I getting anywhere with, like, uh, what is... I'm trying to. I'm struggling to think of what it would be like to watch a movie with no. Yeah, but it's a little different because that's something that's like impossible to happen. So you're like, oh, how would this play out in fiction? You know, like. Oh man, thinking of things of impossible that happened would be the events of Inglorious Bastards. Is this old history? Well, no, because it's taking to to me. It's very different saying like, oh, you know, who's going to win in the fantasy fight between Goku and Superman? I'm like, oh, you know, lots of people are like interested in. Well, it sounds like you're saying there's clashes more of fictional validity characters to that. just to see. No, I'm not. There is validity to that. There's lots of validity to that, or, lot, or lot, rather, lots of people would find validity to that. They like these characters. They're curious to how they would interact with each other, but they're fictional characters. To me, that's a world different than saying, I want to reconstruct a real life scenario in a way that I wish it happened because it would be you know, more moral or more enjoyable. And to me, that seems like a weird denial of reality in a way that I just I'm not a fan of. I think I don't even like her. Say it's a denial like, of reality. I don't even like in, like the Facebook movie, which I watched it and I liked it. And I said, oh, this is a good movie. And then I found out that like huge key elements of the story were just made up for the movie. And I go, oh, well, then fuck this. Like, they're just lying. It's not it's not real. This didn't happen anymore. Don't pretend like it's, a, you know, it's a real thing. Do you know that most historically accurate, quote unquote, movies are not accurate at all? To some, I'm, I'm assuming. Obviously, they, they'll they'll like take characters and they'll you know combine them in order to you know fit it in a movie. I'd just be curious how far this structure. goes. Do you think Braveheart is pointless? I don't know this. Oh, I don't know the. I don't know what's actually real with Braveheart. So maybe if almost, I did, it would almost make nothing. Me <laughs> upset. Yeah, well, that's the thing. hilarious. People think it's accurate. It's not at all. Right. Like, so I, don't, I just don't. I don't, I don't know what your point is. <laughs> that's my point. I'm is at. I when you take something that's like. If you like, okay, here's a good example. To me, it'd be crazy if you made a movie about 9-11 where, you know, Quentin Tarantino's new movie, 9-11, where they successfully prevent the planes from crashing to the World Trade Center. Uh-huh. I don't know. To me, I'd be like, ooh, I don't know. That seems weird to me. Like, so like this is what... a real tragic event that happens. And you're like, why are you making a fan fiction where I, it would be nice if it didn't happen, I guess. Six says that Hitler shooting himself in a bunker is a tragic event. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> yes. I, well, so I think this is a fascinating story to be told about what would have happened timeline wise with the world if 9 11 never happened. But that's uh, a different, so that's a completely I think that's different story, though. Because you're saying, no, well, so how could, the, the different first, word, wait, you're saying how could be the first the uh, scene of the movie be, is what happens if it you know, didn't happen and you show those events in the film. If you want to have a movie that was like, how would the world be different if 9 11 didn't happen? I would agree with that would be interesting. But Why that's completely not what we're argument talking about. Or, whatever, or the pointless argument. That's not what argument. we're talking about at all. Why couldn't I? Yeah, but this you couldn't call Inglorious Bastards a what if. It's an it's an what do you mean? It's an alternate like oh what if we killed Hitler earlier? You know in yeah, the what, war. Yeah. What if what if one of the the women that were like persecuted as for being a Jew managed to set up all of this through mm-hmm. different connections and stuff, and that's how uh, Hitler and his main crew were yeah, like annihilated. It didn't happen though. So yes, what's the point? Yes, of... thank you. We know. I know. I, but I, just, I don't understand I what the point. Happens. I don't understand what the point of of pretending. So what, when it I happens, say what not... if nine eleven didn't happen, and what if the world changed in a different way? Because you the story be like, that didn't happen though. Because the story wouldn't be about the event. The story would be about how the it event is. shaped the world after it. That's so why I'm what saying if that event comparable. was portrayed at the beginning of that film, and they showed all of the events that meant it didn't happen, like those, like the hijackers got fought off by the passengers, or they some got stopped by the TSA. Okay, or wait, wait. Anything, but if Inglorious Bastards, work? if Inglorious Bastards got a sequel set in the same universe where Hitler got killed by the bastards, would that be fine? If the world, if, if Inglorious Bastards was a movie about, you know, Hitler dying early in the war, and then how the world changed in response to that, I would have no problem with that movie. So it's just about what's depicted in the film seems to be the only difference. You don't care much about characters, you care more about the the. Well, no, it's because world. it's what it's not that. It's about what is the story about. In these alternative stories, like in the 9-11 example, the movie mm-hmm. wouldn't be about 
people stopping the 9-11 hijackers. The movie is about how the 9-11 incident changed the world and how things um, would look different. If I'm not against that happened. film either. If we had the first film in a trilogy or something, be how they managed to stop it realistically with what we knew. How well, I would say that was able to. I would say there's no point to even doing that. You wouldn't, even if like there's excellent character work and yeah. loads of tension, and the fact that we know it's something that happened, and they have plenty of like realistic and things pulled from reality, but they have different things. I'm different not saying it would be a bad movie objectively. I'm saying I wouldn't like it. My personal taste. I would say just mm. writing it off based off of just the yeah. It sounds really concept. arbitrary because as soon as yeah. like a certain switch is flipped it's just like you can't enjoy it no matter what can i, can I ask a question such like yes. when you watched inglorious bastards for the first time did you know that the hitler thing was coming or was that a surprise no i had no i had no clue so what so what when gone. you so the experience of watching the movie obviously you're thinking okay historically i know what's going on here and how the events play out what was your feeling when you got to the scene where all of a sudden you realized, okay, reality is diverging from the movie here? Because it like, maybe I, I don't know. It'd be maybe it feels cheap to me, maybe because it's like you're you're cheapening reality. I mean, this, I I did. You know, I mean, I had scene. kind of the same experience. Like I went into it not knowing that you know it was all all history that kind of thing, and I was like, well, I know a lot about World War II because I read about it, and some of it is definitely syncing up. But then as soon as it, we got into the movie theater scene, I mean, everything was just so cool. I just went with it. I realized, <laughs> well, I okay, this is diverging. Probably, probably the single best feeling I've ever had in the theater was seeing Hitler get his face. Yeah, no, by the bastards. <laughs> like it great. was the best fucking feeling. Yeah. It, like it, it felt like watching Hitler actually get killed instead of like I know I was like this is so I see, much better. I I don't I don't like this. To me, that's a kind of, and this is my value judgment. I think that's a very like negative way. I, I don't think wish fulfillment should be. We're going to fantasize about how we wish reality went and gain catharsis um, through that. I think you have to accept I've, reality for how it happened. I mean, out of curiosity, just uh, this, two questions. I'm hoping to get them done quick. So mm -hmm. uh, if we take, what's just, if you've got a couple of favorite movies you could list quickly, just, uh, I'm trying to get a point. Uh, Fight Club, American Psycho. Fine, let's go with American Psycho. Let's say one-to-one, -one, all of that was based on a real event that happened with a real guy, but all of it's been faked and a lot of it is just lies, like how it went down. Would that mm -hmm. change your feelings on American Psycho? It would. Okay. And then vice versa, if you found out that the Batman, for example, is all true, all of that is actually something that happened in a distant, you know, fucking place in wherever. Right, right. And all of those th events were accurate, even down mm -hmm. to him fucking bashing his head on a <laughs> the thing. Uh, that would be impressive. And, and, and his car maybe stalling, maybe not stalling. Would that, would that add to your enjoyment of the film now? Would you be like, oh, shit, okay, that's kind of neat. It would make the movie make a lot more sense. Um, and I would have to... I would probably give the movie a lot of more leeway than I'd. I'd be like, oh, that's why the structure is so weird because it's like actually what really happened in yeah, real life. So, and real life doesn't conform to a movie structure. I appreciate these answers, and I conclude that you have a strange bias that can fuck up your enjoyment of really good stories. Well, the, you listen. It is you're probably strange. correct. <laughs> okay, everyone has their biases to two things, and that's one of my biases. I I don't like I don't like when I mean as I said I don't even like when when they have. You know, movies that are supposed to be about real things, and I find out like, oh, it's you know, it's all bullshit, it's all fake. Because then it just feels very cheap and lazy to me. Did you like 1917? I never saw 1917. Oh, Saving Private Ryan. I like Saving Private Ryan. Is that supposed to be? I thought that okay. was just fiction. Is that supposed to be what? based on something real? Well, it doesn't matter. Wait, what? <laughs> well, it's, uh, yes, it's based on one I can think is based. Well, no, on. <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> I understand that World War II happened, Doomer. I'm talking about was Legend the idea Legend. that like we have to save this one guy who's all his brothers died. I'm pretty what? sure it's vaguely based on something that actually happened, but they made up most, if not everything. Right, but oh. like, there's a difference. It's like, oh, this one vague incident happened that no one really knows about. So, and it's like, we're going to... So I wish you like hadn't said else. that because now I want to poke at like, so where's the line? Is it is, is, If I tell you all the character names are from real life, I'm assuming you're going to be like, well, that's not enough. And I go, okay, what about several characteristics? What about one or two places they went to? That's true. Mm -hmm. How many true things have to be before you go, you know what? That's disrespectful. I don't know. I had to think about it. I had to say, I, like, I don't, where, I don't is like the, where exactly is the line <laughs> like in your mind? If in, Sitch, if what, in... what if D-Day actually happened? <laughs> Listen, you, Murray. Listen, like, you what... fucking fake Buddhist. Okay. If in Glorious Bastards centered around a plot not to kill Hitler, but some less important Nazi leader... Would that mm -hmm. change maybe your perceptions, like how far down the rung in the hierarchy? 
can you go before? Mm. That's a good question, actually. Like you, you mentioned. Now it sounds um, like it's more so based Samurai. on how important yeah. of a person can you kill in a movie before it right. starts to be like mm. that. You, you know what? That's a that's a that's a really good. That might have actually completely changed how I felt about the movie if they killed well, some, you know, third, second. If rank, they killed you know, Hitler Nazi, in the Lost Samurai, well, then that'd be very strange. <laughs> If uh, well, Edward and Al, if, if Edward and Al popped up in the Last Samurai timeline and uh, started doing alchemy, it'd be very confusing. But I just wanted no, to say that Inglorious Bastards is fantastic. Okay, I just, well, I'm I glad just you like it. It's very, it's very consistent, I assume. Chat, chat made a good Who point. Knows? So Brunswick Green said every movie from now on needs to have a Hitler getting shot scene in order for it to be a ten out of ten, <laughs> and I completely endorse that. <laughs> Just where yeah, it, it could be end of romantic Return of the every... King in Mount Doom. Hitler's just there at the volcano. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like in, in romantic every comedy, time. they get to like they get to the point of no return and they separate and they come back together when the man kills Hitler and impresses and then, the lady at the end. And then they get you know, together when and it's, Smeagol kind of takes the ring. After. Hitler says, No, it's mine. And then they fall into the lava they together. Fight. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I just, I just picture though that every Release time this happens, Sitch goes from really liking the movie to be like, Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> And then you like watch the new Marvel thing, and it's all fine. No Hitler. And then the after credit scene. It's like, like in there, Spider Man. Like, everywhere I turn, everywhere I go, I see his face. Hitler. I actually Hitler. that would actually this would this, that would actually be a good bit. That would be a weird bit of like a, a 1984 society. Every movie was mandated by the government to have a scene where Hitler or whoever the enemy is of the a state lot of movies dies taking at the end place of the movie. in South America. Yes. Hitler grabs the Infinity Gauntlet at the last second, and then Tony Stark vaporizes him. So. You could do it for all. And Hitler all right, I'm going back domain. to work, okay? You bye. bastards. Get out of here. Please have bye, better bye. movie takes that people can tell me about, all right? And I could be like, yeah, that's it. You guys are stuff. so... Is this such a bullshit, like... Sitch thinks Boromir's a bad character. Thing. When did I say Boromir was a bad character? No, I just wanted Muller to stay. Right, it just wants me to kill you. <laughs> I will admit, talking, we were talking about emotion uh, in our past conversation... I liked the character of Boromir so much more after Game of Thrones just because of I like Sean Bean more because of that. That's um I'm glad that you got more of emotion. an appreciation for Boromir in whatever way that may be. In whatever yeah. way it takes, yeah. Sitch, did you like Kung Fury? That's a that's a movie that has Hitler in it. Okay, it's bye. not historically accurate, bye. obviously. So take care, Molly. Well Kung Fury? I Hitler oh, yeah, Hitler yeah, time travels okay. and I mean, okay, Hitler that, okay, escapes listen. in the end, so. Kung Fury's fine. Okay, that's, that's not how it happened, though. Ridiculous. That's not how okay. it happened. I, I mean, it is a comedy, so I think. It's, a, it's like a parody yeah. satire. Yeah. Of Kung course, Fury's great. yeah. So. Hitler time travels and gets away. Right. Dur yeah. Yeah. Dur does he fight dinosaurs and robots and demons? And you I think all they fight be for him. happy to know that, that Hitler is depicted historically accurate in our comic book, so. <laughs> that is he is not depicted historically. He only has one yeah. testicle. You should. Well, I mean, that. it could. I mean, it could be historically accurate, but right. See, you should have brought that up with Mahler. He would be like, "What do you mean you you fight Hitler in your comic book? Sitch, does this not go against your? <laughs> That's wish fulfillment. That's wish fulfillment. <laughs> well, it kind of is. But... You just want to have a kung fu fight with Hitler. Oh, okay. There you go. It's a kung oh, crack. Come on. Shouldn't invite you on. You you just you you brought the conversation to this side quest. That you're just wrong about. You're so wrong, Mahler didn't even want to talk about it. He just wanted to keep talking about something unrelated. He had to go back to yeah. work. He does that. He does that. Work. I try and Terrible. I try and you know keep him on a leash, but he you know, always ends up talking about Hitler. Mahler chased off God. Carl and then he just left. Wow. I know. Oh wait, Doomer left. Oh did he? <laughs> Hilarious. Talking to fucking nobody. Okay. Hilarious. Okay, I guess we're Doomer. We we're down Doomer and we're down Mahler. So all right. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Doomer just fucking weasels out. He just sneaks out. No one's oh, like, he did attention. leave. Yes. When? I don't know. He just fucking dipped out. That little that little stealthy stoat. Oh, never mind. He said BRB. Oh, oh he did. So he I don't know oh, why so he, he left, left instead of just oh. meeting himself. But yeah. Oh, whatever. Right. When I left to when I BRB'd, I just went and came back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I'm Miss Citizen. Anyone that's like, oh, you know, I want to be like Tyler Durden. You're, you're like the I want to be the Joker. Okay, you took the wrong lesson from the it movie. I think yeah, it depends on what elements of a character you sort of focus on. Um, but sometimes, like being most like Darth characters, Vader is not generally yeah. Most yeah. characters have some sort of like 
positive element to them sure but you know yeah. like i no was gonna be like i want to be like darth vader because you know he cares about his family and he's very proactive <laughs> so, oh like, okay yeah i guess yeah. he also kills lots he of is, people you know? he is a, he's proactive about killing you know? right the man had some ideas he did kill like a bunch ideas. of children so nice he wasn't very good at it though that's true uh, Sakhan, thanks so much for being two-month member, says, I gave up on Adam, ouch, after he dishonestly attacked Jordan Peterson. I was going to wow. give up on the show, but then I saw the Sam Cedar Bucket video, A-plus boys, S-class chat. Gave up on me, what? I, they didn't like, they said you just saw, I don't know if how you dishonestly attacked Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I don't know. They didn't like that. I don't know what I did that was dishonest. But... I don't know. Well, how much uh, was that, how much did we get paid for that accusation? That was a that, two month member. That baseless accusation. Oh. Two month member. They waited two months to say that? Yes. This isn't, I'm not Hassan, so I won't kick you. Oh, yeah. Fight Club is ANCAP revenge fantasy. That's interesting. Uh, Shall Fight it, Club is an interesting. I don't know if I would necessarily say that, but I understand what you're saying. I just don't remember enough of it. Kung Fury 2 is supposed to be out in 2022. What's, what's oh, happening? Oh, nice. Yeah. Arnold Perfect. Schwarzenegger plays the president of the United States. Now that's. It was good cast. That's badass, right? His there. governorship went well in an alternate universe. It's in post production right now. Became... Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's not historically accurate. So hopefully, yeah, it's Sitch not won't just like some, it. <laughs> some wish fulfillment garbage. But wait a Sitch minute, is like President Schwarzenegger. They're not. No, he first can't off, be president. He's not first American. Off, fuck that. Because now we're all going to have to learn how to spell Schwarzenegger, and that's, that's true. just. Yeah. Ugh. Madness. Let's see. It doesn't even say if it's President Schwarzenegger. It just says it's the president. So we don't know if he's playing himself. Oh wow! Arnold it's got Michael himself. Fassbender in it too. Holy wow, shit! Wow, Michael Fassbender. Wow. That that you're right. That is incredible. Wow, Michael yeah. Fassbender. I are you being sarcastic? What's happening? Yeah. No, Michael Fassbender's great. Oh, hold okay. on. Yeah. Hold, hold on. <laughs> you're like wow, Michael Fassbender. Be, be ready. Be ready, Sitch, to be disappointed here. Uh uh It actually yeah. has Adolf Hitler in it. <laughs> Who plays I, Adolf Hitler? Is yeah, who plays himself? Him? Is it, uh, it, did they did they get did they clone Hitler? Jor Jormo uh, Tacone. I don't know if it's the same guy that did in there the short, go. but they took him out of the. Oh, cryo, it is. It's the same guy. The crypto yeah. sleep casket that right. he was uh, sleeping in in the Argentina caves, there you go. so that he could play his. That's the same movie. guy. Uh, Charlotte, thanks so much for being a two month member. Says, guys, this is hella disturbing. I don't know. That <laughs> I'm was so glad to reprise my role as Hitler. That was three hours ago. I don't know what was disturbing three hours ago, but but thank you. Probably the Ren religious conversation. Maybe no, that was before that. Renor yeah. Zero was here for twenty dollars. Says, I think it'd be interesting to talk to Jonathan Peugeot about this. Oh, maybe that was the religious part. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess the whole thing's about religion. Uh, J Mac, our surrogate father, daddy, daddy, J Mac. Thank you so much for one. Hundred dollars. Wow. Says if American? people, one hundred American J Mac is one hundred percent good old fashioned. American. Wow. American. That's ninety eight yeah. euros. His his avatar in the chat is literally him wearing an American flag hat. So who Hitler? <laughs> How dare you, sir? I know you turncoat. We're gonna need an emoji of like Hitler dying or something. Oh, nice. Can we get an emoji of his head blowing up from Inglorious Bastards? That would I, well, be great. I don't know how you would draw that and it'd be clear that it was Hitler, but it's like, like a blown well, up the mustache will probably. It's like the it's just the it's just the top part top bottom part of his face and the top part's just like blood. So. It goes, oh nine, and then he explodes. Uh J Mac, thanks so much. Says if people knew half the crap the costume characters do behind the scenes, they'd lose their childlike wonderment wonderment instantly. As a former costume character, I can honestly say I've never met a weirder group of people, myself included, basically theater kids plus furries. Wow. wow. Well, J I would imagine that if your job is to dress up as Disney characters and yes. talk to people all day, you you're just probably you're a special kind of person anyway. It takes a particular mm, individual to right. to you know to really lock that in is your dare Gotta i say your career person. yeah that's true yeah i don't think it's really like a career thing i think it's more like i a think it totally is thing. i think that if you're really good at that because it mm -hmm. takes like it's a particular thing that you do you could absolutely make a career out of it yeah and you could become quite a valued employee someone who could play that role because it's not mm -hmm. just it's not just acting it's acting like a character while wearing the costume in front of people all the time yeah. So someone who does that really well and even enjoys it, that's that's something to hold on to. That's heaven right there. 
Best yeah, I don't job know. satisfaction. Some people. For some people. I don't Absolutely. know what they pay. I don't know if you could make a career that's comfortable off, off of being like a Mickey Mouse. Well, I assume a career is something. I don't know. I guess it's something that you stick to and you enjoy in it. Like it's it's all of those things that, you know, it makes enough money. You enjoy it. You I mean, you don't have to enjoy it. You just stick to it long term, maybe. Right. Maybe it's about moving up in a, I don't know, difference well, between a career and a job. Every every stream we learn, J-Mac is like the Dalsakis guy. He always has some like very weird, interesting backstory. Like I, he was also, <laughs> J-Mac was also a, a furry at Disney World. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Investigator One Quim, thanks so much for two months. Says, Adam, what's the difference between a religion and a cult? Also, thanks for show 202. Keep For 202 shows, keep up the good work. Well, I think um, a cult is a religion that you're not in. That's my definition. A cult, I think generally people treat cults as a, it's almost like a reclusive, uh, tiny religion. Um, cults generally have a cult leader, some person that is the object of their adoration or their affection or their Jesus? worship. Uh, they have a, there's a wall in the terms of it's very reclusive. Um, they live by themselves. They live in small groups. They discourage you from as associating with people who are not a part of the cult. I mean, things that's of that nature. Islam, right there. Like apostates, you got to stay away from. Everything you're describing is part of big mainstream religion, except for obviously. Some say that the cult is more of a social movement, and nece not necessarily religion based. Um, religion is a social movement. Well, yeah, but not all social movements are religions. Well, I, I think there's some key elements to call. I think there's a, there's a couple of things that make it different. I think the size makes it uh, different. I think the fact that usually whatever the figure of worship is, is currently alive and is head of the movement. Yeah. is another element. Generally, there's something here that says um, a cult tends to be countercultural, restricting the social life of its adherents to other cult members. And key characteristic yeah. of a cult is the axis mundi the shamanic leader at the center of the organization right. i think that's the third element is that they're yeah. very cult. you know they have a person that is a cult leader like every a cult without a cult leader is almost like is it really a cult it's just not the same right you got to have the cult leader in the robes and he's got to have all of his wives and <laughs> you know right favorite uh, wives Dax Lucerno, thanks so much for the $20, says, I think Adam criticizes JBP for the exact thing he does, such as interrupting guests constantly because of that S-Class. I don't think, I mean, not today. I don't think Adam was interrupting anyone today. Adam Rags, very Rags well has me today. way be in the interrupting. Like, from right now, let's start cataloging who is interrupting and who isn't and let's see fucking doomer is the interrupter and let's cheap. see okay. who wins yeah i don't think that i am a i i think i interrupt a decent amount but it's always with a purpose and i don't i don't think i'm too aggressive with it mm. because a lot of the times when i interrupt someone it has a point where someone says something that i think needs to be addressed before we move forward right like when adam was talking about a, a film having a point it's very important to see like what do you mean by that because if we progress past this point, we might not even be speaking the same lingo or thinking about the same thing. Um, right. But I think we'll do it. There is interrupting to forward an argument that's relevant, and then there's interrupting to change the topic. And the problem that I have with Jordan Peterson is oftentimes he is changing the topic. And I'm like, I was kind of listening to the, you know, where that person was going. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I'm not doing that. I mean, I I'm, saying, yeah. I'm trying not to change. I'm trying to stay right. on topic. I mean, I got upset with Sean because Sean kept doing that when we were talking to the Amazing Atheist. Sean, we like, well, Sean, he was not quite doing that. Right. Um, he was sort of changing the topic, but he was sort of not changing the topic. He was kind of like trying to lead it down right. to a like a metaphor, I think, or a yeah. or a analogy. Well, I think or something, he admitted but... to he was trying to steer it in a certain direction that he. Right ultimately thought wouldn't work but right sometimes these live streams get going and it kind of feels like it devolves into topic bingo which is just i mean it's an aesthetic thing i guess but it's not my thing well it's fine as long as the topic changes naturally yes you know like and we were talking are interesting well and right. they're resolved i mean they're got they have well, to they be interesting be and resolved because like 
like just well, what I happened feel like now. We do. were talking about you know Inglorious Bastards, like the and then we moved to Fight Club, to... and then we moved back to Inglorious Bastards because <laughs> Mahler wanted to talk about it again. There was a resolution with the Hitler thing, which I think was that the most true. important aspect of it. Yeah, <laughs> the resolution was what I literally said, but but no one believed me. Like. 30 minutes in the conversation where I said, I'm not saying it's an objectively bad movie. I'm just saying I don't personally, it yes. personally bothers me for some reason. It's taste. Yeah. Yes. It's just yeah, taste. Mahler yeah. said that you had really strange, um, you know, tastes and things. Yeah. Sure. Which we all agree. Mahler, Mahler has, everyone has strange tasted things. Mahler has strange tastes and things. I have to tell really? you though. Does he? The, the fact, his emphasis on consistency, I think is unusual. I don't think it's, I think that it isn't unusual, but mm -hmm. people think it is because they don't normally think about how they think about things in right. that way. That's what he said. Think, yeah, but I, yeah, disagree. basically everything will come down to things being consistent. We're just so used to that in the real world because like rules, you know, the, the real world is real that we don't even think about it in movies, but it all um, does come back down. It does, it does come back to that. I don't. The real world obviously is consistent because it has to be in the sense that there there, um, there cannot be plot holes in the real world. They they literally can't exist. Right, but what I was going to say is it's sort of true and not true because obviously yes, like if you had all information, then there, everything is consistent. There are no plot holes. But since we generally don't have all the information, there is constantly things that seem or appear to be inconsistent to people. Yeah, so they kind and of we, fill in the gaps with their brain, or they just make up something. But we know in the real world that there's always an explanation behind it, or as in fiction, there literally might not be. Right. It's right. just a, a lack of talent. Well, there's an problem. explanation. It's, the writer well, decided to do this the, for some... In the sense you know, that there's not a not an in-universe explanation. Yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's a meta one, yeah. Yeah, I understand. So Luke Skywalker's weird bullshit in The Last Jedi right. is like, oh, this is just horrifically bad writing, and aren't you're not clever for subverting expectations. You just ruined sure. the character, you know. But, well, but there's also there's a problem because, like, like hypothetically, if, if Star Wars was real, um, and you could have the exact same situation happen with Luke, and you just assume, oh, well, he, I mean, his behavior must be consistent because he did it. There just has to be some information missing about why he did, you know, why he had that change or something. And if anything, we're not aware of. Yeah, in TLJ, it's not like the idea couldn't work of a right. of, of Luke who loses his way, but the fact that it's treated the way it is in that movie is is really catastrophic. Right. What, are you? Rags, are you in the same boat as Mahler on the uh, conflict, stakes, character arcs? Like, there's a lot of really important things to storytelling? Uh, I mean, there there are a lot of important things to storytelling. Um, I suppose, I guess you'd have to be more specific as to what I'm agreeing with. Well, like we're, I mean, we're both pretty high up there on the consistency is kind of, it, it's really essential to have a good story because if you don't have it, then all the things that are downstream from that. Just right. But I, I would argue a, a movie with out any stakes is going to be a terrible movie. And movie I mean, without stakes. Yeah, um, obviously. If, yeah. Um, in the sense that it could be like a perfect, like we, we often use the example of like a five minute movie of a chair sitting in a room. It's like, it's a flawless movie. There's literally nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. However, it is insanely boring, uninteresting, doesn't have a purpose to it. Or doesn't have any it or stakes. Yeah. So there's no, like, it's, I can no see what nobody would like that No ever. stakes, no character Yeah, arcs. we wouldn't say yeah. that that's the kind of movie right. you should be shooting to make, right. you know? Technically, it is a perfect movie, but in the same way that a perfect square is just might be boring or whatever, you know? The enjoyment that right. you get some, from something is different than its so what is the objective level of quality. What is the purpose of a movie in your, when you guys discuss movies? What is the purpose of a movie i yes. think they have different purposes based on what the creators are trying to do they could be trying to tell a particular message or they could just be for no reason other than to entertain but i mean the pur purpose is a thing that we imbue into things so it could be up to the person who's actually making it to determine what the purpose is hmm. okay if you're trying to say what if you're asking me why what do, should why do you be, think why um, do you think people are interested in movies writing movies making movies watching movies why do you th why do you think a lot of people do that a whole host of reasons from people like to see elements of the real world depicted in certain ways and arranged in certain ways through fictional narratives they like to be entertained in more simplistic ways like watching fun fight scenes and amazing spectacles they like the sense of escapism that a movie can give them where they could just be in a different world for a while all sorts of different reasons for different people 
Right. And luckily we have all kinds of different movies that offer all kinds of different things. Would it, that chair movie be a good example of escapism? Um, for some person, maybe, but probably not for most people. <laughs> oh my god! I want to escape to this room with there's where there's a chair. I just your I, life must be bad if that's what you want to escape to. I feel like enough. that's the kind of film that you would tee up at Guantanamo Bay and like make people watch. Yeah, that's where the terrorists are, or we'll yeah. wake you watch the chair again. <laughs> exactly. No, please, not the chair. How can we're Hispanic for this joke? I don't know. All right. Interesting. So it did I sit might have taken off here? Let's start this video. Each group of otherwise charming adults to write me ever more elaborate death threats. Welcome to part two of our exploration of Disney oh, adulthood. You guys Remember, start. You said you guys stopped. This is the part two. He said you were gone. Doomer is also gone. When he said I'll be right back, he was. Uh, that was like twenty mil million minutes ago. I thought you were going to go on at the time. He believed that he would be. Well, I gotta. I gotta get to the super chats. Um, okay. Uh, Joe the Make for twenty dollars says it's the socialists who think that we've already at the point of Star Trek's economy, as if it's what should be happening now, even though we don't have replicators. They also pretend the hierarchy doesn't exist in Star Trek. True, true, true. true. Yeah, uh, hierarchy is absolutely. You're not going to have humanity without a hierarchy. It's just not Impossible. compatible with what yeah. hierarchy is. does exist um, in Star Trek. Obviously, that's what he's absolutely, saying. Absolutely, yeah. it does. Yeah. They, he's saying the socialists just... pretend like it doesn't, which is ridiculous. Yeah, don't, don't they socialists... call him number one? Well, I mean the well there there you have of course you have like ranks in a military organization you have uno. captains and you know people yes. who have jobs but you also have hierarchies that are more social in the terms of this is such and such person they're prestigious because mm -hmm. they've done all these things um, they they they're very famous they invented this or they did that or they did yeah. this kind of work and so it puts them in a sense higher in the hierarchy because of that you know, for more social reasons instead right. of a like a, a more rigidly structured military organization. Star Trek kind of cheats to some extent because they really don't go into how society functions outside of Starfleet. I don't think that's cheating. I um, it, I don't think it's cheating. It's just the nature of that's not a story that they're really telling often. Uh, Star Trek is mm -hmm. about it's it's about space explorers and all of the things that come along with that. The well, moral but it's but stuff. it's also supposed to be about like humanity you know reaching a point of you know being better being somewhat utopian i think, et cetera, well, I, et cetera, I think that you get that from just watching the crew and how they interact with it yeah but it like doesn't TNG. you if you maybe if you, but it doesn't really make sense how society functions at all cashless which they bring up a lot at least in deep space nine they bring up a lot because they're always I, contrasted with the ferengi I am not, I don't think that's an issue. Um, mm -hmm. I think that just by portraying the characters as you do and how they do things and how disputes and things are resolved, you show sort of a, a better humanity and how they operate in this world. But until it becomes necessary to explain certain things like that, it's probably a good idea to simply not get into it. Because if you sort of delve into it poorly and shortly, then you can raise questions that otherwise... Right didn't exist you know sometimes it's best to just not think about things right. if you want to focus on other things in no I, I i generally agree with everything i mean i do agree in the terms of star trek with what you're saying and i assume that the reason they never went into it is because they don't have a good answer they couldn't think of a good way to answer the they questions might not. of like i mean yeah, you know how they does might not john luke to... have a vineyard you know how do property rights work in the Star Trek universe? You know how do people? How do anyone own land? Like you know, if there's no money, like how does any of this stuff work? It'd be this would be you very still complicated. Have things without money. Well, I I think one of the issues is that if you are, it is quite a thing to ask someone to come up with all of the ins and outs of a fictional universe where they're you know, especially one like Star Trek, especially mm -hmm. if their intention is to tell a story about space explorers in an episodic format. Um, unless it becomes an issue in a story you're trying to tell, I think it's okay that you don't necessarily have to talk about it, but right. even unintentionally, sometimes aspects of your world building can become issues, um, and they, they should be addressed. Right. Um, but in Star Trek, that doesn't seem to be the case that it happens. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fine with them never explaining it. Um, it's just but given. I still think it's somewhat cheating, yeah. but I think that's fine. I think that's totally fine. Uh, the expert layman for twenty dollars says, "You all got to stop stealing my stream topics." I did secular religion Thursday. Well, there you go. Also, John McWhorter has another book about how the meaning of words change. He spends a lot of time on Sitch's elongated. Well, really, that's hilarious. 
That's very funny. Uh, Dr. Diller, thanks so much for being five month member says, Adam, why do you keep trying to shatter the fragile alliance with Fringy by telling him to quote me? <laughs> what did I tell him? <laughs> why do you keep trying to shatter the fragile alliance with Fringy by telling him to quote, make like an emu and explode violently? <laughs> Make like an emu? Like, ah, yes, because that's what emus are known for, exploding <laughs> violently. Well, and that's the why great, you can't see them at zoos. They just explode violently. Insurance the great Australian high. emu war, I guess. The many emus exploded violently. Someone's trying to get a beef going with me and Frangie, So Thank you, Dr. Taylor. He also I says, hi, know. Rags. Hi. Uh, Nate T for $20 says, hi, Rags. Oh, hi. Uh, if Disney Star Wars is consistently bad, does that make it good? Also, knee high cheeks sent me high. Ah, uh, knee high cheeks sent me high. Um, oh, I think it. Oh, was that a wisecrack video that we even learned about? Knee high cheeks sent me high. I don't even know what that's a reference to. He's a knee high cheeks sent me high. Is a he's like a Hungarian philosopher or something, mm -hmm. and we saw his name written down as a quote in some video because he was being in the words of Hungarian philosopher, Mihai Cheek sent me high. And of course right. it's like Hungarian. So the words displayed and how it sounds are nothing alike whatsoever. And so it just sort of stuck with us as a meme. That's funny. Um, but the first thing was if, if something was consistently bad, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends what the consistency is into like, if you're talking about, like all like five things or if, if you make three movies in a row and they're all bad movies like well they're consistently bad but that's using consistently that's using consistency in a different way right and each film adhering to consistency you're you're talking just strictly about logical consistency right generally pretty much the story, like the, the logic of the story because like everything... obviously the whole idea of a character arc is the character is consistently acting one way and then yeah there is a logic to how a changes. character changes over yeah. time basis based on events yeah right. if this happens and it's logical for the character to do this not that there's only one way for it to happen but if if a character is constantly breaking with what you'd expect right. would happen logically Han Solo then you could have coming back issues. to save luke is logically inconsistent with his character up until he does that no i think that's a decision that he makes that's founded on you know their relationship and what they've done um i would say that the han so what if you want the inconsistency with han solo it's how we see him in the force awakens we have this gap between episode six and seven and now when we go back to han solo he is a completely different person who has gone back on every single thing that we know about him and he's just because he already has he already had his character arc. Well, he seems like he's reverted to he, the he first is, Star he, Wars again. He's yeah, he's completely reverted back to something that he wasn't. Right. Um, Han Solo yeah. is different at the beginning of Episode Four than he is at the end of Episode Six. He undergoes a change based on all the events that we see in Witness. Yeah, yeah. Right? And a when we see him arc. in Episodes, yeah, when we see him in Episode Seven, it's like all of that was just stripped away from him. Right. He's a totally different yeah. person. And this is because I mean, we we've I mean, I guess not personally all of us but if you listen to how jj abrams describes what he thinks han solo is han solo for him is way different than what han solo actually is in the movies um, i assume he just viewed him as like an archetype uh sort of kind of yeah han solo is just the guy who shoots stormtroopers with his blaster and he's, he's the like like people say han solo the smuggler is like yeah that's how he starts out and then at the end he's this insanely important revered you know general of the right becomes Rebel a real Alliance. person yes. yeah he shouldn't be some loser in episode seven he should be like leading a massive organization or he should be doing stuff in a certain way and there should be statues all across the galaxy of him um but that's a huge problem with episode seven in general is just yeah. that things are not as you would <laughs> believe they would be it's episode it's always weird tragedy. Like Korra did the same thing. I don't know if you ever watched Korra. Oh, you guys didn't. No, like Avatar, I don't know much right? about I don't, much about yeah. Avatar. Because Korra did the same thing, where basically, like, it sh made all the the Avatar characters when they became adults like sucked and were shitty. And you're like, why would you do this? Like, people like these characters. Why would you just make them all look terrible in the you know the sequel that takes place years later? I don't. It's very bizarre. I, you I don't hold on to the way. Like, I think that w with the Han Solo example. JJ wanted to hold on to what Han Solo used to be because it had some iconic aspect to it or it had some thing that he liked personally about it. 
and in, and he didn't remember that. Yeah, at the end of episode six, he's mm-hmm. way different than he was at the beginning. It could just been a member berries. He's trying to hit the nostalgia. Oh like, yeah, it's just going to be episode four again. You know? That's what TFA was. It was right. it was a horrific, terrible, awful simulacrum of episode four, and it just right. failed in practically every regard. Right. That's why I think that if because every once in a while people will ask us which of the trilogy, the new trilogy, the sequels is the worst. I say The Force Awakens because of the insane world building damage that it does to just the state of the Mm. universe and to Han Solo and to a lot of stuff. Right. Like if you watch episode six, nobody in their right minds thought the state of the universe would be as it is in episode seven based off the ending of six. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole thing doesn't even make sense. You know, you have the... uh... Shouldn't the Empire, the New Order, shouldn't they be like the small, weak faction that is being... We've had many, many discussions. Yeah, shouldn't they be the ones that are kind of like the rebels? And shouldn't the rebels be, you know, the people in charge? Like, it's just... The Force Awakens establishes that it's actually a bad thing that the good guys won because it led to an even more awful more powerful evil we're gonna we're gonna have (laughs) five planets blow up in episode seven yeah oh that wouldn't have happened if the empire didn't get toppled in episode six and yeah it's like not only did nothing change things maybe got worse worse. yeah Yeah. we lost five planets and things like that it sucks it does it does suck uh sam Barr, thanks so much for being two months free will seeker kovar for 20 dollars says lies sitch Lies. Sitch does have a tramp stamp of Biden's face above his crack. It's true. Sniffing while his hands are on each cheek. A team <laughs> reigns supreme. That's Stick hilarious. it right in my corn pop. Oh, that's, that's quite funny. a quite the image. How, how would you get that? Imagine walking into the tattoo parlor and say, "Listen, here's what I want you to do." They're like, "No, <laughs> yeah, no amount of so. money is worth this." I want you, you to get Biden's face right up in my butt crack. <laughs> Uh, Sketch, hey Sketch for twenty dollars says I dedicate this super chat to Sitch's blossoming Super Smash Brothers career. Oh, wow. may his combos be true and his games all end in a three zero. Uh, by wow. the way, I have an episode two hundred meme coming tomorrow. I think you'll all appreciate it. Also, hi Rag. Wow. Hello, I didn't know Thank that you, you were a, a Super Smash Bros uh, player looking to get into the scene. Well, not now. We just played it in the server on Thursday, so I uh, gotcha. Uh, so there you go. Ske- Sketch, while we were playing, said he renounced S-Class because I bullied him a little bit. Nice. I like it. I need another I'm glad he's gone back board. on that. Oh, you uh, the Justice back? 35. Oh, what a dirty traitor. That was like the quickest turnaround ever. <laughs> I said it a piece of love, Adam. Okay. Well, yeah. Justice 35 for $20 says, Star Trek uh, is violence is never the answer. 40K is violence is the question and the answer is yes. What is the official 40K army if S-Class and A-Team, and why is it the Blood Angels also high rags? Hello. Do you uh, know? I, neither one of us know 40K enough to... Yeah, well, I mean, you read like one of the liar. books. I but, did, yeah. Um, I don't know anything about 40K. So, sorry. Yeah, I know very little about it. I know about an Inquisitor and the Imperium. I know very little, yeah. Uh... JMac for twenty dollars. Thank you, JMac. Says uh, Tyranids. Oh, this is the another forty k re- reference. I yeah, they're the, they're the evil bug things. The Zerg people. Yes. Yeah, they're like the Zerg. Yeah. Uh, Tyranids are truly progressive. The High Fleet doesn't care how you identify. Everyone can be food. There you go. Oh wow. I like it. I like it. Uh, Brian Wonderlich, Wonderlich for $20 says being upset there are not female space marines is like being upset there are not more female Nazis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I thought space marines were supposed to be like the good guys. There's no good guys in Warhammer. Oh, okay. Fair everyone's enough. just everyone's just doing their best. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> They're just being awful and terrible. Uh, one Abaddon for $20 says there's an anime film called Saint Young Man. It's a slice of life about Jesus and Buddha going on vacation together in Japan. I haven't seen that one. There's a anime about Jesus and Buddha living together in an apartment that should be hilarious. And it's actually pretty boring, unfortunately. So I don't know if it's about, I don't know if it's the same guy who did that. Let's get a one quim for $20 says Sitch are Sumerian, Samardans, Samaritans, Samaritans, like a good Samaritan. Are Samaritans Jews? I, I don't fucking know. Uh, the answer is yes and no. Also, in case you don't know what Samaritans are, they are Israelis who believed 
Mount Gerizim is the most holy place instead of the Temple Mounts Jerusalem. Well, I'll be honest, I don't know anything about any of that stuff. So Wow. I'm a bad Jew. I've said this multiple times. Okay. Wow. That's what he says in bed. He's like, I'm a bad Jew. Yes, tell me I'm a bad Jew. I heard that Samaritans were terrible, awful people, though, and that's why they used the good Samaritan, because it would be so unbelievable that a Samaritan could be good. It was like... Mm. You know, that sounds really it's like the good the Nazi. Story. Mm. It's like the story like of the feet. good fascist. It's it's interesting to hear stories like that in the Bible and think about, so this was divinely inspired by a god, but that's a legitimately bigoted story that uses Samaritans right, for yeah. that purpose. You're like, that's interesting. Maybe God this is legitimately maybe, bigoted. I mean, God is, of course, like, I guess of course he is. Like, Look, he, he's you like, don't stand up and go, the listen, and the... I'm going to choose one people. <laughs> I mean... This, that I reeks could of a little bigotry. appear to everyone. But yeah, it's I that have reeks my chosen of a little bigotry. Yeah. yeah, I he like these people favorites. over here, but these over here, fuck them. <laughs> I love all you equally, but yeah. Are you actually not being you're not joking about the Samaritan thing? That's I've heard that, but I, I don't I don't know if oh it's yeah true well or yeah not. in the yeah. story I don't know if that's the, true. the point of the story the good the story of the good Samaritan is that there's this guy who gets beat up. Mm -hmm. And one guy passes him. I forget the specifics. Yeah, the Samaritan helps him out. Yeah, one yeah. guy passes him. He gets him, mugged, and the Samaritan Another guy helps passes him, out. him, but the Samaritan sees him and helps him Stops. out, and that's good. Yeah. And the whole thing is like, oh, yeah, Samaritans. You wouldn't expect that kind of behavior from a Samaritan to help him out. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> help. exactly. Like that's, that's baked into the... It's weird, because they don't. that's not something you pick up when you're taught the story as you're growing up no. and everything. But then you actually look at the story, and you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, that's like essential to the story. That's really Damn. funny. That's really funny. It is funny. kind of funny when you I didn't know that. that. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, uh, Con Matt Dillahunty has a video about it that explains a lot of it, and it's interesting. You watch <laughs> Matt Dillahunty videos? Wow. Every once in a while. Wow. He, I used to like him way back in the day. Rags I really like a lot of his logic here. stuff. But out of antitheist. Yeah. He's really turned into a kind of a lefty weirdo. And of what course. I love, when he talks about religion and logic and stuff, I really enjoy it. But. That's that's when he's that's what it, that's where his talents lie, right? Uh, contrast. Thanks so much for being five months. Free Will Seeker says Carl Mary Whitehouse called. She wants her take back. Rick and Morty is good. The fandom is cringe though. That's true. I agree. I have completely. seen some Rick and Morty. Uh, Mahler and Fringy showed me some of the best episodes because mm -hmm. uh, we were thinking about doing an episode on it. They showed me some of the episodes they thought were some of the best, and I love them. They yeah, that's very good. good. Some yeah, of them are really amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed them. They're very cleverly written, and I and I really loved them. And then they showed me an episode from the new season, and it was crap. Oh, so yeah, I think the last season was the weakest by far. So, what was my favorite episode is probably the uh, the the mat like the memory parasite one with all the like the fake cutaways. Did they show you that one? I'm I'm not. I think I can't remember. Um, I, was that the one where he uh, has the he? No, I don't think he. Sh I don't think I saw the memory. It's the one. one where like there's like all the like every time they go to a cutaway, it's like a it's like a family member that didn't exist, and when they come back, that person now exists in their house. I don't think so. Oh, that's no. a great one. The, I they showed. Called. I think my favorite ones of the ones they showed me were the the tr the riding train episode that's that a good was one, really yeah. clever i really like that and the the clone episode of all the clones oh i, I like that one not so much you're talking about the clone family one where all the families are killing each yeah, other it's more in clones and clones and clones yeah yeah yeah. Clones. yeah i really really like that one. yeah last season i'm looking over the i think that was the one i keep hearing that's the only good one of the last season but wasn't huge in the last season Season, uh, what was in season four? I, I don't. I know very little about Rick and Morty. Season four was was much, was better. It had some bad ones too, though. But anyway, Rick is uh, the Ryan, grandpa. Have you never seen Rick and Morty? I have. Yeah. Oh, okay. Seen very little. Uh, Ryan H for twenty dollars say say what you will about Rick and Morty. The greatest thing to come out of that show is the TikTok of some guy rapping Soldier Boy's song Rick and Morty at the grave of Woodrow Wilson. That's very bizarre. That's very interesting. Okay. Total Rickall. That's the name of the episode. Thank you, Chad. 
Uh, Indigo Turtle for $20 says, listening to you guys discuss Christianity is so painful. Protestants don't have a single unifying doctrine like Catholics. So some of them do believe in original sin and some of them don't. I went to school for theology by the way. Well, there you go. Well, it's almost like, yeah, because Catholic is one group and Protestants are all like of the everything other else. Groups. Yeah, yeah I it's guess all of true. the other groups. So listen, I'm a Jew, so I have an excuse. I don't know what all these former Christians, yeah. you know, You're should be blameless. You are right. without original. Well, sin. I'm from that a Protestant. True from a protestant denomination that does believe in original sin so i mean i just i haven't been well, in every go. single protestant denomination so i wouldn't know right. that uh j mac thanks so much daddy daddy j mac for twenty dollars says i felt the same way sitch is describing about bohemian rhapsody that amazing song by queen oh he, i'm assuming he means the movie based the, oh, the Queen movie. okay, yeah. okay. I haven't seen the movie. I haven't either. But oh, they diverge from saying, like, reality. It's, wow, it's too diverse from reality. So, ouch. Didn't it see sucks. it. I mean, I like Queen as much as the next guy, but not much, not enough to see. I'm not interested in the movie. Yeah, I love yeah. their music, but I just, I just don't care about the right. movie. Anyway, part two of the video called Disney's Capitalist Religion. <laughs> Right. I'm gonna put a drink in the freezer real quick. I'll be okay, you go, you go do that. Don't do that. I like how, I like how the first video is just like Disney adults are cringe, aren't they? Oh, and by the way, socialism. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole All point right. of this. And then part two is like, let me tell you about the evils of capitalism. You the evils of catheters. According to yes, your definition, the evils though. of catheters. Oh they go oh right in goodness. the dick hole. It oh no! Don't stop. Ah. Uh, According to your definition, you can't define mm -hmm. you can't define anti-capitalism as a religion because there's no there's no supernatural. supernatural I'm fine with component. it not being a religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Well, okay, Adam, what's the difference between a religion and a philosophy? Yeah, mm -hmm. I say that like I know the answer, but. <laughs> Well, I mean, a philosophy is a component of a religion. Uh huh. Well, what's the difference? Is it the practice of it? Like well, you what? yourself even said that, you know, a philosophy could become a religion because of it course. has that component to it. Right. Yeah. But I'm saying I, I think a religion has to have a. I do think a religion has to have. A supernatural element. To I don't. It. I disagree with that. Or but, yeah. a some sort of truth claim about the nature of life after death or the creation of life. I think uh, it. I think. I you think can a religion has to have a supernatural component. Um, I disagree. Yeah. As, why? Why would you disagree with that? Just because I. I don't think it's. I think there are too many things that fit the criteria of a religion in the aspects that are important and we can study that don't have a supernatural component. I said earlier, it might have been before you joined, that I think a lot of the problems that we're having in society now are more caused by secular religions than they are caused by well, we're well, the whole point of the question is determine is to determine if those are secular religions at all because we're trying to see if they fit the right. rule of a religion or is it just a secular philosophy or if it's just a philosophy. Right. Maybe that's the difference is that philosophies are and of course I have no idea uh, but maybe one of the aspects is philosophies are not necessarily supernatural or maybe philosophy is a manner of thinking whereas a religion is what you are thinking like the the beliefs that you have. Well, they, um, a lot of people have problems with religion because they believe the supernatural component is untrue, and they have problems with philosophies that believe things that are untrue. I think that same problem applies to wokeness in general, that they wokeness has a belief system that sees a particular style to the world that is factually incorrect. And they see that because their belief system you know feeds that to them even though it is incorrect it's not supernatural though but it is believing in untrue things well believing in untrue things that could be that doesn't have to be a religion at all that could just be i mean that's all of us believe in untrue things surely that we just don't know it accidental um, yeah like we don't uh, believe in them deliberately but we think they're true but they're well, not well we well we might believe in them deliberately we could just be wrong 
um, all people are like that. Well, uh, yeah, that's part of the progress of learning. Uh, but I think that I, I just I, I'm trying to th I'm trying to envision a religion or think of a religion that is that has literally no supernatural component to it. Well, and I think the that's, atheists are always saying Buddhism is that, one. even though I don't believe it is. Buddhism but... has a supernatural component. We talked about reincarnation and right. uh, Nirvana and things like right. that. But I mean, Sam Harris is totally it's just drawn not to Buddhism because... But he just likes the meditation. He, I don't think he, he doesn't consider himself a Buddhist. I believe Sam yeah, Harris could... subscribes to a form of Buddhism that has no... no supernatural component the, to it because there so. there is an aspect of like buddhism has supernatural aspects but it is not theistic so you could have a hmm i yeah i every time i think of religion and what we see being called a religion and religious institutions it's all they all have a supernatural component to take that away would, I think, just turn it into something different. I, it I would think I figured it out. I think a I philosophy. It would, or I think I figured it out. I think the interesting thing for me is where religions interface with morality, where it's a it's like a set of rules that binds people into a cooperative group. And for me, like that's the interesting thing to examine. So, and you don't but need you a could, supernatural component for that. Well, you, you could have, but that I think, I mean, because like a secular humanism, right? You could form a society or a group based around like that as a sort of guiding secular general humanism principle, literally but, is defined as a religion, though, and has been by the Supreme Court. So I don't have to agree with the Supreme Court, though. Sure, you don't have to, but I'm just saying. But I, is there a, I, I, st I still I think it's such a huge distinction to have a group that said there is there is no supernatural component to the world versus one that says there is that is such a huge divide that I think it's a very good place to draw the line for something being a religion or not. It's very easy to understand. And sure, it's extremely easy useful. doesn't mean useful for for but I think the purposes useful. of study. I mean, I think it is though. Well, because. Like, because I think it's both. I mean, to to have a institution or to have a way of thinking that literally is purely, the, or, or that says there is a supernatural component to the cosmos, I think that's so easy and useful to distinguish it from other groups. It's, yeah, but the, the per for me, the purpose of religion is to bind people into a cooperative group. That's like the evolutionary reason why religion. Yeah, but you, that's that could be, that could be of any morality, hobby. though. But that could be any hobby. That could be any any. Like, well, no, not from a no, 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 not not from an evolutionary perspective. It wouldn't be a hobby. Right. Hobbies can have that effect, but hobbies didn't evolve in you know human behavior. Well, you could, but if but you could make a hobby that's uh, that's designed to do that. Of course, hobby. I mean, I would you know that's what fandoms do. Uh, by I would say, especially that like especially nowadays they like design the fandoms to do that exact thing. But I think religious claims are different than the ones that a claim of like like Star Trek or whatever would make. I agree they, completely. Yeah, and I think that's a, a a good way to distinguish them. They right. make claims about the super. A, a good way. A good way for what though? That's but wait, but wait, but wait, Adam. Your definition that you just gave for religion is the same definition you give for morality. So there has to be some difference between the two. No, I mean this is. Does it there? No. Or are you just why? using religion as a as a synonym for morality? Well, I, I said in the very beginning of this, you were trying to say that religion and morality are Different. are separate, and I disagree with that. Okay, so you okay, separate, so when you yeah. say religion, you just mean moral system. Period. That's all you mean when you say it's religion. a it's a it's a pattern of behavior that a group opts into, and you know faces a world through that belief system. I would say yes, with the addition of that claims to purport knowledge of the supernatural. Right. Will you uh, anything that doesn't do that listen, is something that is similar but distinct, but not different. quite religious. I agree. So, with but that. what what for? I I just I don't understand. A religion that claims to have su any religion that has do, supernatural do, components can they and believe rely things that are untrue that of course are not necessarily supernatural. Of course, of course, like that's all communism. Right. That's that's literally right. every so person but, believes. By, but things you're, that are not so true. by your definition, so you are separating philosophy from religion. You're basically yes. saying these yeah, are I, two I think, separate things. 
Yeah. yeah, I think they're often linked together mm-hmm. and they often co, you know, mingle with one another, but they are different things. That's like religions, a, religions yeah. have a philosophy. That's but fun. religions religions specifically make truth claims about the supernatural and the state of the cosmos and that's, reality. That's yes. That have you that do, component. That's fine. <laughs> that's okay. Um Coffee Cage, I don't know if he found it or, or drew it. Either found or drew your hot uh, Ganesh. Gine- it's, it's not my hot Ganesh. That's just oh, Ganesh. that's just that is just an observation that I made I see. about I see. Handy Manning and the Ganesh. Yeah. I don't know if we could I, show this on stream. It's a little. I, little... I am. I have a wide variety of interests. Oh, okay. I like that. Hey, a hot Ganesh is a hot Ganesh. What am I gonna say? Okay. I don't know about that elephant head, but uh, not. Hey, not all Ganeshes are hot. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be weird because you. Ha- I think you have such a like a very different definition of religion, Adam. Than well, I'm defining religion most people basically think. in the context of the purpose, the evolutionary purpose that. that religion serves. And I just yes. i I think that that is more useful for being able to understand the motivations of the people participating in said religion. Well, but wait a minute. And I, I don't just think I think they serve slightly different purposes because the moral system basically just says what like how you should act and the religious system generally says why you should act. Well, I mean, um, I what think is, philosophies can certainly say why you should act. I mean, sure. look, look, at, look at communism. Don't, there's no why in communism? I mean, that seems oh, odd. Well, Sitch, I think the thing here is true. that religion is that this is why why you should act, and that why comes from some supernatural source. There's no yeah, why in progressivism? There's no why there, in no, there, there is. I'm just There is. I'm just saying how there's a difference that between... That was the, my distinction, yeah. What I I'm said just saying how there's a difference yeah. between a moral... Like saying that a moral system and religion, because you're saying that they're synonymous with each other, and I'm saying I don't think they are. Especially, or at least from the evolutionarily, least, I, yeah, at least from I'm, an evolutionary perspective, I don't. Think. I'm pretty sure that evolutionarily, though, I have basically no real knowledge of this. I assume that theism existed before religions existed because religions are more of an organized aspect of ritual and belief that groups have, and that just sort of became a natural product of us wanting to understand the world, right. coming up with possible explanations, I, I, and the fact yeah. that humans are. I don't social buy into and it that. Sort of, yeah, I don't buy into any you don't. of that. No. That's a typical Matt Dillahunty anti-theist perspective that I think is completely... I don't think it's necessarily... I don't think it's anti-theist. I think that just seems to be a reasonable... Yeah, wait, I don't understand what you mean, came, Adam. Yeah. Because it seems that's pretty reasonable He's saying why, that, if you look at the characteristics of what humans are and our mm-hmm. desires... He's saying that the live. origin of religion is to explain the world. Partially. Part, yeah. yeah, partially. I, th- I, I like think that, religion yeah, it's, is it's, like a proto science type thing, which I don't. I don't think religion. I wouldn't call it a proto science at all. I would say, but I mean, I, I kind of just restate it that a, a religion ends up fulfilling a great amount of desires that humans can often have: a desire for in groups, being part of a community, offering explanations about the world, um, having you know the, the, the social aspect of rituals and things of that nature. It's a way for us to establish hierarchies in a way. It, it does a lot of the things that humans do, and so it seems like it's just a natural result. Of, I, I disagree. You know, give us I disagree. X thousands if you of have years two and... religions, if you have religion A and religion B, and religion A gives you a clear, on a, uh, a perfect vision of the world as it is, and doesn't cause survival and reproduction. And you have religion B, which gives you a completely fanciful, untrue picture of the world, but causes massive uh, survival and reproduction. Obviously, religion B is going to spread, and religion A is not going to spread. Yeah, but that's, it, it depends. That's it, not it, a counter, though. Yeah, it, it depends on all kinds of different things. There's a reason. I mean, pl- most religions that have ever existed have died out. How is it not a counter? very... Because what you're countering, the, whether religion is actually, whether it being based in true or not, has nothing to do with whether it's successful. Yeah, yeah. That's not I, that's not a counter to the claim that people could use or religion developed in order to explain what is right. true or why things but are what, true. So here's the disconnect. 
the explanation is mm -hmm. not related to whether or not the exploration the explanation is factually correct the explanation is related to how many babies does this explanation produce what do you yeah but i this is i feel like it's like, a chicken and the egg thing I, I don't think you can necessarily figure out which one of these came first as, and which one came yeah, second as, as long as a religion isn't specifically stopping you from, and you don't, and remember, you don't have to spread a religion by having kids. A religion can, because it's an idea. You could, you could pick up religions and lose religions regardless of what the, you know, the the population count is. People can pick up new religions at, at any point in their life. Um, it, but is, is your point, Adam, that you think that pro-social behaviors came first, and then religions were developed to justify that after the fact? And you're saying that you think Mount Dillahunty is saying the opposite. He's saying that religion came first and he, then yeah, they created he, the behaviors he, around he it. He is saying that human beings wanted to see the world, wanted to understand the world. Right. So Which they I came up they with religions do. as a way to understand the world. Right. And you're and saying... And I don't, I don't believe that. I think religion was a way for human beings to bond and to well that's form what we think as well we think those two that things go hand in hand strengthen yeah, how did the it, tribe how did it develop logistically i guess logistically yeah i mean it probably developed in in ceremony and and no but i mean like did because it seems like you're saying like oh i don't believe that you know early primitive human looked up at the sky and they saw the sun and they created a mythology to explain what the fuck the sun was because obviously they don't know what the sun is they don't know what the moon is they don't know what the stars are so they create this story to explain it all and you're saying and then then mount the hunty says that's religion you know they don't understand what it is so they create a story to explain it and you're saying no that's not religion right i think i well that's the the origins of religion is what it is. I think that's not a definition of religion. No, I understand that, but you're, right, the yeah, origin, right. But you're saying what, you don't that's think that's the origin thing. of religion. Well, I, think, so I don't. I think they would spontaneously generate ideas, and the mm -hmm. ideas that fostered a stronger, more cohesive community in battling in the world against other communities would win out, and those ideas are not not causally connected to truth or reality in any way shape or form and matt dillahunty would say oh no it's very important for these people to understand what reality is they just had they were mixed up about it but their ultimate goal was to discover the truth about the it, world and i, I just don't think that's the case no it it sort of it fulfills multiple things if you have a sort of way of thinking if you're told that humans want to know the way that the world works there is a natural aspect that of is us an that assumption that is a giant assumption that you're I, making. I don't I don't think it's an incorrect assumption to say that humans generally like to know the explanations to things I I, I actually yeah, but if, really, it, if it's between I think it's very interesting that you can test that if it's between knowing what the social norm is and staying within the margins of social norms or knowing the factual truth about about how the world well, they works. Don't, I think for the for, for the vast majority of the human species, it was the first. It was not wanting to know what the norms are. Well, the, wanting to know the norm. What do you mean by wanting to know the norms? The norms is you know how we behave. This is our tradition for where our peoples no, I, came I think from. The kinds of religions that develop in all of their variety is most likely a product of how different groups of people generally behaved in the first place. And so religions came with that flavoring to them. That's why we have so many different, you know, we have the whole thing, man made God in its own image, right? That's why we have right. so many different versions of God and gods. And there's so many different types of religions is because people people were different in their own groups we're, but they all had that underlying desire to this is a, to, to have an answer for how the way the world worked let me try this i feel like there here's sort of the disconnect too there's two ways that you can kind of look at it you can look at it from inside the religion as some sort of inherence who you know you you yourself are saying i want a religion that gives me some truth value about the world that would be good for me i've that's something I desire. Which a lot of people are like, yes. I, I agree. And it sounds like you're one of those people. I'm one of those people. Team truth no, all the way. I, well, I, I, I want to okay. know what... 
I want to know what's true, but I'm not willing to just well, join let, a let group me, because before, they I, I, wait, hold before on. you I, step I in, Sitch, let me let me finish my point. Well, I, I can just, build the bridge. Well, I, I just I want to say, and then there's the way okay. of looking at religion from the outsider's perspective, as this is right. a phenomenon that we want to study. But go ahead, Sitch. What are you? But you're you're saying say, I understand. You're annoyed about sort of the Matt Dillahunty view because you're saying like he's putting his own bias totally. Into it. Yes. Like you know he's like oh I want to know how the world works, so he's assuming. And you're saying a lot of atheists and anti-theists do this. They're, they're assuming that that's how religion formed to be by people, yes. you know, saying, you know, having that same bias of wanting to know how the world worked. Okay. And you're saying, no, no, no. I think what happened was there were communities. They had these behaviors that existed uh, for whatever reason, you know, maybe it was just mindless tradition or, or whatever. And yet, and then once religion started to form, they kind of formed around these behaviors yes. secondary. Like yes. the behavior they, came first and the religion came second is basically I want, Yeah, the, the behave, we have behaviors that we generally have because we are a species of animal, right? Yes. We will have general commonness in the way that we will behave oftentimes. Right. And so like, for been, example, like, well, we can use kosher laws as a good example. You know, you could have had, I don't know, ancient Jews before they were even Jews. You know, they realized that, hey, eating shrimp made you sick or something or eating pigs made you sick. And so there was this behavior about not eating these certain types of animals. And then once the religion begins to develop, then it gets worked into religious doctrine. Sure. Like, you know, oh, well, God said not to do this. It's like a game of telephone. Gotcha. Yeah. But okay. what, but like there there is a reason why, as far as I know, every religion has a creation story. It yes. is there is this people have a desire to want to have answers to things, not necessarily the correct answers, but they want to have answers. Religions well, satisfy that desire. Right. It gives them an answer. There to the is way a that con. A there is are. a conflict, though, right now over the creation story of America. There is the progressive America was built on <clears throat> the suffering of marginalized people and America wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this. Well, inherent I, white supremacy, and well, then there is the I think a, story I think of that America. Kind of narrative, that, I think that narrative is different from if we talk about like the facts of reality in terms of how the world was actually created. Of course, it is. I would. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying that like narratives are part of what. See, see, I'm interested in what makes a bunch of people opt into a behavioral pattern as a way that they're going to embrace the world and, and we well, i mean we watch well, movies on cults and stuff like that yeah, like cults are the ultimate cults are the ultimate expression of this right they're like a bunch of people I, who are like we're going to live this way you know we're mormons we're going to move to utah Okay. And have I, like understand, I understand what you're saying. I can, I can build the bridge here. I can I can fix this. Okay. I can fix. The, we can fix. This. What is okay. what is the bridge? I feel like I we're not really is. we're not. I mean, is there I, a discussion? Well, well, I understand what the issue is. Okay. Would it be better to say not that religion formed because early humans wanted to know like why something happened? That's not really what religion functions to do. Religion functions to give it is meaning. One of its functions. Like religion functions to give existential meaning to, to humans. It yeah, to, sure. to fill the void religion, about like religion why satisfies do humans, many things. That Who's interrupting now? I'm want. curious. Yeah, Just I know. let's um chat. Give me a one if it's rags and a two if it's Adam. So <laughs> you have to be. Well, I'm just but saying. Thank you. Like I thank you. Well, let me just finish. I'm very tired of people to, like yes. calling out my interruptions. Right. right like right. no, but, everyone else gets a pass, but Adam. Right. It's like yeah, it's because it were amazing. That's true. But um, no, it, it's it definitely to me, and we, this is like this is the video that we're talking about. They say, oh, the lack of religion, and this is a comment that the right makes a lot. But the lack when you remove religion, people lose existential meaning in their life, and then they seek it out through other a, venues, a, other as, yes, exactly. you know, capitalism, communism, blah 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 blah. So so. That would be, I guess, the answer to the question is it's not religion didn't develop to for humans to explain the way the world worked. Religion developed to fill the existential meaning in their lives about why they exist and why things are happening to them in the first place. Well, and to give them a system of behavior to face the world. And just like Christianity used to be that psychological system that a lot of people opted but that's into. you need both you need you, you can't have it's very difficult i think especially back then maybe mm. less today but very difficult back then to have a moral system 
that doesn't either have an enforcement mechanism or an existential explanation for the moral system. Right. So, but anyway, we can move on. Well, I, I, I mean, I feel like you guys understand what I'm saying here, right? Sure. No. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Rags, you're you're I, you're fixated on the supernatural element, and that's fine. I do think that's I important. Wanna, I do yeah, think I that's think important. important. But I just I there's too many. Like John McWhorter's book does not function under the supernatural element worldview. Like in order for you to to buy into John McWhorter's argument that wokeness is a secular religion, you kind of have to accept that there's not a supernatural element. To but there's it. a reason he says well, secular I, religion, right? Right, but uh, well, like I feel like I'm that's saying putting... secular. There are tons of secular religions. Like secular humanism is a secular religion. Well, I can I can say that I would say that it's secular religion in a very broad sense, just for casual conversation. But I don't know if I'd say it's right. like an actual religion. You're uncomfortable separating. You're uncomfortable well, calling it's not something that I'm uncomfortable. a religion. I just don't think it's as good. Well, why do you want to call it a religion? Maybe that's the question. Yeah, because the the Durkheimian definition of religion, I think, is most useful from a from an anthropological anthropological that point seems post hoc to me though because whenever someone calls something that's not a religion a religion it's always in a negative context it's always in a negative context i'm not i'm not using it in a negative context of course you are so, when you say wokeness I, is a religion or a secular religion that's a negative context you're saying so these, when I, these but people when are I'm, fanatical so wait a second here so when I'm saying Christianity is a religion, am no, I using no. a negative context? When no, I say Judaism I said, is a religion, no, am I, using I said a if context? you if you listen if you listen closely, I said whenever someone calls something that's not a religion a religion, mm -hmm. it's always used in a negative. How context. about this? Liberalism is I a agree religion. With Adam. It's not though. I wouldn't. I, I think Adam is How's correct it? in that when people when liberalism people say is a like set that. of beliefs and narratives. It fall, it, liberalism perfectly falls under the Durkheimian definition of religion. I, so I don't. That's why I don't, I don't like, like this that. definition. Yeah, okay. I don't like well, this you guys especially you guys well, don't well, consider... need to like it. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I guess. No, I don't just, know. I'm. I mean. Do you I the the I brought up the case of John McWhorter's book. Are you offended by it? when you say you don't no, like it? No, because as I said in the beginning it? of the mm -hmm. stream, when when John McWhorter says uh, wokeness is a new secular or civil religion, mm -hmm. I understand what he means by that set of words. Right. I understand yeah. what he I understand the information he's telling me when he says. So is that. this like a trans woman versus woman thing? You just want me to say secular religion? No, this is just all Sitch's law about what does it mean for something to be actually a religion i can say secular religion just okay. so i so i you... signal that there is no no uh okay, supernatural whatever. component here sure, sure liberalism is a secular religion there we go i don't agree with that but... i don't agree with it either <laughs> but we like... can carry on anyways uh j mac wanted us point. to know that he was not a furry Yes. He actually has a picture. He is he was the boy wonder. He was Robin. So that's yes. pretty badass. Robin is a bird though, which is an animal, so check. Oh out. got him. <laughs> got I'm sorry, J Mac. Got him. So anyway, let's uh hit it up. Mouse ears are part of the lifestyle, and reciting Hakuna Matata each morning 30 bucks, damn. is mandatory. Last time we looked at the scholarly debate over how we talk about fandoms like Disney and whether or not they qualify as religion. And despite the fact that it might make some scholars and all Disney adults very, very mad at us, we're going to take it a step further today. We're yeah, they don't want it called a religion. It's interesting. Right. Going to it has a negative the connotation to it. Yeah. Evidence for Disney operating as a religion. That means looking at the... Here's an alternate to that. So it's... I think people who are not religious don't want to be associated with a religion. People who are in a religion think that that word carries a lot of weight that they mm -hmm. have ownership of, and they don't want it applied to things that they don't think it applies to. All so, right. All this is just my fifis, though. That's. Fine. I mean, that's a lot of words, though. That's that's fine. Right. If it is, if 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 people is it? like the way that things, well, yeah, it? I, I think. Yeah, I, if we're talking about language and why things are called what they're called and what people prefer to call things, I think the way that it makes them feel 
is totally i think that's totally reasonable. well wait a minute rags is it consistent though <laughs> It might, yeah, absolutely. I think it is. If you have someone who is in, oh, I, I, I just say it again. I think it works pretty well to explain Look, why the connotations exist. As yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, Emil People Durkheim. Emil Durkheim yeah. is commonly considered the father of sociology. Okay, and he was probably a dirty. I'll communist, take your word okay. for it. So he has a definition of religion. I understand that you don't like that de definition Yeah, I don't. I think it's stupid. Yeah, I don't, yeah. But you can't, you are, I'm assuming both of you are intelligent enough to take that definition of religion and be able to apply it to certain phenomenon in the world, correct? I, I mean, know, of course. yeah, like I, that's yeah. kind of what that. this video is about. Yeah, the Disney So, right. so we're just, but we're just, so we're just, this is 100% okay, Sitch's law. You're saying, okay, I don't like fine. that definition because it really hurts my, my sensibilities here because if i'm in a religion religion is sacred well, and i don't no. like religion being used to castigate other people or if i'm not in a religion it depends I mean, on who you ask so if you yeah, but ask I, me this is a i think 100 percent fifi's argument it is i don't think so so i for some people it is for me like look, it isn't because i'm not a part of it i don't so wait, wait, it's not a fee wait 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 Neither let me, me nor let rags me read let me wait wait read. Wait, yeah, wait, making... wait 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 neither me nor rags are making a fifi's argument rags was explaining why people react people the way do. they do which is obviously a fifi's based argument based on their okay. fifi's yeah exactly exactly he's not saying that that justifies necessarily the reaction he's just explaining why the reaction exists he's yeah. already given the definition of religion has to have a supernatural component to it which I agree with, and that has been, I think, the historic definition. Now, going forward for the sake of the video, so we have to stop every 10 seconds to have this mm -hmm. debate again, we can we can look at this video and we can say, does Disney fit a religion according to the Dirk Hymian definition? And and also, does it fit a does Disney fit a religion under me and Rags' more traditional definition of a religion? Okay. We can do both of those things without having a definition war every time we pop the yes. video. Of of course, but I don't. Okay. What the most interesting thing about this video for me is that the religion driving the video, motivating the video maker, is anti-capitalism. Which yes, I mean, if you're not going to if you're not going to point out that anti-capitalism more fits the Durkheimian definition of religion than fandoms do. I don't know what what other interesting thing there is to well, say about this video. Well, you can point that video. out. I'll, I would agree with you completely. So, so Rags, here, this yeah. definition, I don't know if you were listening when I read the definition, but here's a Durkheimian definition of religion. So, a religion is a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things, i.e. things set apart and forbidden, beliefs and practices which unite one single moral community called a church, uh... And all those and all those who adhere to them. Okay. So it's basically a My, a belief system that unites people into a church. And they, they sacralize these beliefs because they're building their entire community on these so beliefs. So here's here's the issue that I have, which is mm -hmm. about that word sacred. And the way that people use that word is very different from one another, potentially. Right. Well, let, let's when work a, that. Let's work that out. What do you mean by sacred? What do you think most what people does mean by mean sacred? sacred? Yeah, well, yeah. It's it's about what he means, and I'll I'll well, explain. I think the, sacred are, is things like you don't, you know, you don't mess with. This is like sac, uh, hallowed. This is something super important of infinite importance. Use, well, because well, I think when sacred has, of course, a very close connection with supernatural things and that the typical oh no. organized religion. Please stop. Yeah. <laughs> stop, Rex. So so are you you're, saying that sacred <coughs> as a word does not have a, a huge I feel like you're dragging. Look, here, let me read right after it. It says, this definition, Durkheim avoids references to supernatural or gods. So I think okay. that kind of... I see where yeah, you're going I here, and I think that kind of heads it off at the pass. I so, think, yeah. I, I think sacred, generally, if you asked most people, has a supernatural connotation to it, or a sure. beyond human. If, uh, I mean, work, the flag yeah, is sacred. The, I just don't the American right. flag, I would say, is sacred, but I don't think there's a supernatural component to that. But there's, I guess that's a good, that's a good example. It's a good counterexample. Yeah, Maybe it's not I'm supernatural. The there, there's like a weird. 
there's like a sense of reverence that goes beyond like the individual maybe yeah maybe infinite worth for. i think infinite worth is a good thing but well okay you want me i could just read what the durkheim thinks so because i pulled it up well the, uh, the three in the video me, he go ahead go ahead go of ahead. the three perhaps most would be most important would be the nation of the notion of the sacred which is the point around which any religious system revolves. It is that which inspires great respect and admiration on the part of society and what is set apart and keeps believers at a distance. Durkheim contrasts the sacred with the notion of profane or that which desecrates the sacred and from which the sacred must be protected, making the opposition between sacred and profane a central element of Durkheim's theory. Right. So first of all, that doesn't really define what sacred is. Uh, except it's saying what it's not. But that's interesting because under that definition, you know, obviously anti-capitalism or socialism would 100% be closer to that definition of religion where Disney would not because I don't and know. And McWhorters is, would. Yeah, I don't know what the profane right. would be in Disney. But this is but. this is the this is the only reason why I bring it up, and I get that you guys don't like that definition. That's fine. But it is interesting to me that this guy here, the the wisecrack guy right. is saying, you know, fandom is closer to a religion by this other definition that I've chose. You know, I've avoided the father of sociology's uh, definition and doesn't realize that his personal religion, anti-capitalism is actually closer to a religion than Disney fandoms are. Yeah, no, I agree. I, that's part of why I wanted to watch this video. Yeah, me too. Completely. But right. John McWhorter's, like John McWhorter's basically making the same argument that wokeness is a religion by Durkheim's definition. He doesn't come out and use Durkheim's definition. But when, mm -hmm. also, when we talk about like blasphemy laws and stuff, obviously blasphemy laws are to avoid, you know. The profane. Yeah, the profane, yeah. Uh, denigrating something that they find sacred. Wh whoever, whatever the blasphemy law is around, obviously. Right. Right. Like right and now, blasphemy laws almost always tend to use sacred in that context to refer to something that's supernatural. It's it's used often both ways, which is why I wanted to clarify that word in particular because it's mm -hmm. a bit of a stickler. It's right. Important. Well, every I think every ideology has a sacred has some something that they sacralize. I think fighting for the rights of the oppressed is what the progressive ideology is has sacralized right. well, tradition I, is what conservatives have sacralized i would assume that's why they use the term profane instead of blasphemy i don't know what they like the exact definition of blasphemy because like you could say you know someone stepping on the american flag is profane right. you wouldn't really say it's blasphemous profane is so. from profanity right i well i assume i assume the opposite i assume profanity is from the word profane right. but yeah yeah Anyway, I don't know what the fuck Disney. What Disney character is this? I have what no Disney idea. What Disney character is that? Um, the weird mime person. I do not know who that is. What he looks oddly familiar, and yet I don't know. I don't know. Is this like some weird Pixar short or something? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's who this Ratatouille. Is. No, that movie is someone in the though. chat probably knows. You like Ratatouille, right? That's in of how the hype. It's okay. I'm, uh, it's good. Pathetical Church of Mickey Mouse works and what its spiritual doctrine might entail. So buggle up for part two of this wisecrack edition on Disney adults. Is Disney a religion? But before we get into it, I want to shout out this video sponsor, Full Sail. Oh my yeah. God, the sponsor. Full yeah. Sail University. This is who the real God of the wisecrack right. is. The sponsor. Go to Full Sail University. Back to the guys. show. Remember our friend, religious scholar Dr. Eichler Levine, who's no. passionate defense of Disney adults inspired oh, this yeah, video series tweet in lady. the first yeah. place. Yeah. Well, she's far from the first person to explore the possibility that Disney might constitute a modern day religion. Okay. Way back in 1934, author E.M. Forrester went so far as to argue that Mickey is everybody's god. <laughs> Meanwhile, scholar Richard Fogelsong called Disney the Vatican with mouse ears. 
But in order to really determine if Disney is a full yeah, blown those faith, aren't we first need to think about what makes something a religion to begin with. Oh, we're gonna get Why to the is definition this not like of opening religion. Part one shit. How I know. is it like at the beginning of fucking part one? I Defining know. your terms is the definition oh of religion. What? I know. Yeah, I but drink that put in the freezer is done. I'm gonna go, go get take it. care of that. I'll be back with a drink. In gotcha. just a I don't I don't even understand like well and also I don't even think this works because and I think Doomer said this, who snuck back into the call. Oh, you know, he did? Yeah. Uh, who cares? If, like, when it comes to Disney stuff, who, like, no one really cares about, like, Mickey Mouse like as a character. Mickey Mouse doesn't even really have a character that anyone he cares about. He doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. What character? Like, in Fantasia, I mean, it's just, he does, he, well, wait, he's like the worker that wants to make his work easier and gets in trouble, right? Yeah, he's just like it's the It's like an automation. Right. It's I mean, like, such, such a, as a, as a fellow, you know, black cartoon character with no actual character or soul or like, <laughs> don't you just feel a kindred spirit with Mickey Mouse? There you go. Mickey there is black. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, he, Adam is truly colorblind. He didn't see. Yeah. You know what color Mickey was? But... <laughs> I don't see color. <laughs> he doesn't see color. Yeah. At all. I don't even know how Adam sees anything. He doesn't see black and white. That's just. Everything's just a blur. Last time we went to Disneyland, my wife made me wait in line forever to get in that little house there. Oh, God, it was What is that little house? It's like Mickey's house where he lives and has all his stuff. Okay, maybe your wife is a Disney adult. (laughs) I mean, it was pretty cool in there, but... (laughs) I just, it was like a giant line. It was pretty, it was pretty cool in there. <laughs> this is, he's saying this to like, you know, save her. It's the last thing. Well, that was actually pretty cool. Like, mm, if you're, okay. if you're anti line, Disney is not your friend. I'll yeah, but the there's between like, to me, standing in the line for like a ride is a little different than standing in a ride to like look inside a fake room of like a fake. Like this is where Mickey lives. Like this is how care. they this is how they entice you in there though because when you come out of the house you get to mm-hmm. take a picture with Mickey or Minnie Mouse who are usually standing there in front. Who so gives a fuck could, about? Oh that. my god, Disney could have a ride that was like it's like the Hall of Bad Media takes. It's supposed to be like a horror ride, but Stitch would go in there and just be like, "Oh my god, it's beautiful." I've never seen something <laughs> I agreed with so much. Well, I don't understand why it's called Bad Media takes. Everything here is based. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. Based based in such build. Okay. Well listen, when when Doomer over here is like, well then I'm just like the Joker and Tyler Durden. Like these characters are literally me. Then I'm like, okay. There's your good there's your good me take and I'll pat lot, you on lots, the head. Lots of people feel that way, buddy. And those people are cringe. Okay. I don't know the time. <laughs> we live in a society, Sid. We li- we live in a society. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome back. I rise. waited for you. Huh. Are you ready yeah. for the fi- yeah, I am. for the final I'm boss? Ready. The actual definition that Wise Crack is going to use. Yes. The, the wait till the wait till part two to even define religion in our video. <laughs> about Do you think he's going to use a helpful <laughs> definition or a self serving one? Um, I think he uses one that's close to your definition, doesn't he? I don't think he does. No. Okay, I don't remember. I, I don't no think he clue. does at all. I could see him yeah. doing. Any kind of definition. I here. would definitely remember if he used the Durkheimian definition. No, he doesn't, but I thought he uses one that's similar ish. Nah, I don't think okay. so. He uses one that completely ignores. Uh, well, maybe it's close to capitalism. Let's see. For our purposes, we're going to use anthropologist Clifford Gertz's popular definition. Clifford for Gertz. For our purposes. For our purpose. I was about to say perfect for our wording. purposes. Perfect there- wording for our purposes. From Is there a more chat name than Which outlines Gertz? five stipulations. It's Clifford Gertz. Clifford Gertz. Come on, he's going to give us the five stipulations. Clifford Gertz sounds like a noun and a verb. Clifford, we want to hear your five <laughs> stipulations. Rags, is, Rags is hopes that one of them is supernatural. Okay. To define religion as, one, a system of symbols. Two, system of symbols. A system of symbols. Wow, Does he the mean alphabet. symbols in the sense of icons? The English language is a system of symbols. Okay. Well, does he mean it in the sense of like a crucifix as a symbol? A system of symbols. Oh, okay. Like does he mean like an icon? About the nature of, of things. Three that about the nature of uh, things. Rags. Sure. <laughs> we have I guess. D- Rags yeah. and Dillahunty. Ding 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 ding. About the nature mm-hmm. of things. I, I, 
I reference that I have watched Dillahunty mildly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you tie him. You tie me. In yes. The okay. I'll stop. I'll yes. stop doing that, okay. Rags. That's not fair. You're well, I mean, right. listen. I think the. I think a system of symbols. Now, maybe this guy went into detail. This is too broad. I don't know what that means. It's That's way too, way yeah, too it's, broad. It's, it's yeah. very broad now. I hope he'll get into it. If this is just a casual thing that you like, a, it would shouldn't be in a video like this. You shouldn't be so casual. But maybe he'll get into them one about by one. About the nature of things. Like That's like a like a That's dishwasher like repair manual. That's a lot well, of things. No, is come the on, of things. Well, first of all, so the Durkheimian uh, definition has there are three fundamental elements of every religion: sacred objects, a set of beliefs and practices, and the existence of a moral community. Yes. I'm, I'm I'm assuming that when he says, and I had to look up what Clifford said, but I'm assuming when he says uh, a system of symbols, he means something along the lines of sacred objects. That's what I said. Uh, Sitch, yeah. I, I think Maybe Clifford said he does. Bark. I, I think he's like, like trying crucifixes, to... statues. Okay. Yeah. So maybe he is kind of cribbing Durkheim's definition and just trying to re reword it for his thesis or something. Here, here, here you go. I, I find I found it on a quote site. Maybe you'll like this better, Adam. Clifford Gertz. A religion is a system of symbols which acts to establish powerful, pervasive, and long-lasting moods in pop-up in men by formulating conceptions of a general order of existence and clothing those conceptions with such an aura of factuality that the moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. That's so, okay, so that's so devoid of the evolutionary understanding of religion. But. It's very well, anti. It doesn't really. Yes. It, it also kind of like, doesn't matter because Disney would not qualify as a religion under that definition, even remotely. Um, right. Well, this is point one of. No, it wouldn't. Yeah. However many. <laughs> but I get. Well, I don't know. Isn't is that sounds very similar? What that point was to branding. Having a brand and a brand image. Um, that seems very similar let's see. to that. System of symbols which acts to establish powerful, powerful, pervasive, and long-lasting moods in men. Moods. Okay. In, what about moods women? Moods in men. I, I assume he means men as in mankind? Yes, he does. Okay. Uh, so. By Sexist. formulating conceptions of a general order of existence and clothing those conceptions with such an aura of factuality that the moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. So I would say that Dis you, mm -hmm. can, you can make the argument that Disney creates powerful, pervasive, long-lasting moods yeah. in people, but it's not about formulating it's not about part. it's not about formulating conceptions of a general order of existence. Whatsoever. Yeah, if it wasn't for that last bit, that's like almost exactly what branding is. Right. At Maybe this is the appeal to this for behavior for through ritual and cultural performance. Five, so that the conceptions held by the group are taken as real. Addressing the pause it here. Yeah, pause it in the, the, the list of five here. We're never uh, making it through ritual and yeah, I'll get, I'll performance five so that the conceptions held by the group are taken as real. I, okay. Why is that stupid typing sound? I, yeah, I know no. it's not even a typing font, it's really annoying. Um, yeah. but, Wait, did they, did they use the typing that? animation? Didn't they just use the wipe? The no, they, yeah, they used the wipe. So that's generally this is what, what we do. call a confusing video in terms of its editing. The the yeah. colors of text changes. The text I find okay. Itself, listen, I think it as someone it's... who's used text wipe with type sounds, they can all fuck up. Okay, it's a very common thing. Oh, you've okay. used the type. I'm Damn. sure I've used wait, that so exact thing. I'm so good. wait, wait, oh, wait. Right. My, I'm I'm brain blasting. You're saying that Sitch has used lazy and shitty editing techniques? Yeah. Well, first oh, of all, wait, you made a video. It's, it's that is far from lazy. To call my editing no, lazy, Doomer. It's that is not, not baffling, lazy, Mister Three Videos. Okay. It's extra work to add typing sounds. It's not yes, lazy. It's, it's just not misguided lazy. Exactly. Thank you. Just say it's wrong, not lazy. Rags, don't defend Sitch. I, I will sometimes. Don't, don't do does that. I, does anti capitalism fit this definition of religion? I feel like it might. Um, I think if a Disney fits it, not the maybe maybe the like the one that Sitch read, not the one on screen. So that conceptions held by the group are taken as real. That's profit is theft, right? So that the concept. Well, I'll well, read. I, I'll well, read wait, the that's actual. Almost everything, right? You want every. You want the conceptions held by the group to be taken as real. That's 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 almost a meaningless thing. The flag the is sacred. I think should be taken as real, but a lot of people don't take that as real. 
I don't think flags are sacred. The best you could get is what they represent, maybe. But the flags. Well, I, I think people, lots of people, take flags as sacred objects. That's why they get upset if you like you wipe know, your ass with it. Really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some people do. Yeah. They, by, by the way, chat. I don't like to see. Yeah. If you want me gone, you, you donate a hundred dollars. <laughs> why? Someone, someone asked how much to kick Doomer. Nice. Okay, let me let me, let me read Gertz's. Doomer. We're gonna take Gertz's. your money and not kick Doomer. <laughs> Let me read Gertz's actual <laughs> definition. You can see if it lines up with this uh, paraphrase. Okay. Uh, in religion as a cultural system, Gertz defines religion as, number one, a system of symbols which act to establish powerful, persuasive, pervasive, and long-lasting moods and motivations in men by formulating conceptions of general order of existence and clothing these conceptions with such an aura of factuality that the moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. I mean, it sound, that sounds like a Richard Wolff speech to me, this whole idea that, you know, you're getting ripped off. The difference between, you know, what you produce and what you get paid is called profit, and that's to rip you off and to get you super angry about your boss. Right. And to believe I don't that anti-capitalism is real. Right. I don't think that that paraphrase on screen is that is i mean it's a little different but i don't think it's that different i think that's fair enough for All gertz's right. definition i don't really like gertz's definition but it's fair enough yeah this is the first i've encountered it so but under this definition i would say that leftism 100 percent fits that model sure that there, mode. some of oh. these i think number four is probably the ones that i the one i kind of four and five are probably mm -hmm. the, and sort of three yeah about the nature of things is so broad. Well, I'm assuming they mean like, you know, the nature, the fundamental of man, nature of reality, of being reality, and... human behavior, you know, things of that nature. So, yeah. The nature of capital. Addressing peace, a system of symbols, look no further than Mickey Mouse himself, who has become a worldwide symbol of innocence. Hey, can I just point out really quickly what a fucking shitty argument this is? It's a horrible argument. I could. I feel like I could do a better job arguing could, this just yeah. off the top of my head. How is yes. Mickey Mouse a symbol at of all innocence. embody <laughs> innocence? I just I that's know. like ridiculous. I, I can come up with. I I think Mickey Mouse fairly can. It's kind of it represents innocence in a way. Mickey wow. Mouse doesn't do bad things. He's in cartoons that are very kid Racist. friendly. They're what? <laughs> Racist. No, but wait. Even Steamboat whenever Willie? there's like a cartoon with Mickey Mouse in it. He never plays like the innocent Red Riding Hood character. He always plays like the Kermit the Frog straight man. So he's, of he's often he's a good person. He's not doing bad things. Kids love him. So I, I don't think it's unnecessarily I, unfair. I, didn't he I, steal I will, magic in Fantasia? I feel like he, he did. He did steal magic, yeah. That's right, he did. Uh, that's he not innocent, okay? Yeah. He was yeah. in the, and the came to bite him apprentice. in the ass. That's right. Mickey Mickey Mouse is not even a character. He doesn't have a consi I know. consistent set of characteristics that are sh like shared between properties. If he's, I like a, he's like a floating signifier. Not I, not think, only, I think that's mostly I will true. add to that. Like a marketing that's slogan. True. I will say he commits I think that in have you guys seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yes. Mickey Mouse is in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's right. He he. Well, he doesn't give him the the tire, but he allows Bugs Bunny to give him the he tire. He allows Bugs Bunny to do it, and then after yeah. uh, he falls, uh, Mickey doesn't seem to have any sort of remorse. He treats it like it's a joke. doesn't sound he innocent. It sounds well, what is he? No, he, he says fuck. like, oh, he shouldn't have done that. And he says like, ain't I a stinker? Ain't I a stinker? Like. Yeah. He's like, oh, Mickey, I feel like you should. This is a man's life. I feel like. Uh, are we Are we sure that he owned that boat in Steamboat Willie? Are we sure he didn't steal I it? <laughs> I think he might I, have been it, I think it. we could. T I think that we can assume that it's his. I thought, no, wait. I thought I thought in the plot he doesn't own the boat. I thought he's just like the captain. Like he's the driver, but I don't think he owns it. He's responsible for the boat in right. the thing, which is, I suppose, enough. You know, He's diegetically he has, allowed to be there. Yeah, yeah. He for one reason or another, he is responsible of the boat. It is his for the purposes right. of the. Company. I mean, is King is Kingdom Hearts Mickey innocent? I mean, he's doing backflips. He's know. killing. Holy Heartless shit! He's with doing backflip. Is he innocent? He is doing back. He's flips. doing Yoda things. Plot like in plot you know, summary. What was his, plot what was summary his for Steamboat Willie. He had a keyblade. Mickey Mouse is a, a mischievous keyblade? deckhand yeah. on a riverboat that is under the command of a tyrannical Captain Pete. There you go. He's a mischievous deckhand. He's fighting deck for hand. freedom. 
under the under Wait, a he's tyrannical a fucking pirate? ruler. No, he was like, I guess Mickey Mouse was originally like a Bugs Bunny type character. Dude, probably. I fucking guarantee that Pirates of the Caribbean first draft had Mickey Mouse as Jack Sparrow. That's it. Hundred percent guaranteed. Oh, but you have heard of me. You have heard of me. <laughs> Now, see, now that would be a good edit, a good fan edit. Mickey Mouse is Jack Sparrow. That's awesome. Yeah, Mickey Mouse is a Keyblade in King of Why Hearts. is the rim gone? He's the gold one. The picture of mischievousness. God damn it, Rats. What? It's really good. <laughs> there you oh, go. Lord. Also, do you notice that, like, the Mickey Mouse guy has a harness? That's attached him it's to this insurance reason. Yeah, we, we, don't he, to, we don't can he even leave the... the vehicle? Like, where's he gonna go? Apparently he's not. He's a slave. No, he just he just sleeps there. <laughs> he's just he secretly there wants to be let go. Like this slave is his Mickey. chain. Well, you know, okay. There. So you know how like people that work at Disney are like required to smile. So like if you don't smile, you get sent to the Disney mines. And then after oh, a so. while, you're allowed to come up in the mouse costume. Right. And if you do your penance for five days in the mouse carriage, then you're allowed to go back to work normally. You'll be playing <laughs> Mickey if you don't smile. Yeah. It's, how you, it's how you get it's out of cruel. the catacombs yeah. of Disney. You're playing as there the icon go. that represents your oppressor. It's actually really Ooh, cool. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah. It's kind of, it's really fucked up. Interesting. Disney. Anyway, this fucking video. In the United States, yeah. market researchers have found he has a 97% recognition rate, making him more recognizable than Santa Claus. As cultural critic Henry Giroux notes, wow. the cultural Do iconography Do I, believe, I don't believe that. renders it a purveyor I of innocence I, and I, It surprises fun. me, but he not enough to where I don't believe it. He adds that through its films, parks, and endless merchandise. Mickey, you, you guys everywhere. should pause Maybe. if you're going to talk. I mean, we, we did pause. Oh, it Is it not pause on your end? It didn't pause on my end, so whatever. Really? Mishap. Go ahead. Um, but no, like if, if you said that was a global survey, I would agree with you. But in the in U.S. of A, I can't imagine that's true. Well, you well like can't, what, you don't think. Well, here's a question. Correct, because if someone if someone lie. immigrates here, are they more likely to know about Mickey Mouse or Santa? Oh, maybe it's all those foreigners that are throwing out. Ooh, the whole, good, good, thing, good thing Carl isn't here. Probably, it, I I would imagine they'd probably recognize Mickey Mouse before Santa Claus because yeah, I agree with that. How big that company yeah. is and the the fact they use him for branding on everything. Right, right. Okay, fair enough. The cultural iconography of Disney renders it a purveyor of innocence and family fun. He adds that through its films, parks, and endless merchandising, Disney becomes a symbol for the security and romance of the small town America of yesteryear. What? Oh, Wait, what? Awful. Look at this conservative I'm, values like, Disney is wait, enforcing here. This is like the patriarchy on steroids. Yeah. Wait, wait. Do they? Do, do, have they been to Disney? No. Does Dis Wait. Okay. Anyone in the chat? Is there a single? Is there one person in chat who, who where you go to Disneyland and you think, man, it reminds me of like 1950s small town life? I mean, it depends what you mean by <laughs> yesteryear. Um, it, they could just be referring to maybe childhood. There is Main um, Street. No, they go I mean, into specific. They mean like 1950s America. Main Street um, is kind of like set up that way in yeah. In I was gonna Disney, say there's Southern California. There's certain I don't remember where. I know there's certain parts of certain parks that have that aesthetic, but I would not think that's the overall aesthetic of Disney at all. Because each like, park has like a different yeah. aesthetic. You know, each section of the park has a different sure. thing going Toontown on. Sure, Toontown is like cartoons. I, right, Toontown, Davy Towns, Crockett, Space Mountain places, all those space yeah. stuff. Well, here we might yeah. we we might be missing it a little bit in the sense that we're talking about what it might be as opposed to what people pull from that. Mm. A lot of people probably pull from the Disney branding and the logo and what it means to them. That to them it reminds them of those things and it makes them think about those things regardless of what it actually is. Maybe. Because I can totally I believe guess. how a lot of people would sort of associate Disney as, you know, safe childhood. Reminds me of when I was young, kind of. Are we, right. you know, are we talking 5%, 15%, or 50% of people? Yeah, 50% of people, would. if you ask them this question, they would not give you this answer. The, I, like, what does Disney mean maybe, to you? Like, They'd be like, "Oh, security and romance and small town America of yesteryear." No, yeah, like no. maybe, <laughs> maybe we could, maybe I could go five percent. I could see that. Fifteen seems like it's pushing it, but fifty percent, no way. No that's, way. That's my impression. I yeah. agree. Yeah, fails uh, the gut check. 
So as he says, Disney Park looks like a storybook village, not the 1950s. Yeah, I think most elements of Disney World look but like the those, storybook but village. But remember, those kinds of images were often in Disney films of that era and then afterwards. So like the cottage and the fairy godmothers and the things. Right, but it's like was. people weren't living in storybook villages in 1950s I know, America. but <laughs> those are the sorts of things that Disney often had. In yes, I understand what you're saying. Really in the 1950s, so right. It's so, a so timeless aesthetic, they, essentially. Yeah. Right. So they think of when I had that, they was, you know, I, that's my world was like this when I watched these. Right, things. right. Well, and also part of it, which maybe this is sort of, I think, overthinking it, is that I'm sure large parts of the parks were built in the 1960s and they're just too lazy to like update them. Or yeah. So it's like, like lazy. That that's nostalgia. Why would you want to? It's not or lazy. It's purposes, like good marketing. Right? Okay, there you go. I don't know that they make like they make hella cash off those places. I would assume they get updated pretty frequently. But I could be wrong. I don't know much mm -hmm. about Disney. It's been a while since I've been to Disney World, and I've never I've looked never at it through been, this lens. I have no interest in it. Really? Wow. This anti-capitalist lens. This I am. I have been to Disney lens. World. I've never been to any Disney World or land. Um, I've gone to some places with, with some places, but not I don't know. very I, I'm big far. On, I've never been there. I've been to Dollywood. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Silver Dollar City, uh, Bush Gardens. You know, Bush Gardens like is good. Yeah, they've got some. I, I I really like rides. I'm big on roller coasters. So I'm uh, yeah, I always liked. Once I started to like roller coasters, I always liked Bush Gardens and Six Flags oh. more because it's just well, yeah. You know, once you once you get the stuff. itch for it, you're like yeah, do it, do it. Yeah. You're scared at first because you're you're right. a pussy little kid, and then you do it, and you're like oh, this is amazing. And you right. Just, that's all you want to do. I was never right. scared. Well, look at yeah, you. Good for you. Good <laughs> job, Adam. Well, I that's meant like also you. more so <laughs> like in Disney World. There's lots of things that are outside of like the rise so there's lots of things outside of just roller coasters and things of that nature so because i just don't care as i don't care about disney as like a, a brand or a commercial thing like i don't want to buy merchandise and i'm like right. oh yeah it's it's mickey and goofy it's like, i just don't care right you know um i feel like the stuff that i pull from disney that i really like is so removed from what i see disney as a company has and i just don't i they're just it's like disney and disney products are two completely different things to me in a lot of ways I wonder if Universal Islands of Adventure, do they have to shut down the uh, the Marvel section? Wait, why? Once, mm -hmm. once Disney bought it? They've been having a lot of fights no. at the theme parks in Southern California recently. They've implemented an order where uh, miners have to be accompanied by a chaperone now because the fights are so out of control. It's in, fights, isn't that like oppressive against people who work in the mines? People? You know what I mean, Doomer. Don't be... Well, no, glib. it means the dwarves, the miners there, the dwarves, especially Grumpy. Of all the miners, Grumpy, is he gets into a lot of fights. Yeah. He drinks, yeah. he drinks oh, no. and we don't, we don't really talk talk about they it. They still... I guess I dwarves was... might need a chaperone just to be able to, like, see around. It's like maybe they get lost in the crowd really easy. Island Adventure still has the rights. I wonder how that... I bet Disney's, like, very upset by that. I'm sure they have a deal that's worked out with all kinds of different yeah. things, and it's part of that big buyout. and Because they had the, the 3D Spider-Man ride and the Hulk roller coaster. Anyways, let's go. Come on. From the iconic Cinderella's castle representing enchantment and dreams coming true. When I think of the yeah. 1950s, I think yeah. of a castle from Snow White. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's exactly my, that was exactly that's my ridiculous. Objection. This is ridiculous. Well, I mean, Snow White came out in 1937. Um, so they're off it, by, you know. Well, no, no. What I, well, I mean, it's it's similar ish. You know, it's sort of around okay. then, you, especially if you have a small town, you're going to have older buildings and things. Like OK, that. so that you yeah, they're going to have castles. You know? Yeah. If I watch, the... if I watch Snow White, if I watch Cinderella, if I watch all these things, yeah. then when they came out, I was a certain age or maybe it's, you know, there's mm. a link. There's a link. Listen, I remember walking around in old town, 1950s America. And they're just castles were everywhere. Castles okay. on the every street corner. I have explained this so well, you bastards. <laughs> the castle Seven Eleven, where I would get my Slurpees. <laughs> I'm queen. I'm the. I oh, I am the Dairy Queen. Is, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Where do you? Yeah, exactly. You know what? You know what? Uh, you're totally right. That's where the term Dairy Queen and Burger King. That's why those uh, franchises yeah. exist. Yeah, they they at one time they were married and their kingdoms were united. Yes, those were in the better times. There was a terrible civil war. It was a horrific civil war. Through to Dairy barbershop, Queen, barbershop where dads are down Main Street, USA. Disney is. You know, I don't 
think I've been to Disney a bunch of times. I don't remember ever seeing a barbershop quartet. So I don't know. I'm not saying they don't have them, but I don't think well, that's the, I don't think it's a big right. attraction. What are you people. thinking? That's like stage, of course. No, no, no. But I'm saying like nobody who goes, goes to, yeah, exactly. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, yeah, who goes to Disney World to see the barbershop nobody. quartet? Nobody. Like, nobody. <laughs> yeah. But you would like stumble across them, you'd think. Maybe. Right? You go there if you, you just you notice, oh, hey, right. you're like the guys from that one thing or whatever. I guess. Yeah. I don't remember ever seeing this. Let's but... go to the Haunted Mansion. No, I have to you're... see the barbershop quartet first. I have to go yeah. see Dick Van Dyke from when he was in the cartoon. <laughs> Right. No. Right. Yeah. Right with symbol, not unlike that of religion. Do they do some <laughs> oh my of this goodness. by operating at Wait, wait, wait. Why did you what? say that? Hold on. Hold on. Disney Coming has true religion. True to barbershop or the quartets symbols? scrolling down Main Street USA, Disney is ripe with symbolism, not unlike that of religion. Yeah, like that's such a str like it's Disney super has symbols. Stretch. Guess what else has symbols? Religion. Stretch <laughs> Armstrong just entered the building. It's like calm here. down. Yeah, you well, should be making way better Han. arguments than saying that symbols Han. exist. Yes. Rags, Rags. To be fair, there was that cartoon where Mickey got crucified. So, yo, was there? What was that? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> don't get, I but don't get was. me excited. I bet there don't was. Give me, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> don't threaten me with being able to see Rags or, or uh, uh, uh -oh. what's his name, Mickey Mouse crucified. Are you into no something, Rags? We just learned something about you. So here's the thing. I have no idea why I said my name there. I literally <laughs> have Rags no has a stigmata clue. fetish. Yeah, that's exactly. A stigmata fetish. Just rub your hands all over me. Wait a minute. They do some of this by operating as what DePaul I University think, professor. I think he stole this entire thing from a Medium post. There's Probably. a Medium post from 2016 called Faith, Trust, and Pixie Dust. And that's it's good really. Out. Yeah, and it's all about, you know, Disney being a religion, and they literally also go over Gertz's definition of religion. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, the big kid. Hmm. Who is this? Who's, DMing you? Who's DMing you, Sitch? No one. What do you mean? I just looked it up. Are you just sitting there DMs. Googling it? No, I, I Googled Clifford Gertz Disney because I didn't know if he was talking about, like, a Clifford Gertz paper or something, and this is what came up. Oh, so. wow. Sad. They do this all the time. He's like, You know, you know what else is fucked up? What? They're only yeah. getting like Slavery. they're only getting like 80k views a video now. What the fuck? I know. Yeah. Over even though they have three million subs. We're I mean we're bigger channels than them. It's because no one likes socialism. Okay. It's yeah. because it's, it's because the of people like socialism. are extremely meandering and unfunny. <laughs> well, that's true yeah. too. But the, also, he has a different outfit. They didn't record this in one sitting. It's only this is video this is your too. job. Yeah, but. You assume you make you make them together, right? Oh. And then you release them staggered. I mm. would assume. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that would this be the is smart like a different thing to do. Day. He's doing the socialist yeah. thing, though. He's avoiding the smart thing to do. Rex, uh, how would, since you're so focused on this, how would you rate his outfit? Oh, zero. Not a fan of the breast pocket. Yeah. Let me give it like a two out of ten. Better than it used to. His last shirt was just clearly too big. Um. This one's better. I like the colors more. I'm into if he more lost blacks, weight? beiges. It does, yeah. And I think it's because he's got just a shirt that fits a little better. And I think part of it is because the shoulder. See, I hate. I is one of my big pet peeves. I hate shirts that have the sleeves that want to stick out really far. So yeah. that when you put your hands to, or your arms down, you've got these two fucking wing things sticking out of you because of the sleeves are so stiff and they stick out. Yeah, the pirate look. I hate it. It, it, but this is this looks like a better fitting shirt. Um, so I, I would I think he looks better here than he did before. But bear, I would say last episode was a two out of ten, and I'd say this is a two point two out of ten. This is a solid. This is fine. Okay. This is fine. Like I need to go out and fill up the car and maybe go. I don't get do something some from CVS. Store. Yeah, like I need to. Yeah, I need to pick. Yeah, up but from CBS I would. I agree with you. Whatever. But that's. But that's very different than I'm going to film a video. <laughs> exactly. We. This is. This is your job. This is your profession. This is. You could pit. You could present yourself better. Right. Not that it has any. This isn't. Just to be clear, this is not an ad hominem. This is just an insult. Okay. <laughs> different things. Right. Fair enough. Well, and and as are, like streamers who like to sit who like to sit in front of their unmade beds is like what are you doing? There you Take go. Take a little. What are you doing? As uh, cartoon characters on the internet, I agree. 
<laughs> as cartoon character, I do care about my like I commission art and I want it to look a certain way and I want okay. it to be nice because of presentation. Okay. You know, there is that element. Rags is sitting in a chair right now, like crooked, like in his underwear, like upside down. No, they're, I'm they're naked. Gonna, they're I'm, gonna make a I'm video. A dog. They're gonna make a video about how an alt right internet dog criticized your outfit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's one of my least favorite things that people say about me is that I'm alt right, and I don't fucking get it. <laughs> Wait, they I'm actually say that? I just made that up. People, people actually call say me. That? <laughs> yeah, people say that I'm alt right and a Nazi sympathizer. They say that about me and EFAP and all the whole thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. I, I was Nazi a 4chan dog. psyop. Yeah. yeah. I've seen like yeah. I've seen like dozens, maybe a hundred people talk about how I'm like alt writers and shit, which is pretty funny given my actual positions. But whatever. People are fucking dumb. But, I mean, being on the left is very alt right. I guess you could say. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, I mean, so it's like alt right, he's left. <laughs> I mean, a Sockdom is kind of all right to these people a lot of the time. That's true. Sad. Uh, Mystery Guest Zero One. Thank you so much, Mystery Guest Zero One. What a name. For $200. God Thanks damn. So bye, Boomer. Wow. Bye, Doomer. You're I was going to say, here. bye, Doomer. <laughs> you're fucking you're out of here. <laughs> if he donated with fucking Kick Doomer, I'd be gone. But... Uh, he didn't. He said, uh, Sunday and Tuesday are the best days of the week. Well, thank you, Mystery. Sunday and Tuesday? Yeah, I agree. Thanks. Thank Friday, you. Saturday. Mm, nah. <laughs> Sunday, what? Tuesday. Is Friday, I Saturday. Could, I could take or leave Saturday. Why Why Sunday, Tuesday? Are we calling uh, in to Sam Cedar on Tuesday? Sure. Or are we going to? That's a good question. I know. I, I guess keep wanting to put it off. Friday, Saturday, they have the weekend vibes, man. I feel like putting it off too, but yeah, if we have to get up early on Thursday for a show, I'm, I'm calling it now. You guys oh, are you going in six months? Gonna be like, are we calling in Sam Cedar this Tuesday? Of course. I mean, it's you not really. Like it's it's not technically food, early for you. No, I know. Well, I mean, it's early for doing a show. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, of course. That could be interesting. I yeah. pass up that opportunity. We're gonna do. Are we allowed to talk Kyle, about it? Yeah, publicly? sure. We're gonna do Kyle Kalinsky's Kyle, Crystal, and Friends on Thursday. Yeah, really. So be interesting at yeah. twelve wow. Eastern. Yeah. So I don't. I don't know if fun. it's live wait, or Sitch, recorded wait, are, ahead of time. But wait, Sitch, are you are you doxing yourself? Are you gonna actually be there in person? No, no. What? No, I'm not gonna show oh, up no, in the studio. I, I, no, of course not. What are you talking about? We're doing it over the internet. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll I'll go on camera, but right. I thought they I thought they only did it on, on the with people coming to their set, but I don't watch it. So. Well, no, no, no. He does like a, I think he does a podcast and he does like a show. Right. I think they're two different things. So. Well, yeah, but, but I think Crystal this Island is the show. I think we're subbing for Crystal. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever it is, we'll see. Yeah, you should probably Michael. Michael before you go on. <laughs> nah. Should probably do what. Fine. You should probably ask what's going on before you go on. You just yeah, just like, I did. So what was the <laughs> just wing it? So let me about? talk to you about talk to you about Sunday and Tuesday. We're talking. <laughs> we're talking to him about how Disney is a religion. There you go. No, we're not. We're, no, we're, not we're trying to convert him. him to Disnology. You're right. Disnology. Disnology. The the Disnoids Disnology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All hail the mouse. Buddy might call symbolic predators. That is what? appropriating existing imagery from traditional religions. Indeed, like the sun shining over Simba's kingdom. Yeah. That's, what? That's, is that a symbol? <laughs> the sun shining over Simba's kingdom. Wait, wait, wait. Christianity like owns the sun now? <laughs> the well, sun well, shining well, over well, the kingdom. No, no, no. E no. Worshiping cults. Egypt off, owns the sun. Take back okay. the rainbow. This is the so sun god bad. Ra is coming. Yeah. I cannot believe the sun is like the most ancient deity that exists probably. It's symbolic. It's symbolically predatory for me to use like the sun. The most prominent feature of nature in art, especially yeah. because this is the part at the end where everything starts to grow back, right? So, I I don't even Yeah. What the uh, This is there are stretching and then there's like Mr. Fantastic. Right. I mean, this is honestly, it's an it's an embarrassing argument. This is embarrassing. It's, like, it's cringe. I can't believe what he's like. It's no, a this dumb, video like, is it's cringe. A dumb, the argument they're making is dumb, but like you could make it so much better to the, to where it wouldn't be that bad. I but, know. Like, <laughs> There's got to be stuff that like actually is, is close. Than religious symbolism, like when the sun came out. Like when the, the sun King. comes out. What the fuck? <laughs> they stole it from the Greeks. That's Apollo. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Didn't you know that Egyptians also had rocks? <laughs> what? 
When Ra, yeah, when the sun god Ra rises over the pyramid, pyramids, Pride Rock. I'm just yeah. saying they both look. Oh, I, I mean, Pride look Rock at it. Look it, like half a pyramid. That's what it I was gonna does. say. Yeah. And it, oh my God, it's half a pyramid and there's a lion that's being held up like the lion face of the Sphinx. The Sphinx, <gasps> yeah. And look at all the little rocks around there. It's like little the little mini pyramids around yes. the Great Pyramid. Around oh the Giza complex. Gracious. Yeah, it's an entire allegory. I'm not wow. saying it's Egyptians, but it's but, Egyptians. I mean, something to consider. It's something to consider. Oh, oh, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a basin that's a desert, but then eventually grew plants like happened in Egypt 13,000 years ago. And the lions an was often used as a, yeah, the lions were used as a symbol of royalty. So yep. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just know. saying. <sighs> Remember, it was a really cool. World religions appear throughout Disney properties. Take the concept of the circle of life, which is deeply rooted in Hinduism, according to journalist Mark Pinsky. But like. We all know uh, about, I bet almost every, you don't even wait. have to have religions to have like the life cycle and the water cycle and Wait, wait, systems. wait, wait. The circle of samsara has nothing to do with the fucking circle of life in the life. It's a game. circle. Can't you see? What is the circle of samsara? You <laughs> fucking oh, God. Do it. It's, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's a big like theological thing, but it has oh, nothing okay. to do with this. Like the circle of life is about like basically when everything you die, is like, you become the grass and the antelope eat the grass yeah and then it's, like, it's very it's simple like an, it's kind of like an environmental message the samsara yeah. samsara would take me like an hour to explain to you mm -hmm. it's really complicated it has to do with like the specifics of reincarnation and like hell and heaven worlds and i would have to talk about hungry ghosts and explain different spiritual forms and like the allegorical and like literal interpretations of karma it's like it's got nothing to do with the lion king because okay. the Lion King is ju it's just a life cycle that you learn about in second grade. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> it's really <laughs> not a grandiose message. It's important, but it's not like some crazy heady sort of. Well, ooh, to well. be fair, in the Lion King, they do give a he talks about it in a sort of like sacred tone of voice. You know, well, yeah, he because he's talking to his son and he's explaining life. it, and it's a thing that a king needs to understand as being. Well, he's giving it. He's like adding existential weight to. This, the concept. Of well, the it's it's, nece it's necessarily about you dying and becoming a yes. part of the earth, you right? Know, and, and then that becomes new life. But like yes. to to say that it's just such a it's so universal. I don't know who you could possibly give this ownership to. It's like the sun. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It's not. A Imagine good the first religion. Finally, they they assign a god to the sun, and then they're just like, nope, nope, no one else. Nope, we he's ours. We already claimed him. We've got him. He's our god. You can't have him. No, no, yep. no, no, no. We're first. Yep. Trademark the sun. Can I have a god of this rock? No, we already have. You know, one. actually, I do want. It is weird. It is interesting how in like Greek slash Roman, uh, you know, in a lot of the early religions, the sun god was usually like. The big god, most powerful, Absolutely. which kind of makes sense. Absolutely oh. makes sense. So, but it's, someone in chat, oh, sorry, what? It's, I'm saying it's kind of interesting how, like, like in in Greek and Roman and other mythologies, like the sun god is not the big daddy god. And I wonder if that's actually because of like their hipsters are like, well, this other religion has the sun as like the big god, so we can't do that. <laughs> it's often related to um, what is most important to particular people. Uh, but the sun just is so universally important to yeah, human I was gonna civilization say, this, that it what? becomes, it's so often, I mean, when Akhenaten decided to redo all of like Egyptian mythology and say, you know, there's only one God, that one God was the sun. It's right. It's so important. It's like, and they, and they associated shadows and fire with evil people, like in the Bible. Like, <laughs> what's this? Like in what, every book ever. What society is the sun unimportant to? No, not unimportant, but like in, I'm saying like in uh, the mythology, Murlocs, what are they called? You know, the Apollo <laughs> is far less important than like Zeus or sure. something. Sure. The dwarves. And Zeus is just the fucking planet out in space. That's like a little dot in the sky. Like, I don't know. It seems unimportant compared to the sun. I, Zeus I've, I've got a, is the sky. I've got to, got to give a shout out to the color octet in chat who asks, why would you ask a journalist about religion instead of someone who like follows or studies religion? Yeah, <laughs> Which I was is a great the point. Same Why thing. is this the person we're citing? Right. It's like, well, someone on a blog said something that agreed with me. And when I Googled I'm right, I found their blog. So like, <laughs> totally. yeah, you gotta you have, admit I'm right. You have the internet at your fingertips. The amount of information that you can access at any time for your video is virtually limitless. You have no excuse for being this dumb. Yeah.
Well, at least I they didn't take the Lion King from this uh, media post, so there you go. That's at least something. I Look guess. at the bad job that they did in cropping the wheel, too. Look at all the oh, white spots yikes. around it. Yeah. <laughs> they probably just like select by color, and whatever the, color that, that is. World uh, religions appear uh, throughout Disney properties. Take the concept of the circle of life, which is deeply rooted in Hinduism. Oh, you're right. That's pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's really the magic wand threshold to 100, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you're offended by the selection tool, yes, that they use. I mean, it's what they did was this was from something else, and they did a select by color and then control X, and it was good enough. That's not they just put it in their video and then they said, Oh, put a shadow effect on it. If it's going to be like that, just cut it out as a circle and leave a white outline. Yeah, better. you would just use a circle select and then yeah. do that because it's a circle. Right. I mean, you, the, the fact it's a circle is why we're bringing it up. Yeah. So, circle select tool. According to journalist Mark Pinsky, or Snow White taking a bite from an apple like you know who. Heck. Is that fair? Is that a fair religious? Well, comparison? that's a good one. It's, at least. it's a Wait. comparison, but I have mm -hmm. no Wait idea what it's actually from. It didn't. I. I. You need to. You need to remind me. Didn't Snow White bite an apple and get put in a coma? Yes. The exact opposite of. Well, that's. The, how uh, does that have anything to do with it? That's like the. That's the completely different symbolism. I think. Right. I think he's just focusing on the fact that a chick bit an apple. It's and super it's literally official, begins yeah. and ends with that. Um, hmm. This is. This is like what people do with like. Well, every you know every movie wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Citizen to Kane be fair, because they like did this shot the first time like. Right. I mean, if, if we want to take it further then adam and eve die they introduce sin and death into the world by beating uh, by eating an apple so when yeah, Snow White eats the i can apple, buy it. it falls into a coma and has to be saved by something else that does sort right. of ooh, it fits ooh, in Jesus a really weird way if you it, it fits well, in a really bizarre way depending on how much you want to stretch it but i i literally think that it's so simple here that it's just a chick bit an apple well Isn't technically Jesus snow white would be jesus because she gets resurrected but Oh really? Bummer. But I, I, I think the apples. No, I, I think Snow White enough. is as an allegory for humankind works because the whole point of salvation is to be with God in the end, much like she gets to be with the prince. She's, right. You know, like, maybe you could is, say is it is dumb, to, but maybe you could the, say when she dies that the, the witch apple. lady is like the serpent with the apple. I don't know. Maybe the, lady, the evil queen. The evil more queen, girl bosses. Yeah. Get to the girl boss part. Okay. We do Eva Queen was a girl Pensky boss. points out that in Pinocchio, when Geppetto falls to his knees to ask an undefined deity for help, a fairy appears, conveniently decked out in the Virgin Mary's trademark shade of blue. That's, what? that's oh not my the God. You can't show a picture next to the thing and have them be completely fucking different and say, it's the same. I'm going to Google oh, what, yeah. what is the fucking the audacity of this bitch. Uh, hold on, what, what is the hex code of the Virgin Mary? Let's see. Oh, wait. <laughs> I think the Virgin Mary's general colors are blue and white. I mean, but, sometimes uh, okay. she's wearing red. Holy shit, I got purple. a result. Hold on, I got to open Photoshop and see what color this is. That's fine. It's I just... I disagree with you guys. I think this is fine. I would... It, it... <laughs> this is not at all a comparison that can be made. That the fair... This is not... If if this if there really is a mm -hmm. connection, they have not done anything to establish it Wait, in this video. Is this guy is this guy calling the Virgin Mary a, a fairy? That's... <laughs> I guess that I guess what he's trying to say is, see, that's heresy. The the, the 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 fairy that was summoned here, like you can just it. None of this works, and I think it's just the audacity of putting this image next to the uh, fairy and being like, see, it's the same when they're just clearly not the same at all. It, how stupid do you think I am? This is just a giant. Well, no. Spread. So the real question is, it's very it's very possible. I don't know when that. Whenever it, some character designer in the 1940s does, was designed this character, they chose you know this baby blue because it's somewhat reminiscent of the Virgin Mary. That's fine, but maybe. that doesn't mean that Disney is like aping religious symbols in a predatory manner or like this has nothing to do with the, for the argument that Disney itself is a religion or promoting religious ideas or anything of that nature. Okay, so, so when I googled it, they said the Virgin Mary's color is different. I sent you the picture. <laughs> I'm sure it's not the exact. Same. First of all, I don't think there's a one shade of blue for the Virgin Mary. That, hey, yeah. I, look, look at look at this. I googled what is the hex code of the Virgin Mary. And I got a result. Okay. <laughs> okay. Google knows everything. They have AI. To authority on mm -hmm. the hex code mm -hmm. of the Virgin Mary. 
What is the hex code of the Virgin Mary? on the Wisecrack video. Marion Blue is a tone of color. I'm saying I'm disagreeing with it, if anything. So, I don't know. This is how you. This is just how you don't make arguments. <laughs> Basically, the video in the original um, Pinocchio story is the Which fairy a, did a video on blue fairy, or that. is it just a fairy? In the or is there even a fairy? Story, yeah. I mean, the original story it was probably like a blood fairy, and it had fangs and a sword or some shit, and then okay. <laughs> they had to tone it down. Disney toned it down a bit. You're the wait, Catholic hold on, here. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so wait, blue represents the Virgin Mary and red represents Satan. So what is Minecraft saying when you go underground and find lapis lazuli and redstone? I don't know. What are they saying? I don't know. Well, Minecraft well, does have stealing. Minecraft does have the secret of the universe encoded into it. But so lapis lapis That's more of a religion in, than Disney. It's going to be in deep stone or a deep slate and it's going to be in I mean there's yeah, there's stone. like stone. You're not There's gonna, ravines not in red. the Bible. In the original Pinocchio it was the fairy was called the fairy with turquoise hair. Interesting. So she, maybe she wasn't she blue, but much, she had blue she hair. Looked too much like an SJW. I was gonna say she was the original <laughs> SJW. There you go. She shows up, changes your identity. Too bad it only lasts until midnight. Get fucked. Wow, this the original Pinocchio story seems so completely not even remotely similar to the Disney version. I'm reading this. Well, uh, this is one of the in the is Disney ruining culture video that we right. covered on EFAP. They mentioned the Pinocchio stuff in the original. The fairy adopts really bad. Pinocchio and promises to turn him into a real boy if he earns if he earns it through hard study and obedience for one year. Wow, strange fetish, but I can understand it. Yeah, okay, that's, I mean, one year of work—that's not hard. One year right. of work to be a real boy. All right. Discipline. I do that. Wow. Yeah. I went for the fairy godmother to call me a real boy. Wow, that's a lot of pain. No. Still, let's be clear. Explicit references are largely absent from Disney movies. Huh. This was intentional. Disney biographer Bob Thomas. Oh, God. Well, they well they intentionally didn't directly reference religion, so we're just going to indirectly link anything they ever fucking did to religion because <laughs> they used the color hair. blue and they had the sun <laughs> come out on the Lion King. <laughs> I'm like actually getting tilted. This it's weird upsetting. because you could probably just Google like, is there what do the places when Disney drew references from religion in their works and symbolism? I and mean, you could probably come up with way better shit than this. It would be mm -hmm. bizarre if there were zero examples because the yeah. culture that was made in. Of course. And here we are. Here we are. Notes that Walt Disney made the strategic face. business decision to keep religion out of his films in order to make them marketable to the widest international audience. And yet there's still... He means the Orientals. Still an argument to be made for the oh second God, qualification right. for religion about... The Sorry, the urban market. The all the nature <laughs> of things. Disney the urban Eastern may not market. feature an explicit God figure, but many have argued that Disney... <laughs> Rags wants to know why they call him alt right. <laughs> I, have, I have no clue. Still an argument to be made for They're the fine second people. qualification fine for religion people. about the nature of things. Disney movies may not feature an explicit God figure. So wait, that was supposed to be the example for, for Mark 1 symbols. Yeah, but those even, are those are the fucking smoking guns, Sitch. Well, Just get he, over he it. Even, first of all, he doesn't even understand the definition that Gertz was putting out. The symbols, when Gertz talks about symbols, he doesn't mean like stealing symbols from Christianity. He means they have their own set of symbols. Yeah, right. It doesn't have to be cool. with right. meaning. Yeah. So yeah. it would be like Mickey Mouse's head is a symbol, you know, the yeah. the fairy wand, the Magic Kingdom castle. You exactly. Know, like, yes. You know, these would be symbols. The, you know, Tinkerbell. Symbols. You know? Deeper so, you know, sacred meaning. Brand. Dude, right. fucking 4chan, 4chan better meets Gertz's definition than Disney movies do. <laughs> yeah. Like the clown world, the clown world's a yes, better allegory than anything course. in fucking Disney yes, movies. Yes. Yes. Okay. Punk in peace, my brother. <laughs> but many have argued that Disney effectively poached a lot of Judeo Christian ideology while scrubbing out the actual divinity stuff. As Pinsky explained back in 2004, there is, is the relatively little explicit Judeo Christian symbolism or substance in 70 years of Disney's animated features, well, except despite the, the frequent, almost pervasive <laughs> use of a theological vocabulary. Word. Ah! Uh, I mean, you'd have to. Let me, I'm going what? to guess that their examples for theological vocabulary are extremely broad, and it yes, just so happens totally. churches happen to use them. Right. That would fit in with the rest of this video. 
you're just saying okay well i admit like there's no good evidence for what i'm saying but like if you define christianity as like using things in the shape of a t and like the sun coming out and like using the color blue then yeah totally yeah <laughs> what I mean, look, this guy's wearing blue, just like the Virgin Mary. Yeah, so. look at this guy. Yeah, this guy's aping off the Virgin Mary, this piece of shit. It really is. Fuck you and your smile. <laughs> this guy, Mark Pinsky, wrote a book called The Gospel According to Disney, Faith, Trust, and Pixie Dust. And that's the article. Oh, you mentioned that's that one a... before. That's what No, the person uh, in the article stole the title from this other guy. Oh, great. Pinsky. Everyone's stealing yeah. from Pinsky. Everyone's stealing, Pinsky's yes. probably pissed. Right. Hmm. You had to make an oil company. So these words are going to be like blessing and f have faith and words that people and commonly use in a secular context. His He's going to be rolling book, over in his grave watching this fucking content. Pinsky's like making, original, making the argument so badly. I know. Pinsky's uh, previous book was called The Gospel According to the Simpsons. <laughs> oh, nice. There you go. Nice. All right, so he's got a particular yeah. fixation. Right. Hallowed be Bart's name. My don't Somebody press play. What's going on? How a bungo man. Have to do it? Such as faith, believe, miracle, blessing, yep, sacrifice, I was right. and believe. Yep, I was right. Believe. I was right. Believe. Yeah, theological <laughs> vocabulary. Like believe, as, as in accept a proposition as true. Sacrifice okay. doesn't make any sense unless it's in a religious context. No, right, there's need, no to, such thing as a secular right. sacrifice. Yeah. We, we need to have an intervention with Taylor Swift's appropriation of theological vocabularies, okay? So, but wait a minute. <laughs> it says almost pervasive use. Okay, so that means that they use these words a lot. How many Disney properties use the word divine, blessing, miracle, faith? What dis, What are they talking about? Yeah, what movies? Believe I mean, they use sacrifice. all the time. Sacrifice yeah. and believe, yeah. Believe right, but those sacrifice. are common words yeah. that are used it's, outside yeah, of a religious. Yes, exactly. And believe yeah. are the least religious out of all of these. Right. Yes. But like, I mean, I'm sure there's some Disney movie where someone's like, "You have to have faith in yourself," or you know, okay. something of that. Sure. Know. Yes, Spider Man right. does that. Right. right. I would like to inform you that a blogger said that they have an almost pervasive use of theological vocabulary. Okay. <laughs> well, well listen, if they said it, then this man the is an Orlando journalist. Okay. No one. An I don't author. trust anyone from Florida. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's yeah, probably a it's wise about idea. Myth or alligators? I don't, I don't want yes. to hear their opinion. Okay. Oh wait a minute. He's a freelance writer who's been working for twenty five years for the Los Angeles Times. Oh, okay. Well, that's in the terrible. Orlando Sentinel. So there you go. He's got both coasts covered. Yeah, that means he's untrustworthy. Yes. <laughs> This Mine. is so thin. It's prediction for training consistent Judeo-Christian values without sectarian or even godly context. Wait, the fruit is without the root. All right, it seems a contradiction portraying consistent Judeo-Christian values. Judeo-Christian without sectarian or even a godly. It's not a contradiction at all. There's no. What's no. the contradiction? That's like saying half an apple is like a contradiction of an apple. Well, and also, I mean, if. If a lot of quote unquote Judeo Christian values have basically become, you know, mainstay anyway. liberal okay. values. Let me let me let me give then, you yeah, let me give you a com let me give obviously. you a comparably a comparably sound argument. Okay. Who's interrupting Let's say that, now, let's say that we're going That's fine. <laughs> let, let's say let's say we're going to an Indian restaurant and someone's eating naan and like curry and Indian stuff. And I'm saying, Well, what, what I don't understand this. Like you're eating Indian food, but you aren't even a Hindu. Like you have the fruits without the roots. This is just completely ridiculous. Why? Right. Like that's basically what they're saying. Yeah. Well, well, actually, no, no, it's not that stupid, Dylan. Um, it's, it's. It, I think it's that stupid. No, it's because somewhere. because you'd say, okay, there are certain values that are principles of Judeo-Christian ideology that has sort of worked its way into broader liberalism, and those values exist in American culture and other Western culture, devoid necessarily of the Judeo-Christian roots. I mean, but that's but that's a thing that exists in our culture outside this, of Disney. I mean, like, are are we giving like Judeo Christian, like the Judeo Christian tradition, like credit for faith, belief, and sacrifice? I'm certainly not. Doing I mean, that. I maybe yeah. I don't know what he's talking I, about when he says this. Yeah, if, if they're doing that, then it's a mistake. They don't, right. they don't get credit for that. So it's like when people say, 
that Christianity gets to have credit for all kinds of different good things and values that people do. It's like, no, you didn't invent those. You did those, those things exist outside of you, right. and without you, and before you. Well, you don't I guess they would those things and claim them as your own. Right. I mean, I don't know. It's kind. Of, it's kind of, it's complicated. Okay. Like, is it? There are definitely elements of you know, like the individual being like every individual person being important seems to come from a Judeo-Christian value. That's a stretch. You don't think so? Well, no, I mean, that's, no, I believe exactly what you're saying, but to say just because you have that particular thing in a movie that it's a Christian movie, that's No, 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 yeah, no, that, yeah. I agree. That's like I a agree. giant uh, Yeah, but I'm saying that that idea, that individual idea has become a mainstay idea of sure, liberalism. Sure, of course. So I would say you get, it could definitely exist in, in cultures and products outside of Judea and, you know, Judeo-Christian yeah, you know, there's whatever. more. I think there's more religious iconography in the movie The Matrix than he's pointing out in this video. Well, it's very di- yeah. it's very intentional and direct at The Matrix. Obviously, yeah, I mean in yeah. the Superman, in the Zack Snyder. Superman, no, it's an it's allegory very, for transgenderism. It's <laughs> very religious. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny that they tried to pull that. That's what they're like. Works, not everybody mine, loved but, uh, that movie because it's like it's Jesus. It's Jesus story. Look, he's the I mean, one. You don't. You don't get he to lay on the Jesus the that prophecy. fucking hard. And- in the second and third movies, and then say, "Oh no, it was about a trans allegory." Like, yeah, I, I, know. I, I know. I don't know I, about that. It's the I Wachowski said, "Yeah, that's the that's their retro." I, I completely I, disagree I with you guys. Yeah, I, I completely what? disagree with you guys. You can't. I disagree. think Matrix is a trans allegory. Yeah, I mean, the third movie transformed itself into a terrible <laughs> franchise. <laughs> you know, Where's, well, that is for trans okay. quality. Yes. <laughs> oh man. It's- he points out that Disney effectively preaches the Protestant work ethic, minus the whole God thing. Preaches the Protestant. The it has that- hardworking dwarves, so it's preaching the Protestant work ethic. They're just it's, dwarves working hard, and also they're not lazy. Therefore, clear, they're Protestant. I'm gonna even push back harder on this. They're not working. They specifically say in the song, "We dig, 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 dig." It's what we love to do. Yeah, they love. This working. isn't work. They love to. They. It ain't no trick to get rich quick when you dig, dig, dig with, sh- with a shovel or a pick. They know what they're doing. They're not the out here song. Just, uh, These are this capitalists. Is, okay. if, any, if anybody, if any lefty is listening, this is the dumbest fucking thing that people on the left say. Try to act like working hard is like a Christian or conservative thing. Just never say the Protestant Whenever, work ethic. Never uh, say it. it never exactly. bring it up. If someone ever comes to you and tries to tell you that working hard is in some way bad, that person does not have your best interest at heart. Exactly. Well, and isn't the concept of like the doors mining in caves? I mean, doesn't this predate? I was in the Bible. You know, Christianity? <laughs> like, is it no, this like sleepy a... dopey? They were in the Bible. I thought the concept of like dwarves mining and living underground was like a concept that was like before Christianity. Actually... Maybe I don't know where the origins of that actually come from. Because it seems to be a thing that we just associate dwarves with, but I don't actually know the origins. Well, of I mean, I assume Token got it from. I don't think Token came up with it. I think he got it from somewhere. Um, ver- that's very likely. I'm not sure. It, it's yeah, like elves uh, and trees and things. Dwarves like that. are from Germanic mythology. It's an entity that dwells within the mountains and the earth. Uh, an entity that's... associated with wisdom, smithing, mining, and crafting. So there you and go. Even as far back as the Greeks, you had um, of course, we had Hades, right? And he was the brother who got the Earth Realm. He had all the Zeus gems. The, yes. Yeah. He exactly. You're right. He is this. One of the stories I've heard was that when they split their lots and everything, Zeus got the sky, Poseidon got the ocean, and the land went to Hades. He was secretly actually like, oh, like I'm gonna act like I'm upset, but it actually comes with all of the gold and the gems and the jewels and everything that comes along with the Earth. Right. Wow. He got. Wait, who would want the sky? I don't Zeus know. got this guy. And also, Didn't yeah, Zeus get I, don't want, I want the Earth. I want the Zeus Earth. did not get ripped. Zeus got the it. best stuff. What do you mean? What is there in the sky? It's not fucking skies of Arcadia. Clouds. Yeah, it's just it's it's just high up there. It's regal and majestic. You get the Lord over everyone. What do you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. On your nothing. Air power. I, I guess I'll, I'll take I'll take all the I'll fucking take... gold in the mountains and Lord over people with my fucking. Okay, wait. If you had to choose, to live on the Earth. If you had to choose to be a god in Greek mythology, and your choices are you can either be Zeus or Hades, why the fuck would you choose Hades? That's crazy talk. Wait, wait, wait. Dude, Hades, every time Hades dies, he just goes back to the fucking town. 
None of the okay. That no, you mean Zagoras. Okay. Oh no, I guess Hades does die and go back to the town. But in, well, in terms of like, is there a realm that you want to have sort of as your own? Being the god of the earth is like an amazing thing. Especially was it the earth? I thought it was the. I thought he got the underworld. I don't underworld? know if he got earth. Well, yeah, I suppose so. It could be the either way. I mean, hmm, it changes a little bit. It, I think Poseidon, changes a lot. Poseidon, Poseidon got a little bit cucked, but Zeus got like a, just a raw deal. I don't know the seas. No, we didn't. What are you talking the about? The seas are kind of amazing too. They're all full of all kinds of cool stuff. The seas were the really important and... back in the day. No, no, I'm wrong. Back in the day, seas were really important. Today, seas are really important. That's true. Yeah. But what, what is got all the, the cool sky? fish and all the nifty stuff? And, it's not like Zeus had satellites. Zeus is the great satellite what does Zeus that will have turn owls? you into a cow. And yeah, fuck yeah, that you. mechanical owl. I remember that's from a, the movie. That's a, no, that yeah. was Athena that had the owl. Oh, Zeus. damn it. The mechanical yeah. owl is from Clash of the Titans. And Jace, uh, yeah, yeah, but no, Athena Titans. had an owl. I don't know. It wasn't mechanical. Or maybe Athena, it was mechanical. Yeah, the owl is a yeah, it was mechanical. of Athena, yeah. yes. Uh, Zeus got the sky, Poseidon got the seas, and Hades got the underworld. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think, I don't know if anyone, I don't know if anyone got like Earth. I don't know how that is dictated, but. Humans got the Earth. Mm hmm. Whatever. I think Hades got kind of. I, I think, over didn't the one. meek inherit the Earth? There you go. Sure. The meeksters got it. The meeksters. The Earth that remained part? common. Oh well, there you go. Listen, the, the oh, Greeks were all into uh, okay. you know the common uh, public good, got, public utility. <laughs> so there you go. They all got the earth, but they had to split up the earth. Okay, that's fair right. enough. So if you knew you get the earth, but you had to share the earth, would you want the sky, the sea, or the underworld? The sky, man. Zeus has got. He's in his little cloud city, banging bronze. I think all the day. weather. I think the weather is something that comes into it that Bang gives you a lot of power. Water. You know? Yeah, Zeus has got yeah, you guys absolutely. are crazy. He's Zeus is like up, he's the made. world's first furry. Come to my clouds. Series. That is that is fucking true. <laughs> People say the Egyptian gods are the world's first furry. No, no, no. Zeus was a human essence. He was human like, and he would change people into animals and himself, and then have sex with people, therefore making him the first furry. That is true. The Egyptian the true. Egyptian gods were just this is just what I am. I, yeah. Okay. Zeus only had to do that because he got a shitty sky realm where he can't do anything. So he's like, "Well, I don't have anything to do. There's a fucking board. I, I guess I'll turn into animals." No, I think he was just. Humans. I think he was just crazy. He was just a player. No, he wasn't was he? He was doing it because he had to escape the eye, of, the ever watchful eye of his true wife, Hera. Hera. Yeah. So, oh yeah. How really, dare she not want okay, her husband to fuck around? Listen, think, nah, think about think about how. Zeus. Think about how fucked you are if your wife is above the earth and can see everything you do. You have to go to the other side of the earth to fuck people while transformed into a bear. Wait, was hey, Zeus maybe the beginning of maybe animorphs? that's freaky, crazy, awesome shit. Who knows? Was Zeus we'll the first animorph? Know. He was. Zeus was the first animorph. animorph. There you and go. what does he do with that power? Fucks, Fucks women. women. Yeah. Sometimes I like men. this religion. I mean, that's kind of base. This is a religion I can relate to. You know, yeah, I don't know if you, uh, know the author of Animorphs. Animorphs wrote a whole series about mythology and stuff, so maybe maybe Zeus oh, was the first. Where we got the idea, yeah. yeah. Hard work leads to upward social mobility, no matter what. Echoes of the David and Goliath story frequently pull. Well, you don't have to denigrate it and say no matter what, but it's certainly a big part of it. You know, it's, right. it's fine to say that. I don't know why you hate that as a concept. But nobody, you know, nobody. I mean, by know, the way, but... no one thinks that if you work hard, you guaranteed rise up. No one yeah, thinks that. Yeah, I've never. Yeah. Never heard so. some people yeah, believe work. that. That's not true. The, if the, you're just that guaranteed, guaranteed, like indefinitely it? rise if you work hard, no way. People will make that. People, people will say, like, like you should people work will hard say because you'll have it's, a, it helps. People will say you can meet like your base needs if you work hard, which is true, unless is you have like true, a yeah. serious medical condition or like mm -hmm. a bunch of kids or something. Right. It's the only circumstances where if you work really hard, you like are genuinely fucked in this country. Yeah. But hard like, work no one's going to say, like, no one's going to say, like, oh, all you have to do is work hard. Eventually you'll be a billionaire. Like, no. It's not really no, good. I if you work I, hard. That's like the the base level of things you have to do if you want to potentially meet your dreams or whatnot. Yeah. You can't be right. lazy and question. expected to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to be a billionaire, you just stop eating at Starbucks every day. So yeah. this is all supposed to be number two: establish powerful, pervasive, and long-lasting moods and motivations in men. And so far, we have the dwarves symbolize the Protestant work ethic, and Mowgli represents David and Goliath. By extension, uh, he's trying to say know. that like Snow White works hard because she gets to the cottage and the first thing she does is, wow, it's filthy in here. And she uses her forest friends to help her clean up the place. That's true. So I, 
It goes deep. <laughs> it goes deep. Pulsate through the film. Room. The poor and downtrodden always eventually triumphing over the powerful and corrupt. As Pinsky summarizes, good uh, is always rewarded. Of that's Evil. what you pull from the jungle. The poor and downtrodden always triumph. The I mean, I thought the Jungle Book is a. I don't think that's the message of the Jungle Book. It's more about like belonging, finding where you truly belong, and things like that. Um, I, I mean, mean, I don't know. I, is, I never read the original Rudyard Kipling book, but from the movie, I assume it's different. But like, this is this know. is you know stories and, and entertainment made for children, and so okay, it has a happy ending generally. I mean, the, I don't. I mean, it's, it's, as a kid, watch a Disney movie and then go forward in life thinking like, oh, well, this means there's always happy endings in like the world. I don't think anyone draws this from Disney movies and then and, and then associates it with like reality. And the one thing that Shere Khan is afraid of is fire. So Mowgli gets a bush that's on fire and he ties it to oh, Shere Khan's tail and like Shere Khan runs Moses away. Moses and the burning bush. And so he didn't, I mean, Shere Khan will, uh, assumedly will be back very angry. Um, no, that's it's the burning bush, like in the Bible, it just burns maybe. forever. Oh uh, yeah, I, tigers are afraid of. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is a terrible this guy argument. with another blue shirt. This fucker. He's very Virgin Mary like. This guy's a virgin. Evil <laughs> is always punished. Faith is an essential element. Faith in yourself, and even more, faith in something greater than yourself. Wow. Um, good is always rewarded. Evil is always punished. Um, I mean, in the, in a religious sense, that's true. If you factor in the afterlife and the divine judgment. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Behind faith is an essential faith. element. Faith in I, yourself. I like the idea. Of, like, listen, it's very important that you have faith in yourself and faith in something greater than yourself. Yeah. Oh, so just well, well, faith I mean, in everything, essentially. Is well, that, that's not like a terrible thing to tell people. If you have some, like, if you like, you you need to believe in yourself, and you Are also you sure? need to you're part of a community or something like that. That isn't, of a, you know, that isn't necessarily a bad message. It just depends on how you phrase it. Right. But <laughs> if it's so talking vague. about faith in God, it's like, I don't know about that. I guess we'll find out where this leads. It's a fucking blue shirt piece of shit. Some higher power. Optimism oh. and hard work well. complete the basic canon. Pinsky dubs this Disney ethos secular tunism, explaining that in place of God working his divine magic, Disney uses magical creatures doing magic magic. You know, fairies and fairy godmothers, genies. Well, so, but wait, I mean, this is so annoying because basically saying, so it's Disney different. is a religion because it has the concepts of American culture that are the dominant concepts of American culture. It's like, well, how does that make any sense? Yeah. And it takes in the elements of religion that are the most supernatural it doesn't purport in any way to actually be real, but it just uses them to tell stories. Right. Obviously, any story that comes out of a culture is going to be dripping with the concepts and ideas of that culture. That like, are like popular definition. in that culture, especially if you want to make popular movies. Yeah. How, how does this translate into a religion? <laughs> this video is bad. This is bad video. Well, and also... It's, he shows Aladdin. Aladdin completely shits on this entire concept. I mean, Aladdin this, is a thief who does not work hard, you know, does not follow the rules and play according to the system or do any of that stuff. This He's guy's beliefs, person, this guy's belief system, the the wisecrack guy, his belief system is in a world where Disney is putting these themes into their movies to subjugate the population instead of looking at the obvious these are the ideas that are popular within the culture, and therefore I am going to use them to make money off of the people in the culture. Or it's look so at like, ridiculous. No, you're. I mean, you're absolutely right. But I it think doesn't the people even, who made it believe in the ideas. It doesn't even work. Look, I mean, Lion King. You know, uh, Simba goes off the fuck around. His entire period, which he grows up, he does the exact opposite of hard work. Is Akuna Matata. And then oh, really he slacks off. He, he pulls slacks off Jiminy Cricket. Hakuna Hakuna Matata, it means no worries. It means no worries. Yeah. For the rest of your days. It's a problem free it, philosophy. It means you just sit around, you know, eating bugs and chilling, essentially, oh, wow. getting high with your friends I like for the rest this. of your life. Ignoring your Simba's my new avatar for life. Yeah, Is but see, it's actually Lion King's actually genius because you know why uh, Simba gets a job? 
what happens. Because a girl. Uh -oh. Girl boss. Shows up. <laughs> yeah. Not the girl, girl boss. Girl boss. Oh, nice. Well, I not like a girl, this. but it's like it's like the girl's like, listen, Simba, She's I want to I want to date you. But you need to get a job. Okay, he's oh, yeah, not he's hanging out with Simba, your loser friend. Wouldn't. He is he is royalty. To be fair, you want to get in, you know, yes, with the, that's with true. The guy who's going to be king. Sounds like soon. a Sounds like a message to subjugate the population. But 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 the I mean, if you're gonna look at like the message of Lion King, I guess from Simba's perspective, it's not about hard work. It's it's about just not running accepting away from your, your problems, responsibility. Yes. accepting responsibilities, and yes. confronting right. your problems. It's not like you, you know Simba doesn't go through an anime you know training arc to defeat Scar, you know, in the final battle or something. Hilarious. I think like, maybe you could say Hercules is about hard work, you know. I'm not sure. A lot of these other Disney stories, I don't think they're really about Hercules, hard work at I all. think, is mostly about. Um, I think it's it's about it's about family. <laughs> well, Hercules actually he has a training. You know, he has the whole training arc, training montage. Yeah, actually, he starts as a zero and he becomes a hero. But well, no, it wasn't the training that made him the hero. Remember, he to be a true hero. Uh, I think it was a true hero means. Like following your heart, and because he because he declines, he when he becomes a hero and mm -hmm. he defeats all the monsters and everything like that, Zeus still tells him you're not a true hero yet. Yeah, right. Done that's it. true. And it's not that's until true. he sacrifices himself to like save Meg and choose to be with her. You know, that's yes, what makes that's him a, a true hero. Good point. We we don't even know if the guy believes any of this shit because he just stole it <laughs> off a medium post. Like, <laughs> who knows if he even well, buys into this? Doesn't Claire. believe anything. Wisecrack is just the ultimate. Like, just right. we're just gonna put out weird cultural content stuff that's bad. Who yeah. knows? There's is there? There's no. There's no hard work message in Beauty and the Beast, really. There's no hard no. work message in stealing your whole video off a medium post either. <laughs> it's a book. It's a book. It's not a medium post. The okay. medium post stole from a book. Um I I mean I guess Mulan, you know, you could say there's hard work in there. She goes off, joins the army. Um yeah, hard. there's hard work involved, but mostly right. it's 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 questioning cultural norms and putting yourself yes. at harm's risk for the sake of others. Yes. You know, don't don't Sacrifice. let what society thinks about you prevent you from doing what you feel is right. 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 A lot of rampant individualism and these see and that's the thing like Disney a lot of these stories have like liberal individualism as a mainstay wow. in these stories far more than like yeah. the Protestant work ethic. My are, favorite secular religion. But there see, this is many... this is the communist element. This is why he didn't he didn't focus on the liberal individualism. He focused on the heart Protestant work ethic. Not many Disney films tell you to do what society tells you to do. You know, it's no, they, yeah, they all say the opposite, and, right? Yeah, that's your liberal individualism coming do the right thing, even if it's tough. Yeah. If especially if it's tough, right? Pretend to be a man and go to war. That's what Ratatouille is about. I can't yes. be a rat and a and a chef. Look, rats aren't allowed in the kitchen. Well, mm. that's the message of Ratatouille. But I want to follow that... my inner heart and be a f famous chef. Right. Yeah, it's it's the Gusto's book. He said a a great chef can come from. Not everyone can be a great chef, but a great chef can come from anywhere. Right. Yeah. Go. Beautiful. Even from a plague infested a rat, a flea infested rat. He didn't rat. have. He did not have fleas nor the plague. He Ratatouille? took care of himself. We which don't is know another that. good message. We don't know. I never saw Send the I... test on him. <laughs> I never saw the test on him. Peace Queen. Sea witches and uh land witches. In this way, scholar Kathy Murlock Jackson writes, magic becomes Murlock. a way to empower the powerless. Just like God does in so many classic biblical stories. So part two pretty much checks out. Part th No. Yeah, I know. No. I mean no. like this no. is magic so becomes a way to empower. Look at all the it's knowledge kinda, I'm sharing with you on the internet. This is so broad and useless. It's just it is. worthless. Yeah. I know. See, like, God blesses people and they can do great things. Magic also does that. I'm like, okay. Our argument I'm defining like I'm religion was so much more substantive than anything in this video. <laughs> yeah, You're I keep right. waiting for more. Like, now tell me the <laughs> part that might convince me of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we, we could... Even though I don't believe it, I feel like we could all construct a better argument for Disney Absolutely. constituting a religion than this. Sure. It's just terrible. But ultimately, I don't think it does by any of our any of our no. definitions. No, it's no. But he's it's picked not. this super rare definition that I don't think it really fits into. He's well, kind of trying I said, to shoehorn it in there, but I think the only 
probably the only consistent theme across all of Disney stories you could get is probably like liberal individualism. You know, I, I don't think there's any other like major it's overlapping like, it's theme beyond like all. Do those. the right thing. It's yeah, it's got to be something generic good. It's authenticity right. over sincerity, though, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it's authenticity over you know. Follow it's, your it's inner do, self. Yeah, follow your inner self. Don't let like the crowd tell you what to do. Essentially, right. yeah, individualism. And even some, and even a lot of them. I mean, I'd say Lion King's the exact opposite of that. <laughs> is it? You have to accept your responsibility. You can't run away from your Lion responsibilities. King. Well, yeah, Lion King is. Wait, what's just what? Like, oh, you, you ever read, saw the Lion King? First of all, that's crazy. Okay. Yes, yeah, we have to address this. Lion this is, King is. I mean, it's communist propaganda it is, right lion king is no, arguably the it's greatest monarchical movie propaganda <laughs> oh great that is have amazing you, you haven't seen the lion king have you, you never seen lion king are you fucking with us it's not sci-fi well, i like sci-fi adam hates disney movies that have songs and i like lion sci-fi like, and, and i like comedy lion, king. lion king is like a it's like a nature documentary right no, no. It's got Jeremy Irons no, as an evil lion. Okay. In no way is it a nature documentary. No. I crazy. could imagine being really bored by Lion King. Not by Lion King. Just to be clear, we're talking about the original. Are we? We're not talking about the shit remake. Okay. You know, you know, Lion King is just Hamlet with lions, right? I have seen Hamlet, so I okay. guess I have seen it then. Right. <sighs> I saw Kenneth no. Braun as Hamlet. Lion King's better. It was super Lion boring. Lion King is much better than him. And it's not boring. There are many incredible timeless messages in The Lion King. It has wonderful animation, incredible Isn't voice Isn't Hamlet work the and... one where the he see, he a spirit talks to him and he loses his mind? Yeah. Uh, Simba sees the ghost of his father like uh, Hamlet okay. sees the ghost of his father. Gotcha. Remember yeah. who you are. Maybe someday but I'll see, watch it. No, I, I was going to say, I th even it's funny because Lion King is... I think there is the overarching message of follow your heart, don't follow what the crowd tells you. And and almost every Disney movie, except for Lion King, is the exact opposite of that. And that's the one he's using. Well, Hilarious. What was, well, the crowd might have told Simba who, who is the crowd to Simba when he was away. His it responsibility. Was Timon, it was Timon and Pumbaa. He was. The he crowd. was well, no, I disagree because Simba him, Simba is born into a role, and instead of following the role he's been born into to be king he fucks off to follow his heart to be with you know simba and you know, timon and, and pumba no no I, I don't think so and the mm -hmm. reason is because he's not out there to follow his heart i think he settles into it because the reason he got there was because he escaped kill you know being killed right scar tries death, to narrowly yeah yes, right. uh, scar tries to kill him the hyenas almost get him they think that he dies um he he just narrowly escapes with his life i agree so, but I think that responsibility is the opposite of like of like individuality in terms of just do whatever you want to do, which was basically Timon and Pumbaa's message. In the sense of in the sense of you have a responsibility to other people, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you have a you have a you have a role in the society that you're in and you should be responsible to it. You can't just run away from it or else bad things can happen. Right. So there's definitely an element of... Bad things can happen to there, other yeah. people that you're yeah, exactly. responsible yes. for, yeah. yes. Bad things yes. are happening if you shirk your responsibility. Right. You can't expect other people to pick up your job for you. Yes. Because they might be your evil lion uncle. <laughs> they might be. They might be. Three, Ouch. inculcating dispositions for certain behaviors we're going to set aside for now and return to momentarily. Okay. So we've established that Disney essentially created and maintained a consistent system of symbols about the nature of things across its films, parks, and other products. But, like no, we haven't done any of that. The well, nature of things? Like, what is he even talking about? Yeah, the nature of things would... That How the world works? To me is There's no the, philosophy. Some, yeah, like some under, underlying nature of reality, some spiritual realm, some ultimate truth that we have access to and we can identify. That's what that says to me. Not right. right. Not we had the sunshine that? on the savannah. <laughs> hey, that's the nature of things. It's literally nature. It's things in nature. Right. The nature of things. Christianity or, also has like interlocking narratives. None of the narratives we're talking about are interlocking in Disney. I mean, Snow White and and the lion king are not related in the in the disney universe well what i don't even what's the message of snow white this is, is there all even a message ridiculous to snow white? this no. is ridiculous 
Snow White is chill out until things work out, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen Snow White <laughs> and Cinderella. But... Yeah, I don't remember. But how are those messages imparted onto its believers? I'm sure you won't tell us, but let's go. Well, mm -hmm. as author Richard Corliss speculated in a 1988 issue of Time Magazine, Walt Disney's philosophy may as well have been the Jesuit credo of give me a child before he is seven and he will be mine oh for my. life. <laughs> Indeed, Disney's... <laughs> he totally is going the anti-capitalist route. He's like, this is yes. all brainwashing. But this is bullshit because it's not like... If there are a bunch of Disney movies that were structured like oh, all the guys who run the banks and the corporations are your friends. Then I'd be like, oh, okay, that seems like, you know, right. like propaganda. But Disney movies are almost always the exact opposite. The, you know, the rich person's like the bad guy. Right. Yes. So I don't know. Great point. Sense to me. Yeah. In fact, I mean, stuff like Mary Poppins, the father was the guy who spent too much time at the place where he works, which was, of course, a bank. Right. And he learns to spend more time with his kids and his children right. instead of focusing too much. Going right. that far back. Right. That's what these messages And weren't are. they going right. to take the house? I don't think so. Was that a it different was, movie? I, I think it was a different movie. Um, the bank was okay. going to take their house. I thought there's some Disney movie where the bank's going to steal the... They're not going to steal, but they're going to like, you know, they couldn't pay the mortgage and the bank's going to repossess the house. and they have to Maybe, but I do not recall which one that is. It's been a long time since I've seen Mary Poppins. <laughs> Well, yeah, Mary Poppins, they weren't at danger at losing the house. It was essentially right. that he was he was knowingly getting on the bad side of the people he worked for because he chose to be with his family instead right. of not working so hard all the Seems time. Seems pretty anti-capitalist to me, but this is especially so... Especially considering he works at a bank. It could have been yes. anywhere, but they chose yes. a bank. This is so cherry picking too. He picks one quote from one guy from one article in 1988 and suddenly <laughs> it's like all of Disney is in favor of this philosophy. We can play the quote game. We can find quotes Well, for it's anything. not even the quote from, from Walt Disney. It's not like Walt Disney came out and said, yeah, yeah but, you know, give me the kid and I'll propagandize them, you know. Well, but maybe this is why their views are dropping off because this is such, this is the epitome of lazy, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, video essayists. Like, if you so want to do this, you could use Gert's dumb religion definition, but then you'd actually have to like analyze the Disney films to see if there are these overarching themes that exist through majority of Disney films and what exactly they're trying to say about like, right, the world, yeah. which he's not doing any of this. This is all about snatching up a medium post and cranking out a video. Well, it's just, it's incredibly it surface feeling, level. Yeah. This is content you crank out. Yeah. And yet somehow right. it took you over two days to sit in front and to narrate say all this. Script. Yeah. All he has to do, like think of it from a production standpoint, his job, maybe he does other stuff, but the point is you sit down in front of your camera, you have your script, you read it out, and now you've got all of that footage. It's done. You could use it for whatever you need. And it's not a two-day project. It's weird. I wonder what the production of this kind of, what that process is, because it seems well, bizarre that they would have that happen. I assume well. what happened was whoever writes these scripts wrote a script that was way too long for one video, so they just cut in half or something. But you... But you would, but the, what I'm re referencing is he changes clothes like they did it at different days. That's what I mean. Like they realized in the script process that this was going to be too long for a single video. But when he sat down the first time, surely he just finished the whole thing. That's what has uh, me so yeah, confused. Yeah, I guess. Because you know? sure. you're sure. there, you're at the office, you're in front of the camera, you've got the script in front of you, you're doing it, you're recording right. it. Just, just do them both. I see your son. He yeah. changed maybe shirts. This, He's like, maybe the listen. second script wasn't finished or something when they maybe. The it's one. like a it's like a modern Marvel movie where yes. they start doing the movie before the fucking before they've script finished. has begun. Yeah. They're like, right. this movie sucks. Now we have to reshoot everything. Right. Here, give right. me a new T-shirt. Uh, they're gonna have to like digitally add a T-shirt to this guy. <laughs> he has a guy off screen with a shirt. Yes. Like he sweats too much or something. He just yes. needs a new shirt. He said as much, declaring that, I think of a child's mind as a blank book. During the first years of his life, much will be written on the pages. The quality of that writing will affect his life profoundly. By his- I love I mean, this quote a great deal. Fuck? I really like this quote. That's um, a Disney quote? That's from if that's Walt a Dis Disney? That's a Was great it? quote. It may as well have been the Jesuit credo of, give me a child before he is seven and he will be mine for life. Indeed, Disney said as much. Disney, okay, it was okay. a Disney quote. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. 
it it reminds you that even children's media should be treated with respect and be high quality and be well written you should you right. should take care to make good stories to give to kids that's an important time where they're forming their ideas and their views of the world so just because saying it's just for kids shouldn't be an excuse for something being very poorly written or of low quality if anything we should be particular about the quality of the things we give our children well i, right. I don't see how the debate over you know like critical race theory in public school doesn't also embody the same <laughs> philosophy here like just because right. disney does, said yeah. it doesn't mean i mean that's true right that is true well first of all yeah. i would say i think it's what disney what disney said i mean it's sort of ish true i agree with everything you said it's right. not a blank uh, should be a blank book by any means. right but yeah. obviously yeah blank slate is ridiculous you know um it's extremely the, important is the point yeah. yes i agree found yeah. By his own logic then, Disney has been, for multiple generations, scribbling all over those blank minds, <laughs> with children spending more time consuming Disney films than they do with organized religion. Then, and of course, as many of us grow out of childhood and into our teens and adulthood, Disney is right there to accompany us on our journeys. Now you got it. The, well, it's not even the their choice fault. of the word scribbling. Yeah, I don't like that phrasing you right. Yeah. Like I, yeah, come on. Especially that good Disney stuff. I ain't scribbling. They work hard to make that. Like when you look into like The Lion King, which Adam hasn't seen. I mean, these are classics <laughs> for a <laughs> reason. For it's not some fucking doodle. You're yeah. right. Yeah. He, but he's trying to denigrate it by using the word scribbling. He, well, I mean, this time, yeah. there's a reason that like The Lion King and Aladdin and Mulan, you know, and Little Mermaid and Beating the Beast. Well, these are stories that have so much more staying power than something like. The princess and the frog, which I mean, no one cares about. It's on the it's on the screen. The Last Jedi. No Look, one's it's gonna, TLJ. What do you draw? Yeah. From why is this on the screen? TLJ. Why, what would a kid draw from this movie? That's positive. This Very is a fucking scribble right here. Yeah. This is a. This is just a poo. This is like trying to write <laughs> your script on a fucking etch a sketch. <laughs> and then it turns out Luke is a loser. <laughs> Journeys. Except this time with Jedis and superheroes and bounty hunters until life gets so depressing that we need the talking animals again. And then we come. Whoa. Wait, what's what wrong was with talking the animals? Point? First off, I take personal offense at talking animals did. being bad. So we'll, we'll journey over that. There's nothing wrong with having talking animals in something, especially if you can, if you say, ah, yes, TLJ, that was high art. But anything <laughs> with talking animals in it, mm, like the Lion King right. and Ratatouille and things like this. I, I gotta go. I didn't understand what his point was. Children yeah, spending more time consuming Disney films than they do with organized religion. And of course, as many of us grow out of childhood and into our teens and adulthood, oh, okay. Disney is right there to accompany us on our journeys. Except this time with Jedis and superheroes and bounty hunters until life gets so depressing that we need the talking animals again. And right. then we come to. Well, first of all, it. Adulthood is depressing. That's the message. I mean, does, how does that even work when. I mean, these like Disney acquiring Marvel is really recent in its yes. Disney's history. Yeah, and Star Wars. It's all. It's all. These are recent additions to Disney. I mean, how does this? If you're talking about like Disney shaping the minds of the children to be its own religion, you're talking about like decades and decades and decades of process. Which plus that doesn't if, make any sense. And if your kids are spending less time in an organized religion, and they are do they're spending their time doing other things as a result, some of that mm -hmm. will be watching more Disney content, which isn't Disney's fault. Well, it's not a question of Disney's at fault. The question is: Is Disney, you know, can he shoehorn Disney to to be a religion in this definition? Like it's incidentally right. doing something that religion used to fill their time with. I, I mean, is that I all it is? It, Religion is something that you feel your time. No, <laughs> well, in the way that's that, a in the horrible way that definition. Yeah. No, in, in the way that he's saying, he's saying, yeah, right, right. used to spend time in organized religion. They're not doing that as much. So yeah. now some of that will be watching more Disney content, which is like, yeah, sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Good Lord. Good Lord. Oh, no, I used a sacred word. Now our mm. show is a religion. <laughs> that's true. To part four of our definition. Well, actually, you know what? That'd be funny. Would our show count as a definition according to these to that definition? Yes. Now tithe. We have a we have a set of symbols. Okay. We, we establish powerful, symbols. pervasive, and long-lasting moods and motivations in people. Absolutely. 
we formulate fear. concepts of general order of existence. Definitely true. Yeah. We clothe those conceptions with an aura of factuality. That is also true. Yeah, we are concerned with the truth. We... And the moods and motivations seem uniquely realistic. <gasps> oh, uh -oh. oh, this really is uh -oh, a comedy guys. show. Oh, uh oh, guys, the Sitch and Adam show is in fact a religion. Right. Now we have to change the comedy show thing to religion in quotes. <laughs> a religious show. <laughs> It's a religion right, so show. We're not a comedy Adam. show. We're a religion show. We're a yes. Religion show. Okay. Sitch and Adam. Religion. <laughs> if, if our show fits this criteria or definition of religion, you know, it's a shitty definition. <laughs> Looky there. What's your holy book? They, the they got the castle yeah. in the background. The holy book is uh, Dictator's Handbook Star. and Jonathan Heights Moral Foundation. <laughs> yeah. Ritual and cultural performance. By far the most salient place where the rituals of Disney consolidate is, of course, at its theme parks. According to Harper's Magazine's Index, an estimated 70% of Americans have been to one of them, which is probably the only thing 70% of Americans have in common. These larger-than-life locations are seen by some scholars as akin to uh, belly buttons. Oh, what? yeah. Man, That's man, like man. 100%. Good job, yeah. Rags. Wait, what yeah. did you want? Jeez, I can't believe he ignores belly buttons. I was just thinking of something that all Americans have in common. No, no, no. he that said that going to Disney. World. He said a place they've been, not like a thing they. Have. Oh, you've never been to a belly button before? You've never... I mean, I've been to a belly button. I don't think we've all been to the same belly button. <laughs> the same one. <laughs> There's just some guy in Nebraska. <laughs> Everyone's With been to Johnny's belly there. button. He's Johnny's, got Johnny's in, in Nebraska. Nebraska. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's kind of in the middle, so I don't know. Yeah, Come visit Johnny same, Nebraska's but... famous mile, mile mile marker 55 belly button. More I people have more... seen his belly button than any other in the world. I bet more people have gone to a, yeah, I guess Disney World. As the single place that people have gone to? Yeah, I mm -hmm. suppose it would be. As for yeah, a single maybe. place, it'd be a theme park, yeah. Probably something like that. And then, I don't know, some national park, something related to, like, Washington D.C. Yeah. maybe or the Statue of Liberty, I don't know, some something like that. Probably Disney World because it's yeah. just got that universal appeal. Right, I mean, like Washington D.C. It's a great place to visit. Wouldn't want to live there. But I agree. Yeah, great place to visit. Into sacred spaces where visitors make a pilgrimage, not unlike that of Jew. Okay, my God, stop, stop. A pilgrimage. What's this Yankees fan doing at the Wailing Wall? I mean, there Disneyland <laughs> is a sacred place. I I mean that's true, right? Making a pilgrimage to a sacred place and going to Disney World, that's uh, I don't know. We're we're starting to that you know what that seems like the kind of analogy that I would expect in a wise crack video. I feel so, like the at least like the jungle ride is I mean it's somewhat sacred, right? Jungle cruise? Yeah, the jungle the, cruise. The according to the World Atlas says the most visited place. Now I know this is a different question. The question mm -hmm. is the most visited place in America per year is Times Square. Oh, I've been there. Oh. The most visited place? Do, are they, do they mean in the sense of the most amount of people go through there in a given amount of time? Like more, it gets more foot traffic and people than any uh, other place in America. It just America. says annual visitors. I don't know what that means. Times Square is awesome. It probably means what you're saying, yeah. Because if it means, yeah, because surely it's not different people because i bet the same people go there all the time every day yeah that's a good i don't know if they mean doesn't really unique count, like you know? unique visitors versus people that just walk through times square because yeah. they have like they live in new york i don't know i feel like question unique visitors is the, yeah, the key that's why disney world probably checks out most visited unique visitors i don't know how to even phrase this on <laughs> unique visitors Jews to Jerusalem. Or Wait, what? What's happening here? Why are we back to the Jews again? Well, because Americans you. have in common. These larger than life locations are seen by some scholars as akin to sacred spaces, where visitors make a pilgrimage, not unlike that of Jews to Jerusalem or Muslims to Mecca or American Irish Catholics to the Guinness Brewery at St. James Gate, Dublin. Oh, Fittingly, oh, oh. Disney. Because Catholics like to drink oh, and they're, they're oh, Irish. Oh. Yes, it is true. Oh. You know, as Catholics, we like we mm -hmm. drink like fish. Yes. Thunder These parks are Catholics do drink a lot, though. Since they got the rid of the submarine ride. 
can't believe had, they changed the submarine ride into some like Finding Nemo nonsense. <laughs> they did. That's okay. Very. So okay. Do they have submarine ride at at Disney World? Uh, I've been forever since I've been there. The probably. traditional submarine ride with the I, the Christmas I, submarine ride. It's probably been transformed into a Finding Nemo thing. If there's a lot of overlap, I think between Disneyland and Disney World. I remember but, when my mom clued me into the fact that the people on the other side of the submarine were looking at the exact same thing. I was like, I just, how is that possible? I, I just think it's crazy to it's think Disney like, magic. oh, someone going to like the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem is the same thing as someone visiting the Star Wars Hotel or Space Mountain. Like, it's just so fucking different. Like, this is right, so ridiculous. Yeah. The, so the, the Wailing Wall the will meaning. have a fun time, have a great time. Right. I've been to the Wailing Wall. I, it didn't seem like a lot of people were having a great time there at the Wailing what? Wall. <laughs> what is like, the what is the narrative around the Wailing Wall? Uh, it's like the I think it's like supposed to be like the last wall remnant of the old, of city, of, the old yeah. city or the old temple or something. When and, some, yeah, like, something like that. When God destroyed the city, it was like the one wall. No, it wasn't God. It wasn't God. It was the, the Romans, I guess. Right? Yeah, or, or the Babylon. Oh, okay. like was it the Babylonians? Romans? I don't know. Some foreign power fucked it. Some foreign. Yeah, they came in. They thrashed things, and that's the only wall left of the old temple. Um, right. right. So, and then but people, it, they'll put like little prayers inside. But it related like, to some prophecy, right? Because the because God said something like, I will never let them destroy the temple. And they're like, oh, look, God kept his promise. One wall is standing. <laughs> One wall is up. Oh, that's I don't know if that's the like case, but maybe. I feel like that's normally yeah. the case in those situations. Like, mm -hmm. I this don't, counts Disney's as a prophecy, not the guys, same. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Look, there's right. one brick. I found it. Yeah. See, it wasn't destroyed. <laughs> this is the temple. The God, Jews are very kept, good at like God that. Okay. kept his promise. Right, right. We will rebuild. Christians do that all the time too. The Bible's you, true because it has all of these fulfilled prophecies, and then you see the list, and you're like, "Oh, this is." But shit. when you go to Disneyland, it's not like the prophecy foretold that a train would be built here by a man, <laughs> <laughs> a man cartooned named a mouse, Disney, yeah. yeah, who animated and a, a mouse. mouse shall be his his yeah. herald. Yeah, yeah. See, okay. it's a completely different scenario. Here you go. This was, um, so it was the second temple. Okay, so we were both right. The first temple, Solomon's Temple, was built atop the Temple Mount in the 10th century BCE and was destroyed by the Babylonians. Okay. Uh, and then the second temple, which was constructed by Herod the Great, was then destroyed uh, by the Romans. <laughs> so right. you, they got, just don't they, be a temple. Just, <laughs> just of all the temples, this this rough, rough yeah. temple. God, everyone's fucking with the Jews. Life is hard as a temple. Let them have their temple. Just let them have this one thing. <laughs> you know? I know. What the fuck? It's all, the temple it's age, all they want. Just leave, let it alone. Herod's temple was destroyed by the Romans along with the rest of Jerusalem in 70 CE during the first Jewish-Roman War. There you go. Dang. Fucking Romans, mm. man. What's going on? Woman, read some more. life like uh, that was, oh, that no. was, that was it. the end of the story. Litter, fortunate, or swearing, or frowning. Religion scholar Mircea Iliadi describes the importance people of faith ascribe. He loves to just reference people instead of making arguments, you know. Or these arguments yeah. don't seem to like add up to anything. It's just like, quote, I think he ex pinball. Well, I mm -hmm. think he expects the quote pinball to be the work. Mm -hmm. Like, look at all that's these exactly people I'm it, referencing. You know? These are smart people. They said these things. That's like, you you believe us now, right? Well, it's like lazy journalism. They'll, instead of saying like, oh, this is why this is happening, and they'll give a rationed, like, reasoned argument, they'll say, so-and-so is saying this. And it's like, oh, I don't care if so-and-so. Who's yeah. so-and-so? Appeal know, to country. authority. Who gives a right. fuck? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what some lady on Twitter or, you know, some academic or some journalist from Orlando says. This yeah. is all Tell useless. me why they are correct, not right. that they are correct. It's yes. funny that they will they will say what we do is lazy content, but I really I honestly feel like the discussion we had about religion was 10 times better than this content and I mean it's the, his content is just like superficially hard work content because they edit it and all that stuff.
it's the kind of content that tricks a lot of people into thinking it's content. Yeah, yes. totally. That's a it, good point. Yeah. It breaks so many video essays are like this, where the more you, if you actually pay attention to it, it just totally breaks down. But people put it on in the background, or they don't pay attention, or they just want to have something playing, and they don't actually look at it and engage with it in any right. meaningful way. Yeah. No one's going to walk away from this being convinced of anything and if they think they are they could not articulate to you why that's the case if you ask them right yeah like well, if see, someone if someone came out of this and you asked them just the average person what did you learn from this video i i think the average person would legitimately struggle to tell you what they learned i agree like disney a is a religion a, and then you well, ask why, and they're like, is this, they got symbols. The name of this video is Disney's and the sunlight and the blue fairy and uh, the dwarves process work ethic. We aren't even to the capitalist part. This is Disney's capitalist religion. I know. Now I'm super curious to go back and watch their number one viewed video, the Rick and Morty video, to see is it just like this? Is it all smoke and mirrors, or is there actually substance there? That's a good idea. might have hit yeah, the algorithm at the right time and exploded. I'm, I'm sure that's what it was too. But uh, you guys continue. I got to use the loo real quick. I All will right. be back. Have fun. Let us continue. know when you're done. <laughs> Wait, what? Let us know when you're done. <laughs> what do you mean? I just it's stupid. It's weird. It's like, Doomer I snuck out it, again. By I the said way. it because it is weird. Doomer I snuck forgot out again. Doomer was even on the show. So yeah, <laughs> he's still in the watch together, but he's snuck Whatever. out. Whatever. Who cares? We, so we passed the part where I proposed to my wife, which oh, I, wait. Which I was thinking, I was thinking when he's talking about, I was thinking, well, that spot there is sacred at least. Wait, where was that? Where was the, where was that? We passed it. I didn't point no, it out. No, tell, tell us. We demand to know. No, where did Adam oh, no. propose to his Disney adult Just wife? Just think if Disney, if Disney goes under. Yeah. The place I proposed to my wife will never will not exist. If you don't tell anymore. me, I'm going to we're going to go back and watch this whole video <laughs> till you tell me, okay? It'll pro it will probably come up again here. No, on. you're just hoping I forget, which I will. So <laughs> tell me. Okay. It's not going to come up. Why don't you want to tell me? This is such a weird thing. Why would you bring it up and then I not don't tell know. me where it was? Is it somewhere embarrassing? No, not at all. Okay. I mean, then, yeah. Was it like, "Oh, was it the did you propose your wife see the right of splash mountain when like when, right when the water came over your like see like, right in front of the restrooms over there <laughs> it's like, come on where come is on. you where was it tell me you fuck it's in front of the the castle the oh okay yeah okay, well, there. obviously why are you hesitant to see that's like the, the, in front of the romantic castle right of okay that's like yeah, the most want, obvious place to yes sure. you want the okay. castle in the background right right yeah. Did your wife like start crying? It was actually super funny because my my wife's dad and her stepmom mm -hmm. had come to Disneyland just randomly. Like we didn't plan to go there with them or anything. Oh, that's they're just so like bizarre. we're at Disneyland yeah. that day too. So we're like, oh, let's meet up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm I'm proposing to my wife, and her dad is there, like not even really knowing what's going on. <laughs> Did, and, uh, did, did he, how long had he been dating your wife for at this point? Se uh, Seven maybe, years? <laughs> maybe five years, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, I, you made it sound yeah. like like your, her dad is like, who is this stranger? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm saying, to my, my, my uh, her stepmom was like, yeah. Shane, what the, what the fuck? You're not even, look what's happening here. <laughs> he's like, oh, <laughs> shit. That's hilarious. Something is happening here. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Obviously, well, my wife started crying, and there you go. Yeah. But it was. I mean, it's. Yeah. I don't know. You've you've <laughs> never proposed to anyone, right? No. That yeah. well, not that you know of, but. <laughs> well, do There's share. a dark sitch lore. You don't have, I'm just you kidding. Don't, I've never. Don't have, I've never. Obviously, I've never. Obviously, I've never been you don't have to share, but. I never had the sex. Trick, I'm a virgin. The I'm trick saving to myself, proposing. Okay. The yeah. trick to proposing is don't do it unless you know the answer. Well, obviously. Unle yeah. Unless you know that you're We've all seen get those it. clips of right. the guy proposing at like the hockey game. Can you imagine saying like, no and it's devastating? Can you imagine her her dad and mom shows up and like I propose? <laughs> she tells me no, like right there. 
No, imagine oh, if Ouch. imagine if her dad showed up and she says yes, and her dad says absolutely not. <laughs> I know. I know. This fucking loser. I didn't ask his permission. I just I was like, I went American style. Like I don't there need you your go. permission. There you go. There's your liberalism. Yeah. Sacred spaces, i.e. places that seem to exist in a sacred time. That is when the world was young and Edenic. In these spaces, myth and ritual help worshippers by recalibrating Ugh. life toward the divine. I'm here. As Remember this does not when the time divine. was young and America was like a steamboat, a cartoon steamboat with a chipmunk on it. <laughs> I know. And a big willy. Do you remember when that happened? Oh, it does have sure. the chipmunk over there. Look at that. Yeah, there's Chip or Dale or somebody you over there. You have a costumed cast member. Damn. Scholars Eric Mazur and Tara Cota summarize in their book, The Happiest Place on Earth. Every morning, all the costume guys to get together, they draw straws, and sh short one gets to be the chipmunk. <laughs> like, God really? damn it, I gotta be the chipmunk. The chipmunk is probably a vacation, though, Rags, because if you're if you're Mickey Mouse, everyone is running up to you. That's a good point. The oh, chipmunk, you just kind of like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Who gives just, a kid, who cares about the chipmunk? I you go to the bathroom for like forty five minutes. No one even notices. I wonder if you. I'm assuming you get paid different depending on like. Your character. Gotta go find my nuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Make does Mickey Mouse make the most out of all the characters? I don't. Rob, maybe. maybe, very possibly. I would not be surprised if that was the case. Yeah. Or, I, what about? I think it's the same. Okay, it's here's probably a question. where you are and what you're actually doing more than the character. Like if you're mm -hmm. doing the parades and things, and you're constantly. Yeah, that's true. Doing right. stuff you probably paid more right. than just the. The, you're you're just going to be an ambient chipmunk over in the forest <laughs> section. An I like that, an ambient chipmunk. You don't really do. You, do you have to say anything? No, you're yes. a chipmunk. Okay, if you, you had to be, life. if you had to work at Disney, would you rather be a guy in a suit or like one of the costume characters who is just like wearing clothes, so everyone sees like your face and your body? Um. What I mean, what what's the difference? Well, like, you know, like the, there's women that are like the princesses. Right. It's just like yeah. a woman in a dress, right? Versus being in like a chipmunk or a Mickey Mouse suit or something. There I would are rather be a woman in a dress like... than a chipmunk. <laughs> there are guys that play like a pirate or like Peter Pan or. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah would, you, would you choose to be a guy in just like clothes or a guy clothes. in a mascot suit? Clothes. I bet mm -hmm. that suit. And first off, it's think about hot. the weather. Yeah. Probably yeah. Think hot. about the weather. And think about being in that thing all You're fucking right. day. June. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and just not June even the weather part. Anaheim is not comfortable. Right. Well, weather part aside, being inside of an this enclosed costume all day, that's just got to wear on you. Yeah. You know? But being right. open in the fresh air and being able to talk and emote to people, I, being, you can be more of a showman, I feel, and with a lot of some of these things. And you might get a lot of enjoyment from that and... I mean, you make people's lives, you know, you, you brighten up, you know, faces and children. That's so smile funny. You're and... so social. I'm so antisocial. I'm the opposite. If it wasn't for the weather, I'd be like, I want to be in a suit. I don't want people like, to like <laughs> interact with people, have them look at me. I want to be an ambient chipmunk. I don't want to I could be, be listen, I could be waving at kids and I could be like, I'm like, I look so happy because my face, but on the inside, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, I hate my life. <laughs> right. I could be playing on my phone, you know, while I'm like waving at the children or something. Your hands are stuck up into the massive helmet that you have to wear and you're just on your phone. That's like, right. I have like, I've angled it so my elbow so controls. Floppy. I'm like using my elbow to control my arm and I have like playing on my phone with the same hand or something. Yeah, I'd want to be a, a Peter Pan or a, a, a you know a Disney princess or something like that. I, okay. I think that could be really rewarding for a lot. There of you people. go. Rag says he wants to be a Disney princess. You I heard it here first. Princess. Which princess would you choose? Would they go um, for that? What do you mean? Do they go for that? I mean, they should. It's twenty twenty two, Adam. I guess you probably could get. I identify as a Disney if... princess. <gasps> oh my god, that's what we need to do, guys. What? We need to push for Disney to have a trans princess. Listen, they ain't that they're already pushing for that. I'm sorry. Oh my it. god! Make them, make them eat. They're that. waiting. They're sitting make on it. They're that. waiting. No, but okay. But which princess? If you had to be a Disney princess, which princess are you going to be? Ooh, in terms of, like in in the park for the purposes of being in a costume. No, let's say like uh, in the universe of in that the world. universe. Ooh, it's more interesting um, than being in the park. It's all the same. Well, I don't know. I bet some princesses get more attention than others. Like I bet like Snow White gets a whole lot of attention and 
I mean, there's probably, I mean, Nala's a Disney princess, but I don't think he got a, he got one of them hanging out. Jessica um, Rabbit probably gets a lot more. Okay, I don't think she's than... a Disney princess, Adam. So uh... she's, oh, she's, she's, not? she's not bad. She's no. just drawn that way. Yeah. Jessica, come on. I mean, she's kind of like a Disney princess. According to the official Disney all. list, the Disney princesses are Snow White, Cinderella, Aurora, Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, Pocahontas, Milan, Tiana, Rapunzel, Merida. Who's that? Oh, Merida. Is. Merida. Oh, is she? She's the the brave one. Oh, I never brave. Saw her. Uh, and then the last one is Moana. Honestly, I, she, I would I she probably. Princess, but... I'd probably be. I haven't seen Tiana Moana. I haven't seen their movies. I haven't seen Brave. I might go with Jasmine because mm-hmm. you like you get this opulent palace. And you know that your husband is like a really good guy. He's a he's a stand up dude, and he's a good right. person. And he came from humble origins. And um, you have a fucking genie that has infinite power. Well, I guess yeah. Depending on which movie you go with, yeah, he might be present or not. Because remember, at the end of the first movie, he's given his freedom. That's uh, yeah, but he's, that's he a, comes back. I mean, he does. Yeah, it's a t- so it's about the movies. Yeah, but you get it's this canon that palace, he comes back. Right, you. You know, you have a father who loves you. Yeah, you have your family and all that. It's, I mean, it seems to be a prosperous kingdom. I might go with Jasmine. I think that's the correct choice. I'll go with Jasmine too. And some of the other ones are totally fine, like Aurora, totally fine. Eh. Uh, Snow White's probably, you know, f- a safe choice. Um, I don't know about Belle. I don't know what the political situation will be at the end <laughs> of Beauty and the Beast in terms of kingdoms and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Cinderella's probably going to be a okay. Not picking Pocahontas, uh, um, considering she not, dies horribly alone in Europe. I we don't know if that's choice. Disney canon, so I'm gonna imagine in my head that it's Disney. Canon. <laughs> Milan's not a terrible choice if you want a more, I guess, normal life. You don't want to have right. the royal life, you know, but you get a lot of prestige and you are a hero, yes. and you get a hot husband, and you, you just, and you do have your family with you, but right. you're not in the palace, you're not doing political stuff. That's appealing for a lot of and people, and you get to be a fighter. Well, you get to you get to be known as a fighter, certainly. Right. Yeah, you because you use your skills. Because Milan is not just a girl boss who's just good for no reason. She uses her strengths, like her agility and their skills. Like mm-hmm. I guess we have to remember, Milan went to war school. She learned how to fight in a war. There was that whole part of the movie where she learned to be a soldier. She got training. Yeah, she's not some Ray Skywalker motherfucker. She, she was made a man. <laughs> yeah, she was made a man. Rapunzel would be okay. She lost her magic powers, which kind of sucks. So um, that's okay because a lot of the other ones didn't have them anyway. That's true. Well, I, wait, um, how does this list not have um, the Frozen princesses? It uh, Anna and Elsa. Yeah, I don't know. I have not seen Frozen. I don't know anything about those okay. two. I'm assuming but those count as official Disney princesses. I assume so. I'm on the site um, on princess.disney.com looking for them. <laughs> Uh, but I will say my first choice is Jasmine. My second choice, Milan. There you go. Okay. I like Jasmine. That's a good first choice. Second Solid choice, choice, I'd say, I don't know, maybe Rapunzel. Maybe one of the Ice Princesses have magic powers. It's cool, right? What the fuck is happening to Adam's fucking corn face? Oh, my God. You just saw that. Oh yeah, I was looking at the Disney princesses. I was yeah. focused. I take this question yes. seriously. Adam got bored by our princess talk, so he became corn. <laughs> what? Adam never chose his Disney princess. What? Which Disney princess? I chose I mean, how come Jessica Adam... Rabbit. What are you talking about? How come wait, the stream princess. is not seeing your your moving corn face? I don't know if it was intentional. What? Or not. The stream just has a, a static frozen. image of corn. A terrifying, a what? horrific frozen yeah. image of your corn face. Yes. Rags. Yeah. Why? How come you are not a vegetable? Because I'm a dog. Oh, I guess I can't be both. So I'm ending the poll. We had almost 2,000 votes. Uh, 61% said fandoms are not a religion, and 38% said they are. Wow, that's higher than I thought it would be. Yeah, way higher than expected. I would have expected it to be like 10%, maybe. I guess not. This video must have been very persuasive for many people. Clearly. So there you go. Yes. 
Uh, Adam is choosing Jessica Rabbit because he wants to get fucked by a rabbit every day because he's a furry. So you don't. I mean, she's a human. No, nope, I'm saying she he gets was, fucked by he a was rabbit. Fucked by a rabbit. She's a human princess who gets fucked by a rabbit. Who, gets, who who's Jessica Rabbit, as in Mr. Rabbit's wife, she's into bestiality. Wife, which I is fine because they're cartoons or something. But. I think it's platonic. I don't think no. I don't know what that means. Ain't nothing platonic about. Have you seen Jessica Rabbit? No, it's not platonic. She says, "Go home, I'll bake you a carrot cake," and he goes, "Woo!" You know, like oh, okay. at the end of the movie. I forgot about that part. Okay, sure you did. There you go. Adam wants to get fucked by Adam Rabbit. wants to get. That's what we learned. Rabbits are low tier furry animals. <laughs> uh huh. They're like birds. Anyways. Anyways, note as Drew points out, Disney too exists outside of time. Hell, Disney reportedly removed all alarm clocks from its hotels in 2016. More importantly, okay, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. That's not here. what they mean when they say it's what? W wait a minute. Okay, we this gotta is so go stupid. Wait. We got to go back. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. He says Disney exists outside of time. Exists outside of time. Hell, Disney Okay, and he says they got rid of alarm clocks. Okay. <laughs> Now let's think about this, this really that's so ridiculous. Just a second. I'm gonna go take off my alarm clock uh <laughs> so I can exist outside of time. I'll right. stay here. I don't know when I'll be back. Maybe never. Right. I don't know. Time will be an illusion after that. So well you actually it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you get rid of your alarm clock, then the show will technically stop until you get it again. It might so. stop, it might last forever. It who knows what's gonna happen. Right. Okay, let, let's think about not. this. Let's think about this really hard. Okay, let's think about let's really put a hundred percent, let's put two hundred percent of our brain to this question. Okay, let's let's guess here. Why would Disney get rid of their alarm clocks in the year 2016 from their hotel rooms? Let's think about this really hard. Hmm. Mm, anyone? Okay. I'm thinking. Anyone got an answer for I'm this thinking. question here? Mm, they want remove the alarm clocks in 2016. Yes. Oh, let's because think. people have cell phones. Oh my <laughs> God, Adam. And yeah. so what do people have a fucking Check alarm out. clock in their pocket wherever they go and they don't need a fucking like ancient alarm clock from the nineties to push but the buttons anymore? But Check here's the out thing. the big it, brain on this corn cob. I wouldn't have well, I wouldn't have guessed that because it says if they made a new hotel that didn't have them, but this is removing them from where they already were. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they were probably all the trouble just broken. They were from nineteen eighty four. Yeah, because they're probably ancient. <laughs> all right. <laughs> They don't want to manage the upkeep. Okay. This is just ridiculous. This video, God, this is so bad. It's hard to take you seriously. You're a talking piece of corn. What? Come on. <laughs> it's difficult just, just to look chill, at that. Okay. Not... This I'm is, calm. This is I'm very show, calm. Okay. Listen, I don't. Just because Adam's a little corny just, right now doesn't mean you shouldn't take him seriously. Just because okay? you didn't get the cell phone answer, okay? Just because you're not quick on your feet like i am listen when adam talks I i'm interpreted all the question differently when adam talks i'm all ears oh okay. <laughs> come on we get shucks to be you <laughs> hey we, listen we're, we're all internet personalities corn or not we all have stalkers ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that he got one too sitch wow. you gonna let him get away with that yeah, what do you mean? Well, you were going to get away show. with That's it? That's all you guys got? I think four what? is enough for now. We'll no, I think what we need to do is we need to get back to this video, lend it our ears. Yes, thank you. And listen to it. Yes. <laughs> lend it our ears? Yes. Sweet. I mean, this video is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice, nice. Wow, you guys are taking it to the limit here. I know. I didn't know there were this many synonyms for corn. I'm sure there's many, many more corn sure. puns that we we're missing. I will say though that as a piece of corn, you're very, it's very slimming. I could have sworn you were more husky. Wow. <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's a good one. Go. Yeah. Shucks, that's great. Oh. Shucks. My God. Oh, shucks. <laughs> yes. Jeez. Anyway. Back to this. Oh, Enough of Adam and his corn addiction. We have yes. to go back to, yeah. we have to talk about the video. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Disney reportedly removed all his, alarm clocks from its hotels. And his browsing history is confidential. <laughs> In right, 2016. More importantly, the parks have. Well, no, Adam had to do this because this video was putting him in a vegetative state. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Oh man, that's oh. awful. That's a terrible <laughs> thing. That's just true. We don't want him. We we need him up and at him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no references to the present. A few references. I mean, honestly, I'm shocked that you would say that. Quite frankly, about him. <laughs> That's okay. Spaces towards the future. They're such a seem nut. To exist. Like a corn nut? A corn nut. Okay. Oh, okay. It's in a past that somehow so, approximates... Uh, listen, I apologize for that last one. It was a little corny. It was a little corny. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but there was nice. a kernel of truth in it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I mean, if I put that filter on my face, I'd be a corn dog. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh my god, you're right. It's <coughs> so stupid. Well, that's pretty good. Oh, uh, pal. Stop it. We need to stop yeah, we it. Can all, yeah, regardless of the video and all the puns, you know, yes. Adam is a valuable, valuable part of this podcast. Yes. He's outstanding in his field. <laughs> so we can, we can focus on the video. Listen, we need to get back to this video about how we Disney do. is cornering the markets <coughs> on cornering media and market. religion. Okay. Outstanding in his Stop field. With these puns. That's You're pretty give good. Me a corner, Nary. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that one. Uh, that is a good one. Eisenhower's well, conservative. Disney America. has unicorns, right? In their movies. Mm -hmm. Do they? I think so. Surely they do. There's um, gotta be unicorns. unicorns in Disney movies, right? Of course. Okay. okay. The magical sure. kingdom. I, I'm not sure about that, but okay. That is when the world was young. Indeed, Disney World was attracting the nostalgia of baby boomer parents long before it became the site of their millennial children's weddings. Missing, of course, is anything unpleasant about that era, like the Red Scare, or racism, or barbiturates. In Frontierland, <laughs> the American frontier is mythologized as a place of courage and adventure. Can you imagine if they had like Barbiturate's house? Yeah, it's, oh my God, look at Di in Disney's uh, Frontierland. They don't have like, you know, the graves of the Native Americans. They don't have the Hall of Terror, right, yeah. you know, by measles and smallpox and, you know, just being killed and murdered by settlers. Oh I my God. I wonder why they don't do that. Yes, at this children's yeah. park for amusement. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> This is supposed to be a place of happiness and family. They want to bring in critical. And instead, theory. you brought them to the the hall of blankets, right. the hall of horrors. Right. It's yeah. just like it's just a white guy handing a Native American like blankets that so goes death. They want you to actually have like a slave market in Frontier Town. <laughs> yeah, oh my God! Imagine being the guy in the costumes who has to be the slaves for the exhibit. Yes. Right. You got to beat the slaves and auction them off to people who come uh -oh. to the theme park. Right. Sorry, Jermaine Devante. You have to be the slaves again <laughs> mm -hmm. today. Get right. your costumes. Yeah. On J Mac track. says those puns really popped. <laughs> oh, how did we miss that one? Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad they did. How did we miss that one? against native people on those lands a brief footnote american history is further glorified Thanks. and sanitized in places like the hall of the presidents where ugly parts of history like say watergate or iran contra are ignored yeah i think it's because political i don't think because disney doesn't really want to be the place in their parks to start making in-depth political commentary I know. not everything i was like oh to... my god how are they gonna put trump in the hall of presidents are they gonna? Oh my god! They're gonna. I mean, do they this. got it right. What are they? What's he gonna say? Uh, I have the best. You gotta grab him. I won this things. election. <laughs> this election was stolen from me. We're going a big, beautiful wall around the parks. Oh man! We're gonna put a wall around Epcot. Make Mexico pay for it. Yes. Listen, there's fine people on both sides. Oh, oh no! Oh no! They're going to have Charlottesville town. They're going to have Charlottesville, yes. I just like the idea. He's like, oh, you know, they don't have, you don't, you know, the Reagan robot doesn't talk about Iran Contra to the children, <laughs> the fucking Olive president. 
Like, uh. really? Okay. Thank you. As an animatronic Abe Lincoln in Christlike Glory returns to life. Historian Mike Wallace calls this commercialization of the past Mickey Mouse history, a narrative written without classes, conflict, or crime, a world of continuous consumption, a supermarket of fun. Innocence effectively becomes. I mean, it's a good thing that no one goes to fucking Disney World for a history lesson. So this is all. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm but... I'm totally fine with especially like kids learning some of the good things first. You know, like the and before we start telling them about the 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 controversial things that might be more difficult for them to understand. <laughs> before we get to like, the, I don't think you should open up on genocide with the small children, right? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. let's fucking first. No one will come if all you do is browbeat them about. Oh, America is actually fucking shit. Like listen, I, I, I don't know if. You know. Listen, little Stevie. I know it's your third birthday, but let me tell you something. <laughs> you're living on stolen land, you yeah. fucking white yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> you, your ancestors have genocided thousands, if not millions, of people, and you're bathing in their blood every day. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, I do declare. They want to redo the haunted mansion to teach about white privilege. <laughs> <laughs> the haunted mansion was built by slaves, and that's why it's haunted. Horrors of slavery. <laughs> Comes oh, a magic yeah. eraser, cleansing history of its less savory. Also, what does this have to do with religion? <clears throat> um, yeah, not, I forgot that this that has is a total sidetrack. Right, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like this, this has to do with his of... religion, his anti-capitalist religion. Oh my god, that's about it. Moments. And these Disney narratives all come to life in its holy sites, where rituals like riding Splash Mountain or watching sunset parades down Main Street or getting your picture taken with the characters for a hefty fee all provide joy and catharsis. In these spaces, religious scholar Peter Gardella writes, blue shirts. magical beings like Tinkerbell and Mickey Mouse abound. And many shows imply that such beings might help ordinary people. Gardella calls this transtheism or the provisional acceptance of many gods with an implied underlying oneness. As with a religious service, your sense of possibilities for your life okay. are expanded through promises of divine intervention. What? 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 There is the part where I'm, I feel like I'm constantly, this video is very tantric in the sense that I'm constantly waiting for like a thing to sort of happen, but, but like I, I'm waiting for the point. Like I'm waiting for you to make the qualitative point Instead of giving me these quotes from people and not really connecting any of the dots. It's mm -hmm. not, there is no point. Disney's like a religion <clears throat> because there is this implication that I guess they're saying because Disney has this underlying Christian sort of nest to it because of the demographics that it exists and was built in and where it is. But it also has sort of magical creatures. But we don't we don't I don't even know how do I would phrase this. This just seems so strange. I mean, what is the moral, like, I don't know, if you, if you had, like, the image of Jesus, you could, you know, you could say, oh, yeah, this character represents, you know, these moral principles, right? Yeah. Or something. Self-sacrifice. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if you say, like, here's Mickey, I, I mean, I don't know what moral, no, what, what no. morals does Mickey embody? Mischievousness. Yeah. I just I mean, think I, about whatever uh, they've associated him with. I, that's what, what morals does Goofy represent? I don't fucking know. Like, no, none of these Goofy characters represent no any moral things. Just... Donald Duck is jealousy. Donald Duck is just seething with jealousy about yeah, everything. Yeah, he's an anti-moral character in yeah. almost everything. He's generally the foil. Yeah. I don't... Uh, this is ridiculous. The I whole saw, point ah. of this is just to say religion is bad, capitalism is bad, <laughs> Disney is a capitalist religion therefore uh, bad i mean i'm kind of shocked you didn't be like you could you could bring up kingdom hearts and make all sorts of like disney figures are literally fighting the forces of evil and this is like some sort of like religious allegory or something but they don't go into any of that stuff this guy's such a downer he's such a dumber i mean a downer yeah everyone loves disney this guy needs to chill you don't love disney you don't i don't love disney yeah what do you mean? I love Disney. You haven't even seen Lion King. <clears throat> but I mean, I love Disneyland. Oh, okay. <laughs> I haven't seen Lion King. His wife, you know what I'm saying? Adam's wife is like, like right around the corner, like, I can say shit <laughs> mad about Disneyland. It's like, oh, fucking, I will beat the shit out of you <laughs> if you talk <laughs> smack about Disney. Adam, is this why you've changed yourself into a corn cob? Am, Are you yeah. being, do you have like a black eye? Ow! Now? Don't hit me, shit! <laughs> 
No! Ow! Ow! Ouch! <laughs> She's really cornholing you right now. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Mm-hmm. I'm safe now. Okay. Let's okay. change. Let's not talk about this <laughs> anymore. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm safe. Or at least the ear of a sympathetic fairy godmother. Giroud describes Disney as a privatized, homogenous, and risk-free city. Whereas critic Elaine Rappi uh, points out, uh, no trace of anything non-commodified, non-simulated, non-regulated, non-smiley-faced is visible or reachable. Yeah, because okay. it's a fucking... What well, do you want to bet? Park. Like it's, an, all... it's an amusement park. Yes. What do you want to bet? A... Every single one of these people he's quoting are communists. I wouldn't be that surprised. <laughs> they, they have to be. Yeah. They're all just talking mad shit about Disney. I don't get it. Did you know that at an amusement park, everything is an amusement park? Yes. I didn't know that. Wow, Did you know that shocking. this is a place that's designed to generate happiness in exchange for money? Yes. Oh, oh my God. Amusement. You know, I want to I wanna pay. Uh, how much is it to go to Disney World right now? I'm sure it's like fucking really expensive. It's got to be like see. 200 bucks. At Disney least. World tickets. Yeah. Let's see. What is the current price? Uh, somewhere between one hundred and one hundred fifty-nine dollars. Okay. Oh wow! For one day. What a deal. Right. It's for a day. I, I want to. Of course, you're going to spend three times that much on the actual shit there. Yeah, of course. And also, you have to buy multiple tickets for your family. Hotel. You hotel. Don't be cheap, rags. Okay. You got to get the I good will stuff. Be cheap. I will be very. You got to get the cotton candy. Disney. Right. Listen, I want to spend, you know, $150 a day and I want to go to an amusement park and I want it to look like the inner city of Detroit when I get there. Well, okay. you mentioned me buying the cotton candy. You know what the uh, the original name for cotton candy is? Mm -hmm. What? Fairy floss. Is that no true? No way. That can't be that true. Nope. You can't floss your teeth with cotton candy. That's correct. You can't. How much are park? Oh, wait a minute. Tickets? I wonder if this is from COVID. It's actually, it's a hundred dollars. Uh, wait, was it? It's a hundred dollars, but it's for four <laughs> days. But you can only visit one park a day. That's not. That's not actually a pretty good deal. If that's the case. They have a bunch of restrictions because we were talking about going to Disneyland, but they have a bunch of restrictions right now where you have to like no make corn allowed. reservations. No, they like corn in. Jeez, rags. No, they don't. They hate corn. They're they anti-corn. They make, stop corn at the door. You have to make like a a reservation to ride the rides or something like that. Oh, no. What the fuck? No, it's... I don't know what that, they're talking about. If, if you get a four-day pass, it's $63 a day. Never mind. Mm -hmm. It's not a good deal. I mean, I don't know. If it seems like a lot, but 63 whatever. bucks a day? I guess yeah. it depends what it comes with. You get to go to Disney World, but like, do do you have to do like do you have to get a pass for things? Do you have to like you know what does it come with? Does it come with stuff essentially? Uh, let's see, Park Hopper. Yeah, that's the one you want. Eighty dollars a day, <coughs> average. Mm -hmm. Park Hopper plus I options. Cannot, what the fuck are options? I cannot imagine day two at Disney. By the end of the first day at Disney, I'm like. I never want to see Disney again. I don't know. You're when, just when, sick of all the imagery. There's and only the so much. And... There's only so much happiness you can have in your life. Well, I don't know how it is at, at Disneyland. Okay, but Disney World, it's it's there's all these different parks and it's big enough. You literally like you can't do it all in one day. It's impossible. So like I know when I was a kid, you know, my parents always it'd always be multi like three day process you know you go to different parks every day or something you can't usually do disneyland in one day too but i mean I, we don't really try to do the whole thing right I it's mean, one of the it's great just... things about silver dollar city you can do it all in it you could spend multiple days if you want but if you really want it you can see you can do basically see it all <laughs> what is silver dollar i've never heard of this you know about silver dollar city silver it sounds like the city. low rent version of, i know of disney <laughs> what do you look it's at like, like a plaque of silver dollars <laughs> I'm surprised that I'm surprised that you don't know about um, Silver Dollar City in the Silver Ozark Dollar Mountains City. of Branson, Missouri. <laughs> Is that? Uh, honestly, did you look it I up? Love Silver Dollar City. <laughs> yeah, it's in, well, also this. I told him. Holy shit! Silver Dollar City. It's like a um. Oh, it actually looks nice. Okay. Yeah, it's. it's I thought like, it was gonna be um, some like, like 
It's it like, looks like uh, Six Rednecks Flags or Bush Gardens or something. Yeah, it's like uh, it's not huge on the rides. There's some good ones, but it's yeah. it's a place where you can take everyone in the family from the super old people to the young ones. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a hillbilly sort of town in a way. Uh, they've got it, it's it's like the southern kind of it's like a southern amusement park. And they've got um, it looks like Frontierland Disney World. But like an kind entire of, park, yes. Yeah, they've right. there's there's a little train that goes around the place. There's all sorts of places to eat, and it has all the country food. Right. And there's a designated like Christmas store, and you could buy lye soap and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it looks fun. It looks fun. Yeah, it, it really is. It's really nice. It's legitimately really nice. And it's no, this is not a sponsorship, Jinto. It's just I haven't been in a long time. I kind of want to go again. It's just been a long time. There you go. You get all your funnel cakes and see. Country. I know I'm an old man. Because now when I look at like people at amusement parks, I, I look at all the rides. I'm like, that's fun. And then I look at like the food. I'm like, I want that food. <laughs> like, that's the thing that's drawing me there. I'm like, I want a giant turkey leg and a funnel cake. <laughs> you could just smell it. Especially when, when you go to these places and just the smell of food lingers yes. around. People walk around with yes. it. And you have it, when they like there's a candy making place there and you could smell it and that people are making stuff on grills outside and that's in the air and you just it's full of insufferable losers it's full of just down-to-earth country folk that's good you're saying none of them coastal elitist leftists yeah. down at it's silver one, city yeah. yeah we don't let them in the park meanies you don't let people like Adam into the. We look at them and say, "Have you ever been a con on the internet? <laughs> you don't get to come in here." <laughs> That's the case. Oh, you're so mean. Can't Sacred sites. The sense of effortless magic is. Well, I mean, you mentioned the corn. They they have places where they got the big old kettle corn things, like these yum pans and stuff, and they they mm -hmm. make the kettle corn and they bag it all up. And yum. It's, I've never been a huge kettle corn roasted. fan. All I meant. Mm, what? Love kettle corn. What? I don't like I don't like uh, caramel very much. So really, uh, oh caramel's okay. the best. Uh, okay, well, I like least... if you go to the fair and they give you like the roasted corn with the butter. That's like really tasty. But go, someone said Yakov's not. I went to see. I saw Yakov Smirnoff in uh, Branson. Someone had mentioned him in chat. Hmm. I, I saw him perform. I don't know if he's still doing it, but <laughs> he's you saw whole... Yakov Smirnoff. Yeah, Yakov perform. Smirnoff. I did. Wow, that's yeah. impressive. <laughs> I didn't think they left the factory. Oh my god! Didn't think they left the factory. <clears throat> Did Cabal still as much by what you don't see as by what you do. A tour of the Pope's bathroom might kind of ruin the vibe of the Vatican, after all. Similar. I want to see where the Pope shits. Fuck you. <laughs> This this is the leader of the world's largest religion. Essentially, I want where to know he where he yes. shits. Yeah, that's what a good question. What kind of a poop room does the Pope have? I hope it's nice. I bet it probably is really nice. It's mm -hmm. he probably he probably shits in comfort there at the <laughs> Vatican. He's got a nice fuzzy heated seat. He, he calls it the sh What? <laughs> I was gonna say it. He, he, <laughs> he calls it the Shatican. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty bad. That's pretty, that's pretty good. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sit down in the Shatican. If you're need his holiness, he's in the Shatican. <laughs> he's in the Shatican. Is he doing number one or number two? It's the fucking Shatican. What do you think? Not the Pissican. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That's so funny for reasons I can't elaborate on. There you go. Oh, okay. Is he doing a New Testament or an Old Testament? <laughs> he says BRP got to take a Pope. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, the Holy B. <laughs> it's take the Holy S. The Holy. Sorry, is he taking pope. a Holy S or a Holy P? Yeah, the question. Pope can't talk to you now. He's ex cathedra, so to speak. <laughs> He's excommunicating. <laughs> Oh, oh God. bad! No, like ex cathedra from Look the, at this. out of this, the chair from the place. Yes. The this video is so bad that we have to entertain ourselves. Wisecrack can't even keep us entertained. No, <laughs> this is a shitty video, and I'm just thinking of the Shattican. <laughs> Shattican.
I bet he's got more than a poop closet. I bet he's like a poop cathedral. Yeah. <laughs> A grand, a, a, a grand, grand room. <laughs> Rooms. He bathes in holy water. <laughs> yes. There's a virtual absence of anything non-magical at Disney. Most especially, visible labor. Disney employees. Oh no. Sorry, um, we mean cast members use underground tunnels to transport food, products, and waste. As so, it's probably that way halfway for utility reasons. Because all that transportation, it takes up space. And yeah. Room. And and plus, you don't necessarily want to see the logistical workings of the amusement park you're in. So there's that makes sense that they would have... Spe like, that's like all places. Every Go to any hotel or something like that. Any big <clears throat> hotel. And there's a, a back areas for all of the employees to get where they need to go. And Listen, to transport things. They're Rex, not just going to... What? I want to go to a hotel. And I want to walk in, and right in the lobby, I want it to be the boiler room. Okay, I want to just <laughs> all the pipes that keep the water it's hot going in here. on in the hotel. I just it should all be front and center. Otherwise, it's a religion. Otherwise, it's dishonor. Otherwise, Plus, it's you want like slave labor running back and forth too, so you can really yeah see the depths of how much people hate right. working there. You know, when I go to a restaurant, I want it. I want the kitchen to be like the first thing you yeah, walk into, right? Totally. And, yeah. I mean, from a worker's perspective, because I've worked in like a big hotel and everything and it had mm -hmm. all these back rooms and hallways and kitchens and things like that. It was good to have those places because you didn't you weren't in front of guests. You weren't yeah, in front you, of customers. You can relax. You're just like, ah, I can walk to here. I don't have yeah. to deal with people. Not that I didn't like dealing yeah. with people. It's just like you, you weren't you didn't have Off to be stage. presenting. Yeah. For, you know, your your place and everything. So they probably quite enjoy that there's spaces where they can just say the word fuck and they can right. just chat, yeah. you know, glib about things. No, you're right. I mean, if I was a janitor at Disney World, I'd probably be happy that like when I, you know, clean up the mess, I can go to some like underground fucking backroom tunnel somewhere yeah. as opposed to like I drag don't have the to roll play everyone. Song of the South anymore. I can actually frat. <laughs> I, do you like it, how in the video, it, like, it makes the underground tunnels look like a fucking like, cave Yeah, when they're, of course, they're well-lit hallways, probably. They, that just happened to be subterranean. Yeah. Because no, space is an issue. Right. You don't think there's, like, actual mushrooms, you know, growing in the... Uh... They might be... It's Disney World. It might be magic mushrooms. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. Like Alice in Wonderland. Don't eat the wrong one. You'll go grow too big. But if you do right. a different one, you might go too small. Mm-hmm. It's interesting if I look up uh, Disney underground tunnels. Yeah, that's what like I was old, doing. They're all like old pictures. <coughs> I'm curious to see. They don't, let, they don't like allow them. their employees to take pictures. I mean, of these them don't anymore. look so probably bad. Not. I mean, I mean, they just probably look like you fine. know. They're probably just classic hallways. utility tunnels. You know? I mean, they could put a you know some nice tile in there, maybe fresh coat of paint, <laughs> something. Disney Secret World. Wow. Transport yeah, th food. this just looks like normal. Yeah, this is almost exactly what I envisioned when I looked at these pictures. They're just places for everyone to get around. And yeah, they've got yeah. all the pipes and the electrical stuff back there and places for. Yeah, looks. No, you don't understand rags. These are literally like if you go to the underground Disney, you're going to get sucked into the back rooms. Oh, yeah. this is a back rooms level. And the, uh, there's a there's a Mickey chasing you. <laughs> there's a Mickey smiler somewhere that will chase you if you go down the wrong hallway products and waste. As Giro concludes, through the use of public visual space, i.e. parks like Magic Kingdom, Disney's network of power relations promotes the construction of an all-encompassing world of enchantment, allegedly free from ideology, politics, and power. The this is a really long way to say they made a nice place people want to have fun at. Power relations is the key phrase. Yeah, what does that there? even power mean? Relations. <laughs> I'm not. It's, it's not a power struggle against the mouse. I want to go there and eat cotton candy with my this, kids. The, they don't want Disneyland to exist. I just. What kind of culture? I mean, I think one of the cool things about our culture is we do have places like Disneyland. Our yes, culture allows for we, places we, like Disneyland. Yes. Yeah, we actually have places where we can lounge and spend our money on just right. having fun, making the kids amusement. happy. Yeah, giving right. the kids a, an amazing experience.
Yeah. What is what is a network of power relations and that it promotes the construction of the all encompassing world of enchantment? These people I don't know what that means. They hate fucking fun, man. I can't, I it, guess. it comes across as that. These blue shirt, of course, but this yeah. How can we deconstruct fun? I feel like all of these people begged their parents to take them to Disneyland and their parents oh, were just giant assholes and they were like, or, no. Listen, maybe they just couldn't afford it. Okay. And they said, listen, honey, we can't afford to go to Disney World. Too expensive. So then they said, capitalism oh, is the problem. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we could go it. to Disney oh. World in a socialist utopia. Yeah. Right. Then it's not Disney World. It's our world. It's our world. It's a our small world. world after all. Yes. And it's ours. Yes. So small that you can't get in. <laughs> not until you take the mushrooms that make it <laughs> tiny. The power. That's in spite of the fact that political lobbying is the reason that Disney World was able to exist for so long as a self-governing independent special district. The park paints itself as a place of transcendence, of elevation beyond the mundanity of everyday life which brings us to stipulation five so that the cons yeah it brings us right to stipulation five <clears throat> smooth as butter going from point to point absolutely mm -hmm. not at all meandering because disney world the park doesn't uh have to do with the politics required to lobby the state government of florida to manage its physical location therefore that means it is a secret religion <laughs> It's like, like a Vatican City it? within Italy. Yeah, this is insane. Which is weird because that's the obvious thing to say, but he didn't say it. You're right. He didn't compare. You're right. He should have compared it to the Vatican. Oh yeah, he missed that one. Yeah. Weird. Exceptions held by the group are taken as real. Now we're obviously not saying that Disney adults literally wish upon stars or work hard at their jobs. I'm gonna preempt this by saying what he means is that for a moment it's escapism essentially it's a little bit of a healthy escapism i don't think he's gonna say that oh but i've seen don't. the video why so. because it makes sense so he wouldn't say that he, maybe you're probably right just because seven dwarves of various dispositions told them to but disney's grand narrative of most of their dispositions are the same actually there um, is no disney grand narrative i'm sick of this nonsense Dwarf yeah, so I said, what is the grand narrative of Disney? There is none. Buy our products? I mean, that, what else is there? Star Wars is a grand narrative. Snow White is a narrative. You know, Alice in Wonderland is a narrative. These narratives are completely diff. There's no grand unifying narrative to Disney. Mm -hmm. This is like garbage. Spiritual uplift, moral truth, and endless nostalgia seems to be taken at face value or filtered through the fervor with which Disney adults express themselves. Disney adults... So not face value? He didn't say anything. He just said a bunch of general terms. Yeah. He said, he said like, taking at face value, but also filtered through the da-da-da-da-da. Right. Well, so those are not face value then. <clears throat> yeah. Is but... the grand narrative of Disney nostalgia? Like, is that what the argument is? I mean, they're definitely selling nostalgia. But yeah. I, how yeah. is nostalgia a grand narrative? They're fascist, Adam. I don't know. Nostalgia would be just it did just market nostalgia because they they their company has a very long legacy. It's very popular in culture, so it makes sense that they would do that. I wouldn't expect them to do otherwise. I mean, Reject it's great. modernity, embrace nostalgia, embrace chip. It's great to create a place <laughs> where you know parents and kids can have happy experiences together. Mm -hmm. And then you're basically capturing future nostalgia because people are going to go back there. I mean, that sounds this like is, fascism to me. Is it? I mean, I don't. Yeah, how how's it fascist? <laughs> I mean, if I'm a communist, <clears throat> remembering anything good <clears throat> is fascism, right? Is nostalgia bad? I mean, it can be. How? If it's taken to excess. I mean, yeah. If you're you know, just if you focus too past. much on the past, you might, yeah, you might not, sure, yeah. you know, seek to create new things. I don't think going to Disneyland every once in a while, remembering what a great time you had as a kid, and just, I mean, you feel it in your in your bones when you do that. Oh my God, well, Adam's see, a Disney adult. We <laughs> we agree that it's fine to engage look. in some nostalgia. I, Sitch. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Since you not do you not experience that? 
Do you not nostalgia when I go? I don't. Yes. It's been a while since I've been to Disney World, so like I can't answer right. that question. Maybe if I go now, I'll, I'll experience nostalgia. But. I mean, I experience nostalgia in like a lot of places. I go to the, you know, the town I grew up in, and I it's all over the place. But right, right, yeah. Right. What's wrong with that? That fe- that feeling, just like oh man, it's it sometimes it's overwhelming. Nostalgia yeah. is a powerful emotion. Right. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, again, it's just any, it's in excess. It could be a problem, but on its own, it's not necessarily a problem. Yeah. What is nostalgia taken to excess? Living in the past, uh, right? Just like, right. Living, yeah, living in the past. Yeah. 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 Refusing to past. move forward. Right. Just sitting like your high school yearbook open, sobbing, drinking scotch and smoking Remember, cigarettes. And um, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, the, totally. Uh, that character. Yeah. Uh, Uncle, yeah. Uh, what was the name? Yeah. Rico? Uncle Rico. Uncle Rico, exactly. Yeah. If they would have just put me in the last game, my life would be different. Things would have been different. Yeah. They screwed Listen, me over. This is exactly what the communists are saying. My parents would have just taken me to Disneyland. Everything. How much you want to bet I could throw a football over the mountains? Oh yeah. Oh yes. What? <clears throat> he never did. He never threw it over the yeah. mountains. That's true. Right. may not pay Sadaka at the Temple of Tinkerbell, but one what? popular Disney World vacation tip site suggests that two adults have to cough up between $1,900 and $2,800 to visit Disney, which I'd call a healthy tithe. Meanwhile, according to the Washington Post, Disney continues to hike prices as much as 5 to 10% each year, which is fine because wages go up at the same rate, right? That's how economics Uh-oh. work. Viewing Disney World as a site for rites of passage, like did you like that little dig at, at capitalism? <laughs> of course, but they're, they're just going to set their prices course. to what they can get away with. Right. When people decide it's not worth going there anymore, they will stop going there. Right. All I think is buy Disney stock. This video is convincing. <laughs> <laughs> convincing. Buy nostalgia sh- stock. Mm-hmm. Buy like buy what? Chipmunk. <laughs> Invest in woodland creatures. This, Reject a, modernity. Embrace chipmunk. This has a, there's a real business going on here. I see tangible yeah. value being created. You that's see tangible value in those Eeyore, Eeyore, Eeyore uh, headbands. I love the fact that they have so many different mouse ears now. That's there's some mouse ears. That's Eeyore. They're Eeyore mouse ears. Right. Oh, Eeyore mouse. Okay. Bad that's enough. Damn. He lost his tail. Now they completely cut the middle of mouth. <laughs> It's Eeyore. He's depressed. He's probably happy there's less Poor of him. Or Eeyore. Now. He's like, he's like, thank God, one more step closer to death. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Weddings or mitzvahs cements the sense of faith fans have in the sanctity of its ethos. Now, let's return to stick. What is there, the sanctity there, of the Disney ethos, you fucking prick? It's all just words. There like, is if I use the word no, faith, that's got religious connotation. There is no motherfucking ethos either. I hate yes. this. I hate this. You have to specify what that is if you're going to say that shit. So demoralizing. It's like he's teasing us. He's just throwing word salad at us. Inculcating dispositions for behavior. Oh, my God. (laughs) Type, 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 type. I'm going to die here. Inculcating dispositions for behavior. I can't. That was perfect. Oh, my God. You know, they're, Disney is trying to get you to spend money. All, all that they do is they're going to try and it's the behavior that they want is you spending money. So they're going to create an right. environment that encourages you to spend money. And that's fine. That's what that's what they're trying to do. It's that's what no, they want. no, Rex. That's a religion. That is a religion. OK, this Inks. is your tithe to the mouse. Right. Inclicate ink inclication. Teaching or impressing upon the mind by frequent instruction or repetition. Hmm. How does how does Disney World itself like this is what's even ridiculous in this argument too? Even if the like Disney World and Disney movies are their own separate things, Yes. You know, like completely different. Right. Like there could be a total ethos of like buy shit at Disney World that is just not present in any in the of movies. the actual movies. Yes. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> this is so demoralizing. Mm-hmm. Inculcating dispositions for behavior. Oh, okay. <laughs> what behavior? What are we talking right. about here? Let's talk specifics. Uh, we argued dude, for David. 45 minutes over the Christian narrative. 
David and Goliath behavior, okay? You should attack a tiger with a stick. I mean, that's at least a narrative. He's given us nothing here. <laughs> There's more narrative in the title, Disney's capitalist religion, than anything. You're right. This what, is... if any sort of behavior, does the Disney empire encourage oh, itself? Oh, thank, oh, tell oh. us. Thank goodness. <laughs> it the only reveal. Took us, it only took us halfway through a second video to get to, like, the basic premise. <laughs> It took him the second video to define religion. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. Do you know to find it poorly? Do you notice how the little graphic here has like Walt Disney mind humping these people in the foreground? It's yeah, shooting yeah. like Wi-Fi uh, radio yeah. like, at them. Yes, right. Mind waves. Mind waves. That's called mind humping. We're gonna brainwash. Watch. You, you might be surprised Look. actually that we haven't really brought it up yet. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, really? You think uh -oh. so? It starts with C. Wait, what word do you think is it? He's gonna put there. Is he gonna say? It's gonna be capitalism. Carpe diem. No. Is, no. Is he gonna say capitalism? Corn. Starts with C. Synonym is he gonna say eat. That's cunt? Right. Consumption. Oh, oh shit. Consumption. What I was close. Respect. Consumption. Right. Consumption. I mean, people consume things in capitalism. Right. Of course, we have them to consume. Wait, how? What is wrong this is, with consumption? This is, how does how does Disney properties like Disney movies? How how do they promote an ethos of consumption? Like, what Disney property promotes that? Yeah, exactly. I don't think I don't think it's a particular message from the thing itself. It's that they're building an empire of all these things that wants you to consume the Can product. Can you imagine? Give them money for it. Can you imagine? Sure. Like Ray comes out in the new Star Wars and she's like, I love buying things. My goal is to buy things. I like to buy as much stuff I as I be, can. I want to be a Jedi so that I'll have money to buy more products at my local. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> my local exactly. Jedi store. Buying things really fills my life with meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ray Skywalker. It's got you know that scene, you know that scene from Spaceballs. Merchandising, merchandising. Yes. Space follows the movie. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, what is, this is so ridiculous. That ethos is not in the movies. It would seem weird in the movies, obviously. That's I mean, it was like, there was the whole insane, horrible sequence of Casino Planet where they go to like all the rich people are bad. Oh, oh I Don't know. Bite. Yeah. That was yeah. forcing the anti capitalism, though, into the movie, right. wasn't it? It's only one way people get this rich. By selling weapons. Wait, what? <laughs> That's a pretty big jump for logic there. There's Maybe one no of those people cured space cancer or something. I don't know. Or There's another way to get rich. Gambling. This is it. Right. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. Owning a company that makes space clothing, Ray. I mean, or not Ray. Who's what's the little Asian woman's name? Maz Kanata. Oh, you're know. talking about Rose Tico. Rose Tico. That was her name. Rose yeah. Tico. She's the one that says that line. It's like, well, you can't just jump to that conclusion, Rose. Well, Rose is a stupid, dumb idiot. That just, so it, well, just true. that just destroyed her character. That showed her to be the dumbest person in the entire franchise. Oh, she well, was I mean, destroyed I, before we got to Kanto by Yeah, and to be right. fair, her deciding to save Finn by possibly killing him was pretty. <laughs> yeah, she's was just filled bad. with dumb decision making. She yeah. saves the space horses before she saves the children. That's <laughs> what I love to do. I love to follow a protagonist that's dumb as fuck. That's, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, Don't sacrifice yourself to here. save your friends. Almost die by me slamming my fucking space car into you. I mean, I do like Step Brothers, and that is kind of oh god, following dumb people. So, but the movie recognizes that they're dumb, and you're laughing at them for being dumb. So. I'm trying to imagine like melding Star Wars and Step Brothers together now with Rose Tico. You have the <laughs> same outcome, basically. Rose Tico and Finn at the Catalina yeah. wine mixer. <laughs> <laughs> now just put just put uh, the Step Brothers characters in like to take place of Rose and Finn in the second Star Wars movie. It's just in this crazy <laughs> universe. Yeah, I don't that, think anything would change. I think all the events great. would play out exactly the that same. That would probably be do better. It, it would yeah. be better. We have to save these horses. Oh my God, you're totally Shouldn't right. We save the slave children? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, would would be that would be good. You you could you could literally see Will Ferrell giving this impassioned speech. Fuck those children. We need to save these beautiful creatures. <laughs> His eyes filled with tears. 
Oh, it's so it's so much better already. I know it's becomes an amazing movie all of a sudden. Yeah. Now we're along for the ride. And you know, see, as Amer- that's going to be the amazing thing when mm-hmm. when when AI art <laughs> and know. editing Can like make that reaches movie. the point. It's going to be amazing because people are just going to be able to match these fucking movies together. It's going to be just oh, it's going right. to be right. Yeah. You just type it into the AI and it shows you the movie. Right. I can see the movie already. I mean, it's it completely makes sense. <laughs> and it's way funnier. It's going to be wonderful. Okay. At least for study movies. scholar Eric Smooden puts it, Disney constructs childhood so as to make Blue it shirt. entirely compatible with consumerism. Tell me this guy is not a communist. Just on face alone. Disney for, constructs wow. childhood so as to make it entirely compatible with consumerism. How is that? That's not even they remotely true. They make products true. for you to buy. That is so not true. Right. Entirely compatible with consumerism? Just because it's compatible. I mean, they, they're a company who makes products for you to buy. They give you... I just, what is wrong with consumerism? They give you products and movies and experiences in exchange for money. I wish mm-hmm. I this, wish they would come out and say what is wrong with consumerism because I really feel like what I mean what's wrong with consum we need jobs and we need we like consuming things so right I like making things for myself I, you know I like making things for other people I don't, so like what's the big deal what's just wrong consume, with that Adam just consume what's wrong consumption is great wow Look. I can't believe you consumption wow. Cons- I like. I like nice things. I Listen, like... Eric Schmuden is a professor yeah. of American studies and film studies, PhD, okay, at UC Davis. So how okay. dare you? Eric Schmuden. How huh? dare you doubt Eric Schmuden and his yes. blue fucking mm-hmm. shirt? <laughs> he looks like a communist. Those glasses scream I'm a communist. Okay. Not only that, those glasses, those glasses I mean, scream. that those glasses look like consumer culture. Come on, those are those are designer mm. glasses. Those, those are definitely, state. Those are the state approved glasses. Those glasses are fucking weird. He definitely yeah, overpaid for those glasses. Those glasses. Yeah. Those are like a four hundred dollar pair of frames. He's are very, they, those are horrible glasses. He's very proud of. I'm certain of it. Those are the worst. Those are one of some of the worst glasses I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Those are odd ones. He yeah, looks like he's wearing like on the top, yeah. He looks like he's wearing like the goggles that the owl would wear in Watchmen or something. I feel like he watched The Incredibles and really liked the scientist oh, woman. Yeah. yeah, what was her name? Yeah, yeah. The, the the lady. This is why he came up with the phrase Disney constructs childhood. Oh, so, Edna Mode. To, yes. Yeah, totally. Wow, costume costume designer. Yeah. Right. He's got right. the Edna glasses. Yeah. Those are probably Disney glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and it does so in the hopes of creating lifelong patrons of Disney Entertainment and related products. Though it's not the only company to attempt such a feat, Mazur and Coda argue that because of its market penetration, its integrated marketing, and its access to many levels of culture through its corporate network, Disney is uniquely suited for the religification of its commodity. Now, this is important because, as Jerome notes, in our world of rapidly evolving... Okay, but can you like can you translate all of these quotes and things into salient points that you can make <clears throat> yeah, to an audience narrative. that they might be able to explain? Does it, no one is going to watch this and be able to tell someone about this video. What does religification no even this. mean? Mm-hmm. That's so ridiculous. This video this, uh, is noise. This guy, Henry, Henry Giroux. Mm-hmm. He's a communist too, right? One of the founding theorists <laughs> of critical pedagogy I knew in it. the United States. I knew it. Yes. Yeah. You he called co- it. He couldn't actually have someone who could make a reasonable argument why, you know, capitalism is not the devil. He had to have all <laughs> these communists in his video. Mm-hmm mass communication, pop culture is a central way for young people to learn about themselves, their relationship to others, and the larger world. He argues that Disney is perfectly suited for a world where democracy has come to be less defined by civic engagement than by the freedom to consume freely and be entertained. Disney, he explains, prime children to relate. But but this is like so fucking stupid because they're, they're making like these if you want to say that Disney has a grand narrative, it has to be it has to exist within the Disney products. It can't be a meta narrative about the fact that they're just simply selling products in the first place. I Which is totally yeah. agree. 
like if the narrative of the Disney products itself is, you know, don't be obsessed with material obsessions, you know, do the right thing, you know, don't just follow the crowd, blah, 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 blah. All these things that we get from Disney movies, it completely contradicts every fucking thing Great they're saying. Great point. Great point. Yeah. It's like, well, there's a meta narrative of the fact that Disney sells right. products. It's like, well, congratulations. It's not even a meta narrative. That's just, it's a company. It's, yes. It's just That's like a fact of does. reality. Yes. It's a company in a capitalistic, you know, environment. They sell products. I don't, what do you want? Colleges sell education. I mean, what's wrong with that? Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. It's, it's a crazy argument. Tell me, yeah. Tell me why all any of this is bad. And those arguments are not difficult to make for Disney, but you need to make them. Right. Yeah, as, as like as we said, as a joke. If you know Ray Skywalker was like, "I want to be a Jedi so I can buy more shit," okay, then you maybe you have an argument. But right, <laughs> until but that's that not happens. the case. Right. Themselves as consumers before citizens, as individuals pursuing self-interest rather than members of communities pursuing any sort of collective good, and then carry that self-perception into adulthood. That's such nowhere bullshit. is this more evident than at Disney World. Where, as Jero explains, consumption becomes the unifying force explain? through which families organize themselves. Disney theme parks not only provide middle class families with an upbeat version of the American past, oh, no. they give such entertainment the force of civic duty. <gasps> I, like, who? Um, the force of civic duty? Yeah, right. I, yeah, I don't, no. no one, no one goes to Disney World thinking, oh, this is our civic duty as right. Americans. They think, they let's go have Disney a fun world. time with our kids. This is yes. like family duty because my kids are going to kill me if I don't take them, but not, not civic duty. Well, who's going to Disney World like, listen, I want to learn about America's past. Better go to Disney World. Right. What the yeah. fuck are they talking about? When I go on Splash Mountain, I don't think I'm learning about the history of America. Okay. I think I'm going on a fucking ride. Right. Please. Encouraging spectatorship and passivity, Disney appropriates nostalgia simply to maximize consumption in the interest of fun and comedy. Encouraging spectatorship and passivity. Encouraging spec. So I guess encouraging they. So they're what? saying that people there should people who go there to Disney World or Disneyland, they are encouraged to not challenge anything that they're given. So they're encouraging passivity and spectatorship. This is no, this is all cultural hegemony kindness gobbledygook. Like, oh, you know, the consumer culture of Disney is lulling people into a false sense of happiness. They don't realize that they're slaves. Okay. He, he said this in the first video. They don't realize that they're really the dwarves in the minds of Disney. Yes, they're the ones with that Protestant work ethic. Right. You, I think you're actually you're completely correct. Uh, I don't know if it was Adam or Rags that said this. They're anti-fun. It was probably me. That's true. They, he, they're <laughs> anti-fun because fun detracts from the fact that we should all be enacting the communist revolution. Right. Yeah. If no. you're not miserable, then you have no reason to do revolt. aforementioned revolt. If yes. you're happy and you feel like your life is actually good, you don't want a revolution. Yes. That's exactly. They're like, listen. In Russia, okay, all the dirty peasants, their lives were miserable, so they revolted and brought about the Marxist Revolution. But in America, people aren't, aren't miserable? miserable. Yeah, so we They're need to like, make them miserable. No. Their you guys have of... your Disney worlds making you happy and everything. We need to get rid of this. If you're happy, you can't revolt. You have to revolt so you can be happy. Oh, my God. They want Perfect. every family vacation to go to the Holocaust Museum. That's all they fucking care about. No, no, no. Every Every... Uh, family visit has to go to like the factories where the kids would stitch the shoes, you know, sure. in the early yeah, 1900s and in China right yeah. now. We're going to learn yeah. on our family vacation. That's how you right. become a hated parent. Yes. yes. Jeez, I, who doesn't want to see their kids happy though? Kids at Disneyland are so fucking happy. They're like it yeah, but in listen. ecstasy. You're trying to have your children be happy, right? If you're a socialist or a communist, you want your child to become a revolutionary. And happy people don't become revolutionary. Yes, no, this is what they're pissed about. This is right. this is totally what they're pissed about. Some guy decided to take his money and build the happiest place on earth, and they're like, damn it, no revolution. <laughs> Shit. Maybe if we try and convince them that when they go to the happiest place on earth, they're miserable and take being taken advantage of, they'll rise up. They'll break just, yeah, from their chains like, of oppression and put down their corn dogs, and they what? will join and make the revolution. Disneyland is just, I, I just, it's so 
the amount of amazing at Disneyland. It's there are places in the world that don't have anything like it. It's just mm-hmm. we live in a society that can produce a Disneyland. Right. Yes. That's amazing. That is it's amazing. Insane. Well, here's a question. Has there ever been in human society like uh, a culture or society that's been able to produce an amusement park like thing like Disney World that would be open to not just the rich but like the masses? Well, I think didn't maybe? they have the Coliseum? Yeah, where they threw the Christians in. And I, it, it, if 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 we're going to like the blood sports arena, it's like, pretty low. Hell yeah! I feel like they had that. <laughs> the literal blood sports arena. Hey, would you rather go to Disneyland or the Coliseum? Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. probably. I you want to go to the Coliseum? I mean, you, like it looks. I've never been there, but I I climbed it in uh, Assassin's Creed, and it looked giant. Like if you're gonna be like at the top, like seeing like little ants fighting and being like, oh, I guess one of them got killed now. There is definitely more diversity of entertainment at Disneyland than there is at the Roman Coliseum. It's just, <laughs> I, that's true. It's kind of. I want to see Mickey Mouse fighting. Guts. I want to see all the people in the costumes fighting in the Coliseum. Right, Mickey Mouse has to chipmunks. fight Donald Duck. They have to finally settle their differences once for all. Okay. The ends of Spears, yeah. Yes. Uh, Death by Sloth, thanks so much for joining the Free Will Seekers for five months, or for continuing. It says, I personally think, quote, religion is defined by dogmatic ethos. Without a specific rule set that has some enforcement mechanism, it's just a philosophy. Hmm. Religion okay. is defined by some. Do- There's some. I mean, dogmatism can become a part of it if you don't know right. why you're following the behavior you're following. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't. Does Buddhism have an enforcement mechanism? I'm not familiar enough, but the heaven and uh, hell is a pretty good enforcement mechanism. That is true. Uh, Majin for $20. Thanks so much. Says, hi, my prophetic pumpkins. Most religions try to explain the world around them, and even their heavens usually can key you into where they're from. In Islam, heaven is just shade, grass, and food. They are multifaceted. That's a good point. Wow. That's interesting. Uh, Christian Baller. Thanks so much, Christian Baller who's been outside the simulation for five months now. Wow. He sees things how they really are. Wow. Says you have to vote in the next, you have to vote in the next election between Vosh. Oh no. Oh Oh, no. no. (laughs) Oh no. Uh, If you have to vote in the next election between Vosh and Demon Mama versus academic agent and Nick Fuentes. Oh shit. uh, President and vice president respectively. You can't kill yourself or move. Also, who is smarter, Hassan or Lance? P.S. Have actual justice on actual justice warrior on more. Oh uh, yeah, I love Sean. Uh, I I can't I can't answer that question. That's like impossible. They're both it's impossible a- authoritarian. They're all authoritarian tyrants. Right. I mean, right. You've picked you've picked four of the most despicable people, who've all all displayed authoritarian personality traits. Yes. None of yeah. them. Yeah. Right. So I guess they're just like what? Which which do you you want like mandatory pride years if you're voting (laughs) for Vosh and Demon Mama or or do you want an end to uh, gay marriage and the incarceration of all gay and trans people? (laughs) Well, actually, I can give an easy. This is actually actually an easy answer for this. Okay, one of these people. Mm Will try to put me in a camp or deport me because I'm Jewish. Okay. Right. Okay. So you you're obviously okay. Right. So that I think I, I think by default I have to vote for Vosh because right. all Vosh is going to do is nuke Israel, but he's not going to kill me right. for being Jewish. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'll vote for Vosh and just to save my buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I've constructed an out. Wow. Uh, I think. I think Lance is smarter than Hassan. I think Lance is smarter than his son. I don't know if that's controversial, but Lance is saying that smarter. anyone is smarter than his son oh, is, that is like... not controversial. Right. Right. You think Lance is smarter than Hassan? Oh, I completely disagree with you. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. Because yeah. Hassan is fucking really dumb. <laughs> well, the th- I every once in a while <laughs> Hassan says stuff that makes me think he's just a bad communicator and he's not that dumb. Hmm. I don't know. We. I mean, he did. He did destroy Andrew Tate in that debate, but I don't know if that's 
high praise or not. Andrew Tate could be a moron too. He's also seemed to have read a bunch of Malcolm Gladwell's books, which mm -hmm. are pretty good. So I'm sticking with Lance. Uh, mystery guest zero one for another twenty dollars. Thank you, mystery guest. Says Sunday and Tuesdays are the best days of the week because it's when you two stream. Jesus fuck. Oh, I I understood that completely, mystery guest. I don't know. I assumed Rags was confused because he was uh being coy. No, I but. I didn't know why Sunday and Tuesday were the big days. I didn't I know see. that those were the two days that you guys streamed. Yes, yeah, I course. didn't understand um, that you didn't understand that, but I yeah, obviously that's when you strong. Stream. You didn't know that, Rags? No. Oh wow. Right. So there you go. Uh, Soul Odyssey, but thank you, Mr. Guest. Soul Odyssey for 25 Canadian says Mary's blue color looks especially similar to Doomer's blue background, which also has a halo. Doomer also reveals unironically evil people. Doomer is a religion. Hail Doomer, full of grace, blessed art thou among stoats. Wow. So there you go. That's pretty hmm. cool. That's quite the endorsement. Very cool. Uh, Metalworks for eleven ninety. Thank you so much for being free. We'll see you for five months. Says dwarves came from Norse mythology and were always craftsmen. The best, the best smiths crafted Thor's hammers, Odin's spear, Frey's golden boar, and many other crazy items. Well, there you go. Anonymous cow for twenty. Golden boar. That's what he said. So oh, I didn't know you could craft those. Well, maybe it's like Athena's owl. Maybe she has like a robot boar. I don't know. Maybe some mechanical thing. Uh, anonymous coward for twenty dollars says fandoms and religion aside, cape shit is a blight on our society. I like some cape shit. I think some cape shit is fine. Uh, some of it term. is not good, but I don't like to devalue an entire kind of genre by calling right. it that when there's legitimately really good stuff that involves yeah. superheroes. There's good superhero stuff. There's bad superhero stuff. It's oversaturated now, and I think Disney's going to end up killing it because Phase Five looks like it's going to be hot garbage. But Phase Four has been catastrophic, so. Phase four is not been pretty great, much. So. Yeah. Uh, J Mac. Thank you so much. J Mac for $20 says I got paid more because I was technically employed by DC. Oh, that's interesting. That's cool. For the Robin costume for being Robin. Yeah. Interesting. Which Robin were you J Mac? That's the real question. The Batman and Robin Batman or no, well, I mean, was he Dick Grayson? Was he Tim Drake? Was he Jason Todd? <laughs> oh, which Robin? I'm going to assume Tim Drake. Uh, J Mac, for another $20, thank you, J Mac, says, if you and Adam are ever interested in the costume character job experience, I'll be happy to give you the DL. It was one of my more interesting jobs. Yeah, definitely. At some point. Oh, that could be interesting. That would be interesting. Hearing about all the, how all that works. Yeah. Uh, Dog Backwards, thank you so much for being a free will seeker for four months, says, sorry, I'm late. Well, that's okay. Because we believe in forgiveness here. Such an Adam show, we also believe in being late. So that's fine. Yeah, of course. We would never be late, but we no, forgive never. you for being late. Never. We were right on time. You missed a bunch of the show. <laughs> I was not All on time. Tired of so Mickey Mouse. I have an excuse because it's not my <laughs> show. So. Well, we just well, kind of invited you pregnant. in like halfway through. I was so. pregnant, but I got better. <laughs> I got the last abortion in the United States. Nice. Take that, Donald Trump. Yeah of mickey mouse popsicles of course now given disney's ability to fulfill look why is his eyes why are his eyes like that now look what at his mean? eyes are they like reddish and everything he's tired okay he he's just been filming smoked this all a big day. fatty he's like <laughs> totally blazed I like i see this guy again and his eyes are all red mm -hmm. oh i Jeez. can't wait so to all... tag him on this video he would smoke in a doobie five stipulations of gertz's definition of religion it's easy to conclude that it is in fact functioning like a religion, nope. even if it's not at all though. intentional. But there's still a bit more to unpack. See, most religions ask us to sacrifice things in exchange for, say, salvation or God's good graces. We're supposed to give our money to houses of worship or charities, or spend part of our weekends in prayer, or deny ourselves the pleasure of red meat, or avoid masturbating so the Pope doesn't show up to our house and glue our palms to a cross. 
Religions also typically ask us to strive to abide by an ethical code and repent when we fail to do so. But Disney's pitch is a bit more simple. As Phil Vischer, co-founder of VeggieTales, persuasively argues, Disney has wrapped up and sold America what people wanted to hear, which was, give us the upside of religion without the obligation of religion. That is like... A He's saying the exact opposite of the, everything you just said in this video, though. Is he? Yeah, it seems like the, the necessary part yeah. of the religion is that you have obligations to do things. Oh, and true. And it's very yeah. important that you meet them. And right. Disney's like, no, you don't have obligations. But except this guy said you do in the form of giving us money and the consumerism stuff. Well, it's very, also very confusing. Like, I know what the VeggieTales guy and VeggieTales guy is really Christian, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously I know what he means by that, but I think he's actually completely wrong because if you look at the Disney stories, there's always a penalty in like that is put upon the characters or the world for not acting in a moral way, and that would be the penalty. You know, Simba's kingdom, you know, all the women are basically, I guess, raped by Scar, and the kingdom falls into disarray because Simba, you know, doesn't he abdicates the throne and doesn't do his duty. So there is a penalty for all this stuff. Yeah. A downside. I guess the penalty is I think the penalty is supposed to be on the people consuming the stories, not people in the stories themselves necessarily. I guess, but that's I what I'm saying what it's talking about. It's confusing because they keep jumping between between the narrative and the meta narrative of the existence of Disney properties. And these are two very different things. Yeah. He should could should be specific on that, but of course he's not going to be. Right. A lot of businesses, Disney offers us enlightenment through consumption without asking us to do any of the pesky self-examination that traditional religion might require. But is it, Disney You're doesn't convinced. practice you enlightenment. It, pra it, it promises you entertainment. Right? Yeah. Yes, totally. They're, they're trying to just make you happy, thing. give you right. some thing, movies to watch and stuff. Right. What kind of self-examination is there in religion anyway? I mean, oh. just, it, I mean there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty, tons of it. Yeah. In fact, it's full of self-examination. Don't give in to your, you know, bad desires. You need to watch right. what you do. Follow right. all the rules. Do these right. things. That's. Lots yeah, but of he's phrasing it like it's some journey of self-discovery. It's like, no, here are the rules. Follow along. If you don't, I don't you're going to burn in it hell. Like that. Mm. He kind. I think it's about, it's, is. it's about inward reflection. I think is the way that this is being. Well, no, I think of phrased. religion as like these are the rules. Follow the rules, or you're going to burn in hell. Right? It's pretty simple. <laughs> I mean, it's part of it, but there's a lot of aspects to religion that tell you to look into the things that you may want or what you want to do and how you should behave as a result and to control yourself and to isolate the bad parts yeah, of you and like, don't give into those. That's not like self-discovery. That's just, you know. Well, that's you said self-discovery. He did. They he said, said self-discovery. I thought he said self-reflection. Hold on of religion that is like a lot of businesses disney offers us enlightenment through consumption without asking us to do any of the pesky self-examination that oh, self -examination. you're both wrong he said self-examination <laughs> well my point stands though yes yes no yeah self-examination is definitely a part of religion uh, is it part. i feel yeah, like of course. You, know, you go in you confess your sins like what kind of self-examination well, i guess it listen i guess it depends you're on you're not, it's not therapy right there, there is an aspect of why did you do the things that you did? Don't do those bad things. Don't right. like it's all the stuff that I said before. That's you don't go to your priest and, and your priest is like, why exactly do you think you keep cheating on your wife? Let's get down to the deep psychological. When you go, no, well, he no, goes. I mean, Listen, it, you fucker, you know the rules. What the fuck? <laughs> say your well, hell it, marys this, or you're going to fucking hell. Well, this this priest you invented. Your I eternal, say that, but your eternal soul went, is on the line here. Stop fucking around. Stop fucking other women. Be faithful to your many wife. Confessions in my, yes. my Catholic Look, life. It's not how a did, journey you, of self-examination. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. How did your confession? What is your personal experience with confession? <laughs> Listen, uh, this. Oh, is... you you'd go in. You'd tell that you there are the, there is a ceremony guys. aspect. You mm -hmm. go in and you'd say. This things is a and there was... fictional wait, wait. story I'm having. Adam, here, okay? Adam, stop interrupting. <laughs> okay, who's interrupting? That now? Christians go to confession. <laughs> okay. Yes. Was I guilty of interrupting that? You were. Yes. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I, Chill out. Rags, you have the talking stick. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but it, it's really just, there's a bit of a ceremony to it. I say a mm -hmm. thing, you say a thing, I say a thing, you say a thing. Um, but uh, I can sort of partially remember some of it, but 
there is an aspect of you talk to someone on the other side who's the priest. You tell them the things that you did. This could be anonymous or not. Right. Um, but you talk to the priest. You say, I've done these things. And the priest might say, you really might say, why do you do this? You shouldn't do that anymore. You know, this is what you said last time. You need to work on improving it. There is some element. Is of there it. self-examination? Like well, that sh that should come naturally when you're telling someone all the things that you supposedly think are bad things that you do, mm -hmm. right? But then and you're putting it you you're put think... in a scenario where you are encouraged to self reflect on why are you doing these things. Okay. Yeah. And the priest can help facilitate that, you know. But he he's not going to be like a therapist. But there is going to be an element of. You know, maybe you should do this instead. You know, you shouldn't do that. Da, da, da. Like, don't give in to that part of you. Basic stuff, but it's still self-reflection. And tons of biblical stories and homilies are full of, sometimes we feel this way. Sometimes we might want to do this. But, you know, as it says in the good book, or as this character did in this story in the Bible, you don't want to, you don't want to give in to that. You want to be able to resist it and be a good person. There's, there's a lot of self-reflection in religion. Self-examination. Quit changing it. <laughs> That too. I guess self reflection and self examination are kind of the same. Yeah, it's yeah, it's. I, I think I, I think it's totally fair to say that this self examination religion. I understand what you're saying, Adam. That like there's not deep. There can maybe not be deep examination because a lot of it is these are the rules and you're not really examining like the rules, but you are often examining your behaviors and the fact that you're right. not following the rules. So, and also I'm sure it depends on what religion you're talking about and what sect and what specific church and, or temple. I mean, obviously I don't have any experience with any of this shit, but uh, thank you so much. Potato. Potato just gave us 50 wow. memberships. Yeah. Oh, wow. There you go. Potato says mom didn't let me use her credit card. So I put her in the crowd. Nice. <laughs> well, there you go. What? Whatever it takes to get memberships, right? Wow. Very impressive. Thank you. Potato is definitely enacting a religious spirit, the religious uh, spirit of the Sitch and Adam show by by giving. So thank you. Baked on self sacrifice too. Right, right. Traditional religion might require. The difference is they just happen to have a lot more power and of course a lot more real estate than most of the other people trying to sell you sh at their part. What is he talking about, Disney or the church? Yeah. The church has know. way more real estate than Disney. In power. In yeah. power, probably. Of know? course. Um, yeah. So uh I'm okay. not sure what he what he meant, but who knows? Works, we can enjoy all the spiritual and ecstatic feeling of religious worship without having any of the moral or ethical responsibility that religion imposes. Dude, it's not a fucking religion. It's, what yeah, the fuck? Yeah, this is a this is an extremely important and meaningful distinction between those two things. Of there is course. not a moral component to enjoying something at Disney. It's a totally amoral thing. It's <laughs> it's not like it's not a it's not a set of you don't go in expecting to be given and expected to follow some set of guidelines of moral behavior. Well, it's I mean, you totally shouldn't start thing. fights in the park yeah, I mean, or the, run around naked the, or anything. Yeah, I mean, keep your pants are, on. There are sure certain rules, that. yeah. Listen, only yeah, the mascots but, can be pantsless. That's yeah. the rule. Yeah, the chipmunks, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they can be naked. There is a it, certain chip, which ethic. Which one only wears a shirt? But there's not like you, thou shalt. You know, it's, it's not like Disney offers these moral proclamations from on high that you have to follow right. or else you don't get the ultimate reward at the end. Right. Well, but this is so weird because he he spent the better part of two videos saying Disney is a religion, and now he's like Disney isn't really a religion. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's falling I don't think down. He knows he's saying that he doesn't know he's saying that, but I think he I think he'll say whatever is put on the cue card in front of him as long as it implies yeah. that Disney is bad. Then I think he'll read it. And the writers will just write words. Yes, Disney is bad because it's a business, and businesses are bad. Right. Oh, okay. Even though he runs right. a business, which right. basically is about, about lying that. to people. Yeah. And the sponsorships for other businesses. This is, I mean, all of this just seems like complete disinformation to me. This, all of this seems like ridiculous, made up nonsense. It doesn't even, I, I disagree. I don't think it even reaches the level of this information. This is like uninformation. You right. know, like watch this and you just, the information is sucked it's out of your brain. It's incoherent. What little information here is yes. wrong. Right. 
Well, he is. I mean, he's attacking Disney as some, you know, evil institution that. How do you fuck up attacking Disney? <laughs> it's so easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so easy. And he fucked it up. <laughs> that is true. God. Attacking Disney is like a complete cottage industry on YouTube. I know. But he can't do that, though, because the reason most people attack Disney is because, you know, woke. Woke, This yeah. woke ideology has infected Disney movies in a way that right. makes yeah, I don't them care that immoral. Disney is rich. I care that they're shit. Right. I care that they've woke. I care that they make bad products. Yeah. You know, recently, like, that's the problem, not this other garbage. Yeah, they can make as much money as they want if they make really good stuff. It yeah. Is, it is kind of odd because, like, we're saying Disney is just about entertainment and that they're falling down on that or, that arrangement. Yes. You know, we pay them to entertain us, and they're not entertaining us anymore. They're pros They're trying to proselytize us to the woke religion, which does make disney more into a religion but he could never come at it from that angle right he should be happy disney has decided to sacrifice money to be woke, woke. yeah exactly right. to yeah. spread the religion of progressivism but instead he's like nope not good enough you're making money off of this right you have to make these billion dollar movies for free right <laughs> uh potato for 20 dollars. thank you potato potato says i just woke up Heading off to work in an hour or two, but at least I can listen to the parts of the stream that I miss while I work, so it's not that bad. Well, that's good. Yeah. Sweet. That's good. Happy to be your work entertainment. Yeah. It's upon us. Disney's ideology is ultimately pretty hollow, and yet its cultural reach is so expansive. Its appeals to childhood innocence so persuasive that we can easily forget. It's not a value-driven... Did he, did he say persuasive when he meant pervasive? I'm not sure. I mean, he's only the person who reads the script. So this should be the one thing he doesn't fuck right. up, but that's all right. I was concentrating on the word hollow because, I mean, so many people, so many people have such moving memories of Disney that how could you say it's hollow? Mm. I don't really have moving memories of Disney. But... Well, for some people, it's, I'm sure it's a non thing, but right. for other people, it is. So, sure. And the whole point of the video is aimed at those people, right? The people right. Who find it very meaningful. The Disney adults. Right. But that's his argument why they're dumb shits, because they find this stuff meaningful. And he's like, this is just nonsense. You guys shouldn't find meaningful at all. Well, but he's saying both. He's, he's saying it is, there is all this secret meaning to it, but there isn't at the same right. time. Yeah. You guys should become communists. Now that's meaning. That's how you get <laughs> meaning in your life. Hollow. And yet its cultural reach is so having any of the moral or ethical responsibility that religion imposes upon us. Disney's ideology is ultimately pretty hollow. Yeah, you never it, said it, what Disney's it ideology it is. Right, yeah, what is Disney ideology? Yeah, what is the ideology that it's you're calling hollow? It's to be a hollow? consumer. Oh, okay. He's saying, is, it's almost like he's saying they should have an ideology. Yeah, I don't think don't? he knows what an ideology is. Well, we'll ask Gertz. Maybe he has a definition. <laughs> and yet its cultural reach is so expansive. Its appeals to childhood innocence so persuasive that we can easily forget. It's not a value-driven benevolent entity striving to uplift its followers. Duh. It's a profit-driven... Yeah, we know. This, is, this isn't this is news to anyone. But the whole idea of a movie is to be inspiring. I mean, that's what they're I mean, going for, even if they're failing. And plus, Disney can be both of these things. They could be doing all of these things about childhood innocence, innocence and dot to dot stories and magic and fairy, and also be a big company who wants your money. Sure, mm -hmm. they're not yeah. contradictory things. And he almost is that's like, the they whole can't be idea bad. They behind. They just want their money. That's the whole idea behind capitalism. We're going to improve your life and and make money doing it. I mean, it's better than taking your like. It's better money. than hurting you, right? <laughs> multinational corporation. As Giroux puts it, innocence serves as a rhetorical device that cleanses the Disney image of the messiness of commerce, ideology, and power. That is to say... This is such nonsense. Okay. Um... 
Yeah. The, uh, oh, I, I just, I guess I'm just waiting for the point where he makes a point. I guess he's saying that. Let me. I want to hear that again. He's saying that Disney, the company, is not run like a fucking fairy tale situation from a movie. That's it's a saying. profit-driven multinational corporation. As Giroux puts it, just... innocent serves as a rhetorical device that cleanses the Disney image of the messiness of commerce, ideology, and power. That is to yeah, say, yeah, because those marketing... are not innocent things. And when you're marketing things, especially to children, and you want to and you want to have these sorts of things, you're not going to be delving into these topics, right? Plus, nobody wants to learn about this stuff. This stuff is this is a totally different thing than what Disney wants to create and sell. I, just, no, it, I don't also see they don't you... have an obligation to do this either. I I just don't see how he can say that like the Disney ideology has nothing to do with uplifting people because a mo the whole idea behind a movie is and especially like Disney movies which are just, you know, wrapped around happiness and doing the right thing and all these uplifting ideas. The movies are definitely designed to uplift people and even the theme parks I mean, you're supposed to have a, a family-friendly experience with the people that you love. How is that not uplifting? That's not exactly, you know, bad. Well, again, this is all, all this makes sense if we go, oh, this is all communist gobbledygook, cultural hegemony, false consciousness, uh, you know, lulling people into being happy. That's right. all this is. That's the, this is the entire message of this. The Disney theme parks are literally called the happiest place on earth. Right. How is that not uplifting? What is that? What? Is, that makes absolutely no sense. The whole idea is that we are going to lift you up. And in exchange for that, you're going to pay us. And a lot of people are willing to pay for that experience and happy that they have the opportunity to pay to have that experience. I just. Right. Like everyone want, everyone's excited to see a movie that you know they can't, you know, they are are dying to see when a good movie comes out. It's just it's so bizarre to me that someone would want to just crap all over that. But mm -hmm. I guess that's the meaning of this video. Because you again, you have to get the revolution going. In. Right, which means we need to make sure society fucking sucks, and we don't have amusement parks, and we right. don't have movies that people are excited about. I just, it's so, this is nihilism right here. And not only that, he's guilty of everything he's accusing well, Disney this, of. I mean, this isn't nihilism. This is something different. This but is totally nihilism. Look, he's, he's sitting nihilism in Nihilism just of, means that you don't find inherent meaning in things outside of man-made uh, conceptions. Right? I mean, okay. Yeah, nihil um, nihilism is like you believe in no moral, you don't believe in anything anything is moral or immoral you're just well no you well there's many okay there's many forms of nihilism but right. broadly nihilism just means you don't believe that there's objective morality like inherent within the laws of the universe that, that it's like well, it's man-made is either i don't think that's nihilism. right that is nihil. that's that's the broadest definition of nihilism oh okay it's the term nihilism is used very incorrectly colloquially like all the time Complete it denial says, of all established authority and institutions. I think this does fall under the category of nihilism. If you use the, under definition that definition, too. yeah, this says the rejection of all religious and moral principles in the belief that life is meaningless. That's not what nihilism. Well, yeah, that's what. Wait, okay, what they mean is that life is meaningless in terms of like not that we don't construct meaning in our life, that there's no inherent meaning to life. You know, in nature of itself, there's no God that's saying that there's meaning to life. Hold on, I got a third definition here for nihilism: a revolutionary doctrine that advocates destruction of the social system for its own sake. That's a, that's a specific totally type of fucking... that's a specific type of nihilism. But that one, yeah, that could maybe be this. Sure. I just this guy is such an a hole. He's such an a hole. Like people love Disney, people love the experience of the theme parks. People, sure, there's some shitty Disney movies and S Star Wars. I, you know, I hate their, I hate what they've done to the Star Wars franchise. But I think the progressive religion is the reason for that, not like a, not some sort of capitalist religion. 
Right. I think the abandonment of capitalism is what the problem is, but. Uh, CT made or got a gen- AI generation to make pictures of Will Ferrell in Star Wars that she sent me. So. Yeah. They're pretty cool. cool looking. I saw it. Do you want me to bring it up? Yeah. Sure. You can bring it up. The Will Ferrell in Star Wars. Why, Sitch, it, explain to me why this guy is such a giant a hole. That you mean the wisecrack guy or yeah. this guy, Henry Giroux? The wisecrack guy. Because he wants to bring about socialism. I <laughs> said, like, that's all this stuff makes sense if you, if this is all in the context of trying to destroy the quote unquote communist false consciousness or the capitalist. He thinks when the socialist revolution comes, he's still going to be cozy making YouTube videos. That'll be of his course. job. He was a thought leader. He helped expose the false consciousness of Disney to the masses. Okay. He'll yeah, be lauded. I, I don't get it. I guess he's basically thinking, well, since I have to work to go to Disney, it's really not worth it. You know, Disney would be great, but since it's not all free and I actually have to work for a living, it's all just terrible. (laughs) Maybe, I don't know. That cleanses the Disney image of the messiness of commerce, ideology, and power. That is to say, marketing itself as an institution in the business of enchantment can make you forget the immense and ever-growing chokehold over the entertainment industry. Chokehold. And it's obviously not just preaching the gospel of Mickey for fun. As Giroux furthers, that Disney has a political stake in creating a particular moral order favorable to its commercial interest raises questions about what it teaches. He argues that the lesson plans at the School of Disney ultimately reinforce an infantilized and privatized notion of citizenship. Like what? Give me a fucking yeah, example of literally anything so you're talking about. So infuriating. Like, oh my god. Like that's in a movie. That's right. Yeah. What Disney product? Um, yeah. Force and reinforces the and privatized notion of citizenship. Infantilized and privatized notion of citizenship. What what Disney product does this? What and, and what does that mean? I don't even, even know what that mean? means. Yeah. yeah, I don't even know what yeah. that means. Tell me what he's referring to and what Reinforces. what do you mean? What does this mean? Reinforce an infantilized and privatized notion of citizenship, which is what, what does that what is what privatized views, citizenship mean? And what is infantil like citizen infantilized like a, citizenship? Yeah, because they're not saying like oh, it infantilizes adults. Because then that, you'd say adults. It says citizenship. I, I, Infantilized notion of citizenship. What does that even mean? I don't know what this means. I would need to know what this is referring to. <laughs> this is this is a I don't know what I could say. Theory nonsense. Maybe earlier in the video he said scam. something. Earlier in the video he said something like, "Oh, Disney gets you to not be an activist, and it gets you to just consume products." Maybe that's what they mean. Like to be a good citizen means to you know be politically active. Or politically inactive, rather. And they're saying Disney makes you be politically inactive? Right. I don't know how that makes you a privatized notion of citizenship. I don't know what the Well, they own your citizenship. Or, oh, oh, maybe he's saying you're a good citizen by buying things? From Disney, yeah. Good citizenship is consuming things? I love that all this stuff is like a Lucky Logger bottle cap. You really have to think to be able to figure out what it is well it it's doesn't even make sense how, how does how does Here's how does disney do that one. besides being a successful corporation because that's all they're, they're just saying any successful corporate corporate uh, empire does mm-hmm. this process i guess but like how does disney specifically do this it's if funny you read that, this quote to 100 people you would just like they no, would not no one know, what, know what, what this mean. means yeah, yeah right it's right. funny Do you that think they're Disney accusing... reinforces an infantilized and privatized notion of citizenship? And they'll be like, what the fuck does, do you mean? <laughs> they're accusing Disney of selling bullshit. Yet. Ironic. This is Ironic. a lot of bullshit. <laughs> yes, this is 100% bullshit. Well, um, and, I can't even understand it to know if it's bullshit. You're, you're right to you know talk about the the hypocrisy of this all. Because this whole con- the whole you know, idea of false consciousness and cultural hegemony and all this communist bullshit. I mean, this is all religious gobbledygook. It is. Essentially. It's saying, you know, you're living under a false idea that yeah. you are happy, but you, you're you not actually happy. No, right. you have to be saved 
I bind to the church of Karl Marx in Provolten. Yeah. Yes. The whole thing's a religion. Abandon your Disney religion and follow yes. us. Yes. With yes. the communists. The prophets. Yes. Right. Exactly. Stop following the false prophets of Mickey and Minnie. Stop following the money, the almighty dollar. Follow us. Yes. <laughs> I mean, this is so we ridiculous. sleep all day and smoke weed. Oh, okay. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. Of course it's dumb. Disney probably isn't consciously trying to mimic religion, but its approach to converting not. acolytes can border on indistinguishable. Let us repeat. Disney uh, is not trying to be a religion, but it's tactic. That, it seemed like the Henry Giroux guy was saying this is all happening intentionally and consciously. So I, of I don't course, know. Yeah, yeah. The, Disney is bad because they're doing it this way. They're trying to mind. They're trying to mind trick you into spending money. Right. And the reception it receives from fans often takes on a spiritual tinge. Disney's interests are well served uh, when people so? buy its products, but its interests are best served when a consumption-driven population is more concerned with having fun at Disney World than, say, with the labor rights of the workers making the park happen in the first place, <laughs> or the company's serial yeah. cover-ups of sexual harassment and assault. In our cynical oh day, my God, we all pretty much so know that giant like corporations basically can, any never group can become do giant thing. corporations yeah. because they've done things in kind and magnanimous ways, no matter how cute their mascot is. And Disney is no different. While it's been hosting gay days since 1991 under the auspice of celebrating the queer community, it was also just recently busted for donating money to politicians. I like this. Disney, you know, they got in all this trouble with Ron DeSantis. I know. For, uh, you know, coming out against the Don't Say Gay Bill. And it's not enough. It's not enough. Okay. You can never make enough. these people happy. Don't even you can, try. Yeah. You can never. Why Why even try? Don't why try. even don't fucking even try? They don't fucking. Yeah. No. I wonder if we could get academic agent to Disney on gay day just to like. <laughs> like a meme? <laughs> just like, just tr meet us at Disneyland on yes. this date. Yes. Yes, it's it's Evola day. <laughs> Please, yeah, yeah. All the Evola people said, you know, they're going to wear red so you know who is, <laughs> you know, an Evola fan. <laughs> It'd be pretty amazing. <clears throat> who oppose queer rights. That includes Florida Republican Dennis Baxley, a career-long champion of anti-gay legislation and sponsor of the controversial Don't Say... This is so bullshit, too, because what they don't tell you is that Disney just gives money to both sides, essentially. Yeah, they give money to everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. So that when whoever wins, you know, they'll say, oh, we'll be favorable to Disney because they gave us a bunch of money. Gay bill, which limits school teachers from mentioning anything queer-related in the classroom. While claiming to be a pride-friendly company, Good, they've simultaneously be. been funding politicians who are actively harming the queer community. Now, after public outcry, Disney CEO Bob Chapek eventually spoke out against them. Oh, you eventually spoke oh, out. Uh, yeah, once, once we, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah. one of these Disney executives are woke as fuck. I mean, I don't, this doesn't. Right. Or the idea least, that they're right-wingers is crazy. Right. Or they at least are, you know, virtue signaling in public. Right. Do so. You're skeptical that they're woke. I, I'm not. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't trust any of these, like CEOs, they what their actual political philosophies are whatsoever. But I read Bob Iger's, mm -hmm. Bob Iger's book, his memoir. Is it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. he, he said seemed, they're all woke. No, he seemed woke as could be. Yeah. He if it's profitable, woke. they'll. Yeah, they'll. They won't. There, it's not like um, if the money's not in it, they probably won't. No, yeah. he seemed like a true believer. Yeah, he, he seemed like a total true believer. Well, why don't they pay their employees, you know, real, like real wages or better wages then? They're well, they're believers. white people. What does that mean? They don't get more money. <laughs> they're, no. not mar they're not marginalized. <laughs> That's why I don't believe any of these things. Any of these CEOs are, are like on, like real. Like they'll they'll do all the easy virtue signaling that costs them no money. Right. Yeah, but they'll, they won't do swap like... their Twitter logo in Pride Month, but right. they'll, they'll thank China for the ch concentration camps because they don't, they don't fucking. Yeah, care. exactly. They won't actually put their money where their mouth is. That's why I'm saying I don't think these people are. Bob really Iger in his book was bragging about Black Panther and how. Yeah, but Adam. Black a... Panther was like right. a superhero movie for the black community, and right. it, it had oh, never shit. been done. And but Adam, this like... is, for, first of all, that's hilarious if he says it's never been done before. He's forgetting 
the hit movie Blade. But second, <laughs> but um, Black Panther was like a whole society of black people. Though Blade oh, okay. was just like a Blade was just black, one black vampire dude. dude. Well, okay, yeah, come on. Just a horrifically evil alt right nationalist society in the middle of Africa. That's yeah, exactly. Answer so. But somehow it's it's good because it was black, right? Yeah, yeah of course. But, but it's full of black people, so Look, it's good. That's okay. Right. Wakanda may have a colonialism problem, okay? But it doesn't <laughs> might be matter, nationalists, okay? But it's okay if they're black. It doesn't right. matter, okay? That, Everyone the, can be like, colonialists like, together. Now that I am king of Wakanda, I will build a big, beautiful wall that will keep out everyone else. Yeah, okay. It's a laser wall with a hologram on it. He, but, uh, no, he was wait, in wait the minute, book. Wait a minute. Who wait a minute. Is, you, who is the you guy understand? That wait, Adam. You understand that, that in Bob Iger's book, he's going to make himself look as good as humanly possible. So of course he's gonna be like, "Oh yes, I'm a true believer. Listen, I'm a good, you know, lefty liberal. Look at me. Look at me." Who was a black writer that called Jordan Peterson a Nazi? I can't. Uh, oh, Tanahasi Coates. Tanahasi Coates. Yeah, he hired Tanahasi Coates to write the Black Panther comic book. Amazing. Yeah, he was like all in Ta Nehisi Coates, being like the voice of a generation. And who wrote the Black Panther movie? I don't think it, some I don't, asshole. Yeah, I don't think they some gave loser who has no Coates. talent. I don't Ryan know. Ryan Coogler, who directed it, and Joe Robert Cole. Who are these people? Mm. Ryan Coogler. Coogler is black, so at least there's that. Oh. Uh. He wrote a bunch of things I've never heard Good. or seen before. Oh no, he the... wrote, he wrote Creed. That was the, the uh, Rocky sequel, right? That people liked. Oh yeah, saw. that movie was great. No, I never saw it. I don't know. And Joe Robert Cole wrote two episodes of American Crime Story. <laughs> okay, Bob it's, it is Iger weird to me. Is really into time. Tanahasi Coates. I just. It's just that. super. It's just super weird to me that they wrote an alt right black nationalist mm -hmm. society Wakanda, as like. Wakanda's like guys. legitimately sort of like an evil country in terms of what they do and what they don't do. Right. right. It's it's legitimately like you're you're the secret. They're hoarding uh, their technology. The, yeah, you hoard your technology. All of these insane things that you could do to make the world a better place. You're, right. you're hoarding it from the world and your neighbors as they live in squalor and as Africa starves and succumbs to horrific wars and right. things like that around you. And you're mm -hmm. like, well, that's okay. Not us. Fuck y'all. Well, actually, no, the, the Wakandans are not ethno-nationalists because they don't give a fuck about other black people. They're, they're like their own, they're Wakandian fascist, essentially. Like they're like, we're our own people. Fuck everyone else. Our, our leader is chosen through trial by combat. Well, yeah, right. And then just, the bad guy is an ethno-fascist or an ethno-nationalist because the bad guy wants to actually say like, oh, you should be helping black people everywhere, essentially. So I, the, every character is like kind of fucked up motivationally. Killmonger, yeah, he was an yeah. evil person. Yes. God, that movie's so fucked That movie's up. really shit. Yes. Wow. But listen... It had black people in it, you and it had a high-tech society, so it's a good thing. It's a positive influence. <laughs> racists. Right. Cannot yeah, believe so. you're... You got this it. This is such a hot take. I mean, obviously, Our black super Panther. advanced, culturally, superly advanced, technologically advanced society decides to have a fucking king through trial by combat. Black Panther Academy <laughs> oh, was nominated for seven Academy Awards. You oh fuck Hollywood right in the fucking yeah we it was face. Knew it was gonna Gosh, that's just so insane. I, if I was black, I would be so offended by this fucking. Movie. I would be like, what is this? By black yeah. Panther, yeah. Black God. Panther be nominated for best original score, best production design, best costume design, best picture, best sound mixing, best sound editing. Look at that. Did it win? Like, did it actually win any of these awards, though? I don't know. I don't. Wait. It didn't deserve to. Did it win Best Picture? Like, no way. Didn't they make one up for it? Like the movie that people really liked the most, and that just was like became its own category, or that something like that. I don't know. I don't really. Um. Know. It says Academy Awards. Black Panther. Maybe it won all these awards. No. I'm it, 
I'm inclined to believe that these were just nominations, but probably. Yeah. Academy Award Best for Best No, Picture. the Green Book won in 2019. Okay, the other, good. The Thank other you. movie about black okay. people. But it was nominated. It was nominated. They would have Green Book is Green Book's good. They would have totally taken it away if it hadn't God, if there wasn't just if the other black movie hadn't have been in the running. Well, there's also Black Klansman, which was, was eh. That was nominated too. Eh, yeah. I don't even think that deserved to be nominated. But I, you're right. It was 2019, right? This is when yeah, 2019. BLM stuff is going on. So you guys Whatever. don't even. And here you're making fun of a, a six time Academy Award nominee <laughs> movie. Okay. Jeez, that and does, now, yeah, that Rags, you're laughing. Rags, yes. you're laughing. Rags, you're laughing. You're laughing. I would never laugh. This is this is what this is what we mean by sacred. You're not supposed to laugh at this shit. The heart okay? of Africa, blood and soil, Wakanda. Is that what you mean? This is sacred. Oh, yeah, blood and soil, Wakanda forever. <laughs> this is sacred. Yeah. You guys are just laughing. God, I make so no claims. Bad. All right, let's get back to this video. This piece of shit video. Black God, Panther so, won three it. Oscars. So it did win three of these. Don't depress me further, please. Uh, what were they for, though? Best sound mixing? Shittiest movie. Can you imagine? Uh, costume Mom. design. Oh, that's horrible. I hate the costumes in Black Costumes Panther. were terrible and yeah. offensive. Right. Wow. Uh, it was the first African-American woman to win in that category. Well, there you go. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh man. It also won for best production design. I don't know exactly what that means. Production design is the it's the design of the production. Come yeah. On. Okay. Jeez, it's so pretty, easy. Yeah, pretty obvious what that means. It didn't say what. Well, the it means like was. the sets and stuff. Production design is kind of an overarching term for all the artistic. This article and only. Things. The article doesn't want to tell me what the third Oscar was because it was not to a black woman. I'm not even joking. really. Best I'm original score. Joking. They're like, white dude, we're writing it out. <laughs> oh, there's, is that it? There's no way we're... Well, I don't know, but... I mean, I'm just looking at the things it was nominated for. It won... Oh, yeah, you're right, score. And you're right, it was a fucking white Swedish guy. The article doesn't tell you because it was a white Swedish guy. Oh, my fucking God. Racism is alive fucking and well. Fucking hell. Yeah, it's just oh, a diff... Racism has transformed... Fuck anyway, off. We're not you're not allowed to say that. So let's fuck off. Let's get back to this terrible this video is making me so angry. It didn't make me angry the first time I watched it, but now I really do. I feel like mm. not only is it spreading misinformation in the world. I mean, I can't really even understand the information. It's spreading. I mean, Black Panther did win best movie in the BET Awards. <laughs> of course. I often want to know what black entertainment television <laughs> has uh -huh. decided the best movie will be. Was there ever any question that black entertainment television was going to not get Black Panther the best movie? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's other black movies, right? Like that were yeah, important. No, I mean, one. I said the Green Book won the fucking Oscar in 2019. So, geez, come on. Bill promising to be a better ally and announced that the company was pausing political donations in Florida. Yet, concurrently, queer picks are- Oh, did you see how horribly disingenuous that was? Did, he didn't just say that they were pausing political donations in Florida. They they denounced the Don't Say Gay bill, the parental rights and education bill. Specifically, he left that out. Mm -hmm. What an asshole. Star workers published a statement claiming that Disney higher-ups insisted they cut nearly every moment of overtly gay affection in their films, suggesting the company's allyship remains suspect. And this is hardly the first of Disney's suspect, suspect. he says, suspect. I know. When I the know. chips are actually down, when they actually have something to potentially lose, they will not do it. Right. Yeah. Sus. Right. Sus. Right. Yes. sus. Super sus political affiliations. They've also funded business groups who actively fight climate change legislation. And a recent report found that 69% of their political donations nice. went to anti-abortion politicians. <gasps> it's rainbow oh capitalism at its most insidious. Or take the time- I'm glad for all this stuff, because this is, this is gonna be the wake up call for corporations to not be woke. Because they're like, nothing they do will ever satisfy these fucking people. 
Of course, it's just going to hurt them. It's just going to hurt them in the long run. Of course run. not. Yeah. And I think they're learning that now. They are. Yeah, they're yeah. growing a spine. Well, I'm growing a spine. They're just saying all this woke shit's hurting our bottom line. <laughs> okay. Well, they're not like standing please up them anyway. So. Accru- yeah, we can't please these people. It's not accruing in a benefit, and it's actually hurting us. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take someone to enter the Disney sphere and do a Star Wars or Marvel movie that's just like classic, you know, get rid of all the woke shit, just classic, you know, hero story. And it does very successful. And then it's all going to be like, oh, look. It's <laughs> like Tom Cruise movie that's making all that uh, mm-hmm. you know, money. Everyone's right. really, really loving it. It's just sort of like a classic action movie sort of thing I hear. I haven't seen it, but. I mean, it's going to, I mean, there's still, isn't, isn't phase five going to have a Riri Johnson Iron Man TV yeah, show or something Iron horrible Heart. like that? Yes. Ooh, ouch. All the, all that stuff. It looks First like all, an absolute fucking mess. I, I, I don't think you're a good writer if you're naming your character Riri because right, that has yeah. a different connotation. I think yeah. that's the actress, right? Riri Williams? No, isn't that the character's name? Riri Williams is, um, is it? Ironheart. Ironheart. Oh, okay. It is the character. Okay. Yeah, no, it's Riri. Yeah, it's just, Riri. that's a bad name for a character. Right. That is a really bad Riri. name. I wouldn't yeah. name my kid Riri. Yeah. We all know what Riri's are, right? She'll be better than Ironheart, than Iron Man in every way, I'm sure. I'm sure you've seen that famous comic book panel. I don't know if Adam has seen it. Of, uh, I think it was one of the first Riri Ironheart comics where she stands up in class, this little black girl, and she's like berating her teacher for not being racist. She's like, if you were racist against me, like I could fight, like I'd be motivated to prove you wrong. And the teacher's like, I'm sorry, like I'm not going to tell you like you can't do it yeah like this is like not, i don't think i have seen oh this. my god it's incredible I incredibly I bad it. it sounds yes like... yes like she Let's wants see. the teacher to be a racist and the teacher won't tell her that she can't do things and the teacher's like I'm not gonna, like you know what current year it is like come right. on so and why is she upset about this She's like, I'm going to treat you equally. Like you can excel. And she's like, Ah, how dare you? Oh, I, I need found microaggressions. It, yeah. I feed she off says, microaggressions. Okay, they're doing a like a like. What will you be when you grow up? Send it to and me. She's I'll like, bring it up. There it is. Yeah. Come on, we all want to share in this. Okay, I'll send it to you. Adam. This tr- absolute train wreck. The train. Oh, look at this. Look at. Oh, yeah. Here it is. So. <laughs> all right. So it says Chicago years ago. And Riri says, Hi. This is quiet time, Mrs. Williams. Oh, okay. So it's even worse. It's supposed to be quiet time. And Riri's like, Fuck you. I want everyone to listen to me. She says, I wanted you to know that I decided what I will be when I grow up. Okay, so she's already bucking the system, right? Fuck the rules. Teacher says, let's hear it. Riri says, I'm going to be a scientist. Great. Great? That's great. No, no, no. You're supposed to say, don't you mean like a nurse? And then I say, and the teacher says, wait a minute. Why would I say that? Riri says, you're supposed to tell me nursing and teaching are noble professions and that people like me don't get to grow up to be scientists. <laughs> the, I think the teacher is white. But I'm not sure. Says, Looks why like would it. I? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. In some of the panels, she doesn't look white, so I'm not familiar. But anyway, teacher says, why would I do that? And then Riri says, that's what they said to the first African American female astronaut. Oh my! Well, God. that was a long time ago, and she told them, no, I'm going to be a scientist, and then she did it. And the teacher says, yes, that was a long time ago. Things were different back then. Like, because of people like her, a girl like you can do whatever you want. Fly anywhere you want and be anyone you want. And then Riri says, I was kind of hoping you'd tell me the opposite so I would have something to inspire me to prove you wrong. Oh, that's so sad. Who wrote this in a fucking comic and thought this was good? That's so sad. I'm this glad makes... that in our origin story for a hero, I want her to just fail and... I hate her. Wait, is this a real comic? Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, look, who, look who it is! Oh my god! Do yeah, this is a return. real comic. Yeah. Okay. I read the the comics here. Can I post it in the um, Zoom chat or something? 
Uh, sure. I, have a chat? I can just send. Oh, okay. I could just send it to Doomer. But... Yeah, send it to Doomer. Is she is she like a gender swap Spider Man? Spider Man. No, Man. She's the new Iron I Man. She was Her a name is she's Iron Man. Swapped Iron Man. Are you yeah. No, Iron yeah, Heart. she's she's little black girl Iron Man. Yeah. Except she's gonna be way better than Tony Stark right. in every way, and so much smarter, and so much. Just imagine how good she would have been if the teacher lied to her. Though. But this is insane. Like, what made people like Robert Downey Jr.'s <laughs> Iron Man is that he's like a complete fucking like like fuck up as a person like he's like a super genius but he's always like personal <laughs> problems and personality flaws like and is this girl just is going to be like a, a girl boss she's gonna have none, none of the charm none of the flaws that made tony like, it's like all the person. other female characters they add yes. in they're just going to be these insufferable fucking cunts that i hate okay so wait let me finish the comic so the teacher says why, why do Sorry. people call you all right <laughs> what is that no that that they call me sexist for that <laughs> the teacher says sorry i can't help you and then the panel is just the little Riri, the little Riri, staring angrily at the teacher. And the teacher finally gives in to the stare and says, okay, you'll never be Tony Stark. And then finally Riri is motivated to say, I'm totally going to be Tony Stark, except for the weird facial hair. I mean, think about how pathetic of a superhero origin this is so other super almost every other superhero they have some like tragic thing happens to them right like you know uncle ben dies iron man realizes his weapons are being sold you know being sold to like the enemy and he gets you know kidnapped you know uh dr strange in the movie gets in a horrible car accident like all these heroes they Um, like go through some traumatic experience and that's what kind of like puts them on the path of being hero riri johnson is so devoid of actual conflict in her life. She has to manufacture conflict in order to motivate her God, to be a so... fucking superhero. This didn't, says didn't everything they... about social justice warriors. Yes. Didn't they reuse the same panel three times? They sure did. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that saves money. Right. They zoomed in on one of them, so, you know. Well, two of them. It's the, you, have, you have the first, and then they zoom in a little bit, and then they zoom in... I think the second and third Ooh, is the same. The second zoom. and third are the same. Yeah. yeah wow. They didn't even zoom in more. They didn't even zoom in more. Yeah. Right. Who fucking wrote this and thought this? Unless this is supposed to be like a joke on wokeness and this character, this character flaw of the characters that they're horribly woke, which I doubt it. Like th- this is a horrible, horrible writing. Like to be honest, like I could totally get down with a little black girl Iron Man, but this writing is the like, actual dog shit. Sure, it's I really could get down with little gonna be, black yeah, girl any character. It's because it's like, not going to yeah. be a character. It's going to be right. some. It's going to be like all the other female characters, like Captain Marvel and everything, where they're just these bitches, and they're <laughs> just nasty, and they're so they're just so cocksure about everything, and everyone tells them how amazing they are, right? And there's no character journey. They don't have to learn anything. They don't have a failure they have to overcome, and it's just like ugh. No, that, that reminds me of like Luke Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember when when Luke Skywalker had to had to uh, go to Obi Wan Kenobi and say, "Tell me I can't be a Jedi. Tell me I can't be a Jedi." And Obi Wan's like, "Your parents are dead and smoldering. Luke. Do I don't I know what you're you talking about." Jedi. That's the whole. Yeah, you, you have to kill Darth Vader. Like, or, tell me you, I can't kill Darth your uncle Vader. and aunt are they now like listen. smoldering ash. Okay, we need to get out of here. What are you talking about? We need to leave. Listen, listen, Luke. We have a diversity quota right now. Okay, we have too many white men on the council. Right. I have to, don't, don't do you have know any, any black you. girls who could kill Darth Vader instead of you? <laughs> you know, when you were a corn, Adam, I'm shocked that you didn't go for a pickle Rick joke. We were talking about Rick and Morty so much. You missed the perfect joke opportunity. She'd be There's like, Sitch, pickle. God, it is Sitch! Guys, I turned myself into corn! <laughs> Guys, it's one in the morning for me. I've been doing this. Two in the morning. Eight. Yeah. I, you can't go. I, I We're can. having so much fun, Rags. We Jeez, are. Dude. I know. That's that's why I just looked. And oh, my it's God. tomorrow already. Yes. It's one in the morning. Yes. And I we invite you on. Anymore. You barely come on for 15 minutes. You're just you're here and you're out of here. I, know, I look down so expecting, sad. like, oh, it's probably like 9 or 10. It's like, no, it's, it's yeah. fucking tomorrow already. Yeah. It's the new day. It's, it's one in the morning. Day. Well, I guess. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm going to pop off and head out, and I'm going to I, I gotta go do some stuff before I sleep a bit. I guess. Thanks for on. having me on. Yeah, of thanks course. For thanks on. for coming, Rags. Immensely Always welcome. Always welcome. Hi, Rags. Yeah. Hello. 
Um, <laughs> bye, Rags. I also must, I must, oh, hi. Um, I have to say. No, I said bye. Bye, bye, Rags. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. Let's see you later, everybody. Toodaloo. Take care. Thanks for coming, Rags. Where's the, oh, there's a leave button. There's a leave button. Get out. I just, like I guy, can't. You know that guy's like a Nazi, right? <laughs> He did, you know, I didn't want to say it while he was on, but uh, this whole time he was talking, I just got, like, some vibes, man. Some vibing. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, I'm there's, still, something I, there's something wrong with that dog. I can't believe Adam missed the fucking Pickle Rick joke. The obvious Pickle Rick joke. That would have been hilarious. Nah, I think you're okay. overestimating how cool okay. it would have been. Okay. In 2013, as Disney was developing the movie Coco, when they tried to trademark the phrase Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> this was part of Disney's gargantuan merchandising machine, which dates back okay. to 1937. Oh, can you like catch me up? Let's bring on this cringe video. Uh, it turned out that the whole video is about false consciousness and they're just happy. They're just unhappy that Disney makes people happy and thus preventing them from, you know, revolting against that capitalism. That makes perfect sense. Yes. That makes absolute perfect sense. It actually okay. that's that's the key that's tying this all together. Wait, how does that how does that relate to religion though? Uh it doesn't. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Strong argument. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Evan Snow White. You, you heard that right. In the lead up to the release of their groundbreaking celebration of Mexican culture, Disney tried to actively snatch the name of a sacred tradition out of the hands of the Mexican people across <laughs> multiple media platforms. It's not good, team. It's not good. What's more, the values espoused in Disney films over the years can leave a foul taste in the mouth of a more progressive culture. From So wait, wait. The whole point of Pinocchio smoking the cigar is that he's fucking up. He's doing the bad thing. It's not promoting that. Right. When he's like with all the kids that turn into donkeys, right? Okay. Okay. Blatant I don't races know, I and tired it. tropes of princesses being rescued by princes. Oh. Disney has long been a protector of white heteronormative ideology. Oh, <laughs> Much of the oh fantasy no. No. It's the white heteronormative stuff that always is. It's always bad news when they start talking about white. Oh, God. What, Sitch, what did you do? Who the, the bad guy in Pocahontas is literally the fucking the white guy. The guy, you know, remember the song? Savages, savages, barely even human. That's the bad guy. That song is a fucking banger, by the way. First of all, that song is a banger, by the way. But secondly, Pocahontas is a great movie. That is not true. But you, uh, oh, what a surprise! Such has a garbage media take. Pocahontas Shocking. is one of the worst ones. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you fucking you're a simp for romance shit. So you're like, oh, the romance between Johnson. Yeah, it's and fucking Pocahontas. based. Oh. Colors of the Colors of the Wind fucking slaps. Okay. Oh my, get out! You don't like oh. Colors of the Wind? Jeez, no, I'm Christ. far too edgy and male. My Y chromosome is far too wide. Yeah, why do you like all the these the romance women? movies, Doomer? Okay. It's kind of weird. Because they're awesome. Wow. Ro like, if, if you're interested in, like, character relationships and, like, characters and stuff, romance is the best way to explore it on film. It's just unfortunate that most that romance movies are dog shit. All the plot of romance movies is just the woman <clears throat> picking the correct man, though. I mean, it's not. it doesn't really even have anything for men. True. Well, it's, that is not always true but look it's it's hard to it's hard <laughs> to defend not romance. always <laughs> true not always 90 percent of the time it's true though okay you're look you're not wrong i'm not okay Wait, let's be clear let's be clear about what i am and what i'm yes. not saying okay okay what do you I say? am not i am not saying that the average romance movie is good in fact i will right. go much further and say that almost all romance is unwatchable dog shit wait okay? a minute Almost in the romance it. movies that you like, Doomer, is it wishful thinking? Are you, are you, you wish you were the woman? Makes are, up the, 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 look, we already talked about the POV question. I would yes. absolutely see it from the woman's POV. Okay. Oh, so, yes. okay. You were, you weren't joking. Absolutely. You said that. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. We're learning all sorts of things today. It all mm -hmm. makes sense now. Uh, no one can see that, Adam. I don't know if you, I don't know if that's what you want or not. But. I'm pretty sure that's not what he wants. Adam, do you change your OBS setting. <laughs> I think, I think, I think it's better that no one can see this. Of course, it's, yeah. I, it's, it's it's funny. It's funny that I said, "Sitch, what did you do?" And nobody in chat knows what's going on. I I when you they said that, I'm exposed. like, "What are you talking about?" And then I oh, 
<laughs> I look at the zoom. So that makes it so appealing coming from a longing for an imagined past of greater simplicity. Despite Disney's attempts to keep its nostalgia apolitical, there's nonetheless a deeply political tinge to its evocation of a better time. Especially when you remember that in this romanticized past- All the fucking recent Disney movies are like, girl bosses, don't tell me what to do. Girls can be powerful, empowered characters. Too. Like, how yeah, is this he's not citing an to, any of like, those. How is this an appeal to an older, simpler time? Like, what the fuck he's talking about? The only, the only reason that movies don't have like way more minorities than women is like China. That's like the biggest reason is the international market, in particular well, yeah. China. Well, there you go. Fucking it's Chinese. Not, it's not that like Disney hates women or something. <laughs> That's rags. Right. That is true. That is rags. <laughs> Past, many minority groups experienced profound discrimination. And while Disney is certainly because of getting Pocahontas, the movie, what? Wait, what did they say? This Who, freeze frame discrimination. They said people were just experiencing discrimination, and they had Pocahontas. I mean, this is like them talking about the. Does Pocahontas pass the Bechdel test? Uh, I don't. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I don't actually know. <laughs> no way. This this freeze frame makes me never want to see this fucking movie in my life. <clears throat> Look at this. Oh, turning red. Yes. Look at this. Oh right, my, my, my my girlfriend's asleep, so you're not wrong. Okay. <laughs> oh, she a big turning red it's fan. Not, it's not good. I don't know. I think she likes it. Isn't that the movie where like <clears throat> people are basically paying to see her have her period? metaphorically i i didn't pick up on the period metaphor we were I, I was watching it with like ct and some people and we were just mm -hmm. roasting it okay <clears throat> so i honestly didn't catch in all the plot but there was a, a hefty amount of cringe in the movie mm. what is the plot? apparently it's um uh, she gets her period and turns into a raccoon a red panda what yeah that's a movie yeah at the disney it's a, movie. it's a it's a pixar movie yes <clears throat> there's a pixar movie about a girl getting her first period well no it's like as she's it's, it's like a metaphor as she's at the age at which you go through puberty she's becoming a red panda when she was like right she can't control her emotions or something she becomes a red panda mm -hmm. wow. it's all like a, a metaphor for puberty which is why it's weird because there's scenes of like kids paying money to see the panda which is like mm. <laughs> Oh, oh right. Little, yeah, how do, uh, how does that work into the allegory? Yeah. Yeah, that makes the allegory a little fucking weird. <laughs> but okay. Better wow. about depicting more diverse stories. It's hard to outrun its legacy, especially when those foundational films and park attractions remain so popular. So it looks like Disney has successfully used aspects of religion to maintain its cultural power, but that doesn't mean that it's intentionally built a religion. At the same time. It's the epitome of a capitalist institution and has always been most loyal to the creed of maximizing profit. Who the fuck? What kind of fucking insane person is going to spend $13 on an Eternals cup? Holy shit. Talk about those are not even worth the money that it took to make, you know, that cup. Right. Who's going to buy any Eternals merchandise? <clears throat> Did anybody see the movie? I don't think so. <laughs> That's Offense. hilarious. Yeah. I so I what does. exactly does that make it? That question, like the historic relationship between capitalism and religion in America, is more complicated than you might think. Dating back to the oh 16th God. century Christian missionaries who accompanied gold-hungry explorers on their excursions to the New World. Religious scholar Robert Lawrence Moore argues that religion has evolved alongside mass consumer culture out of necessity, increasingly commodifying along the way. He writes that religious influences established themselves in the forms of commercial culture that emerged in the 19th century turning the United States into a flowering Eden of leisure industries by the middle of the 20th. I mean, religion has literally always done that. If you go back and you look at like old, this is, that's why I hate all these fucking cultural criticisms. If you go, you can go back to like the 1500s and you can read, you know, people bitching about the culture and it's literally everything that people are bitching about now. They're bitching about 500 years ago. This, this is why, like, this is why me and a lot of other people get annoyed when people talk about themes in um in film because you can just support literally anything you want if you're willing to like make arguments like this sure well yeah. this is so flimsy but that's yeah. why i hate the sort of death of the author bullshit i mean i think you talk about themes if it's like the intention was there 
I think I think where you get into fucking weird territories when you start talking about how there wasn't an intention, but the theme still exists, unless or something. I mean, you can have an un. Actually, I, I take that back. You can have an. The story itself can create an unintentional theme that's kind of fucky, but. So actually, I guess I completely disagree with you, Doomer, on every level. Fuck you. I, yeah, I, I'm shocked that you have a bad take. Okay. I can't believe it. <laughs> Beginning with various sects mass producing extensive religious reading materials, religions expanded their wares by entering radio and theater, and eventually television via televangelists like Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, Pat Robertson, and Jimmy. Fucking Jesus was complaining about this shit in the fucking Bible. He's like, he's like, oh, you're you've made the religion too commercialized. You're like charging all these people to buy animals to sacrifice at the temple. People are standing on pre on street corners to show how virtuous they are by praying to God, you know publicly like this is literally complaints that jesus made two thousand fucking years ago yep oh my god he swaggered they expanded beyond halls of worship into nonprofits, athletic clubs like the ymca social halls and so on he explains that by degrees religion itself took on the shape of a commodity as it looked for ways to appeal to all consumers using the techniques of advertising and publicity at the same time, religious institutions have been notably exempt from some of the governmental regulations and limitations of other markets. Moore notes, Riley, okay. that flashy neon signs promising Jesus saved. I like that we've gone from Disney is a religion. Disney is bad because it's a religion. To religion, to religion is, is capitalism. Bad yeah. Because it's capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This video's all over the place. Yes. Thieves would never get churches in trouble for false advertising. After World War II, commodified religion poured into American culture at an unprecedented rate, and culture responded in like, with a proliferation of Hollywood blockbusters based on biblical stories. Around this time, America saw the beginnings of the megachurch, which according to scholar Scott Thuma, functioned like corporations, with the pastor as the often handsome and handsomely compensated CEO. They brand themselves like corporations too, by offering disparate What does this have to do with Disney? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, nothing. I feel like I'm losing my mind. I don't understand anything I've seen since I came back. What does this have to do with Disney? Nothing. It was it Disney is bad because it's a capitalist religion, and religion is bad because it's a capitalist religion? Yeah. Uh, okay. The whole the, the, the aim fun. is that capitalism is bad. Yeah. Well, well, I know that. the The aim is that we're all worshiping at the altar of the Almighty Dollar, even Jesus. Right. How dare he? Performing arts, recreation activities, gyms, even movie theaters. And don't even get us started again on the enormous Christian music scene. And it wasn't just Christianity. From the 60s on, hundreds of New Age religions flourished among free-thinking boomers, <coughs> almost always with economic tie-ins in the form of healing spas, crystals, and radio stations. Oh my God. In this way, as sociology... There, there was a lot of communes that were based on communism, though. I mean, yeah. it wasn't all, all of those hippie, I mean, product placement in the hippie commune. No, not really. Like organic well, farming, maybe. <clears throat> right, right. I'm sure like if you took a poll of the people living on those communes, a disproportionate amount of them were like the new age people he was just attacking. Yeah, anti cap For selling crystals and shit, yeah. Well, just Peter... L. Berger has observed, religious institutions become marketing agencies and the religious traditions become consumer commodities. And a good deal of religious activity comes to be dominated by the logic of market economies. In recent years, as this, this well, completely I, goes for the argument I was making about how anti capitalism is a religion, too. And he's completely yes. commodified it and selling it to his audience. Right. There's, there is way too much text on the screen in this video. I, I realize that's going to sound hypocritical coming from me because you've only seen the Vosh video, but that was very badly edited. This is not how you're supposed to I'm make so Well, this is like, it's a leftist it. meme. It's just all text. It is. It's it's a fucking leftist meme in the video form. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of the typing sound. I never <laughs> want to <laughs> hear that sound again. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch Sitch's videos. Well, I mean, I guess you don't have to use them. Yeah, videos. there you go. Yeah. Listen, I've solved that problem. It. Okay. You don't, does Sitch overuse a typing sound? I feel I like he doesn't. I did not know. Yeah. I take Ad Adam was the one who's like, Sitch, stop making the music constant in your videos. And I was like, that's a good critique, Adam. This constant music in this video, just, it's so annoying. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. You should use music to punctuate things. Exactly. Yeah, right. yeah. This, there's nothing to punctuate in this video, though. It's just like a vomit of script onto you. 
Yeah, well, that's true. As Missouri it's like, it's like a, note. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's like a bunch of red herrings. It's like, well, Disney's a capitalist religion. Like, did you know that, like, there's religions that, like, make money? Like, that totally shows that Disney, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> It's completely unrelated. It's like schizophrenic. The line between religious activities and commercial activities has become increasingly blurry. With unexpected crossovers between the two realms and everything from Christian MLMs to Jewish dating sites. Increasingly, what? people like the fourth best. Wait, what? What? Religion's becoming commodified because there's Jewish dating websites? How is that? That's the op. How is that commodifying anything? Sitch, Sitch, I don't think he wants your people to meet each other. Yeah, what if Jews want to hook up with other Jews? Okay, right. what if, you know, there's like there's not very many of us. It's practical. You need you need an oasis in the diaspora, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hollywood Chris will identify not as religious but as spiritual, a term that is inherently looser and can be conducive to a sort of grab bag approach to spirituality. Oh, like, you mean like the loose definitions you're using with your grab bag <laughs> approach to arguments? <laughs> you dumb fuck. Yeah, perfect. And he's just, listen, he's just saying that to have the broadest appeal possible. He's, he's a pretty religious guy, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Yep. Mazur and Coda concur. Writing of Disney, they have entered the market at a time when many people are not only searching for alternatives to traditional religion, but are also flexible with what they find. Wait, it is fruitless to suggest that Disney is the same as a traditional religion? Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> or that it's consciously designing its business for religious competition. The first claim would be foolish to make, the second possible to prove. Disney products fill many of the roles often filled by religion. They have entered the market at a time when people are not only searching for alternative traditional religion, but are flexible with what they find. Well, first of all, it doesn't even make sense. Disney products have been in the market for yeah. like 80 fucking years. I don't, what is he, I mean, what are they talking about? I mean, it, like, isn't the, it, isn't the time frame, like, from the death of Nietzsche to, like, now? Oh, like, is that how far back we're going? <laughs> we're gonna, it's, like a, it's like 100 years. I mean, I or guess like if 60, we start at, like, the Enlightenment the, era, like, I guess, then, yeah. At the very okay, least, like, 60. Decline. Okay. I don't know, like. 1923, Disney started the car first cartoon studio. I mean, like, you can just, you can just think about, like, how many things does does this apply to? Is it just Disney or is it like literally everything? Literally everything. Yeah. Well, how many people do we really think in America are using Disney products to sublimate for religion? I mean, it's got to be nobody. Like Zero point one percent of the population. It's it's nobody. Be minuscule amount of people. Unless there's something about Drake and Josh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I just, this is so, this is like completely over, this is all sophistry. This is all just sophistry and over analyzing garbage. So wait, so what was the timeline here? Was this video posted like immediately following the other video or was this way later after they got pushed back? Who knows? Uh, well, I, I don't know. When... I want to check because it could be, this is like a cope spiral thing. Well, no, th this. No, it was intended well, to be two parts. I don't know when the um, original. It's, it's four days apart. Yeah, this was four days apart, and this is recent. I, I'm saying I don't know when the original podcast was where he said that this inspired this video, or the, the first video. I don't know when that was. Oh, okay. But. Well, it's, it, this, is, this is a weird, these are weird arguments. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I don't get it. Fine. So maybe the answer ultimately is that Disney is fulfilling functions of religion, such as religious institutions fulfill functions like fun and entertainment that are typically associated with Disney. What? Uh, what? 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 Wait, wait, religious wait, 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 institutions wait, wait, wait. fulfill wait. fun and entertainment? What the? the fuck I was listening. The talking. institution. The institution of Sitch and Adam is now a religion. Yes. Oh, we 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 went over how the Gertz guy's definition made our show a religious institution. <laughs> that definition. <laughs> Why it's so stupid. We gotta back this up because I didn't hear because all yeah. I could concentrate on was the whooshing wipe sounds that were so loud. Disney, they have entered the market at a time when many people are not only searching for alternatives to traditional religion, but are also flexible with what they find. So maybe the answer ultimately is that Disney is fulfilling functions of religion, such You're as so religious loud. institutions fulfill functions like fun and entertainment that are typically associated with Disney. So Disney. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Religious at all. institutions form fun Wait. and entertainment. 
Yeah, if if I if I'm thinking of functions of church, fun and entertainment is no, not at the top of the list. No, of course not. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah, That's learning said, about right? how like your crazy. eternal soul is damned to hell if you do bad do you, things is not fun and entertaining. Yeah. It's like school. I mean, like the like the entertainment part would be like the community aspect where like there's all these people that you like, but it's not the same as like a television program or yeah. something. Right. Exactly. Or going to an amusement park or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is a church fair. I don't know. Like, maybe it's the same. I mean, it's like, how how often would you hear, like, I'm bored. Let's go to church to hang out, you know? No. Yeah. Like, yeah. Never. Never. <laughs> no. Ultimately, is that Disney is fulfilling functions of religion, such as religious institutions fulfill functions like fun and entertainment. Oh, okay, wait. so he does He's say he, he does say religious institutions fulfill functions such as fun entertainment. I'm right. like, we're not crazy. He did say that. Yeah. No, I I said that the first time. I was okay. like, that's the dumbest fucking thing. That doesn't it make any insane. sense. Yeah. I, that is bizarre. Huge stuff. That are typically associated with Disney. So Disney's not necessarily becoming more like religion. Religion. So Disney's not a religion, like there's almost no comparison at all, but it's becoming more like a religion. So instead of 0.00001%, it's 0.00002%. Like, what well, the no, he's about to say Disney's not becoming a religion. Religion is becoming Disney. Oh, God. Is he bah, about to say that? Bah. <laughs> <laughs> Might just be becoming more like Disney. Say, Whoa. You know, this... bah, bah, bah. My mind just boom. Oh, my oh, God. My God. <laughs> Awful. Oh. So wait, doesn't that mean that this entire premise of all these fucking videos is wrong then? He just proved himself wrong. Disney's not like a religion. Right. Religion is like Disney, man. Yeah. <laughs> Look, words, words are just social constructs. Okay. <sighs> Agua? <laughs> it can mean whatever I want. Okay. Yeah, how, is that, I, what sure, was that a meme after the, the Agua debate? Was there a, a Vosh on Thanos saying words can mean whatever I want them to mean? Oh, I, I'm not aware of the new Vosh drama. What happened? No, no. You know, the, the, the water debate that Vosh had. More like really? I'm not aware of the water debate. What was the Vosh, water debate? It was like months ago. Vosh debated some guy on modern day debate about transgender issues. Right. He and they were, oh, the they were out. they're debating whether like the word woman means something. And so the guy who's a philosophy professor was like, well, when I say water, you know, we all, you know, it means something. And Vosh's argument was like, no. Water doesn't mean anything inherently because in Mexico they call it agua. <laughs> that, that was his big brain Wait, take. Are you serious? I am 100% Dead serious. serious. Yeah. Wow. That's a pretty bad argument, even for Vosh. Oh, it My was. God. It was. And he didn't well, even like pronounce it's, the aqua. It's aqua, right? It's, it's not a signifier because there are different signifiers. He's in like different aqua. languages. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, he's confusing idea. the symbol for Holy the shit. thing for the thing itself. Yes. Yeah. So as I'm just saying, there's I'm I'd be shocked if there wasn't a Vosh beam of him on Thanos saying words can mean whatever I want them to mean <laughs> with the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> yeah. More like religion. Religion might just be becoming more like Disney. And nowhere is this bizarre paradox more apparent than at one of the country's many Jesus-themed parks. But then again, maybe we shouldn't see this. Wait. Does a is that real? What? Jesus themed parks? I'm sure it Wait, is. Wait, they mean Jesus themed Disney parks? No. Jesus I know themed there's parks. like the the only the only religious theme park I can think of. There's one I think there's it's one in Orlando. Orlando. It's like Holy in Orlando or and it's um it's like a creationist theme park. Right. Yeah. They teach Let's, they have like, Google Christian theme parks and see what comes up. They have like um dinosaurs living along people, like dioramas. I don't think they have I don't think they have like rides or anything though. I could be wrong, but Okay, that apparently happens, there's right? six. Christian yeah, I feel like theme there are. park. But like okay. The Holy Land experience. Yeah, there's Holy like Land, the Ark Encounter. <laughs> okay. Oh god, Heritage USA. That sounds like you're gonna get fucking killed. Oh, Her Heritage USA. That's is that the name oh, right, of the, the city? Cre the Creation Museum. I don't know. It's apparently a park or something. Where's Six Christian amusement there? parks and the crazy attractions that actually exist. Heritage USA has water slides. Oh, there you go. They have water slides. Um. Uh, uh, excuse me. Agua slides. Oh, I apologize. Anyways.
This is strange at all, because capitalism as an economic theory has actually never been totally free from religion. Philosopher Walter Benjamin famous uh, <laughs> Capitalism as an economic philosophy. Look at that. I just hate these weasel words like, well, it's never been totally free. Like, what the fuck does that mean, dude? It doesn't mean anything. Fuck. Famously said that a religion may be discerned in capitalism. That is to say, capitalism serves essentially to ally the same anxieties, torments, and disturbances to which the so-called religions offered answers. Wait. That's such bullshit. Wait, if that was true, wouldn't that mean that capitalism is good? Because it's like trying, like, if capitalism could serve the same aims of religion, wouldn't that make capitalism better? It doesn't. Though. Yes, but you're thinking about this like a liberal. Okay, you're not thinking <laughs> about this like a false consciousness communist. Mm. Because they're saying that that capitalism serves. Because I guess what is not being said here is that capitalism serves to to get rid of the same anxieties and torments that would make people, you know, revolt. Because we need we need those humans. We need those anxieties to get the revolution. Okay. Kind of yes. Enough. Right. That's why he says the so-called religions offer answers. Those are false answers. That's the false consciousness. You're, you're, you're so-called religions. Basically <laughs> means that capitalism isn't just an economic system, but a set of beliefs that aims to offer meaning and purpose to modern life. But rather than offering the hope. So now he's conflated capitalism. First of all, capitalism doesn't. Provide it's idiotic. Meaning. Yeah, it doesn't provide I don't meaning. buy any of like, this. There are morals associated with capitalism. I like tell you how to like are conduct there? business. Of course, are property there? rights. Property rights. Oh, okay, property rights. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, one. there there are morals that are in in capitalism. You shouldn't. You know, capitalism says you know don't fucking steal people. You know, don't steal. Don't you know kill people. I mean, blah, but there blah, was blah, blah, blah. a time when property rights extended to like owning people. <laughs> sure. I mean, sure. Right. Yeah. The good old days. No, the battle days. <laughs> you know, that's, Doomer. I heard someone said to me the other day, they said, they said, you know, sometimes, Sitch, you have like a Nazi on your program. And I'm like, Rags? And they're like, no, 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 the other furry. Right. I'm like, oh, Doomer. Yeah. Guilty. Peace and justice, <laughs> often promised by religion, according to Benjamin, capitalism is a religion which offers us not the reform of existence, but its complete destruction. It is the expansion of despair until despair becomes a religious state of the world in the hope that this will lead to salvation. God, I'm so sick of that ticker sound. <laughs> Wait, what was this guy? What was this fucking... How, this guy had to be a communist. This is the most communist bullshit I've ever heard. Capitalism is a religion which does not offer reform, but the complete destruction. I know, it's so... <laughs> This well, is this straight up nihilism. Modern life. But rather than offering the... Basically means that capitalism isn't just an economic system, but a set of beliefs that aims to offer meaning and purpose to modern life. But rather... I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's it not claims to offer meaning and purpose to life. No. No. Capitalism no. May, it gives you the resources to move up in the world. Rather than offering the hope, peace, and justice often promised by religion... According to Benjamin, capitalism is a religion which Benamine. offers us. What was this? <clears throat> Who the fuck is this guy? Benjamin? What was first he doesn't name? want to put his name up because he knows, okay, by now they're Googling and they're on to me. It might as well be Benadryl. Because he put me to sleep. Why is he oh. put the dots in? He doesn't even want to put capitalism on the screen. He doesn't want anyone screenshotting it. Because it's Capital obviously, no, it's because it's a, he, it's a, uh, he didn't, it's not the direct quote. He, you know, he took oh, it he's from paraphrasing. He's paraphrasing. So yeah, he's not even word. talking about capitalism. He made well, no, that like, part up. Well, it would be like it, you would put like if you were to attribute it correctly. If he was talking about capitalism, you'd put capitalism in like the parentheses. You know, right at the beginning of. But he says something like market economies or something like that. Maybe he's, yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can find the quote. Is a religion which not offers not the reform of existence, not the reform of existence, but its complete destruction. But its complete destruction. You hear that? Capitalism is about complete destruction. It is the expansion of despair until despair becomes a religious state of the world in the hope that this will lead to salvation. <laughs> in this context, that's, gotta, that's some way commie shit. 
Yeah. Capitalism called? leads to despair in the hope that <clears throat> despair takes this over the world. Salvation. Fear <laughs> leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads this to capitalism. Lead to salvation. <laughs> okay, is a religion? Let me let me type this in. Is, is a, a religion, religion which offers not the reform of existence, but the complete destruction. That should be enough. Come on. Hit the Google button. Yeah. It is Capitalism as a, as a religion. Okay. There you go. Who is this? Benjamin, 1921. Oh, wow. Nothing's changed since 1921. I'm glad. I'm communist. Glad we'll... This is from the commu communistwordpress.com. Oh, nice. Wait, really? Uh, yes. <laughs> Capitalism is entirely without precedent in that it is a religion which offers not the reform of existence, but it's complete this destruction. destruction. <clears throat> right. It is the expansion of despair until despair becomes a religious state of the world in the hopes that this will lead to salvation. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> How does capitalism offer the, dis the expansion of despair until like what? Look, going the destruction to work of existence? is depressing, Doomer. Okay. Yeah, Look. it would be a lot better if we all just didn't have food and the starve to death. Until yeah, yeah. When you're when you're dealing with hunger, you're like, man, I wish I could go to work. It'd be nice to have a job right now. Does this guy not have a last name? What the fuck? No, he's just he just calls himself Prince. <laughs> well, I mean, whenever people they say like this this article on him is called "Taking Benjamin Seriously," right? And it just says reading Benjamin. Like, what's this? Does he not have a last name? In this what context, oh, it's his name's Carl kinds Benjamin. Profit driven institution. Hold on, come on. Let's hear a little more of his argument. You can't find any Benjamin stuff. I, I gotta, I gotta know about this fucking Tommy guy that he just quoted. I can't, no, his, this his name so is Carl Benjamin. He's got a YouTube channel. There you go. Could be seen as doing something similar, i.e., offering their own solutions to problems previously thought to be the realm of religion. Whether you're preserving your Hello Kitty lunchbox behind a wall of glass, or worshiping at the altar of your favorite CrossFit instructor, praying with your okay. Just to be clear, at some point, religion has sir, religion has tried to answer basically any problem conceivable in human existence. That doesn't mean that anything else that's trying to address any form of problem is now entering into the realm of yeah, religion. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that is absurd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Model hot pastor in an evangelical megachurch, or spending your whole paycheck at Disney's Animal Kingdom, which, why? It's the saddest place in the world because it's like a zoo, but there's there's no way they're taking care of it the same way you would take care of a zoo. It's really, it makes me feel bad. Don't go to Animal Kingdom. No matter what, just about every major institution you're engaging with is inevitably shining their lights towards the goodness of our one true God, capital. And as for Disney adults, See? are they part of a religion? Nah, not by our estimations. But are they an excellent example of the porousness between consumerism and spirituality that characterizes this moment in time? Almost certainly, but the porousness between consumerism and religion. Hmm. I, I mean, any process that is, I mean, I can see how, you know, churches competing for members is somewhat like, you know, capitalist companies competing for customers. There is a similarity there, but I I think just structurally, it's similar. I, mean, I don't think it's like. I mean, historically, the religion and consumerism are kind of like antithetical to one another. I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is actually one of the innovations of, you know, separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. I mean, would he rather have like a state religion where you know the state comes in and says? America is Christian. Fuck off if you're anything else. Or would you rather have a bunch of, you know, free forming churches competing for members? I feel like when you have the situation where people have to compete for for membership, then they can't really get too nasty because everyone will be look at what what's the nastiest church everyone talks about? the Westboro Baptist Church, right? I think it's right. like fucking eight members. 
Like nobody wants to be a part of that church. You have to be born into that church. These mega churches, I mean, they're obviously they're getting people in because people like the message and feel it's uplifting or whatever. That's a better scenario. So, but obviously, all of this is offensive to him because. How did you guys communism. find this video? This Blep. is like maybe the dumbest Blep video. sent this to us. Blep we? recommended Blep's, it. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course, obviously. She's a regular this is, subscriber. This video is so fucking bad. She's what are you regular. trying to say? <laughs> this video is so bad. This might be the dumbest video you guys have ever watched, which is... That's no, no, that's not what true. What was dumber than this? I'm just fucking... I'm sure this is some Hassan video, some Flash video that's dumber than this. What is his perfect know. society? Communist society? collectively owned property that's his heaven <laughs> who knows chat what I, is the, i don't know what is the dumbest video we've ever watched on the show i'm sure chat yeah. has a better uh, rem, better memory of this than uh, i do this is pretty dumb this might be in the top 10 this is pretty dumb this is and it's dumb. just completely incoherent I f everything he's saying is like it's not adding up to anything which is super frustrating well, it's like it's going in circles. It's making a really bad argument. It's not entertaining. It's badly edited. It's just a fucking train wreck. Like, yeah, at least it's fun to watch Fosh have a train wreck. There's nothing fun about this. Yeah. Well, what, 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 yeah. what Vosh is saying is so like unbelievable that it's like, oh, my God. Right. It's like watching someone light themselves on fire. This feels this logically just, incoherent. Yeah, Everything that he's stupid. saying is just. You don't like that argument here? Oh, the shoplift the shoplifting video was pretty fucking dumb. Oh, from Hassan? No, from uh Renegade uh, Cut. Renegade Cuck, yes. He made a <laughs> okay, video about even... why shoplifting is okay. Renegade Cuck. I, I never even saw that one. So Yeah. Um Second Thought has some really f I think Second Thought probably takes the cake for consistently dumb fuck videos. If I were to give a Doomer, you don't watch all our shows start to finish. I'm really I know. I'm disappointed no, to hear I don't. this. I mean, CT I'm says a lot of them. CT says uh the academic agent tomboy Adams video. Oh <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. It's pretty <laughs> okay. dumb. That one is pretty bad. Yes. He's so angry in that video. Uh Hassan's take on Ukraine was so stupid I had to leave the stream. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about that video. Oh, oh yeah, man. there was there was something you guys were watching that was so bad I literally couldn't take it and left. But I think that was a Tuesday stream. Okay, that's good. That's good. What? Our Tuesday streams are fantastic. I'm not right. saying your stream was bad. How like, can you say there's that? A certain, look, you guys aren't paying for my chemo, okay? If you're watching a video that's going <laughs> to literally give me cancer, like, it's just it's in my own self interest. I have to tap out at some point. Right, right. <sighs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Come on, the Sitch and Adam religion is about self-sacrifice, Doomer. I expect you to do better, okay? <laughs> Jeez. Like, what, what would really take the cake? What would, what would, like, really be the crown jewel? The dumbest video you could possibly watch is if Sitch made a video on Inglorious Bastards. That would just be, <laughs> that would just be the fucking chef's, the chef's Look, kiss. Just because you, just because you guy. destroyed your channel on your dumb Django Unchained take oh. doesn't mean... Oh. Doesn't mean you can trick Sitch into destroying mm -hmm. his channel by making a inglorious. I hate inglorious bastards. Yeah, but see, and you should too. Video. I haven't listen. I I haven't like, seen I'll, it. I'll have more substance in, in a year. Okay. A million years. Okay, and I've only seen it once. I would judging on this memory. I don't think there's any like structural problem with the movie. I just right. personally don't like doing that type of story. So I wouldn't make like what would be the video. Oh, this is a good movie. I didn't like it though. But how, like, but how would Doomer, the movie? Like, but how would Doomer make that video? Doomer would make the video. I didn't like it, and you shouldn't either. Otherwise, let you're me a explain bad to you person. why it's a bad movie because I didn't like it. Like, okay, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna do everything in my power to not make videos shitting on stuff. It's like one of my rules. But I do have a you, I do have an okay. Inglorious Bastards video plan. Are you gonna be the Captain it's Christian be, now? Or everything's just gonna be praise. What is? I haven't actually watched Captain Christian's videos. He used to do good videos, but they're all the, they're only positive videos. And then he disappeared. Oh no! no. He has, he I like his thumbnails it. a lot. I, I don't know. He just did something else with his life. Who knows? Right. Yeah. But I mean, he's just really good video editor. Well, there's, I mean, there's like there's basically three archetypes of like film video. There's like reviews, which I just don't care about because I don't watch new movies really. Mm -hmm. um, there's like the angry 
reviews that are like fast paced and like funny, but all the jokes are making fun of how stupid something is. Right. And then there's like this slow, calculated, analytical, calm, like pretentious videos. And like basically what I'm trying to do is make analysis videos that are like fast paced and funny, but positive. That's if you had to that's good. sum it up. That's good. Well, I wish you the best of luck in that endeavor. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anger. I, you know, people like to be angry. Right. Yeah, oh, well, I say, I'm just, the thing is, I, do. I'm just like, I'm just tired of it. Like, I, I personally have no desire to watch videos shitting on movies anymore because I know how bad they are. And it's just not, it's just not interesting. I think it's like really oversaturated. Maybe. There's right. just too many channels making those videos. And it's like, maybe you'll be oh, like the, the guy starting the new trend doomer of like positivity. He's not, that's, oh man. It's not going to, it's not going to be. It's not going to be. giving trend. you the worst advice ever. Wait no, a minute. What the fuck is your name going to be? You have to change your name. It can't be Doomer if it's going to be only positive takes. Doomer I, Media you, is the perfect okay, name you, for first negative of all, takes. Since you already, you, yeah, Doomer Media is the perfect name for negative takes. Since you already know what my name's going to be. Oh right, right. Is it your new name? Yeah, it's my name. Am I allowed That's to say? That's a terrible name. <laughs> don't, don't is it a secret? It. Don't say it yet. Okay. I don't. I don't want to associate it with the with with this uh, with this alias. I mean, another thing is I'm going to try and be very non political. You know, that's a comic book character name, right? You know, it's also like a film thing, right? Yeah. Is it? I don't know what. I only know what it means in the realms of comic. It's it's oh a film. Thing. That's where it comes from. So okay. how do you not know that? I don't know. Okay. I'm an idiot. We've talked about. That. <laughs> I'm just saying. When I heard, I'm like, why is. I didn't know you were like a that kind of. I didn't know you were that character fan from this comic, but okay. I don't read comics. I understand. Maybe you should choose a different <laughs> name because I think a lot of people are going to think that. Uh, I mean, maybe we'll see. Okay. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sold on the name, but name is not the most important thing right now. Right. I'm trying to like figure out editing and shit, which is complicated. I think I people say- are interested in movie reviews that are point out how Hollywood is failing because of wokeness. And that, come, there's there's tons of that but like where's that overdone i i'm not i'm not getting political at all well I'm no it's talk about it's it. it's i don't know that it's <laughs> overdone because i don't know what the market is but the, i do there is a lot of that going on but it, i think it's it's like it's addressing a real issue i it do is, but like, i honestly I don't, think like, i don't watch any of these fucking movies <laughs> They're, I'm not gonna watch. I'm not gonna watch like the new Star Wars TV show. I know it's gonna be bad. So like, why would I watch it? Why don't know, you change your channel name from Doomer Media to Coomer Media? I, that's true. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> such. <laughs> then I could do content like Dev. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Talk about exactly. the dog pill. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> owls aren't birds. Media. That's a good one. That is. That's good actually a good one. Owls aren't birds. I mean, uh, honestly, like, I think that honestly, I think the name is like the least important piece of marketing. Maybe like there's there's I don't know if lots I of people that, with but... like pretty mediocre names. That's true. I have a terrible name. The best Looking names like... say what it is, to be honest with you. So that like would Adam Friendly. Like, uh, yeah, my name's terrible. I, <laughs> I, know. I don't deny it. Yeah. Like I can I can pull up a, a list of names of film YouTubers. I mean, I don't, I don't I think s- any of them have particularly good names. No, not really. They all have weird names now that I think about it. Um, I sent you a meme, Potato. Potato made a meme, made the meme I described very quickly. And it's wonderful. Is so like the Vosh meme? Yes. So the, the only name I like is the Royal Ocean Film Society. And I know that's not even a good name. I just kind of like it. But like, the what? Yeah, I don't know. The Royal Ocean Film Society is the channel I like. But it's like not a particularly good name. No. Like I actually the, hate that name. Yes, yeah, so like I can, I can just, I can read off a bunch of these names. So like, Collative Learning, ER, Filmento, Just Right, Like Stories of Old, Now You See It, Patrick H. Williams, Storytellers, oh. Studio Boomer Binder, Boomer Media, Boomer Media, The Cinema tar- Cartography. Like none of these are good names. Weasel like, takes, Weasel, Weaselly takes. This is from the chat. Stout Media, Weasel, Stout Media. The onerous stout <laughs> hentai reviews from Coomer Media. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll definitely get monetized. <laughs> Make a lot of ad sense <laughs> doing hentai reviews on YouTube. Wow! Thank yeah, you, no. Potato. That is that's exactly what I was envisioning in my mind. 
And I think thumbnails, thumbnails and titles are really important. I don't think the mm-hmm. channel name is super important. Right. You make good content, it'll be fine. Are you gonna are you gonna be a Wojak? No. Okay. CT is mm-hmm. working on my branding right now, actually. Oh wow. How dare you uh I will absolutely hire jack our your editor shit. away. Absolutely. From us. Okay. CT is hey, CT's been my artist for a while, so wow, look at this fucking me, 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 fucking me, me, take her away. Me, me, me. Thought <laughs> theater. Oh, Dr. Diller. Thought theater. That's that's the one. Thought theater. Thought I theater. I mean, I can't I can't use that because Diddler said it. <laughs> or you should be re re reviews. I should okay. be kick doomer. It could be re re. It could be your avatar. The kick you cool. stout about. Wait, you think Filmento is a good name? I don't like Filmento. Yeah, I don't really like that name. It's okay. I mean, it's not like Royal Ocean Society, but it's not bad. I mean, I don't know. Like, just none of these people, none of their names are like, like fucking Dan Olson's folding ideas. Like, I guess oh. Internet Historian's a decent name. That's a good one. Yeah. It actually historian. explains what the fuck it is. Internet Historian's a good name. Yeah, right. it says what it's it like, is. Most people are just like their name, like Johnny Harris or Drew Gooden. Fucking Charlie is Penguin Zero. Like, you forgot the most uh, famous film reviewer of all time. Who? Roberto. Who's Roberto? Filmo Roberto El Diabetoso. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Movie Bob. Who's Movie Bob? How do you, what? The, what? How do you not know who Movie Bob is? What the fuck? <laughs> are they any good? Oh my god. No. Well then why movie would I Bob, know about them? Everyone he's like a fucking living meme. How do you not know about movie Bob? Oh, he's a hundred K subs. Why would I know about this? This movie? is the there's no bad take there's no bad uh tactics, only bad targets guy. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that you don't know about movie blob. But okay. You should I, make your name yeah, movie Rob. There you go. <laughs> movie knob. Yeah. <laughs> PSA Doomer. PSA Doomer. That'd be funny. Holy fuck. I'll I'll start a podcast called Watch Dojo. Just a position. That's too many connotations. Cinema Roberto. (laughs) Duck Cuck. Show him some of the movie Bob tweets. That'll be for next time. I can't believe you don't know about movie Bob. This is shocking. He has 100k subs. But he's like a... Yeah, but like, you know who... I don't know. You know who He's like a uh, legend because of the drama, though. Right. You know who like Zoe Quinn is, right? She doesn't have any subs. Is Zoe? Is that the Gamergate person? Yeah. Okay. I don't even know which Gamergate person that is. That she's the main one. Oh, was she like was she like banging someone? And like well, that was the theory or something or the rumor, right? That was the claim. Was it allegedly? Oh, that was the alleged. That was the allegation. Allegedly. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, I don't know. He's just like Movie Bob is a famous lol cow. I'm just I'm shocked. I assumed everyone in our sphere knew who he was. But... Nope. Okay. Well, <laughs> Apparently not. So wait, was he involved in Gamergate? Uh, I, not directly, but he's always been like super duper fucking woke. Oh, okay. And he's just That's he's just known for like like if you Google Movie Bob tweets, there's just images of compilations of all his terrible tweets. <laughs> like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google this. Yes. This should this should be good. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I need a compilation of kind of. And he's just like famously gross and big and fat and horrible. Anyways. Is this video over yet? I know, unfortunately Almost. not. It's really bad though. God, it's so you know, we could we could play it. We could play it and just mute it and just keep talking. What is wait, what is this tweet? This is from July 13th, 2020. Movie Bob. So has enough time passed at this point that it wouldn't be too awkward for the Germans to swing in and take care of the obvious n- dangerous nutcase running Poland before he gets all genocide <laughs> Or is this one Wait, of the what? dirty jobs we get to do once we're the good team again? So wait, he's just like, listen, would it be awkward for the Germans to, to Nazi to, to do what the Nazis did and take out the ruler of Poland? <laughs> What the fuck is this tweet? Oh my god! Amazing. Oh, so apparently 
he's arguing here that minority characters don't need flaws because being a minority is a flaw. Is that some movie bomb tweet? <laughs> That's what this this uh, Reddit <laughs> fucking headline says. Oh my god, painful. Oh, and there was a whole Lindsay Ellis movie bomb drama, wasn't there? Wait, what was yeah, the, the Lindsay, Lindsay Ellis, Ellis movie bomb drama? T- Lindsay Ellis was like, didn't he tweet at her and try to say that they were friends or something? And Lindsay Ellis was like, nah. We're okay, not here, here. Friends. Oh my god, wait, <laughs> like, get fucked. <laughs> That's oh my so god. Funny. Wait, you have to bring this up. This is, is a there... total sidetrack, but it's worth it. Uh, okay. Is this the Lindsay Ellis drama? Yes, this is so Did... funny. Is that, that tell you guys a bunch of people did memes after that happened. Yes. Did, did I tell you guys I, I wrote a hit piece on Lindsay Ellis and just didn't like finish it? <sighs> Tumor, why? For like a video or something? You should have finished it. Yeah, her her like going away Patreon post oh was like God. really dishonest and bad. Oh, it's awful. Oh, Lindsay Ellis is really great. bad. Terrible. This is great. Yeah, here's the drama right here. So uh, the first tweet, who I don't know who it is, says, even if what they said is true. What's wrong with having a group chat, LMAO? Like, it's not some secret nefarious thing. I have group chats. It's nice to have a place to talk to friends. So Lindsay Ellis responds by saying, I know, right? I've uncovered the conspiracy of people being friends with their peers. And then Movie Bob responds with a picture of him and Lindsay Ellis, like a selfie, and says, I, for one, am positively shocked. Okay. And then Lindsay responds by saying, this is honestly really inappropriate and creepy, dude. A selfie at a con several years ago does not mean we are friends. <laughs> also, the fact that I have soft blocked you like six times and you refollow is creepy. Take the hint and please leave me alone. <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit. Damn, did oh I feel God. bad for her? What the fuck? Holy oh shit. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so harsh. Well, look, she got Yikes. 13 likes on that, so <laughs> oh, that was definitely shit. a... <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, Lindsay Ellis has committed murder publicly on Twitter. Okay, she should not feel Wait, bad. About did, getting... Look at that. Movie, movie Bob, Bob got like 164 a... likes. Right. I don't know, because they bought into it, I guess. Hold on. This... <laughs> She waited a day to respond to this. Look, his tweet is November 10th and hers is November 11th. Right. Well, if I were to guess, uh, well, first of all, his tweet has more likes than her tweet above it, which is weird. Um, but I would guess what happened was he responded with that. She wasn't going to respond. And then she saw that it got so many likes. She's like, I have to respond to this. This keeps coming up in my mentions. People are going to think I'm yes. fucking movie Bob here. I need to, <laughs> right. I need to nip right. this in the bud real quick here. Oh my God. Adam. Uh, movie Bob. What date was this? Okay. Here's the, here's the movie Bob's response to this. I'm not planning to say anything further publicly here on Twitter about what I imagine many people want to ask me about. Other than to say that I feel deeply hurt, confused, and borderline gaslit. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, what a being passive aggressive. Oh my god! He's okay. like, after I had sex with Lindsay Ellis, she told me we would be friends for life. <laughs> then Lindsay Ellis responded to that by saying, uh, "The face when you get accused of gaslighting for telling a male feminist who you have not spoken to in years to leave you alone." This is so weird. So, but wait a minute. That kind of changes things. Because originally she said, I just met you once at a con and we took a picture. But then she says, someone I haven't spoken to in years. I don't know. Doesn't that give a different connotation to the relationship? Not necessarily. I I think it does. That's weird. I'll, I'll, I'll defend I'll defend Lindsay here. Okay. I don't know. Maybe there was more going on here. Hmm. Maybe movie Bob was right. Maybe maybe they did have sex. What? Mm-hmm. Dude, Lindsay Lindsay can do better, okay? I mean, she, yeah, anyone I can mean, do better than movie Bob. Like come her on. hand is on his shoulder and like a very gropey way. Oh, really? Is that what that means? <laughs> have you guys, you have you guys taken any picture? Do you guys uh, take selfies with people at like cons and stuff? It just seems weird to me. I don't, but I've only been to one con, so and I think only two people knew who I was. Yeah. <laughs> what, Adam and who else? There you go. Adam and CT. <laughs> uh, 
CT was C- wasn't there. I don't think CT was there. No, it was June. It was June. Shoot. It was yeah, June and Greg. Well, and there. Greg, yeah. Yeah. So three people. Three people. No. By June, do you mean Shoe? Shoe on head, yes. Oh, okay. Didn't I feel like we talked to Jeff Holiday too? You talked to Jeff Holiday. That you, you you went to a previous year that I wasn't there, and Jeff Holiday was there. That was when everyone was there. Right, but this when you were there, I remember. Jeff talking Holl- to Oh, Jeff you're right. Holliday. We talked to you. I can. We yeah. talked to Jeff Holiday for like five. Then we talked to Quentin Reviews. Quentin Reviews was a total piece of shit to me. Fuck Quentin Reviews. He's a he's a scumbag. He was like, "Do you guys want to? Why does a, he? Do you guys want to get, get a so selfie views? with me?" He did say that, and I'm like, "Oh." And we were like, but, "Not really." <laughs> Well, I was like having a conversation with Quentin Reviews. I was trying to be nice. And this is before he became like, well, this is before he became woke. This was years ago. So I don't know. And he literally, like, he's not familiar with me. So I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like Googling or YouTube. He's looking at my channel on YouTube. And when he realizes what content I make, he literally just like stops talking to me. Mm-hmm. Like, in, like mid sentence. Like, like, oh I got to be, God. I got to be honest. That's, that's, the, that's like, the fucking funniest, most base Chad move ever. If I, I fucking like, saw your YouTube fuck? channel, I'd walk away too. He's like, oh my like, God, he's an a rude piece of shit. shit. Like, I don't know. It's totally yeah, rude. Dude, maybe I like Quentin. Though. I got to check out this guy's content. I was like, what like, a fucking scumbag. Let me go sub to Quentin Reviews. Quentin Reviews is Movie Bob 2.0. He was trying to ingratiate himself with, uh, what's her name? ContraPoints. No. Well, yes. He made that but, giant I Love ContraPoints video. Yes, but it wasn't ContraPoints. It was, um, what's, what's the, uh, Tumor just sent me a picture of him subscribed to Quinn. <laughs> uh, what, what's the, 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 the girl with the giant spider? Giant. Ah, the fuck's her name? Spider. That, well, she sits on her bed and spider does movie reviews like every girl. six months. Oh, Jenny okay. Nicholson? Jenny Nicholson, yes. What is what is the giant spider? I'm she has like a Nicholson giant spider, spider doll that's behind her or something. How dare you? Um. Anyway, yeah, no, he he Quentin was like really trying to ingratiate himself in the Jenny Nicholson friend group. At some point, and uh, it didn't work. So apparently, he was being really creepy about that. It backfire. Yes. At least I've heard. This is what I heard through the great ones. I don't know. So it's all hearsay. Who knows? It's all allegedly. All right. I'm ready to start begging. Can we finish this video? No. Come on. I don't know how much more I can take of the pain. I want to talk about Quentin Reviews. But think how... Other terrible people. Think how great it'll be to talk about that stuff after... Quentin Reviews you know. made an eight hour long video on iCarly. What the f- iCarly? Wait, really? I first of all, I've never seen iCarly in my life. What is iCarly? Uh oh, no, he made two videos totaling eight hours on iCarly. Same difference. That's iCarly a TV show. Wait, What's he made the... an eight hour video on Victorious? Dude, how much money would you get for an eight hour fucking video with four million views? Holy fuck. How is wait? What is it? How is it so long? I don't. His videos. I've not. I haven't seen his content, but his last couple of videos are all, all five of them are like, four hours. How longer. does he have so many views on his? He was like dying. Such. I guess he's found a niche in doing like, garbage Disney Channel content or something. So, I don't know. He's doing well. I guess. People really care about the show Victorious and iCarly. This is all like. I was too old for all this shit, so. Yeah, I haven't seen any of this shit. How the fuck can you talk about Victorious for like eight hours? I <laughs> say, well, we're talking about this I for know. 12 hours. But that's, this, isn't, this isn't scripted. This is just a bunch of assholes talking. Yeah, no, no one said this is good content. No. This oh, is God. great content. What are you He's talking gained about? so much weight too. He's gained so much more weight, I guess I should say. Body shaming, excuse I me. Know. Yeah. Come on. You're on camera. Do something. Okay. Let's go like work out. <laughs> Exercise. Yeah, he should he should have CT draw him an avatar. <laughs> yeah. I'm not fat at all. Like fuck. Draw me an sure. avatar, yeah, but prove make it. me skinny. Okay. 
Ah, that's Kevin, crazy. Whatever, make listen. Into, make me into a shadow person. Listen, good for him. He's making, what, dude, fucking breaking in the views. views, okay? I don't know. I don't know how long it takes to edit an eight-hour fucking video. I can't imagine. I, t- I don't even know how you talk about it iCarly for eight hours, but all right, whatever. I mean, he's almost... GXC has like a five-hour video on Doctor Who, but like... He's you know, almost like two seasons of television subs. Shows. Oh, wow. Yeah, but His I last feel like... video got four million views. Yeah. So oh, I'm saying yeah, he's yeah. doing well. Doing well. An eight there hour video. Maybe maybe Jane Nicholson will finally know some. Can we cover an eight hour video on our show? How long would that make our show? Oh that my would, god. That would take you fucking two months to get through. <laughs> yes, it would. All right, guys, we're doing it. I'd have to Next watch Sunday. iCarly. Oh no. Next we're not Sunday doing we're this. watching the end of Victorious by Quentin Rudy. No, we're not doing it. I'm not watching Victorious. Why? The good thing. I don't oh, want now you now you want to go back to the video. Disney garbage <laughs> crap. I never liked those live action Disney shows ever. And I never will. That's because you're a sexist. No, because I was fucking edgy as a kid. I'm like, what is this gar- Disney garbage? Get out of here. Yeah, you should watch Akira and Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> True subversive content. I did. I literally bought Akira and I, I watched it and I said, this sucks. Yeah, of course you did. Thing is. Unless you're the type of person who uses up all your yearly vacation days for trips to Anaheim and Orlando, you are in the clear. I guess unless um, you're really into Star Wars, because that's that's Disney now. Or if you've enjoyed the 29 or so MCU movies and the growing number of MCU TV shows, which are produced by Disney and available on Disney Plus. Um, but hey, if you're like a sports person, then you're good, except for Disney owns ESPN. So every time you watch Stephen A. Smith lay down a hot take, you're still playing right into the those the hands of the mouse oh. i'll say i did not disney owns i did not know it's disney ESPN, owns ESPN. yeah that's crazy good investment good time to buy disney stock mm-hmm. disney God, owns uh, like everything yeah okay at least i still have my guilty pleasure the bachelor and its related properties which damn it they're on abc which is owned by disney too jesus christ or, or jesus mouse how can how can he a watches the bachelor <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, how can a fucking leftist watch oh, The Bachelor? That seems very hilarious. like the commodification of like human relationships. Of and, course, yeah, the stuff. commodification yeah. of marriage. Right. Yeah. I do want to see that scene again for my research. Guilty play. <laughs> What's that? You like the bathing suit no, running the, scene? The research scene, yeah. That, he put bad. it in his video. Okay. You're The Bachelor and its related properties, which, damn it, they're on ABC, which is owned by Disney too. Jesus Look Christ, who's backing or, on all the Jesus different Mouse girls, or, or Mickey Christ. I don't even know anymore. So maybe we're just I, haven't all the Bachelor relationships like utterly miserably of failed after the show? Yes, yeah. Because aren't let's, all the aren't all hey, the let's guys watch like the show of you macking on like, all the girls that aren't me? I, well, I don't all, know if I have to point this out, but like yeah. the set of personality traits that make you entertaining on reality television are not the same set of personality traits that lead to healthy long-term relationships yeah. with well, people that you met. on. And not only are they not the set, the set of traits, they're the opposite set of traits. <laughs> okay. yes. But also like, aren't a lot of the bachelor guys, they're just like, they get like these like, like buff, like conventionally attractive guys who are, I don't know, like, me. like random jobs, like, you know, yeah, giga chads. Well, no, like they're not like, you know, I I don't I'm a lawyer or a doctor. Like they don't have like a career path necessarily like planned out for them. Something that like some some, you know, babe is going to necessarily want on one of these shows. Like they, they want the easy life. If you're going to show up on this bachelor show. Right. Yeah. Bunch of gold eggs. diggers, bunch of gold diggers. It's all Disney adults now, whether we realize it or not. But what do you think? Do you welcome your mouse ear <laughs> overlord? Or do we still have a chance to eke out our own spiritual identities? They couldn't even like tape the ears did, up for the show. He just he just implied that you can't have your own spiritual identity distinct from Disney. Realize it or not. But what do you think? Do you welcome your mouse eared overlord? Or do we still have a chance to eke out our own spiritual identities? Let us know. No, you say listen, Doomer, you still have a chance. You have a small chance to eke out a small... Yeah, a small 100% chance. Which doesn't even make sense because earlier in the video, he said, Disney's not a religion. Religion's more like Disney. So then that contradicts saying that you can eke out something outside of Disney. 
I don't I, know. Th- this is this video is fucking bad. You guys need to do the thing that like there's like a, a Hall of Fame that EFAP has for like the shittiest crap they've covered and like the dumbest things people have said. <laughs> you should have someone fucking make make that shit for you guys and like figure out. We we, uh-huh. we need a tier list. This a would be list. great Tuesday content. A mm-hmm. tier list of the dumbest shit that you had to look at. Oh, this would be so much that work be... to like go back and do all that. Though. Doomer, I yeah, think you would be great. If only you, if only you had a slave. <laughs> I wouldn't. Right. I would not listen. I would not force CT upon. We don't pay CT enough to do something. Like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a job for Doomer. Actually, no. What we yeah, this is a job. Actually, what we could do. This is, is a job people... that we pay Doomer nothing to do. No, this is what we would. The community <laughs> would come together, and they would figure this out. And by the okay. community, we mean you, Doomer, specifically. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Here, Doomer, here's 20 Come bucks. Together. I want you to go back through all of our content. Look, we have, everything in a, we have everything in a playlist, Doomer. You just have to go right. through the playlist and listen. That's listen true. To that does make it them. easy. I you mean, know. I could knock that out in a few days. Okay. Tuesday, like you said, this is great Tuesday content. Oh, I forgot to fix the playlist. Did you? How dare yeah. you? Did you forget or did you just not do it? I forgot. I literally did. Like, I said, I'm going to do this. And then it just. Whoosh, Right out of my brain. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, there you go. No, it's not. Okay, I'll try to fix it. It's not the end of the world. I mean, I know. I'm just saying. I'm glad you brought it up. I totally forgot about it. In the comments. Um, thanks to our patrons for all your support. Be sure to check out our new patron perks if you haven't already. Look at all those patrons. The new patron perks. What is a new patron? 500 patrons paying for this Let's slop. See. I got to watch the, uh, the Rick and Morty video their highest viewed video to see like is is it good or is it just complete and utter dog shit are those I patrons mean, tithing to the church of anti-capitalism i kind of feel like they are yes the only Wait, reason how do they have so many patrons pays, this god this content's so mediocre they pay they don't not they're not paying for the content they're paying to put the message of communism into the world mm-hmm. yeah one day I would, it would be fucking amazing if we, if like on the pause screen here, we saw PSA Sitch. That would just be incredible. <laughs> that would be good. Wait, Andy, be Andy, no. Look, Andy, no. Andrew, no. no. Way. Wait, what? Look at the bottom. Andy, no. You're kidding. It's got to be a different Andy now, right? Is it? Well, no, that's Andrew, no, not Andy, no. That, yeah. What do, you, what do you think Andy is short for, Sitch? And be sure to check out our Andy. <laughs> Who are, we, who are we gonna catch in here where's carl benjamin hey patrick gallagher isn't that the film guy what's that guy's name no that's patrick williams all right enough is enough i so i used to play i used to play world of warcraft with one of you know gallagher the guy who like used to like smash watermelons and shit he played wow no i played wow with one of his like nieces Oh. She told me about all the family drama. It was kind of funny. Oh, that's interesting and weird. And that's like such a weird, <laughs> still like random. <laughs> I, just, I don't know why that. I played well, WoW someone, with someone Gallagher's Gallagher. niece. Like, wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I did hum- humble, humble brag. Right. There you go. Mahler's hitting, I mean, Mahler. Doomer's hitting the, not, it's not even an, like an F rated celebrity. It's like a D rated, a D rated celebrity from 30 years ago. <laughs> family member. Yeah, like secondary family member too. Yeah, I can't believe Andy No supports communism. There you go. There you go. I'm All pretty sure Andy Antifa of Andy stuff. No. I'm pretty sure Andy his name is not short for Andrew. I think it's like one of those. His names is in whatever language he is. I don't know. Wow. Asian. Absolute, I don't know what Asian. Absolute you know, racism. I don't know what kind of Asian he is. Yeah, but, uh, and so yeah, you, you know, wouldn't like, bother to look it up because you don't respect them as people. That's like true. That. I don't. Yeah, because he's a Nazi. We've talked about <laughs> Vietnamese. He's Vietnamese. Wait, is he? Yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I've known a lot of Asian people who have basically just Americanized their names because they're they don't think anyone could pronounce their their actual name. So that's not true. I'll give it a shot. Someone, someone just has their name as Bob. Probably movie Bob. That's probably a movie, movie Bob. You're right. Tyler the Destroyer. Honestly, reading as reading the list of his patrons is the best part of the video. This is a lot more entertaining than listening to him talk. Is, is Tyler the Destroyer like the antithesis of Tyler the Creator? <laughs> yeah, apparently. 
There's, <laughs> it's like it's like his antimatter. There's a guy named Fro F R O exclamation mark. Why why are there eight hundred people watching right now? Listening to us fucking talk about this guy's patron. There's a guy whose name is Disappointment. <laughs> I, he's like, listen, my parents are very disappointed oh with me God. that I, you know, promote this and pay for this content. Wait, Mark Flores, isn't that a, the, one of the magic developers? <laughs> I don't know. People have the same name to him. You know, it's not like everyone. It's not like there's one name. I mean, I've never met another PSA such. Well, you got me there. There's some Wisecrack Live that happens right here every Thursday. You got me there. Happy Sack. That's a good one. <laughs> Zyril. <laughs> Zyril. There was oh, so, someone God. whose name was just user profile name. Uh, Wee's Dummy. Adam is very upset that we're doing this. That's kind of David why Pope. I joined it. I am not upset. <laughs> I don't feel like... Okay. I, I think Adam just wants to go to sleep. I, know, I just moved I it up so you could do more names. Okay. It's a guy it's named like, A. Thank goodness I live in California. At 11 a. a. Pacific. Space Heroes. It's only midnight here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 3 uh, in the morning. Where it's I am. 3 a.m. where you are, yeah. Yes. But I mean, I, if you want to close it out, I mean, we got another hour, and then I actually rigged it up so I can record once we go over. So. Oh, how did you? Nice. Yeah. How, the, how did I do it? I you didn't, used, let the, you uh, didn't let the list finish. I didn't do that. Perks, if you haven't no, already. I mean, he didn't. Is there any... Okay, here's a question. Like, back when I actually made videos, I would try to make it so that you could actually, like, see the names. And read them, like, yeah. Yeah, like, this is just... This is on you speed You welcome scroll. your mouse-eared yeah, overlord. Like, ready. And be no sure one to check out our fucking new stream. You can't, <laughs> right here you can't make Thursday shit out. Yeah, yeah it's like, ooh, Smash dude. that subscribe. He doesn't even let the list finish. Did he fucking cut to the Oh, my God. To be did. fair, I've, I've seen worse than that. It's pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, we don't even do that, so... That's like... <laughs> do people care? Do we have a scroll? Yeah, people do care. They like to see their name. I guess I guess that makes sense. You like to see your name. And when, like, oh, my, my name. And when he says people do care, he means Doomer cares. No, no, I think I see. I think, I it's the entire reason that Doomer's like, like read my name. The entire reason that streaming exists is so that like people can like interact. Like, let's be real. Yeah. Streaming in terms of like the quality of content per minute is way way lower than like prepared content. I cannot the, believe that is such a say nonsense. That is so oh obviously I mean, true. when you're on the show, so yes, true. that's 100% yeah. true. But it really brings normally, the quality meter down. Normally when it's no, just I, Sitch I, oh, and yeah, I talking. That's why, you're, yeah. that's why you're begging in DM Sitch. Oh, please do it. Please come back. I can't hold this show without you. Do, do I have to leak DMs to him? <laughs> leak, leak the yeah. DMs. Somehow do I, I have to leak the DMs. The leak the DMs. Uh-huh. <laughs> do I have to leak? Do I, do I have to leak the uh, me not asking you, but you asking to come on? Do I have to <laughs> well, leak? it never happened. Buddy. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, that's class is gonna leak DMs. Now. Yeah, okay. It's, really, it's so guy. surprising. I can't believe you would leak DMs. He's getting nervous, guys. You hear that? He's like, oh no, he's gonna leak the DMs. Fuck it, fuck it. Listen, this guy. Kick Doomer, yes. So for those of you out of the... Oh, no. Stop Adam, it. Adam no. started the end of Victorious. The end of Victorious. Come on, it's only eight oh. hours. We can at least we can at least watch the first two hours of it. Okay. Right? Every, good... Everybody everybody, like and subscribe to Quentin Reviews. Get a good job Here's five it. hours in under a minute. In my last video, we explored the origins of the infamous Nickelodeon sitcom Victorious, which premiered in 2000... Okay, I can't take this. <laughs> <laughs> oh Adam lasted 14 seconds. I can't take this. I can't take it. Oh shit! I didn't. <laughs> I still have wormy up. I didn't even. There's a there's this. a video. I've tried to get through like five times to see if we can watch it on stream, and it's just fucking. It. I, I just can't get through. It's so bad. <clears throat> what it's, show? It's uh, a Sarah Z. The rise and fall of geek culture. And I have not enjoyed her videos. But. An hour and 28 minutes long. And I'm assuming like, I'm like only 30 minutes in and it's just like talking about the history of geek culture. So none of the woke stuff yet. And she has the most horrible, boring voice. She just sits on this couch holding a fucking giant teacup. And it's just, it makes you want to die. 
<laughs> you hear her voice just that's a bad on, review on, 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 on. you're like oh my god so that you're gonna give her content dysphoria okay her most of her videos are very oh man just listen okay listen difficult let me, let, let, let me give you like an in media res <laughs> this video okay just oh, please no just so you can experience my pain okay there we go. Such this is and boring. its golden age really represents the height of that specific era in geek culture. It's an era with a really defined aesthetic. Sitch just Sitch doesn't like strong independent women that make. Wait, wait, you have to let it go. Essays. You have to let it like just sink into your brain. Okay. Filled it's, with a lot sunken. of now defunct stuff that really dates it to that 2008 2016 ish period. On top of stuff like Geek and Sundry, for example, this is when the website Think Geek was around. Honestly, we need a union for people who lost so much of their time and money on Think Geek. The site started in 1999, but got big in the early 2010s. You could buy tons of fandom branded merch like the portal gun or a sleeping bag that looks- Why is this so bad? Oh my God, it makes me want to die. I mean, that sleeping bag looks pretty based. What I is mean, this tone of voice? Oh my God, it's- I don't know what it is. There's like a specific tone of that that tone of voice I've heard before, and it's just like the the prattling on droning voice. And it's, oh, yeah, I, I can't remember the last Holy time shit. I heard that. Oh, it sickens me. She did a review of Idiocracy. That's a good movie. Yeah, it's a hell of a good. Movie. I, I I'm assuming the review is terrible. She says no, Idiocracy is not a documentary. Okay. And she did that video. This video has 900,000 views. And I'm just like, I'm like struggling to listen to it while doing other things because it's just, it's just so, so grating. Could, so I, I found another example of like the last time I felt that way. Here's a video by someone. It's just, the announcer. Yeah, she has this <laughs> Absolutely can't, can't stand this We're person's We're making copyright. <laughs> oh, no, it's Sitch. First of all, fuck you, Domo. <laughs> 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 You're just jealous. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm really jealous. You're just jealous that you don't have a million plus viewed video. Oh, I will. How many so views was your was your Vosh video? Okay. If, if you com if you combine if you combine both me and Dev's uploads, it's like five hundred K. Oh, if you com <laughs> <laughs> listen, if you combine someone else for the fucking different channels, right? Dude, did I did I tell you that when Dev reuploaded it, he made more money off of it than I did? <laughs> Good. He re-uploaded your video? Why did that happen? Because <laughs> I took all my videos done. No way. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? You deserve it. I'm, gl I'm glad Dev beat you. <laughs> hey, this video has 2 million views. It went up. Awesome. This video is hey, brought man. to you by Audible. Visit no. audible.com no. slash Sarah Z. Stop. No, I just want to hear the intro here. Okay. What? I, yeah, Doomer. What? Why'd you take down your Vosh video? Jeez, what? Oh my. I, I don't. I want this fucking identity off the internet as much as I can get it. Why? Because I don't want to talk about politics. It's fucking cringe. Oh, you. Whatever. Taking place in a dystopian future hundreds of years after our own, the film centered itself around the premise that humanity was moving in a dumber and dumber direction. It told the story of Joe, an average human played by Luke Wilson, who was accidentally frozen for hundreds of years only to escape and discover a world that has become profoundly stupid. Essentially, a fascist state largely propped up by megacorporations. Is it a fascist state? The world caters to the lowest common denominator. Fast food, sex, and violence are the cornerstones of this society. People drink sports. What makes, is it a fascist state? I mean, fascist? Wait, I don't know. It, it wasn't a fascist state in Idiocracy. Did she say it was fascist? Yeah, she said it was a fascist state. I was like, man, everything is No, fascist. they were just dumb. No, it was a democracy. They had oh. a parliament. Yeah, okay. Let's drink instead of water, legal cases are determined based on vibes, and everything is bigger, simpler, <clears throat> and more expensive. What I do is just say, like, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> 
Most notably, because there are no more smart people, the world's problems seem to have worsened with no one around to solve them. Landfills pile up with no strategy on how to deal with them, no one remembers how to grow crops anymore, and the economy is in a constant state of decline. The film's release was marked with challenges. 20th Century Fox, the company producing and Okay, she's just going to lay out the movie. Okay, let's skip forward. This is this is so much better than a Stitch video though. What? Fit from them oh, or what can I'm not, actually I'm watching be done my own to videos. them? I'm, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> You're sitting on your own stream watching yes. your own videos. But yeah, no one you else Google is. yourself. And fucking look in a mirror and jerk off. <laughs> listen, listen. Okay, listen. Okay. What's better, this content or listen to this amazing opening? Okay. You will listen. always be my queen. Stab. Eh. Eh. On it. On. It is okay, mighty beast. I killed Daenerys, and I accept my fate. No, John. What? You did not kill Daenerys. The dark desire for power that lives inside the heart of all of us. The need for validation, for love. You are not my true enemy. No, what really killed Daenerys is this Game of Thrones. Foolish. <laughs> <laughs> you are truly a wise and noble creature. Yes, and now I must take all evidence of your crime and fly back to my home planet. You can't even <laughs> use content aware, Phil. No, it's the joke, idiot. Come on, Jesus. God damn it. <laughs> Sitch, so check your DMs. I saw you fucking. D Doomer disliked the video and sent me a screenshot. I should go tell Grey Worm I stabbed Daenerys in the heart. Look at this. Listen. Amazing editing content. So here we. Okay. Look at that. That was such a good opening. You're crazy. Yeah, no. I was, I yeah, I'm it. so glad I'm not subscribed yeah. to Sitch. Look at this. I'm gonna subscribe to Quentin Reviews instead and get get all the all the updates on iCarly. Yeah, <laughs> you're missing out. Look at this. I look at all these face warps. Okay, <laughs> making <laughs> making Brand look like a mongoloid. <laughs> this is how did you, you, how made, did you, you do more like a mongoloid? How did you do the face warp in there? Uh, mag it's editing magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what program were you using? I don't remember. It's like Ten years ago. Oh yeah. Pretty light. Look at this. Pretty lights. They're killing the story. This is Adam's dream right here. Pretty lights sacrificing the story. <laughs> no way. I'm story first. I don't. Okay. Well, you're, you're attacking CT right now. Oh, look. Actually. There's Daenerys at the cloning vats of Camino. Story. <laughs> so much happening and in Pretty this video. lights can work together, so you don't have to. An Archer this. reference. A pug with a thinking face. Oh my god. It's making me want to edit videos again, everybody. I yeah, forgot. right. I used to do things. Now we just have a bunch of stills though. This is less exciting. Nice. I'm Excellent. I'm glad we have a clip now of Sitch Sitch reviewing his own fucking video. Right. Beautiful. Wonderful. Wonderful. This is a great video. He's like ten out of ten. 10, 10 out, of, out 10. of 10, yes. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Look at this. Ten. Look at this intro. 10 out of 10. How do I report this video on YouTube? Report it for basedness. <laughs> report it for being garbage content. Listen, Sitch, why aren't you yeah. sipping tea in your video? Why don't you pour hot water into mm. it? Cup. Look, here's another. Here's another great intro. I don't understand. Here's this great sitch introduction. At least it can't get any worse. How many times have I told you not to say that? Now something worse is gonna happen. I've seen it on Happy Days. Watch in three, two, one. No, don't. 
No! No! Oh, good for you! Holy crap. And like that pun? Oh my god, that is primo pun content. You do have the pun content. And here I thought that after the unceremonious dunking of the Night King, Game of Thrones would just slip into a boring snooze fest. How innocent and naive I was to think I could just lay back, turn my brain off, and let the ending of Game of Thrones wash over me. Chad, anybody who records themselves unsubbing from Sitch and sends the video to Doomer Media uh, Business at gmail.com, I'll pay you $10. Look at this. Amazing. Amazing content. <laughs> Vinny the Doberman says, I unsung. Well, there content. you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> anyway, we we'll have to watch anymore. But... Brilliant. God, I'm so I was so good. I was such a good editor. Such a good filmmaker. Whatever happened. Yeah. Another another YouTuber lost to fucking streaming. Sad. Oh. Well, I guess happy in your case. Where's the Final Fantasy part? I remember oh, doing look, a... the younglings. The younglings. Does Jamie fight in the second last episode or the last? I thought it was the second last episode. You know, it's got to be this episode because Jamie dies in this episode, right? I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Nobody watches Game of Thrones anymore. That's true. I would hope not. It's it it's the biggest like fall off of anything ever. Yes. It's like everybody was watching it, and then like. Like two weeks later, no one gave a shit. Right. Because they destroyed the ending. Yeah. It, I'm, I cannot believe that producers allowed <laughs> a fucking ending. You think they'd read this and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, there's a lot of like actor interviews where you could tell they thought the ending was just as bad as everybody else thought it was. Look at this. What's what is this content? Here? Then they gallop a mask to reveal falling ash and say something like, Winter has come. And when that random horse showed up, I swear, I thought slowly it would pull off a mask to reveal it was really Jock and Hakar on all fours the whole time. And he'd say, A girl must come with me if you are to live. <laughs> then they the gallop off it? into the sunset. <laughs> How did it all go? What the fuck are we watching? <laughs> That's I'm so glad edit. I never watched your video. That's some good <laughs> editing right there. You got, like the horsey gallop down perfectly. Yes, yes. There you go. There's the CT drawing. Do you want to learn how to do that horsey gallop, Doomer? Maybe your videos could be cool <laughs> one day. I It could be useful for Sitch to tell me how he edits so I can just not do any of that. <laughs> well, I first of you all, have, you have to learn you tracking. You have to have a brain style that, that horsey gallop that horsey gallop was not a preset adam. that, no. that horsey gallop was not using tracking adam really it was all uh, it was using tracking doing, it would look good one what would, are you what would doing it be frame tracking? by frame horsey galloping i don't remember what the fuck i did for the horsey gallop i want to know how you did those morphs you don't those aren't morphs aren't strictly in vegas you gotta use no they it. weren't from vegas i probably use pixlr or something right some other program and then yeah. import into vegas right Look, there's a filthy Frank rep. Fleet and Euron's forces. Oh my dude, you just got pranked. Bet you didn't see that one coming, huh? Then when John's <laughs> there you go. We got all the memes from like ten years ago and <laughs> you have the it's time to stop guy. Hey look. There's oh, a look. Sitch and Adam picture. Oh my god, were we streaming at this time? I guess we were. Oh, I there's think CT. We were. I think there's we definitely CT. were. Yeah. I plan on Peterson finishing what I was working on, but oh, this is probably me. Oh, hold on, no, let's channel. hear, let's hear the end. I no, we're not going to hear the I end. I was planning it. on finishing a video. No, and we're not going to hear the end. Oh, let's let's hear that. Let's hear that. We're not going to hear the and end. Then it, it never happened. Then it never happened. I mean, you've only got eight to ten videos in the works right now, so any one of them could be finished. That's true. My favorite, one of my favorite thumbnails is the uh, the Linda Sarsour. The Huffington Post fighting Majin Buu as the Quran. <laughs> oh, you don't Fuck. see that one. I do like the version Endgame versus the Chad Infinity War thumbnail. Anyways, amazing. Amazing. 
quality. I, I like this. I like this thumbnail about uh, Boy Scouts. Sitch deep stroking his ego. Listen, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> It loses me. Hey, it's getting me motivated to do a mo to do a video again. So that's too bad. We should move on then. Can we go back and watch uh, some Quentin reviews? I know. Why would you want to do a video? Because that's what the people want, Adam. Oh, dude. I they? mean, you could just you could just be lazy and like just watch other people's content and like make a bunch of money, not to do any work. That seems better. I feel like you're suggesting something. I'm suggesting you not make videos. Oh, okay. Dude, there was zero value in the videos that we just watched. We added yes. so much value just in in context and actually substantive debate over capitalism and religion. That can define like, nothing. Do you like it my... It was an embarrassing video. Do you like my uh, attempt, my meme uh, thumbnail, why are a million people on fire? <laughs> I remember the time period there's all these like you know cutting something with a like a million degree knife you know why are a million why are there are a million balls in this pool <laughs> you, you, you on your clickbait game i know i don't think it worked i don't think it worked because oh. that first game of thrones video got like a shit ton of views and then the other ones didn't i mean they got good views but not like the first one anyways do better yes uh, Nate T for twenty dollars says hi rags. I just finished New Vegas for the first time. I sided with Mister House. What's your guys' favorite faction for the end game? Well, we've actually had this Legion. conversation with Doomer. Uh, ironically, uh, Doomer is a disgusting degenerate legionnaire. Absolutely. So, yeah. Ouch. I am for I'm pro order. So obviously, I you're an NCR cuck, right? The NCR, yes. Disgusting. The based, based and red pilled and. Uh, virtuous. And There's strong. nothing red pilled about the NCR. <laughs> of course, there is. You have to bring order and stability and democracy to to New Vegas, to the, the United States of America. Right. You're over here enslaving people and dressing and, and cosplaying as a Roman legionnaire because you have a tiny dick. Nobody plays New Vegas. Okay. Okay. That's actually a lot of people play, play New Vegas. Okay. Uh, uh, serial master for twenty dollars says, "How do I get into the Discord? I'm drunk. Uh, you just have to click a link from CT or one of the other people who mods the centrist militia Discord, like Kaval or somebody." I like that they added in the "I'm drunk." So I'll just post a link in chat or somewhere, and then you can click it, and then the magic happens. Did I say irony? apologize i did not mean to say irony i googled do people play new vegas and what came up was while it's likely many people have already played fallout new vegas i think it deserves a replay this year <laughs> and the reason is that it's just downright fun and the story is absolutely one of the most engaging of any game within the past 10 years wow this is old as shit I wouldn't be surprised if New Vegas is one of the most played single player games. Of is all time. New Vegas worth playing in 2021? Let's see here. The short answer is yes. And that's because Fallout New Vegas is one of those games that have aged incredibly well. Oh, okay. How many units of New Vegas? 12 million copies. How many people still play Fallout New Vegas? 12 million copies of New Vegas. That's pretty, I assume, pretty good for a single player game. get this shit on the there's, internet? Hold on. There's this. lots of people that like have played New Vegas in the past year. In the yeah. past 30 days, 4,385 people have played Fallout New Vegas. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm surprised it's only 4,000. It's actually up. Yeah, there you go. Look, all the months before that were in the 3,000s. Uh, Sitch, let's get your take on this. What's better, Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3? Um, it's weird. I've played New Vegas. It's weird. I've played New Vegas way more than Fallout 3. Um, the gameplay, like the game itself of New Vegas is obviously much better. The only thing I liked a lot better in Fallout 3 was the location. Because I thought it was cool that you're like in DC and you see all, 
you know, the, the, the monuments and everything, but like through the lens of the apocalypse. So everything's like fucking and shitty. And my only problem with New Vegas was it takes place in a desert that was already a desert. So it's like, it's not like there's this clear visual distinction right. from like what it right. used to be yeah. and what it is now. So that's it's my only like, complaint for New Vegas. It went from being a desert to being a desert. Wow. Being a desert with blown up shit in it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Boring. So. Should have How been like you? a pristine, futuristic city. I don't know. I've played New I've played the, Vegas the so much more. Universe. But I feel like there were things in like Fallout, the first Fallout 3 that like stuck out in my mind a lot more. Like the the virtual reality part in the vaults where you're like in that weird neighborhood. And like there's a lot more like little scenes that just stuck out in my mind than New Vegas. But I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've played New Vegas so much, it's become kind of like boring, essentially. You've done everything there is to do. Yeah. But have you played Fallout New Vegas as Adam Friended? I did. I have not. That is oh, true. Okay. I did not play as Adam Friended. But. Well, geez, get on it. What was your What's your answer to that, Dylan? Oh, I mean, New Vegas is a lot better than Fallout 3, I think. Okay, there you go. Boring answer, but okay. The boring and correct answer, yeah. Oh, that's true. That Fallout Three does have the horribly atrocious subways. That I forgot about that. Yeah, that's true. That's awful. I forgot I mean, all those subway sections were terrible in Fallout Three. This game does look kind of boring to me. Uh, I haven't played Fallout Four. I've never played a Fallout game after New Vegas, so I don't know. Wait, was was Fallout Three the one with Megaton? No, that is actually one of the things that. Um, I thought was missing. In Fallout 3, the ending is kind of, I think, lackluster and anticlimactic. The ending of Fallout 3 is fucking amazing because of the giant robot. No, I, when I said Megaton. Megaton's like where you the... nuke the city. That is Fallout 3, I think, not Fallout in Vegas. Right, Get right, Jen? I thought it was Fallout 4. I'm mixing everything up, apparently. Megaton? No, no, no. Okay. Megaton, Fallout. Yeah, that's Fallout 3, where you decide whether to nuke the city or not. Okay. Fallout 3 has uh, Liberty Liberty Prime. Yeah, Fallout 3 is the one with the big robot. Liberty Prime is fucking hilarious. That's like one of the funniest scenes in a game <laughs> I've ever played. <laughs> With when you activate this giant robot that just is just spouting anti-communist propaganda, <laughs> like dying <laughs> of laughter. It's just like killing all these people while saying the communists shall never reign. <laughs> it's like blowing up people from like a thousand years or a hundred years in the future. Sounds sweet. That's pretty funny. God, that so was his bots. I literally put that in my, I think that was in my first ever Sitch video was uh, I had the Iron Giant saying Liberty Prime quotes. I don't know why there's so many bots. It's ridiculous. Bad color. Yes. I don't think I could play a game with this terrible color. What does that mean? What it color? It looks awful. It's Everything's washed out because it's like the apocalypse. Oh, okay. Is that what you're talking about? So, they're, so people's eyes don't work correctly any longer because it's the apocalypse? You, you mean because everything's like an orangey, like deserty brown? Yeah. Yeah. Boring. It's like a, oh, listen, it's fucking... I hate when you play New Vegas because it looks like a wasteland apocalypse. Well, that is what they're going for. <laughs> Dude, Adam, Adam would get hired as like a developer. And you'd be like, let's make it, let's, you know, I don't understand that it's Fallout, right? Some but like, I, I want, I want like the visual aesthetic of like Alice in Wonderland. Like, no, you think like, that would work in the Fallout universe? No, Adam is like, Adam has like producer brain. He's like, you know, <laughs> producer I saw brain. a uh, How trailer dare for, you? How for, for dare Cyberpunk. You? I saw a trailer for Cyberpunk and I really liked all those bright lights, all those purples and blues. Why can't we make that in Fallout? <laughs> yeah, like, well, uh, that's a good question. Fallout takes place in a post-apocalyptic desert and not a cyberpunk utopia, like you know, city. So, well, no, let's. But it takes place in New Vegas. Okay, you can have the the lights of New Vegas. I, I just want neon lights everywhere. The New Vegas lights are. I mean, that's actually pretty cool. That scene. It's got some color in there. <laughs> Look at you. Mm -hmm. You must be colorblind. How am I colorblind? I just I understand that these like the color and the aesthetic is makes is consistent, Adam. It's consistent with what's happening in the game. 
Look at oh, this. Like Look Mahler. at you. I know. Yes. Now he's going to go full Mahler. He's like, I, I want my game to be boring, but consistent. I don't think Vegas is. Well, again, I said I visually I thought all three was better just because I thought it was cool to see like the Washington Monument and the mall like all fucked up. So. I mean, it's not a chair in a room, which is technically perfect, but. Right. No, the Washington Monument is just a giant dick. That is true. That's how you know America's based. Its first president has a dick monument. Would you really be able to see the moon if it was after the apocalypse? What do you mean? Yes. Why would you? What do you mean like there'd be a dust cloud or something? Yeah. I don't know what what year does what year does fallout take place. I don't know how long after. The I'm new pretty cloud. sure it's been like dozens or hundreds of years since the thing. All three takes place in 2,277. 2, so well, it takes place 200 years from now. Okay. Well, there's or, plenty. Like 250 <laughs> years from now. There's plenty of time to throw a coat of paint on some shit then. It takes place 200 years after the nukes. So I would assume after 200 years, you could see the sky and the moon and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. And you could fix things up, get a little color on that building. <laughs> <laughs> Adam is just completely single-minded in this. I'm just imagining Adam running around the wasteland with like a pink Sharpie. He's like, he's like a painter. He's like a paintbrush. He's like, well, just because it's the apocalypse doesn't mean things have to look drab. I know. What the Get fuck? some color in here. You know? Let's get some saturation get some in, color here. in here. Let's fire up the LED factory. Some nice, some nice pinks and blues and greens. I'm on a quest. I'm looking for colored gels. <laughs> We're going to well, light there, this desert up. There is a an inconsistent problem with Fallout that doesn't make any sense. Oh, no. Uh, which is that in, in Fallout, there's all this like 1950s aesthetic stuff, which would have only made sense really if the if the war happened, if the nuclear war happened in the 50s. Because they'd be like, oh, this is all they have left, essentially, like before the war is like this 1950s stuff. But it didn't. The war happened in 2077. So, like, why is there all this 50s shit still, like, everywhere? Yeah, that's <laughs> Sitch terrible. Check your, Sitch, check your DMs. Oh, no. What did you send me? I typed in Fallout New Vegas, but colorful. I I'm sure you could download a mod lot. to, like... Not a lot happened. Yes. Check your DMs. Uh, I checked Sitch. my DM. I saw CT made wormy with the AI computer thing. It looks cool. Oh, really? Adam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy shit. How'd you, how did it? What's happening here? How did you do Alex, that, CT? To use one of those AI programs. What did you Probably do? use Dolly. I don't think it was Dolly because it looks, uh, the faces are too facey. Where is uh, the program? I don't. What? Mid Journey? She used Mid Journey. How do you do it? I don't know. What do you do? Well, this is... <laughs> CT, send the, send the boomer a link. <laughs> There's just these things you just like put in a phrase and it like, I don't know. I, I do you like you talk about like like really some quick. kind of expert. <laughs> the, the picture. <laughs> Type, hey, here, Adam. type into the AI Fallout New Vegas, but with color. Yeah, there you and go. And then send me a picture. Tell me. Actually, I just did that right now. Or Doomer just did that, and he sent me the picture, so I sent it to you. This is the, this is Fallout New Vegas. Actually, Doomer <laughs> typed in the prompt. He, he typed in Adam Friended Designs Fallout 5. <laughs> this is what the AI generated. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yes. I got to admit, that's good production design. What movie is this? You, you want to bring it up? I don't know. Can, can I? I mean, there's like it's a got guy, a butt in it. But, it's uh, got a guy's naked butt. He's got a loincloth. He has a he has a thong on. He's it, technically so. wearing a g-string. Yeah. You can censor the butt if you want. Put a little, How do I do that? I don't know. Put a little picture open over paint. It. <laughs> yeah, get a mean? black box. I'm sure it'll be fine. Here, I'll 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 put the. Put the wormy cats on the Put the butt. wormy head over the... There you go. There we go. It's been, it's been officially censored now. There you go. It's been there made safe for work. 
Right. This video is now safe for work. Mm. What? So this is Adam designing uh, <laughs> Fallout 5. <laughs> this is Fallout 5, guys. Look yes. at this. This is the Rainbow Coalition right here. <laughs> they have uh, they have their own two humped camel. Let's let's see who is who's cultured enough. Oh shit! Someone immediately knew what movie is from. Really, Rock Dringo. Wow, Holy Mountain. That is correct. This is I mean, a movie pretty that obvious, you right? have seen. I've seen. I've, no, I've unfortunately seen Holy Mountain. Yeah, <laughs> Holy Mountain's good. What the fuck? Holy Mountain. Oh is dog no! Shit. God, yeah. you have. Did you fucking have the wrong take on every single movie? Holy it's Mountain is one of the most fucking bizarre and simultaneously boring movies of all time. Jeez. It's so boring. This is, by the way, this is um, YMS, one of the like most popular YouTubers. This is his favorite movie of all time. Oh my! No this makes way. me okay. Your movie I'm glad you told sucks, me that likes this movie. because he 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 did a whole video movie. lambasting um, Edge of Tomorrow, which I listened to part of it, and his crit and his criticisms are correct with the story, but now I because can... of the ending, does he go no, off on the ending? No, he's basically his base his base criticism is that the aliens never used the time travel technology to counteract Tom Cruise's time travel technology, and so it doesn't make any sense, and that's a fair point, right? Um, but the fact that he thinks Holy Mountain is his favorite movie is fucking baffling. If that's not just like a meme take of his, I'm, no, I'm he gonna loves say it. It's a meme it's, take. It's, no, it's it's been, it's been his take for like, I think the whole time he's done YouTube, basically. Holy Mountain is okay. So I assume you've seen El Topo too, right? Yeah, I hate okay. El Topo. Okay, that's so weird. The first half of El Topo is amazing. The second half is what? Garbage. Where oh he's killing the gun, where he's going around killing the gunslingers, and they'll have like crazy, like metaphysical powers. You don't like that part? I don't. I think I turned the movie off after like twenty minutes or something. Okay. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. Well, it first, really is. I don't. I don't understand yeah. how you could not make it through El Topo. Like make, Holy Mountain's way more boring than El Topo. I. I mean, agree to disagree. I guess. Okay. I. I mean, I guess you saw a naked man's butt. Why well, there's a naked child's butt in the beginning? of El Topo, so I'm surprised it didn't entice you to stick around. <laughs> That's Jesus, so God bad. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Holy Mountain is... Holy Mountain has an amazing ending. Like, the last 10 seconds are great, but uh, beyond that... Holy Mountain's the one with the, the guy has, like, the, the jaguar boobs that shoots milk, right? I think so, yeah. I think that's Holy Mountain. Are we I've done been, with Super Chats Mountain in a while? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah we're done with Super Chats. Oh, okay. Yes, we're just talking about Holy Mountain now. Unless, um, I don't know. I don't think, you know, unless we're having stimulating conversation or something like that. I don't need to record, I, right? Oh, well, we we have 40 minutes before it cuts off, so you don't have to record anything. Yeah, I know. But... Um, yeah, because you guys were like 20 minutes late. Yeah, we were late. The chances uh, of us having life. I, 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 I want people now to go out there and uh, try to sit through El Topo. <laughs> just not El Topo. Try to sit through Holy Mountain, just to see how you feel about this. Just to see if you can make it through like more than 30, 20, 30 minutes of this fucking movie. It's it's amazing because the movie's so weird. You'd think it wouldn't be boring because it's so weird. So much weird shit. Is going, like you have karate. Jesus is on a mission to awaken like the Greek gods or something. Like this sounds like the, like the most amazing premise ever. And it's just so boring. I mean, the Holy Mountain has better Metacritic, better IMDb, more reviews, more popular. Then, I don't know. Okay. Well, that doesn't mean it's right. Does it? I mean, what has a better review? A Metacritic score, Holy Mountain, or like Transformers Five. You know? I mean, that's comparing apples to oranges, right? Did you like the part where where he goes, "Welcome to my th shrine of a thousand testicles"? Is that your famous part? Your favorite part of? Holy Wait, Mountain? is that in the Holy Mountain? Yes, one <laughs> okay, of the gods has a shrine a of a thousand testicles. Oh, that's horrible. That does sound pretty based. Or you don't even remember the fucking movie? I remember the movie more than you. I mean, maybe. There's the part I remember where I liked it. The part where the robots have sex and they produce a baby robot. 
and it, it's just like giant, uh, like a giant foam penis goes into a giant foam vagina, and it's like, wah, 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 wah. yeah, he lays a golden turd. Yes, yes, it's, it's amazing. It's so, it's so devoid of like story. Like if you're like an artsy fartsy guy, you'd probably like it because you're just like, oh, it's all this weird artsy fartsy shit. But it's so devoid of like story that I just want well, so much. Usually, usually I don't like super artsy stuff. It's one of the right. few artsy fartsy movies I actually like. Okay, you're, that's a bad take. But okay. It's ordinarily not. I I coming from you, I'll take that as a compliment. Okay. Do you like two thousand and one Space Odyssey? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get canceled for this take. Okay. Um, I respect it, but I don't really enjoy it. Like, okay. I've obviously seen the movie. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It's just like I have a very, very strong preference for like brisk pacing, and obviously, it's like a pretty glacially paced movie. And mm -hmm. like science fiction is just not particularly my thing. So, okay, 2001 I, is not my favorite movie. But I, don't I don't even really have anything it. bad to say about it. I don't even respect it. I mean, I guess I respect the uh, visual effects with time are impressive, but I, I mean, the terrible. visual the visual effects are still better than like most visual effects now, like six years later or whatever. Um, I feel like that's probably not true. <laughs> it, it is. I, I I went back and rewatched it. Oh, okay. okay. Pretty recently, the visual effects are fucking incredible. Right. Like, if you if you take into account the like context of the time in which it was made, they're the best VFX in film history. I don't mm -hmm. think you could possibly make an argument against that. Right. Uh, Nate gonna... T for twenty dollars says, "Hey, read this before you go to bed. Ask and you shall receive." Look at that. CT had the AI make Fallout New Vegas, but with color. Hey, I gotta tell you, it's there you go. like so much better. <clears throat> this is a game I could play. I really could. I don't know why there's zombies everywhere. I guess they're ghouls, like. New Vegas it's, ghouls. I don't know. It's Fallout or something. Is there not zombies in New Vegas? I mean, there are ghouls, which I guess are technically some kind of zombie, maybe. I don't know. I, I uh, never thought of New Vegas as having zombies in it. I mean, for the record, chat, I hate Cloud Atlas. <laughs> yeah, Cloud Atlas sucks. But... This seems like a fun game. I didn't know that Cloud Atlas was your favorite movie yet, or Doomer. Cloud it, Atlas? It is not. Please. I mean, someone chat said me. it was. So Tell I'm me you're joking. Close. Yeah. No, I'm not down with Claude Atlas. What is your What is your favorite movie? Do you have a favorite movie? Yeah, we've talked about this. My I, it's tied between Akira oh, and Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, Akira. Yeah. <laughs> is I it really Inglorious Bastards? You're just memeing on me. No, <laughs> since we've talked about this on this show, your favorite movie is Inglorious Bastards. Jesus, yeah, Christ. tied with Akira. It's fucking amazing. And you're, and all How is it not like a romance? That's your favorite movie. Okay, first of all, Inglorious Bastards is partially a romance movie. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what one, one of my videos are going to be about. Okay. Uh, Allard K for twenty dollars says, "I missed the stream, but I'll rewatch A Team Reigns Supreme." Woo! Look at that. How dare you? I think Adam likes David Lynch. I'm not a huge David Lynch fan. I think I shouldn't have. It's pretty late. I probably shouldn't have yelled like that. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is probably like, what the fuck? Honey. Uh, sorry, honey. Do I have to take you to Disneyland? <laughs> Please. Yeah, apparently, apparently, I was, apparently I was screaming about Fight Club earlier. Oh, no. Did your girlfriend come in? It's like, it's oh, like, no. Did <laughs> she, yeah, she was like, what, what, what were you screaming about? <laughs> <sighs> like, like this guy made a really dumb take what's wrong with cloud atlas i just remember it being really boring, boring. and needlessly complicated yeah boring. in a way that i didn't care it felt yeah, like a it doesn't really add up to a satisfying story it felt like a shitty version of dead again is what it felt like oh yeah but i mean dead again is a shitty version of dead again <laughs> So oh, have really? you seen? Uh, I saw it when I was a kid, and I liked it, but it's been a while. Have Have you seen Southland Tales? That's a shitty version of Dead Again. Yeah, that, that's what I, I I was like thinking of comparing Cloud Atlas to that. Southland Tales is so bad. Southland, <laughs> what what is what even is that? Southland? Southland Tales is I believe the guy is Richard Kelly, the guy who directed Donnie Darko. Yeah. His oh, movie after fuck, Donnie that's Darko. That's gonna be bad. Yeah. 
It's like four Darko. hours long too. It's like it's horrible. It's it's one of those movies that's like legendary in the film community and not for any good reasons. It's I got heard it was booed. At Dwayne Kans. the Rock. Oh my god! Wait, what is this cast? Wait, it's got Dwayne Southland the Rock Tales Johnson in it. Sarah Southland Michelle Tales Geller. was it? Can hold on. Sean William Scott, Justin Timberlake, Mandy Moore. Jesus. I remember when that movie came out. Everyone was so excited to see it because it had like such an all star cast. And then it got, everyone heard, was talking about how it got booed at Cannes. And during a like, three day oh, heat wave shit. before a huge July 4th celebration, an action star stricken with amnesia meets up with a porn star who is developing her own reality TV project and a policeman who holds the keys to a vast conspiracy. There is absolutely what? no plot whatsoever to it. It's just like. What movie? That was Southland, Southland Tales. Tales. Oh, yeah. So I'm reading, Adam, you're completely right. So apparently Southland Tales screened at Cannes, which is like the like most prestigious film festival in the world. And like got, Roger Ebert described it as the most disastrous screening since the Bad Bunny or the Brown Bunny. <laughs> like It's just like a complete fucking disaster. I, mm -hmm. I would pay so much money to watch the fucking Cannes screening of Southland Tales. <laughs> Holy shit. That would be amazing. Well, I That's think fine. they edited it. I think the screening went so bad that the studio was like, you got to edit some of this shit out of here. I think it was like four hours long and everyone was just like, this is fuck the worst movie I've ever seen. How dare you? Yeah, put me in a movie theater for four hours. Okay, wait. Here's here's. Do you like the movie, The Fountain? Me? No, fuck yes. no. Okay, good. Okay, one listen. scene in The Fountain is really good. Listen. The scene where he, at the S class end. and whatever the fuck team Doomer was on, which I forgot. The D bags. Can, the D bags. We can break bread here because I <laughs> fucking despise the film. You despise I, the film? I mean, I despise the What film. about the I'm, one scene where he like dies and is like eaten by the tree? Fuck that scene. You don't like fuck that Fuck everything. Scene? I hate the whole movie. Fuck every, that fuck every part so of that movie. so amazing. No. I'm, I'm generally speaking an Aronofsky hater. Like there's going to be... Um, he did Black Swan, right? What about Primer? Yeah. Black, Black Swan's, Swan's okay. Uh, Aronofsky did not do Primer. He didn't? No. I'm pretty sure he did. I mean, I'll, oh, I'll no, bet you a thousand dollars. It's not Primer. Let's see. <laughs> what was his first film? You mean Pie? Pie, yeah, that's it. I okay. I was so, mixing Primer and Pie up, but you're right. Yeah. So, um, Mahler. I, I was on an EFAP where we were talking about like the best, like the best writing, and like what defines the best writing, and the best stories, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do a follow up at some point about like the worst stories and things that we hate the most in movies. And I'm probably gonna rant about how much I fucking hate Pie for like at least half an hour. It's gonna be amazing. I've never that seen that movie. It. Is dog shit. It is mm. so bad. Oh my god. You didn't like Jimmer. the wrestler? You're so I full fucking of hate. hate it. It's it's awful. The wrestler is okay. I guess another daring. The wrestler option. is one of his movies that I I. I don't feel the wrestler, to shit on. the wrestler is good, but way overhyped. I mean, it's, I mean, yes, people I talk like it's the Godfather or something. Yeah. Like, no, it's yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that, but like, I never saw Noah, so I can't comment on that. But. So look, looking at his films, I despise Pi. Requiem for a Dream is like ridiculously overrated, but it's not like it's a dog shit movie. I hate Requiem for a Dream because yeah. it's so like, I don't know, it feels so edgy. So like, I get it. Yeah. It's so depressing. Yeah. Like, I, it's a competently made film. One thing that really annoys me is that he like blatantly stole from Satoshi Kon, but whatever. Oh, there um, you know. I hate that. That has, that has the famous, that famous double sided dildo scene. It does have that, yeah. Yeah. And like the wrestler is like fine, but whatever. Holy shit, there's six years in between Wrecking for a Dream and I didn't realize The Fountain was his next movie after that. Yeah. God, fuck The Fountain. Fuck The Fountain. The movie yeah. angers me. The fountain is a mess, but there's one good scene. The, no, it's just because he gets eaten by a tree. That's it's not... so amazing. Oh, God, I wish it was in a good movie because it's so, it is such a like awesome scene. And, and in response to chat, my favorite just like straight comedy is probably either Tropic Thunder or Airplane. They're both great. Hmm, yeah. Tropic Thunder is good. Uh, I probably my favorite comedy. I don't know the comedy I like watched and quoted the most. Uh, was probably um, Pulp Fiction. Uh, Snatch. 
Sna- oh, oh god good. guy Ritchie, fuck snatch is so funny snatch. Or at least uh, it was like you know back then didn't you say you like saw it but you were in a bad mood or something and you that's were no to watch it again? yeah i said when that. i was adam yeah i, to... I said the you first like time snatch, i saw snatch dude? i had a migraine i fucking hate like, that guy he's terrible but you say you hate who what guy guy, guy Ritchie. why this <laughs> movie suck you don't like snatch Snatch is hilarious. i don't like any of his movies have you actually at seen movies. Snatch, or you just don't like Guy Ritchie, so you're assuming you don't like Snatch? No, I've what is seen the movie I've, he did Snatch with is one, he's only done a couple that are like really popular. There's Snatch and Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. I've definitely seen both in of those. The, uh, Jan- in the, uh, not James Bond, the Sherlock Holmes movies. I haven't seen the Sherlock Holmes movies. The first one was good. The second one was kind of whatever. I think I saw like I think I saw Revolver and Rock and Rolla, and I didn't see anything after that. I didn't oh, like Rock and Rolla. I didn't like Rock and Rolla. So you haven't actually movie. you've never seen Snatch. Rock and Rolla has the pain. Snatch is before that, Sitch. I know. You said you've seen Revolver and Rock and Rolla. I, I okay. I mean, I haven't seen any after Rock and Rolla, and it's oh, oh, like, oh, Snatch was made in two thousand. Gotcha, gotcha. So like by that point, I had, I had known I'm not gonna like this guy's movies. So wait, just what the fuck? He directed the live action Aladdin movie. That's wait, what? To me. How the fuck? That's that insane. How did that happen? And I don't John know. August wrote it. What the fuck? Dude, that movie sucks, dick. He wrote it too. What the fuck? That movie was so bad. How did Guy Ritchie? Who's John August? John John August is a famous screenwriter that hosts the Script Notes podcast. I don't know these movies are. I mean, they're sticking out to me. Big Fish was okay, I guess. Everyone loves Big Fish, but he did the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory remake, which it's very uh, mixed opinions on. But Snatch is hilarious. Snatch and um, see, favorite comedy Snatch, Big Trouble, and uh, Big tr- Fuck Big Trouble. That movie sucks. Big what is Big Trouble is hilarious. You're <laughs> Fucking insane. dog shit. Awful oh my movie. God. Listen, it it appeals to me especially as a Florida Talk man because it's literally all about movies. Florida. You're crazy. Big Trouble is so funny. Awful. Big Trouble is amazing. Do you like Talladega Nights? Oh, uh, hell yeah. Not, not so much. What? Of course not. It's fucking awesome, Sitch. How, can you not How are you wrong about Nights? every single movie? And uh, what's oh, what's uh, my other... my that I love this Robert Downey Jr. movie so much. Where he's like the, the washed up... Magician guy, or fail magician. What the what was the name of that movie? Robert Who? Downey Jr. Failed yes. magician. I don't know. Uh, Sounds vaguely familiar. The Prestige. No. Yeah. What's your kiss, what's kiss, your bang, take on bang. the kiss, What's kiss, your take bang, on the Prestige? Bang. Such. It's great. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is hilarious. Prestige is great. Famous. The other great guys comedy. is great. Um. It's such you I, like the prestige? There are parts of the prestige I really like, and then there were parts of it I didn't really like at all. Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't know. I, I, I think it's overall, I think overall prestige is good. I think it's overall good. I, I still think Memento is his best story. film. Uh easily. Maybe the prestige <laughs> is his second best film. Do you disagree okay. with it? I like I don't I don't like Memento like very much. What? I think the what? prestige is by far Christopher Nolan's best film. Memento's good. You're crazy. It's like, ooh, it's like a movie, but it's backwards. Like, okay. Yeah, it was very intelligently written yeah, and consistent. Sure. <laughs> was it? I don't know. I, I, I did like Batman Begins a lot. And, I mean, he coaxed an amazing performance out of uh, Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. So I give him credit for that. Tenet was dog shit, but uh, hot hot fuzz. Is, I forgot about hot fuzz. Hot, hot fuzz, fuzz is pretty up there. That's comedy. a great comedy. Yes, yeah. That's Somebody my shit's on hot fuzz. That's my favorite of those movies. I think that's everyone's favorite of those movies. Now it's interesting because it used to be the narrative was like Shaun of the Dead was the best of those movies, and like right. hot fuzz was trailing behind it. But now, like no one thinks that the world. Yeah, no. time has been time has been very very good to hot fuzz world's yeah. end is nowhere near as good as those two my opinion i agree hot fuzz feels more timely i think the other ones feel a little dated when you watch them again yeah 
I mean, I still like Shaun of the Dead pretty well. I rewatched someone. Someone said something good about the world's end, and I was like, "Wait, really?" And I went to rewatch it just to make sure. And it's like, "Yeah, no, that movie's uh, didn't it's okay. hold up on the rewatch." I, mean, I it's really like, liked that movie the first time I saw it, but I haven't. I've never rewatched it. I mean, it's not like I don't hate it. I mean, like it's Edgar Wright, so it's going to be better than most movies, but it doesn't hold up to like Hot Fuzz. It's like I would, I would, I would call Hot Fuzz like a nine point five or a ten out of ten, and World's End is like a seven or something. I mean, hmm. it's not a bad movie, but it's you know, it's no Hot Fuzz. Mm-hmm. Kung Fu Hustle is a great movie. Concrete House, yeah. good. That's yeah. a good movie. Uh, let's see. Look, list of comedies. Hot Fuzz, 98. Come on, it should be higher than that. 98. Why is fucking movies from like... Wait, it's it's number 98 on a list of best comedies? Of 100, yeah. <laughs> what? Wait, give me the list. Where, it's one of these things where they break up. I don't even know how to get to it, the, oh, this. Oh, it's going to it's gonna be one of these stupid lists where they're like, Caddyshack, number three. Oh, you'll you'll be upset. They put something about Mary above Hot Fuzz. Oh, my God. That movie's not even good. And they put The Mask. I mean, I haven't seen The Mask in forever, but I, I remember liking it a lot when it came out. It's, it's, it is not anywhere close to Hot Fuzz. It, it yeah. probably doesn't even... It's probably not even a good movie on like... Well, I feel like... I feel like the mask probably does not hold up at all yeah. by today's standards. So Office Space is a good comedy. That's on the list. Office Space is a fair, fair thing to list. Uh, I've never, never understood the appeal of Ace Ventura, even when it came out. Yeah, not my thing. No. Jesus, the one that, the one that, black and white movies. The one that dumbfounds me is fucking Caddyshack. I mean, I remember liking it like when I saw it when I was like a wee lad. I haven't seen it in a million years. That's the well, one like with the, the gopher, right? Yeah, in the, the fucking in golf. Go. Yes. I, it's one of these movies that like get just gets recommended over and over again. And like there's every reason that I should like it. And mm-hmm. I just can't even get through it. It's just awful. Right. Uh Groundhog Day is okay, chat. Groundhog Day is great. I I mean I guess it's a comedy. I, it's not like a laugh out loud or riot comedy, but it's like a good movie. How how is this fifty seven on this list is Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> the fuck is this? Wait, like? what? Mrs. Doubtfire is over Hot Fuzz. Fifty five is Toy Story. Is Toy Story a comedy? No. Okay, this list is weird. The Man with Two Brains is hilarious, but uh, I don't know if it deserves to be fifty four on this on this Just list. Give, give me this list. So give me the list. Okay, Bedazzled, the old Bedazzled. Interesting. The Royal oh, Blazing Balls. Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles yeah. is a is, is a completely acceptable ch- pick for best comedy of all time. Well, I feel like I like Blazing Saddles a lot. Spaceballs. But I feel like all these movies when I see them recently, they just they don't make me laugh. Like Monty Python, The Holy Grail. All these movies I loved <clears throat> like years ago. If I watched them now, like these aren't that funny to me anymore. Uh, those a lot of those still make me laugh. The producers is literally the only thing that's funny about the producers is the play itself. The rest of the rest of it's not funny. Okay, I don't. So far, I don't take issue with their top six. Oh, I'm looking at it backwards. I haven't seen number seven. Uh, Blues Brothers is it's a good movie. Yes, it was Napoleon Dynamite. Okay. There's only one movie in the top ten that I think is really out of place. Coming to America. What the? They put Elf on thirty seven. Elf. I'm I'm surprised Big Lebowski is number twelve. Elf. That shouldn't be anywhere near that fucking list. Animal House. It's a good it's a good comedy. A Night of the Opera. Well there you go. Listen, Marx Brothers. Some of the Marx Brothers movies are actually still funny by today's standards. Yeah, Duck Soup is in nineteen. Duck Soup and, and Night of the Opera are good. They put Shaun of the Dead, South Park movie, that's a good choice. South Park movie is amazing. The first Zoolander. Oh, you want you want to take that's going to fucking upset chat. Uh oh. You want to take that's going to be like a nuclear bomb going off, dude. Oh, fuck right. Ghostbusters. The first one. The first one. Not funny. That's the worst take I think you've ever given on this. Channel. <laughs> just who doesn't like? The, you're literally the only person in all of human existence I've ever heard that doesn't like the first Ghostbusters movie. I mean, the marketing is good. The actual movie sucks. What the? F- 
the first Ghostbusters is great. What are you talking about? Mm, nah. You're insane. What don't you what's wrong with it? It's not funny. It's a good great movie. Mean Mean Girls better than Ghostbusters one. No. No. Oh my god. This guy thinks Mean Girls is better than Ghostbusters. Yes, Kick Doomer. There's a lot kick of kick Doomer. Do- There's yes. a lot of Kick Doomers in China. Oh my <laughs> god. Mean Girls is better than Ghostbusters. Oh my Jesus. Here we go. Satoshi was a reptoid. Original Ghostbusters is garbage. Actually based. No, this is that's insane. <laughs> that is the most Shit insane movie. take ever. Shit movie. They put Borat is one of the on the top ten of greatest comedies. I mean, Do I like the first Borat airplane. Movie, but... I can't believe Airplane is number two. Number nine is Monty Python's Holy Grail. Air- airplane is pretty predictable. Everyone loves Airplane. Team America number eight. That's surprising. I mean, Team America is funny, but like eighth greatest comedy. I don't know about that. Yeah, the Team America was the one that looked really out of place to me. This top yeah. ten is like nowhere near the real top ten. Groundhog Day is number five is baffling. Annie I mean, Hall as number four is baffling. With their top nail ten is not good. Is just where it was. I never. I don't even know what that is. With but. nail and I is the seventh most funny movie of all time. Come on. I, what is with nail and I? I haven't even seen it. I don't even know what that is. I saw it a long time ago, but I, it's just, it's, I don't, it's not memorable. Okay. Yeah, this list is weird. I'm surprised they put light. How do they put Life of Brian above Holy Grail? Uh, that, I mean, a lot of people say that. I feel like a lot of fucking hipsters say that. I just don't And don't number one, like this is. Spinal Tap, really? It's the funniest movie of all time. A lot of people I mean, like that movie. I don't get it, but yeah, but not number one. It's a, I wouldn't put it even in top ten, but it's a pretty good movie. Yeah, Spinal Tap's not bad. I just not the greatest comedy of all time. And it's a mock. I'm not big into mockumentaries. Mockumentaries are kind of like eh. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm not big into alternative history. <laughs> there you go. I agree. Well, I thought you liked. <laughs> I agree. Uh, I'm fucking around that. I know. He's he, he loves uh look at he's gaslighting us. <laughs> you did you did just get gaslit. Was Airplane like the first nice. such as such as nose is full of gas right now? Was Airplane like the first um like I guess it wasn't the first straight up parody movie, right? There was other parody movies before Airplane. Um Nick, Naked Gun could, was before Airplane, I think. Okay. Is it a, it's a Kentucky movie? Fried movie? Is that what you call that? I don't know. What movie? would you call airplane? I don't know. I yeah, don't I guess it's, it's parody. How else would you describe it? Wasn't uh, Naked Gun before airplane? No, Naked weird... Gun was 1988 and airplane was 1980. So, no. Isn't airplane the whole was eight movie years them before. saying things that are misunderstood? Yeah, because, yeah, because Leslie Neal, that was like, wasn't Na- wasn't airplane Leslie Nielsen's first comedic role? It was? I thought it was. Because before that, he oh, used to always play Airplane like... was in the 80s. Wow. Because before that, Leslie Nielsen used to always play like serious roles and like bad guys and stuff. I thought. And then he be... then his like career was revitalized as like this comedic actor. Do you know what I love about the movie Airplane? What? It's Everything? The, it's the consistency. <laughs> it's like totally consistent all the There's way There's no consistency in Airplane. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> Right, but Mahler admitted that he I've said been, that this doesn't apply to the comedies. comedies. I've been yeah. I've been trying to bait Mahler to come back at the call and keep sending him quotes. <laughs> oh really? That's funny. <laughs> the conversation. Oh my god! Was, yeah. <laughs> Airplane is oh man. Airplane is hilarious. It's such a weird movie though because no nothing in the movie no one reacts to the comedy of it what do you mean it's just all straight face oh yeah, all it's the played, people played, in it's the played movie. straight yeah. yes right it's all very serious so. yeah but that's true of like all like naked gun like people were it's all everything's played yeah straight that's police squad like a, all a those genre movies. yeah yeah right it, a movie wouldn't work if it was people were like reacting to the absurdity of it all right oh, i forgot about this bit when there's the kid on fucking chemo and she's like playing a song to make him feel better and she knocks his IV out of his arm yes. and she's just like playing happy and he's like dying. Yes. 
<laughs> this course, movie is so good. Of course, um, do you remember the the most problematic part of Airplane? The abonics part? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's like a black person talking, and they're like, "I don't know what you're saying." And this old one's like, "That's okay." <laughs> and it's like speak, translations. Yeah. She's like I speak jive, and then she starts talking and like a bond. Yo yo. <laughs> I was like, oh man. I mean, look, I, Tropic Thunder is my like favorite comedy, and there's fucking blackface in that movie. So yes, Tropic Thunder right. isn't even on this list, is it? Holy that's shit! Not, no. no, that's a that's a that's tragedy. A giant oversight. Oh, yeah, but wait, is. Duck Soup is number nineteen. Duck Soup is funny. I'm I'm fine with it. Nineteen thirty three, Duck Soup. Okay. Have you have you seen any Marsh Brothers? Some of their some of their stuff is awful. Some of it's great. Okay, that it's is, like. Yeah. It's like old fashioned physical comedy and like witty one liners. I'll take your word for it. Okay. Oh god, airplane! I want to go watch airplane now. It's so good. Comedy is the best. There's a, do you, have you seen Silver Streak? <laughs> I haven't. No. <laughs> There's a scene where. Uh, uh, what's Willy Wonka? What's the actor by Willy Wonka? His name? Gene Hackman. No. no. The other guy, Gene, Gene Wilder. Gene Christoph Wilder. Waltz. The other Gene. Yeah. There's a scene where Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder they're like trying to escape. Uh, you know, someone's after them, and so Richard Pryor puts a bunch of shoe polish on on Gene Wilder's oh, face. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has to pretend like he's black, and it's like. <laughs> Oh my god, that scene is if you could see it, like look up like Silver Streak, you know, blackface scene. <laughs> Gene Wilder amazing. and Richard Pryor. I mean, they were like yes. they had a thing going. They did a bunch of movies together. Yeah, they did a bunch of movies together. Yeah, they were great together. It's a funny movie. Yeah. I think Silver Streak was probably the best movie. I saw um have you ever seen the the Superman movie with Richard Pryor? That's like one of that's like if I was yes. Richard Pryor, I'd be so Superman embarrassed. Superman three, right? Oh, I don't know which one it is. I think it's those three. old Superman movies are so fucking awful. I that's can't believe people were like, "Ooh, I like you." Know, like, like when whenever a new that's Superman comes like out, like Evil Superman, right? That's one of them. Yeah. Like Richard Pryor's, like a com- he accidentally becomes a computer genius somehow, and he creates a computer like magically that can control all markets or something and shoot lasers that will defeat Superman. If he comes close to it, it's like the most, it's well, so like the office space game, right? That it has where office space got the idea from was from Superman yeah. three. Yeah, that's right. Those old Superman movies are so dog shit. Anyone that says like, Oh, those are like so good. I'm like, no, you're fucking blinded by nostalgia. They're so awful. Man. Sitch hates them, so they must be pretty good. Oh my god, they're so bad. Just I don't look think up. They hold up. I think if just you look up. It again, uh, you hate it. Su- just look up in the original movie. Look up Lois Lane Superman flight song. Oh no! Wait, Mel Brooks is still alive. Holy shit! Yes, he's like a hundred. Why? Yes. Why do you want Mel Brooks to die? You're I don't. It. I'm glad he's, he's alive. Gonna, we're gonna see a notice on Twitter tomorrow. Mel Brooks is right. dead. All I just finished listening to the Tuesday show at three times speed, and now I feel high listening to you guys. Like, <laughs> that's fair enough. We should end the stream when we listen. We stream anyway. When we listen, when I listen to myself talking at normal speed, I sound really slow. But when I listen to myself just talking in the conversation, we sound plenty fast. It's really right. weird. Hmm. Kung Pao does. I was never a huge Kung Pao fan, but it does have one of the best lines of all film. <coughs> he trained him wrong Pao? as a joke. I mean, that movie came out. Everyone was saying that like constantly. Well, I always confused this with Kung Fu Hustle. Kung Fu Hustle is the good one, right? Kung Fu Hustle is the good one. What's the other one? Kung Pao Enter the Fist. That's like Kung oh, Pao yeah. Enter the Fist is like the slapstick parody Kung Fu Hustle. I mean, I guess it is a slapstick comedy, but it's not like a parody. Kung Fu well, Hustle is maybe Kung Fu is Hustle like is a parody. Amazing. I don't know. Whatever. It's it's Kung Fu Hustle is amazing. If you haven't seen it, it's very funny. I need to re-download Kung Fu Hustle. I mean, yeah. buy a DVD on Amazon. They do such a good job. Just when you think like the fight couldn't get any more absurd, it's like they take it to one step further. 
Well, and also the fights are like fantastic. It's, yeah. it's like it's a funny, wacky movie, but the actual fight choreography is great. Oh yeah, yeah. it is. You, yeah. You know what else that applies to? Fucking Kung Fu Panda. That is true. He great did, movie. He's got That's another true. movie though. The same guy, Kung Fu Hustle. He's done a couple of movies. Then he do Shaolin Shock, Steven Soccer. Shaolin Soccer. That's the. I never movie, saw that yeah. one. Yeah, but, that uh, one's good too. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Everyone was like jizzing their pants over Crouching Tiger, but I was all about the Kung Fu Hustle. Like, wait, he wait no King of Comedy was Scorsese. Oh, he also made a movie called King of Comedy. That movie was Crouching Tiger was overrated. Shut up. Yeah, that movie that, was great. That what was like mean? that was like a bunch of white people who've never seen anime before and they're like, this oh, is amazing. My God. You Fuck like it because it's a fucking tragic love story, you simp. Okay. Oh, that's yes. true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it is a chess. <laughs> yeah. uh, Chad romance, dude. Okay. Oh, why could we never be together? I don't even remember why they couldn't fucking be together. Some bullshit honor nonsense. Yeah, it's nonsense. Stitch doesn't respect other cultures. That is true. I don't. <laughs> All cultures should be America. Oh. Stitch, what do you think about Hero? I don't. Hero's great. Remember it? I remember. This is this is what I remember. I remember seeing it once, saying I like that, and then seeing it again, saying Oh, it's not as good as I remember. Oh I my literally God. remember nothing about the movie except there's a scene where like they shoot a thousand arrows at him or something. You're just a fucking racist. That's the I last scene. That's all. That's all I remember about Hero. Oh my nothing God. About the movie. It's one of the most beautiful movies ever made. Hero. Well, if you're saying that, it's got to be awful. Isn't there a... <laughs> the cinematography in that movie is objectively amazing. And there's uh, badass sets. They have like a set that's all blue and a set that's all red. And Oh, I remember Hero. I like that. That's the one where uh, Jet Li fights himself, right? And there's like a really good Papa Roach soundtrack. That's what? a different movie. <laughs> You don't know 